It was 2021. The first tower rose from the ground on the outskirts of the city of Prague, Czech Republic. Some people were furious. Some were simply horrified, because they had never seen anything like this before. Does this mean that the end of the world is not so far away? A year ago, the remains of the cities, along with five towers, finally faded and were destroyed. The tower shone a benevolent light to those around it, and only its vastness and fertility became salvation from human instincts. The tower that appeared in the center of Seoul was no exception. As the last habitable zone, the tower became a private world for the survivors. No one had an explanation for how the world got to this point. They had only one goal, the top of the tower. People began to climb the tower. Those who managed to reach the top were gifted with money and fame. Among them, they are the only ones who achieved greatness that exceeded any human achievements. They were elevated to the top of the tower like the constellations, and the only ones who were so close to the secrets of the tower, they were the only point of support for the generations to come. Nevertheless, as long as mankind eagerly awaited the return of the light world led by the constellations. However, 36 years have already passed. The boy fell from despair. He was the only one who survived. It was incredibly cold. His strength had already left him and his anger was growing. Did he hear something? Everything around was on fire, and there was nothing but the dead. It would be strange if they spoke. This was the best expedition team in the history of Soul Tower. They did everything they could. There was nothing they could have done from the start. Why did the Platinum Monarch sacrifice his life for him? The donation made no sense. A smile appeared on his face. In an instant it changed to horror. Something pierced the Earth's crust and everything ignited again. The creature's entire body was covered with scales that looked like armor. It was a huge snake with wings, which was several dozen, or maybe even hundreds of times larger than the boy. Did he survive after so many injuries? The boy was disappointed. All efforts were in vain. If only he had the blessing of the stars, he could still fight. The boy was covered with snow, which made him even more desperate. He hit the ground with all his fury. No, he wouldn't give up. Nothing will change if he says something so pathetic. His teeth gnashed from rage and the understanding that his death would not bring his brothers back. The snake started attacking. That was the end. The guy has already been through too much. He won't back down. He cried out in rage and swung his sword with all his anger. What happened? Why is he no longer on the battlefield? Everything around him was whole. Fear gripped him. There were two unknown people standing in front of him. It seems from the figures they were women. They asked the boy if he had regained consciousness. He could not understand what happened to the snake. Could he not see well? He rushed at one of the figures, how they got here from the other tower. The guy was spinning circles. One of the girls laughed and said that he was an athlete. What kind of nonsense was she spouting that pissed him off? Who are they anyway? The boy was pierced by the words that echoed through his body. Why should he be beaten harder? One of the girls rushed to beat him, to which the other screamed that he was older than them and should show them even a drop of respect. The other only continued to beat him, but with the words that he deserved it and should respect them. What's going on? He just fought a snake. Where is he now? The girl only screamed at him more, not understanding why he didn't do his best. The guy fell to his knees. The second girl scolded him for his dying words. The girl said through her teeth, why, if death is not an option, did he jump from the 89th floor? He was frightened by how they knew this. There was no one alive there. The girl hit him again with the sole of her shoe. She was sickened by the sight of him. They argued that if he found the sign after the death of the Platinum Monarch, he could defeat the snake. The other shouted that he was looking for death, which made her very angry. The boy was surprised. Was there really a way to defeat the snake? The girl was bursting with anger and irritation. If he had not given up, he would have defeated the snake. The young man was surprised how it was possible to think that there was a way out to overcome the snake. Then it turns out that he could save the lives of his comrades. He shouted, who are these girls and how do they know this? The boy begged them to tell him how to defeat the snake and who they were and where they were. He was seized with fear and despair at the same time. They poured water on him, talking about how long he was away from death. As soon as the water got into his eyes, his eyes began to burn, he began to see. These two girls turned out to be more than just silhouettes. One of them had a twisted face. The pupil dilated from the water and gradually he began to see better. Are they human? They really were people, even more, they were themselves. Is it true? The boy was overcome with terror, he fell into a stupor. One girl was smiling sweetly at him. It was visible despite the bandage on her face. The other was the personification of anger. They said at the same time that they, it was he who died earlier. They sat by the building and joked that they were constantly regressing. It was their ability, the boy just stood in surprise. He did not remember anything about any of them. One of the past lives angrily said that it was the fault of his body losing his memories every time they came back. How stupid he still couldn't come to terms with death. It doesn't matter what success or achievements you get because you will forget it and return to your 20th birthday when you were powerless and all mistakes and decisions will be forgotten. Regression without memories and experience. 
Then what's the point? The girl entered the community of magicians. Here she reached the position of master and received the title of first from the tower. Another entered the community of alchemists and received the title dynamite from the tower. It was the first time he had heard of such titles. In any case, there are many like them here. No more than ten. There are only two who are interested in modern life. They were called madmen because all memories are formed before regression, thrown into the garbage dumps. And they were essentially garbage, because only after reaching the top of the constellations can you retain memories and see the next life. That's why they were so upset about his death. The girl breathed out to calm herself. It was just a stupid curse. One can only hope that their next regression will achieve more. It meant that he had come to the end, to die in order to watch future lives here. The boy's face changed. He did not understand what was happening. She looked disappointedly at the boy, wasn't it clear? He did not understand anything, but he understood that something had happened. The girl looked at him with contempt and just threw the obvious, this is regression. Was he terrified? Regression again? His eye flashed and the surrounding picture changed. He immediately got up because someone was addressing him. Back home in. Get up, it's already dark. The boy did not understand where he was and what it was. The young man seemed to know him. He asked how long he planned to sleep here because they were in danger. Bayek Homin still felt like he was talking to some supreme mage and someone else. Where did his seal go? He seems to have lost his mind. The man was shaking him. He didn't understand what was wrong with him. Maybe he was just sleeping. He needs to get himself together. Out of nowhere a man appeared who was hostile. He was against them being here. He slowly came to his senses. It was the fourth floor of Soul Tower, a place where people like him were allowed to go. Bek Homin was also a hunter. The constellations were not part of the research squad. None of the 20-year-olds worked as moneylenders. This was his reality, the reality where he was running from the hunters. It started again, the new 20-year-old him that everyone was looking at. They were wondering, what this time? He was next to this young man again. But he remembered the picture where three unknown people were staring at him. The boy thought that it was a dream, but unfortunately he did not remember what happened there. The attackers saw Graver and decided to capture him, but they did not know where he was hiding. The young men were clearly not impressed by this. They would not have been able to do anything because they did not even have weapons. The guy told that the engravers are the same magicians of the coal guild. Engravers can spoil their precious seals and so they dump dirty work on them. A parasite ran between them, burning and screaming. One of the attackers used a seal charm to destroy it. Baik Ho Min only snapped at the defender in displeasure at this. A man ran out of the bushes screaming with fear. He shouted for help. The engraver used magic to wrap his hand in something vile and burning. It was simply unbearable. The guy didn't understand what was happening. He just looked scared. A man came up to him and pressed him with force. He was going to cut off his hand so that the infection would not go further. He swung with all his might and swung the axe at the innocent. Such a sight confused him and frightened his friend. Everyone heard a loud scream. He was just screaming in pain. The boys dragged the wounded man to them in the den because he had a huge shock. The man with the axe warned the boys that the gravers don't sit still. And unlike them, the gravers have seals and even powers. If they let graver escape, fearing for their lives, they will suffer the same fate. This scared Baek Ho Min because it was definitely not a joke. His life was in danger. The bald man shouted at them because it was impossible to stay still. The boys gave a scratch. They ran as hard as they could. What could the graver do? Why did he annoy the elder so much? There was an elder in the city, the most famous usurer. He was also called Spider, and the main ones in his organization were called Spider Legs. The elder is one of these nigs. He sheltered the boy when he was ten. The elder was the head of the shelter. It is because of him that the boy has such a bad life. While the boys were running, they had a dialogue. They did not understand what was happening and thought that the engraver owed the elder money. Although this theory was shaky, because engravers get a lot of money for seals. Will other gravers hunt them down if they do something wrong? Engravers apply strange seals and people gain strange skills because of which no constellation will pay attention to you. Back home and stopped to rest. They had been running for too long. His strength was gone. The new seal immediately gives them real skill and gives them the opportunity to start life as a hunter. The constellations can choose and teach their followers through these seals. But if the constellations get angry at you, or they hate you altogether, this option is even worse than simply not having a seal. The boy could barely stay on his feet. He would choose not to meet Graver. Already more than ten people have been injured trying to catch him. If they are unlucky, they will get the same. Back home in didn't have a seal yet, and if they were unlucky and met Graver, he might forget about his dream of becoming a hunter. His friend was frightened by something. He screamed out of fear. He himself simply did not understand what was happening. Graver was right behind them, and they started running again, gaining strength, even though they were gone. The engraver reached out to the boys. He thought they were already dead. Back home in rushed at him with a sword. What are they for? Graver dodged the attacker. The boy had no chance to survive. The engraver grabbed Back home in's sword with his hand and gripped it tightly. 
With the help of magic, the sword melted. It was already more like mercury. This is the end. The boy could not believe his eyes. His sword became a piece of metal with the addition of mercury. The engraver used magic and part of the molten sword flew back to the boy. Bayek Ho Min tried to cover himself with his hands and something like mercury touched his hand. The pain paralyzed his arm. He was inexorable. His friend watched in horror. All he could think of was to hit the engraver. He kicked him with all his might, and gold coins poured out of his pockets. This mercury was eating into Beck Homan's hand. It seemed that it would burn the hand through. The boy grabbed Graver. He understood that he could not hold him by himself, and asked for help. Bayek Homan was angry that he now had to do without an arm. The only thing that awaited him was death. They held Graver together. Finally, he wouldn't hurt anyone. The friend exhaled. It was close. Gold caught his eye. Coins glittered and beckoned. Now they will be wealthy. They still did not understand how they could be so lucky. Because one gold coin is worth 114 million won. This was the minimum price to get the seal. Beck Ho Min wouldn't have earned that much in 10 years. The friend reached for the money, but Beck Ho Min stopped him. It was the elder's money. However, there is so much money here. A friend enticed with an offer to take the money for himself. If they take the money for themselves, what will they do with it? However, if they do so, they will be in trouble. Obviously, it is the elder's money. Otherwise, why would they send it? The friend stood his ground. Even if the money belonged to the elder, he was already wealthy, and they could get the seals. Back home, Min shouted that even if he was that greedy, he wouldn't live if he took the money for himself. The boy looked at the coins. They were kind of strange. He had never seen them before. The constellation seal was carved on the coins instead of the tower. Back home, Min was in a stupor. Such coins did not exist, but they were right under their noses. His head was pounding. The pain was unbearable. He loosened his grip. Graver realized that this was his chance to escape. He sharply pushed the boy, who did not even have time to react. Graver grabbed Beck Homin's arm, wrapping both hands around it. He burned his hand. The boy screamed in pain. The friend was so attracted by the gold that he did not even see what was happening behind him. The engraver took pity on them, and with a sneer that they would never earn from it, gave them a seal. The pain in his hand was paralyzing. The boy continued to scream and begged to stop. The engraver sneered at what a stupid skill they would get. His hand burned, but the pain was worse than the burns he could ever get. Back home in was still screaming in pain, but no one responded to his pleas to stop. The friend decided that it was necessary to act. He ran up from behind and swung at Graver. He hit him with all his might with a stone that clearly weighed quite a lot. The engraver only raised his eyes timidly. Cold sweat ran down his face. He was horrified. Finally, it was over. Graver was dead. Their suffering was over. A friend rushed to Beck home in. Was he safe? What did Graver do? Hands still aching, the engraver used those strange coins to carve the seal. Beck home in guessed that something was wrong with them. Now the same pattern as on the coin was on the boy's hand. The friend wondered if so, were those gold coins fake? The boy was overcome with fear and disappointment, as if this was what he wanted. But there was one thing. You only get a seal once in a lifetime and he got this junk. Hope remained in the ability. He begged everything possible to get something useful. He has a level 4 skill, memory. This ability helps to solve the problems of modern times, using experience from the past. The guy was screaming and trying to tear off his hand seal. What other experience from the past? A sharp pain pierced his head again. His ears were ringing. No one understood what was happening. The boy asked the others if this had happened before. No one knew what had happened. It had never happened before that the subconscious world shook like this. Something was happening to the body of the first. It scared the others. The body seemed to evaporate in front of everyone's eyes. It became translucent. Persia had guesses as to what had happened. Activation of the ability, memory, the boy was bound by surprise. Chosen life, one. The knowledge of the first was transferred to the boy, experience transplantation of a seal with impure materials. The similarity of experience is 98%. Beck Ho Min had a strange feeling. Knowledge that was previously unknown to him began to appear in his head. He had a feeling that he could do anything. He reached for the seal. A friend shouted, let him not touch, what is he doing? Beck Ho Min just stared intently at the seal and tried to concentrate. As he used the ability, the seal glowed with a red glow. The friend ran to call someone and asked him to wait there, but Ho Ming did not even hear him. He got some stupid seal. Only a genius like Persia could fix it. Her hands were blessed. She could make gold out of nothing. It was possible for her. The boy just looked and listened to the first in surprise. The first whispered to Beck Homin to believe in her and also believe in himself. The seal took on a clear outline and began to shine. The hand was almost completely healed. She began to glow more brightly and the first one hung in the air. She took up residence in the seal. The windows of the tower lit up. The light scattered over long distances. People looked at the tower in surprise. They had not yet seen it emit light. This was watched by everyone around, from magicians and sorcerers to knights and commoners. The light in them began to gradually fade. The boy looked at his hand in surprise. His ugly seal has been fixed and is now much more attractive.
the rate of synchronization with the One constellation has been significantly improved. The One guy heard about constellation for the first time. Bai Komin collapsed from powerlessness. He didn't think about anything else. They subconsciously called Adina and looked at her worriedly. She regained consciousness, subconscious again. Dynamite said that she disappeared and reappeared. They were wondering what happened. The first one stood up and after thinking for a while said that Baek Ho Min had obtained the level 4 memory skill. It was almost a miracle. They consoled her that she should not be disappointed. This is only his first skill. There is more to come. In all their history, no one has lived more than a month with a level 4 skill. All died either from being killed or from disease, without exception. The first screamed. They tried to reassure her that on the other hand, if he died quickly, the next rebirth would start sooner. The girl mocked them. She knew that Baek Ho Min would not die. He was their hope. They thought that Persia had started having problems with her head. She excitedly said that Baek Ho Ming had obtained an SSS level skill. The guy looked at her in surprise. How is it possible this level 4 skill is really SSS? The girl yelled at him. What other skill does he think you need to have to reach the top of the tower? It was a really tough question. Even with special skills, there is no guarantee that you will reach the top. The boy was surprised to listen to the teachings of the first. That even the one who received a special skill could not hold on and died. But such a strong skill she kept hoping for when it would appear. This skill was her only hope and he finally got it. She screamed in happiness. None of them had used a seal so quickly and so stupidly. This became possible because of her. He summoned her with the help of a seal. This meant that this skill transferred all their experience. If he can use the memories with the memory, it represents a true rebirth. But they shouldn't have started rejoicing so early. No one has yet been able to beat the limit in a week with such skill. But even so, this time they had every chance. If Beck Ho Min can use his skill effectively, they will conquer the tower. The boy woke up in a sleeping bag in the middle of the tent. He was awakened by pain in his arm, which was still aching. Baek Ho Min looked at his hand. There were bandages in place of the seal, but at first glance the hand was intact. He hoped to become a hunter with at least a level 3 skill, but level 4 is just rubbish. Even a stupid memory, does that mean that he will simply remember well? A total waste. He was disappointed. Why did he get such a stupid ability? He should think more positively. His body should have become stronger after he received the seal. This meant that he would become stronger in the future. If he tried, he would definitely become a hunter. When this happens, he will be able to get out of this slum. He lived in the ruins. There were times when he slept on a cold stone in the middle of the mountains. He worked hard for meager funds, and now a bright future awaited him. If he tries, he will definitely get to the top of the tower. The boy grabbed the sleeping bag and crawled into his tent. The elder came to him with some subordinate. He was surprised the elder had not come to him before. Why is he here? Baek Ho Min thought that it was because of the gold, so he immediately said that he did not steal anything. The elder only smiled in response. The elder asked Kang Jun Hu to check on him, and quickly, the man with the soyera asked him to show his hand. The boy was surprised. How do they know? The elder calmed him down and said that he did not want to scold him, but on the contrary wanted to congratulate him. The boy didn't understand even more, but then he added that he heard that Baek Ho Min caught Graver, and that put everything in its place. He caught him with Hung Sun, but decided to keep quiet and just say that he was lucky. The elder said that Graver had a fractured skull, which is why he died, and also thanked him for returning the gold coins that he had stolen. The boy did not understand what the elder was leading to. Something was wrong here. These gold coins are the initial currency that the Platinum Monarch wanted to introduce in the near future. They were scheduled to be issued next month, but the engraver had already managed to counterfeit them. Bak Homin did not understand why they were telling him this, because he was not much more than a slave here. The elder agreed. He would not have told him such a thing before. But there was one. But he had a copy of the new coin that was used for the seal on his hand. The guy was shocked. He didn't want it. The engraver specially engraved it on his hand. They must keep it a secret at all costs. The elder promised that if he told the truth he would guarantee a good job and salary. Is it true will he be able to earn? The elder continued. If Bak Homin had a seal then it was obvious that he gained some skill with it. He wanted to know what it was. The guy understood that showing his skill means telling about his weaknesses. Still, there was nothing to lose, so he told me that it was a level 4 memory. The elder doubted the boy's honesty. Back home in sat on his own and looked at them warily. The elder said that he would become a subordinate and was obliged to tell only the truth. So he asked again what skill he had. This was already starting to scare Back home in. They didn't believe him. The elder ordered to inject the truth serum. The boy shouted at the top of his lungs that he was telling the truth, but they didn't care. Kang Yun Hu injected him with a full syringe of blue liquid. The boy understood that something was clearly wrong here and he was irritated by this. After five minutes, there was not much going on, so Kang Yun Hu decided to bring the interrogation tools already. The substance knocked out Baek Ho Min and he fell to the floor. It was already extremely light, a white night. Silence fell around, which was interrupted by some voices. 
Bayek Ho Min started to regain consciousness. He was weak and the serum was numbing his mind. The boy tried to remember what had happened and came to the conclusion that the serum had unlocked him. He saw many different tools. It looks like he is going to be interrogated. Bayek Ho Min heard that there was a dialogue behind the tent door. According to the Graver's information, he really has a memory skill. It seems like a coincidence. They said that the White Knight could not appear by itself. It seems because of him, but they do not believe him. The Lord and the Guild members are going crazy. They need to find out what was planned to be done with the fake coins, even if they have to cut off their hands. Only God knew what would happen to him if he stayed there. The Elder might kill him. How would he get out of here? An idea came into his head that he could not think of. He has a skill. It definitely won't get worse if he tries. Skill memory. Chosen life dynamite. Will restraint experience. Imprisonment. Escape. Experience similarity. 21%. How is this possible? He again began to receive knowledge that was not there. He was able to identify one of the ingredients, low-grade scopolamine in the blue bottle. Also was able to identify another ingredient, mid-grade methamphetamine. He saw it for the first time, but he knew what it was. He took everything he needed. Back home in was mixing liquids. Knowledge he didn't possess appeared in his head, feeling like he was possessed. He concentrated on doing everything to save himself. An explosion was heard from the tent, which startled everyone around. The elder and Kang Yun Hu looked at each other. They saw smoke coming out of the tent. They were furious and looked inside. The smell was unbearable. There was no one in the tent. All that remained was acrid smoke. Kang Yun Hu stopped the elder. The gas seemed to be poisonous. Kang Yun Hu ran after the boy. He couldn't run far. They called a search party for Beck Homin and ran to find him. The elder made his way to the fourth floor to capture Graver. And now he has to capture Beck Homin as well. Ordinary people are only allowed to pass up to the fourth floor. If he escapes to the fifth floor, it's all over. It seems that Sarishina underestimated Beck Homin. He must have a reason to do so. Last night, the engraver carved Beck Homin's seal on his hand, and the entire tower was covered with white light. The constellations of which he had never seen appeared. He had to learn Beck Homin's seal, even if he had to kill him. The metal blade touched the elder's beard. Beck Homin held the elder's life in his hands. He was furious. He wanted to talk. The boy wasn't going to die here. Beck Homin didn't die inside the room. He drank the antidote from the gas ahead of time. If you dig a hole in the ground and cover your head with soil, you can survive for half an hour with an air pocket the size of your hand. The elder did not understand whether this boy had not yet left the truth serum or why he was telling him this. They didn't have much time, so Ho Ming tied him up and continued the conversation. Since he recently had a seal, he is going to train as an elder's subordinate. But now back Ho Min will get the salary he never got. Did he stay to get money? Didn't he think that life is more valuable? Back Ho Min was going to take everything that was his and to the fullest extent. The boy wanted the elder to list all his unpaid work. He was looking for money in the garbage. He had to rob street vendors. Even from time to time, he took strange drugs from the laboratory. When counted with all the other assignments, all of this totaled about 175 million won. How could he be so ungrateful? He should have been deprived of upbringing, blood, and food. However, the rotten oatmeal, the moldy beds in the basement, the rags collected from the garbage dump were not worth even hundreds of won. The boy came closer to the elder and moved almost close. He was not the only one who had to calculate the value of his life. Baek Min had no experience in killing, which is rare for someone like him who has lived on the streets for 20 years. It is incomprehensible that he would decide to kill someone. In the inner pocket was a silver coin that can be exchanged for money. Its value is about 10 million won. It wouldn't cover even 10% of the amount due. He planned to come back for the other part. He learned that from the man who raised him. It seems that Baek Ho Min has grown up. The elder promised him to repay the debt. The boy hit the elder in the temple with the blunt part of the knife. His ears rang. Finally, he cut down the elder. He was still tied to the tree, the rope barely holding on. If he leaves everything as it is, the elder will definitely come for him, but not alone. The spider will never leave him alone. If the boy wanted to stay alive, he had to kill him. An arrow whizzed past him. Someone had made a mistake. This stinger is very close to death. But he jumped back in time. People ran screaming from the bushes. They were hunting for Beck Ho Min. The boy gave a scratch. He will deal with the elder later. Now his life is at stake. Little by little, they caught up with him. There was no time to retreat. It was all or nothing. The leg was throbbing. It seems that the arrow still hit him. It completely swallowed the poison. The guy started nervously looking for something in his inner pocket. The attacker seemed to mock that if it was an antidote, it should have been applied to the wound, not drunk. The poison paralyzes the leg faster than the antidote works, and this time is enough to kill him before that. Back home in was nervous. Sweat was running down his face. He wanted to come up with something immediately. The attacker rushed at him. He could not cut his ankles because it would be difficult to drag him back, but cutting out the eye was not a bad option. Why the eye is quite a strange fetish. It was necessary to act decisively. Back home in hit the attacker in the stomach. He did not expect such a blow in force. The blow was so strong that it turned his insides out. 
He could not believe that the countermeasure had worked so quickly. Ho Ming looks down on him. He didn't say it was an antidote. Back Ho Min once again hit the boy in the cheek with a fist that could have knocked his teeth out. From the subconscious, the past lives were looking after him. He was better than it seemed. Pesha asked them if they thought that they had come a long way to becoming constellations. Would not be able to cope with a stupid hunter? Dynamite smiled. The stimulator she made did a good job, but this talent of Beck Ho Min allows you to use the power of the simulator at 100%. It was a good weight. His insight and adaptability even better than hers. Of course, this is all due to a good start. The main thing is not to let this sprout rot. They should put all their efforts to the maximum. Then everything will work out. There was a conversation in the tent. First Kang Kyung Hu released Moon Shin Sa, now Beck Ho Min. It was disappointing. They were angry. The hunter who attacked Beck Ho Min was dead. Both of his eyeballs were cut out. That hunter had a strange habit of collecting eyeballs. Now, ironically, he was left without them because he was trying to get back Ho Min's eyes. Back Ho Min was one of those people who always pay back debts, in full and to every penny. In any case, he was alone, without weapons or supplies. He wouldn't last long. The spider legs had to find him, dead or alive. When the spider legs found the hunter, Back Ho Min stripped him to the hilt, leaving him with nothing but his clothes. He will most likely be able to live there for about five days. Besides, there is a tower that leads to the fifth floor. It also takes about five days to walk to it. He will try to get down there so they can't chase him. On the fifth floor, it would be very difficult for them to catch him no matter what method. But they shouldn't let him escape. As soon as the elder removes the seal from back home in, he cuts it off. Finally, the boy came to his senses. He did not understand what was happening. Even if he reaches the city and hides in some workshop, the spiders will search for him until he dies. Right now, he won't be able to escape outside the tower. They won't be looking for him on the fifth floor. Does he have no other options but to go up there? The guy found a cave. It was almost invisible. So he decided to spend the night there. Back home in was wondering what that hunter had in the cave and found an oil lamp and a painless dagger. Unlike ordinary things made by people, so-called objects have special abilities. They are divided into categories. Ordinary, special, relics, and extraordinary. Even objects of the ordinary category are valued at a couple of million won. Among all the extraordinary objects, these are the objects that cannot be grasped even by the constellations. The boy hit the oil lamp with the blunt end of the knife. It was not so useless but rather fragile, you need to use it wisely. The painless kennel had the same paralyzing roar as the arrow. The painless dagger is used as a tranquilizer. It is needed exceptionally by doctors in the alchemy workshop. The boy discovered the goblin cover. He was surprised that he even had one. If he hangs it in front of the entrance, he will be able to sleep peacefully. The boy covered the cave with a blanket and decided to practice the skill before going to bed. Only in the morning did he finally fall asleep. Baik Min slept despite his circumstances. His leg is almost healed, thanks to the skill he used yesterday. The life chosen yesterday was called Dynamite. He did not know it, and he would not have thought that she was an alchemist, because she was not like them. He didn't understand why such a wonderful skill was considered to be level 4, but the benefit of the skill directly depends on the ingenuity of the wielder. Was he some kind of genius? From the subconsciousness of life, objections shouted fiercely. Surprisingly, the boy did not see any traces of hunters. Since the tower is like a house for them, he must be determined to survive. He had to use the skill to the fullest. He chose the dynamite life again. Biek Ho Min could tell from the first glance at the flower that it was poisonous, even though it was the first time he had seen it. Walking further, he saw a plant whose vine was used for medicinal purposes. He smelled a strange bug, and the knowledge in his head said that if he mixed this plant and the bug, he would get a healing potion. Another plant that happened in his path could become a good repellent of parasites if it was set on fire. By simply using his skill in this area, he could find useful ingredients as well as ingredients for salves to heal his wounds. This forest was simply a treasure for the manufacture of various medicines and potions. Everything will work out for him. If he continues in the same spirit, he will be able to survive on his own. Something crawled loudly and quickly on the ground. It was something like a beetle, but of huge size, its mouth with a large number of teeth could cause fear. The boy jumped out of the goblin cover and rushed at the bug with a dagger. He quickly and sharply hit him in the abdomen. The beetle curled up in a lair and tried to escape. It was spinning with great speed. Back home in kicked the bug to make it go astray. The beetle fell on its back in a panic and could no longer roll back onto its paws. It either screamed or squealed for help. Back home in used his dagger swing skill and hit the bug with all his might. He pierced the abdomen of the beetle with a dagger. Blood splattered around. It was a physical ability from the nameless. The boy was surprised that it was not dynamite but another life. Depending on the part of the body, the selected thread will also change. The hand at the place of the seal began to burn unbearably. During use, the seal heats up, and the big disadvantage was that he could not use it for more than a minute. Each skill had a price, and Beck Homin's side effect was overheating. 
He fried the beetle meat and it was beautiful. It looked unbearable, but it tasted no worse than shrimp. Does he need to enjoy this delicacy if his situation is not the best now? If his emotions change every time he uses a skill, then he feels humiliated in a literal sense. Well, in any case, he has no one else to rely on, which is quite an obvious skill, given that he is alone. But damn him, he just needs to survive to begin with. So he kept the Lawats alive with food. The boy was glad of his skill. Even at this level, it could be a useful defense. So it should have been more difficult to find monsters. Baek Homin took down a couple of monsters and he made no mistake. The defense was very helpful. Analyzing all the times that Baek Homin has used his skill, it is clear that he cannot use the memory skill all in a row. It requires a specific target to use correctly. If he has a strong obsession over something or some emotion, the effectiveness of the skill changes. The emotional state seems to affect the sync rate. The guy looked at the synchronization level and was surprised. The synchronization with Dynamite was 13.6%, with Nameless 12.1%, and with Adina 52.1%. Despite Beck Homin using Dynamite and Nameless's life more than anything else, the timing was low. But the life Adina that he chose once had five times more synchronization than other lives. When the seal was formed, the experience was 98% similar. Did that mean Adina was also changing the seal? In this case, what will happen if there are 100% similar experiences? They say that when the seal is formed, the constellations almost always bond with you, but he was not chosen by any constellations. According to the boy, everyone in the constellation looked down on him, saying that his seal was useless. Dynamite, Nameless, Edina. These are people he never met in his life, but they helped him. In any case, whatever constellation chose him, he was sure it would be better than now. He was much better with those people he had never seen. The girl was shaking. She was glad that he recognized her and proud that he was okay. But why them and not her? She also knew how to catch bugs and could catch a large locust. She crushed the subconscious, asked to call her too. If she continued, she would wake up other lives. She also caught bugs perfectly and even knew alchemy. The nameless one was silent, grasping shame in Spanish. What is she, a child? But the synchronization with her was the greatest which meant that her resemblance to Beck Ho Min was higher than the others. It turned out that they were the most similar, which is why he did so well. It did make sense, but she still held a grudge. She went back to clean up the mess she had made. She was still calm, compared to what happened to the Nameless. She was nervous. She finally got a chance to show off her skills, but she was only drafted once. They hoped that somehow they would be able to talk to Beck Ho Min. If it was possible, Edina would not be so depressed. Hearing these words, Edina immediately changed her face. She would definitely like that. They should figure out how to talk to Beck Homin, and thus improve communication with him. What did they mean by talk? The reason why the life of their child, Beck Homin, is in danger is due to insufficient communication. What a child, wasn't Adina single? The girl shouted that all past lives died empty. Nameless was confused, as if he'd caught a huge spoiler. Even if she wasn't married, she had countless growing Beck Homins. No one believed Adina that there was a possibility to contact Beck Homin. Thanks to the memory skill, they had the opportunity to influence him. If they manage to control the tower system in some way, they may be able to expand the boundaries of their capabilities. Of course, this had great risks and carries with it danger. No one could understand the train of thoughts of Adina. Was she not lying? If there is a way, what are they waiting for? You need to start. But they need an opportunity and a sufficient amount of time to change the seal. This will most likely lead not only to overheating of the seal, but most likely to at least melting its skin. But Ho Ming did not use the seal for more than a minute. It was true, they couldn't risk his hand. Edina reassured them they would manage to fix everything in time. Before that happened, the bigger problem was the willpower to do such a thing. It's not something you can simply ask for, but the tower has never worked as planned. They didn't know when the opportunity would come, so they should start preparing now. Edina began to make some symbols with crossed fingers. The whole sky immediately began to shake, and the sun hid behind the clouds. The guy was shocked. Could Edina interact with the fictional world like that? It was something that would only be given to her. It would be better not to disturb them. The sky shook harder and the signs in the sky began to change shape. It was only the third day since he escaped from the Elder, but what happened to his body was something. At this level, hunters are like defenseless children. Considering they've caught up to him, they're pretty fast. This was already his third fight. He was still hunting in parallel, so he was not at the peak of his strength. The tower that opened access to the fifth floor was already close. Since he already has enough things collected from hunters, he will be able to enjoy a real hunt. This is already the third death from spider legs. How is this possible? Back Ho Min, without normal equipment, has already killed three hunters. The Elder was clearly not happy with this version of the development of events. It seems that he crossed the line of saying, he was just lucky. The Elder was furious. Did Kang Gen Hu want to take him out? Didn't he tell them that something was wrong with Back Ho Min? 
Kang Yun hu asked the elder not to act like that in front of others. The old man was so furious that he began to threaten the hunter. Kang gen hu just calmly replied that if the sarcastic hunter was shown such disrespect, then the hierarchy in the tower would be destroyed. The hunter persuaded the spider that he should go down to the floors below, to which he received a negative reaction. The elder could not believe that some subordinate would tell him to get out. Kang Yun hu didn't tell anyone to get out. He simply told them that while he was there, their work was getting harder. Spider Paws will continue to search, but if he goes lower, everything only annoyed the elder. He would keep an eye on them. The hunter thanked for the trust and swore that he would bring his hand. Bai Ko Min was already there. The tower was very close. Now he could train before going to the fifth floor. Those parasites appearing here would raise his level significantly. And when Ivan reaches the fifth floor, there will be no way back. He heard that until you reach the tenth floor, it will not be possible to return. The boy looked at the portal and weighed all his thoughts. Bai Ko Min heard something nearby. There was someone nearby. Bai Ko Min's footprints were found here near the tower. They were sure that Bai Ko Min was already on the fifth floor. But there was nothing they could do about it. They will also go there. They will have two days to find him. Hunters will go to the fifth floor for the first time. Will they be of any use there? Once they get there, they won't return until they reach the tenth floor. Kang Gun Hu reassured them that he had been there many times before. And if they followed his instructions, everything would go well. His nerves were already giving out. He told them to shut their mouths and go ahead. The hunters gradually entered the portal, still hesitating whether they should go. There was no way back. The hunters would not get out of here so easily now. After controlling everyone to come in, Kong Yun Hu started to follow them in. He thought that Bak Ho Min might have left some tracks to trick them and taunt them. And should he have reasons for such actions? Were all the guesses true? Bak Ho Min followed the tracks of the parasites so he could somehow remain unnoticed. At his level, it's best not to face Kang Yun Hu just yet, and even now he'll die in a minute if he steps on the fifth floor. And if they are there, then he will be able to avoid fighting with them. They must have been busy looking for him on the fifth floor. Kang Yun Hu tracked down Baek Ho Min. Now he had almost no chance of getting out alive. Baek Ho Min was sure that he would do it. Kang Yun Hu started the conversation first. Probably he was wondering how he found him. But this is a standard action of beginners. To follow the tracks of parasites, it is a long way to escape and it is easy to track if you look closely. If the hunter was so smart, why didn't he catch Beck Ho Min earlier? Given the appearance of the attacker, he ran in circles like a headless rooster. The hunter did not understand what was wrong with the boy. If he had told the truth to the elder, then this could have been avoided. Kang Jun Hu wasn't usually that social. Was he trying to regain his strength? The hunter offered a deal. If the boy followed him, he would only triple his hand. Beck Ho Min wasn't going to listen to this delusion. He decided to use the skill. The hunter glared at Beck Ho Min. Why was he so stubborn? The boy has chosen the life of a warrior king. He must be finished before he has time to rest. Bai Ko Min rushed at the hunter quickly and decisively. There was no time to hesitate. He began to attack with all his might, but Kang Yun Hu looked like it didn't matter. The guy hit with his fist while the skill was working. You have to do everything possible and impossible. Did the boy hide his abilities? Because his skill would not have such power. He attacked immediately as soon as he used the skill. It was unlikely that he would be able to fight against Kang Yun Hu at his current level. If he simply gives his hand, the hunter will say that he is dead. However, Bak Ho Min did not retreat. He moved away from the attacker a little. He reached behind his jacket for something in his pocket. Did he think he was born yesterday? Bak Ho Min pulled out a bottle of something and swallowed its contents. He gathered his thoughts and waited for the content to come into action. Kang Yun Hu immediately understood that it was a stimulant. But where could he have gotten it from? The boy jumped on the hunter. Of course he found him among them who were chasing him. He received a low-level body enhancement. Physical abilities were slightly enhanced. The effect was five minutes. Baek Ho Min swung and hit the man, who tried to fight back with an axe. Baek Ho Min could lose his mind at any moment, but he has to hold on. He has to finish off at least this attacker. Kang Jen Hu began to get nervous, sweat running down his face. The man chopped off the blade with an axe. Now you won't scare anyone with it. They'll laugh at the most. Baek Ho Min did not expect this. Now he was even without a weapon against one of the strongest enemies. Kang Gen Hu punched the boy in the stomach, sending him flying several meters away. He fell to the ground, bruised badly. He didn't have the strength to get up and continue the fight, but he had to continue fighting, otherwise he would be dead. Even with the simulator, he was much weaker. His skill was already at the limit. Bayek Ho Min made Kang Gyun Hu try hard and even use a skill. If it continues like this, he will die. It was necessary to act urgently. Adina reprimanded the warrior king if he was being summoned, wasn't his purpose to kill the attacker. But he could not do anything. During the action of the stimulant, he lost control over his body. The only one chided Dynamite that she should have been warned about the side effects of the stimulant she created. But Bak Ho Min knew about the side effects of using it. 
He must have thought that if he couldn't defeat him with a skill, then the simulator would be a good option. At this rate, he really could die. Looks like it really is a 30-day curse. The seal will be ready for another call soon, but it's still cooling down. The only one was looking for a way out faster. They didn't have much time to wait for her to cool down. It seems that the only way out was to improve the seal. The time has come. Dynamite looked at her in surprise. Was she sure he was ready? The warrior king looked at them intently. They had no choice but to improve the seal or it would die. It looks like the warrior king will be summoned again. He should be ready for it no matter what. But he shouldn't have let the memory end. Even if he gets covered in a fried crust, he has to keep fighting. Is it really possible to start and end the process at their will? The only one had only been summoned once, so she didn't know the answer. But she managed to figure out that she had managed to outlast them as she restored the seal. This meant that they did not have Limiu in time. However, it all depended on the situation and how long they could endure the pain. She only wanted the Warrior King to do it at any cost. Kang Gyun Hu swung his axe at Baek Ho Min. It was already a path to death. But the boy managed to jump back. The assailant did not understand why he had attacked him before, as if he was ready to kill him with his bare hands. But now he is running away. Kang Gyun Hu scoffed as he continued to attack. Did he stop fighting because his sword broke? If he is a hunter, he must be ready for anything. Baek Ho Min ran with all his might. He was very sick. The boy felt very sick. He was exhausted and unable to resist. It seems the effect of the drug has worn off and Kang Gyun Hu was happy about it. He knew the process well. Now Baek Ho Min's body was completely incapacitated. The status alert said he was in severe lethargy. Now was not the time at all. He had to hold on. The boy hit the ground with his fist to test his ability to fight. A sharp pain pierced the arm. It was broken. Did he want to avoid lethargy? But how was he going to fight with a broken arm? The boy took his backpack off his shoulders, which confused Kang Gun Hu. Baek Ho Min's plan was to attach the backpack to his broken arm, which would serve as body armor. Was this all he was capable of? Kang Gen Hu was surprised. Didn't his seal have hidden power? It was too late to retreat. There was no choice but to fight. Kang Gyun Hu lunged at the boy with an axe. He swung with satisfaction. Baek Ho Min quickly started looking for something in his backpack. He took an oil lamp from his pocket and lit it. The blow fell on the lamp, the light of which was scattered from the axe directly into the attacker's eyes. The light cut the pupils and the pain became unbearable. Baek Ho Min ran as hard as he could while Kang Gyun Hu was writhing in pain. He grabbed the dagger, saying that he is a hunter. They need to be ready for anything, right? Did he light the oil lamp on purpose? He is cunning. The seal had already cooled. Now it was possible to return to a normal fight. The boy activated the memory skill and chose the life of the warrior king. Finally, Baek Ho Min began to approach fights in a different way. The feeling of a fight with a strong opponent permeated the body. While Kang Gun Hu was blinded by the bright light, Baek Ho Min rushed at him. He jumped on the man and attacked with a dagger. How did he learn such actions in such a short period of time? It is necessary to finish with him. Before the end of the limit, he will not be so lucky anymore. The heavens shook. The seals barely held on to the spaces of the subconscious. The only one begged Baek Ho Min. He still had some left. Even though it was risky. If it dissipates, you can't get it back. She knew all this and took it into account but did not retreat. Kang Gen Hu was scared. It was like a simple opponent, but he could defeat him. But unfortunately his sight returned. He missed his chance. Baek Ho Min's body couldn't keep up with the Warrior King's actions, and time was already running out. The boy was nervous. If the effect of the seal ended, he would not be able to resist anymore. We don't rub our hands in hell. We will have to cancel the effect of the skill. It's the end. If he cancels the skill, they won't do anything. Let him be forgiven by the one. Will it all end like this? No, you have to keep fighting. Baek Ho Min swung his dagger, but it was aimed at himself. He poked his hand with a dagger so as not to feel the pain of the seal. This action surprised the Warrior King. He did not expect this. Dinate fell into a stupor. He put his hand down to stifle the pain. It was risky. She was the only one smiling. That was the way out. She was pleased. A truly courageous act. She will continue to the end. Now only go. Kang Gyun Hu was surprised and confused. Had his roof gone? Baek Ho Min rushed at him and shouted angrily. The man was fed up with this. He was angry and swung the axe again. But he didn't hit. Baek Ho Min demolished him. Kang Gyun Hu cried out in pain. He couldn't give in to such a boy. Baek Ho Min realized what happened. Did he kill him? The dagger was up to the hilt inside Kang Gyun Hu. Blood had recolored the sheath. No, he failed the elder after so many twisted hunters and monsters did he die from such a snort. The man fell to the ground with a noise from a critical wound. Kang Gyun Hu was dead. His pupils rolled back. The strongest opponent at the moment was defeated. Blood flowed from his mouth. He injured some important internal organ. Baek Ho Min's conscience began to gnaw. Did he kill the one he saw almost every day in the camp? He fell either from impotence or from a gnawing conscience. In addition to the fact that the hand was burning from the side effect of the seal, it was also bleeding. No, it's not his fault. They tried to kill him. Otherwise, Baek Ho Min would be lying in his place. 
He was just trying to survive. He's not to blame. Tears came to his eyes. Bayek Ho Min begged him to at least tell him that he was not guilty. The young man was startled by a strange sound, and his thoughts immediately disappeared. A notification appeared that Swer Adina liked him. She did it. How is that possible? In their entire history, this is their first connection with Bayek Ho Min. It's amazing that they managed to improve the system itself, and not just improve the seal. It was not magic, but a real miracle. Dynamite praised the one. Her power was impressive. She can even rule the heavens. Can they give him a like like this? No, there is no sincerity in their swearing. They should put all their energy into it. Constellation sent him abuse. Are they praising him? This is the power that Bek Ho Min almost gave his hand for. And also the Grand Enchantress almost disappeared. The Warrior King was expecting too much. He thought there would be a working way to contact him. Dynamite and Adina urged the Warrior King to abuse Bek Ho Min as well. If they like it so much, then this is most likely a great achievement. They continued to send him likes. But Bek Ho Min already understood what they liked. He asked to stop. This embarrassed him quite a lot. Insults kept coming and coming. Considering that even they and Suzeria he had never heard of, he was very pleased with so many likes. It's amazing that all of Beck Homan's memory has been the constellations. And if they're sending him smacks at a time like this, does that mean they're watching him? The boy thought, it seems that they are really watching, especially now he entered the world of hunters. He needs to be brave. There's still a long way to go. Constellation? If they curse him, does that mean he is doing well? Beck Homan wanted to be told something else. They've started cussing again. Can they really only cuss? But it was enough for him, so better than nothing. His hand still hurt. His wrist was burning from using the seal for so long, he even stuck a dagger in his hand. Bayek Ho Min asked Dynamite to tell him how to make a medicine for regeneration. He activated the skill. He created a potion that was already better than before. He finally made a mid-range medicine. Dynamite was incredible. He thanked her. Dynamite and Edina cursed again. Bayek Ho Min noticed that Edina cursed all his actions. At first, he thought that it was impossible for him to connect with the constellations. But it's amazing that he is connected with such cool constellations. They even send him insults all the time. He hoped that he would be able to meet them in the future. This day was quite difficult, but he finally woke up. Back home Min was surprised that it was already morning, as if he hadn't slept. The pain in the boy's wrist is almost gone. It was all thanks to the dynamite medicine. He felt great. They insult him again. It scared him. Isn't Suziri awake? He saw the flowers and decided to collect some. It might be needed for the dynamite skill. And she sent him a like for it, which he liked very much. Bayek Ho Min decided that he couldn't hurt to hunt a little more, to which he started getting scolded again. This pissed him off. Let them stop sending him insults for any reason. The guy tried to calm down. The insults stopped coming. Let if the answer to the question is, yes, then they will send him a like. If not, then they will not send anything. He asked if it was clear to them. In response, Adina gave him a like. He was satisfied. Are they really constellation? because he has never heard of their names. Maybe they are from another tower. Nothing came in response. It seems that he was mistaken, and they are from this tower. But if he has not heard anything about them, it means that they are not very famous. Even if about half of the constellations disappeared during the Civil War, the constellations are absolute creatures. Is it possible for these three constellations to remain unknown? The boy did not understand what was happening. Subconsciously, the Warrior King and Dynamite were asking the Grand Enchantress to improve the system was that all she was capable of. Dynamite said that it would be good if they could transmit more information, and one said that if they made it more efficient, they would be noticed by the tower. It's one thing if they couldn't communicate with him at all, but that's just confusing because it's pretty blurry. She could at least make a dislike button or something like unsatisfactory or something like, you can't do that. Did no one realize that she was risking her life for this? Were they very smart or something? Let them enjoy at least a curse. With this method, his supply of questions was limited. He wanted to ask something later. If you think about it like that, the synchronization rate with the Warrior King has increased a lot. He decided to check, and surprisingly, it was 91.7%, although it was no more than 20% before. Was the battle with Kang Gyun Hoon really that meaningful to him? It turns out that critical situations significantly increase the percentage of synchronization with one or another life. Or was it due to murder? The guy heard strange sounds and looked around. What was it all about? He began to sneak towards the sound. He saw that it was the Elder's Hunters. One of the hunters got entangled in a web and a huge spider climbed on him. It was at too low a level. There shouldn't be any spiders here. Is it a mutant? The spider bit the body of the hunter, who screamed either in pain or in terror. The spider was much bigger than him. It was dangerous. Bek Ho Min was breaking out in a cold sweat. How could he even appear there? If a mutant spider appeared, it meant that something was wrong. It seems that Dynamite took part in the subjugation operation. She remembered that there were 1.4 billion. The Warrior King spoke about the possibility of obtaining the mutated spider core, as it was in the Alchemist Guild, 
he remembered that the guildmaster was selling it for 1.1 billion won. The only thing that confirmed his words was that, this was the boss of this floor. He was called the Black Forester. It would be almost impossible for him to defeat him now. Back home in was scared, with his level, could he beat him, or should he do it at all, could he just run away? However, it is not yet the boss. Considering its size, it was still very young. Its size will definitely increase several dozen times. Who would have thought that he would be able to take over the 8th floor in a month and become the floor boss, closing off the supply routes from the upper floors? However, they were extremely lucky to meet him when they could have killed him. They started insulting him. Beg Homin didn't understand why they were doing it at such a time. Were they trying to tell him that he should fight him? He used the oil lamp and the painless dagger in the fight with Kong Yun Hoon. But such tricks are unlikely to work on this spider. But Suziri continued to be insulted. He understood their hint. They told him that he had to fight, but he wanted to watch him a little longer. Very quickly, something like pincers flew into his face, and Beck Homin fell into a stupor. The spider attacked him first. The boy ran away, saving his life. It seems that there was no time for observation. Beck Homin did not understand when the spider managed to see him. It seems he had no choice left. He had to fight. The boy activated the skill and chose the life of the warrior king. Evidence of strong enemies, spiders, and a net. The similarity of their experience was 34%. The increase in the synchronization rate was entirely dependent on the similarity of experience. The spider attacked. The boy saw where it would hit next. He repulsed the attack. It seems that the warrior king already had experience fighting such spiders. The spider snarled and continued to attack back home in, his eyes glistening with joy at his new prey. As the spider continued to attack, the boy slipped under it and prepared to attack. He barely had time. One of the paws landed next to him. Bak Homin stabbed the spider's body with a dagger. He pierced the shell completely. The spider screamed with its last breath and blood flowed from it. The guy ran away so that the body wouldn't fall on him. Finally, everything he managed. The body fell to the ground with a huge noise. Bak Homin watched it. He was afraid that it would come back to life. It was amazing. It was as if he immediately knew all his weak points and killed him himself. As wonderful as it was that he knew how to defeat a mutant that he had seen for the first time in his life, you are not kidding, Constellation. Here the spider appeared again, but this one was several times larger than the previous one. Baek Homin was confused. Was there another one but bigger? The spider released slime on the boy. It completely covered his body. The guy was scared, but it was already too late. It seems he was unlucky this time. He woke up in the evening in a mountain very similar to the one he was in before. Baek Homin was entangled in a cocoon. He had no choice but to play dead and let himself be caught. But luckily, the spider immediately ran to hunt further, so he has an opportunity to get out of here. The boy activated the skill and burned the walls of the cocoon with the heat of the seal. It fell down. There was a bunch of open cocoons. Looks like a pretty big brood somewhere around here. But he didn't see any other spiders here. Beck Homan was glad that he could use the flaw in the seal, the overheating, to use it to his advantage. It was amazing that there were no mutants around. All the eggs around were empty. The warrior king said that they just have a solitary lifestyle. They devour each other, and the last survivor becomes the floor boss. The would-be boss devoured their relatives for power, but it seems there was one who overcame her instincts and ran away, and it seems she was the one who killed Baek Ho Min. Looks like now he will have to kill the real boss of this floor. Adina asked Baek Ho Min to check the sink rate. The only things he could use to fight were spider legs and sticks. It would be problematic if he came back. He remembered that the sink rate was supposed to increase after he killed that spider. Bak Ho Min checked the synchronization rate with the Warrior King, and it was 100.7%. But what changes when the synchronization level increases? The window appeared again, but this time the user could choose a reward for increasing the synchronization rate. It's all from the Warrior King, and he has to choose a piece of equipment, a skill, a stat, or a memory. The choice was great, but what should he choose so as not to make a mistake? The Warrior King believed that he needed the characteristics because the moment would come when he would not survive with only improvisation. Dynamite, in turn, believed that he should choose a skill, because it was not so dangerous on the lower floors. But there were many hired workers and hunters hired by the elder in the city. However, Edina believed that memory should be chosen. The only one insisted on memory, because for this he just needs to train, and he can improve his seal if he earns money. But he would not get memory from anywhere. There was something in the words of the great sorceress, it seems that she is right. Their memory had information from the future that might be needed. Their memories can improve memory skills. The warrior king wondered what would happen if Beck Homin chose the equipment, but the one said that only a complete telepen would be foolishness. From time immemorial, Adina believed that weapons were only for bragging rights, that what was really important was training and a strong spirit, and the seal was covered with gold. It is true, but it was quite bold to reject such a choice of Beck Homin. This reincarnation of Beck Homin was similar to the one 
so she believed that he would definitely choose the memory skill. Beck Homin thought that the choice was obvious, and only a fool wouldn't choose it. He pressed the gear. Subconsciously, no one was happy about it, and you can't do anything anymore. The only one angrily shouted, How could he do such a thing? It was that stupidity. Equipment is a favorite choice of hunters. Those who became constellations receive trials from the tower. And if they pass it, they get a unique weapon. The items issued by the tower itself had excellent quality, and of course different abilities. Since it can be obtained only after the death of Star, or by inheritance that is, it is priceless. Therefore it was obvious to Bag Homin that it was necessary to choose equipment, especially since he was in need of weapons. The guy was already looking forward to some beautiful weapon. But a window appeared where the Warrior King was second level, and had a synchronization of 0.7%. It was just a level up. The sync rate was back to zero. Maybe he should use the skill for some effect. He noticed that Suziri was silent after his choice. He began to doubt whether he had done the right thing. The only one was angry. No, Bak Ho Min was not like her, because he would not have chosen the stupidest thing. Everyone tried to calm her down somehow. Among all the cracked cocoons, he saw his sword. The spider seemed to spit him out, which pleased Bak Ho Min quite a bit. He heard strange sounds behind him. It seems that he is not alone. Looking into the room, he was afraid of a spider there. It was shedding. Is this a mutant? He didn't go hunting. He molted and left him for a snack, so that after that he would eat him. This was his chance. He had to kill him before he finished molting. The guy rushed at him and attacked him with all his might. But there was not a single scratch on the spider. It seems that it did not have enough strength. Unfortunately, he was too late. The spider became harder, which meant that he had finished molting. Bayek Homin struck his first blow, but was unable to penetrate the durable chitinous shell. This meant only one thing. The spider had already finished molting and became much harder than before. After the guy's unsuccessful attack, the monster threw him to the ground. Ho Ming decided to repeat the attack, but this time at the enemy's weaker point. He quickly closed the distance and struck the spider's belly. He again failed to achieve the desired result. The monster's weak point turned out to be stronger than that of his former enemy. The monster decided to strike back and the guy prepared to defend himself. He managed to avoid being dangerously wounded by the might of a huge spider, but in return, he lost his weapon. The blade of the dagger was destroyed. It was the only weapon in his hands. He had to dodge the spider's attacks and run, as he had no options left to defend and attack. In addition, the seal had already begun to burn, which meant that Beck only had 30 seconds left to use the constellation memory to destroy the enemy. Having looked around, he could not find a single shelter from the huge monster. While running away, the guy got into a dead end. The monster was already approaching. The terrifying monster was ready to deal a decisive blow to the defenseless man. At that moment, the guy was in a panic. He did not understand where the divine weapon that he had chosen earlier was. Within a moment, the tower announced the activation of the Martial King's weapon. It was a huge flaming sword from the Master of Ten Thousand Swords. New weapons of excellent quality turned out to be the only salvation at such a desperate moment. Gathering all his determination together, Huo Ming launched a furious strike with his skill-enhanced broken blade. He bet his life on this blow and the result turned out to be incredible. The guy managed to cut a huge spider in half, which he had not been able to wound before. Such an unexpected outcome of the blow was unclear to the participant in the furious battle. Trying to catch his breath, he thought about how this was possible. The fire of his blade began to subside. He realized that thanks to this gift of the constellations, he managed to escape. Even though he only struck once, the blade's edge began to dissipate. Bayek Ho Min could not believe that his artifact had disappeared, and instead of it, he was again holding a broken blade in his hands. At the same moment, Constellation One began to furiously demonstrate his joy. He was glad that the guy was able to raise the level, despite the fact that his colleagues stood aside worriedly, believing that he barely managed to survive. The Martial King noted that of all his weapons, the Ten Thousand Swordmaster is only useful when the user has fully honed the proficiency of all weapons. This ability is excellent in that it can unleash the full potential of absolutely any weapon, but it is not suitable for the current Bak Ho Min because he is still unable to give this weapon a natural shape. So his weapon will break every time until he gets the hang of it. But despite this, if he had chosen another gift, then he would already be dead from the clutches of a huge predator. The constellations recognized that in some way their descendant was lucky and miraculously again overcame mortal danger. They had no choice but to rely on the ingenuity of the weak guy, which gives them hope of salvation. Meanwhile, Bak Ho Min realized that no matter how hard he tried, the Master of Ten Swords would not appear, because his blade had already been completely destroyed. Still, he did not consider this ability useless because thanks to its power he managed to escape. The huge monster was significantly superior to the guy in all respects, and he would not have been able to cope without this weapon of the warlike king. Bak Ho Min decided to search the body of the destroyed spider to find useful prey. He managed to find a small trophy, which he began to sincerely rejoice at, 
because he had never been able to get such an item before. It was gold. It had been called by many things since the tower appeared, but its purpose had always been to change the seal. Along with the destruction of the whole world, gold mining also stopped. Accordingly, there is not so much of it left. Now it appears only in one place, in the parasites that are in the tower. Having destroyed such a huge spider, Beck hoped that he would be able to get more gold, but still this was not a problem, because he managed to survive and make good money. Finding the gold himself was not a problem, but to get the maximum benefit from the rest of the mining, he turned to Dynamite's memory. Not all of the loot was something he could use, so he had to choose something that would actually help him level up quickly. Thanks to the memory of his previous life, he managed to find something good. It was a rare shadow kidney stone, also known as a core stone. The item in his hands was incredibly valuable. It was worth around 400 million won on the market. It was the first time in his life that he held such a precious object, so he could not hide his joy. The guy thanked the dynamite constellation for his help and promised that he would pray to him absolutely every night. Leaving the cave, he was overwhelmed with emotions because in his entire life he had not been able to earn even close to what he was able to get in this cave on the lower floor of the tower. Remembering that the elder had the right to all the spoils of these floors, he was filled with anger, realizing that the old man was stealing even more than he had previously realized. At that moment, he decided that instead of continuing to climb the tower, it would be better to sell this item and earn some money to improve his equipment. He understood that in his current form, he could safely avoid meeting the elder's hounds without fear of his power. Moreover, Beck decided that it would be a good idea to go to him and settle all the matters that were preventing him from living. The guy was able to get to the city without any special incidents. He was very happy when he finally arrived at his destination. He couldn't even imagine that it would take him two weeks to travel, when it usually takes three days. The fact is that the tower has many elevators leading to the lower and upper floors. Under normal conditions, you can simply use it to descend, which will take three days from the fourth to the third floor. But when the guy wanted to use them, he found out that at the same time, they all suddenly failed. Because of this, he had to walk on foot to a place where he could not hide from the eyes of the elder. Baek Homin tried to think positively. It would be much easier for him if the elder had already given up trying to catch him. Walking through the streets of the city, the guy began to notice a pattern that had not existed before. Around, he saw a huge number of hunters, before they were all busy hunting, but now they were walking around the city tensely. Continuing to walk down the street, he noticed a young man begging for alms. Seeing him, the guy remembered that he also begged for money at that age. When he approached the poor fellow, he thought that it would be nice to give him a copper coin, but in response, the young man suddenly became wary. He thought that there was some homeless person in front of him, so he angrily declared that this was his territory, and he would not allow anyone to take his place. The young man's impudent speech made the traveler a little angry. The beggar's behavior reminded him of the bitter past when he behaved the same way. If this guy was tied to a certain territory, this meant only one thing. Most likely he was working for the elder. In this case, a beggar already seemed like a good option for getting information about the elder's plans for money. Money in the hands of the traveler did its job. Back home in learned about the elder's goal and went on to meet an old acquaintance. On the street, he managed to catch Hyun Su, the guy with whom he and he tried to catch the engraver before Bak Ho Min was forced to escape from their camp. In order not to arouse suspicion, the cunning Ho Min began a friendly conversation and began to inquire about how his old friend was doing. He understood that the elder most likely placed his only friend in such a place to catch him. Hyun Su was very excited and asked to find a more secluded place to continue the conversation. But Bek suddenly refused and asked him to pretend that they were friends. Otherwise, it would ruin the situation and cause unnecessary suspicion. He warned his only friend that if they left unexpectedly, the boy who was begging nearby would tell the elder that they had teamed up. First of all, Beck asked why there were so many hunters on the first floor. The friend replied that for security reasons, the Platinum Monarch had blocked all the elevators. The Platinum Monarch is the Banshee Master of Soul, so her power is like royalty. Nothing prevents her from controlling the entrances and exits in the tower. Beck began to be indignant at the inappropriate behavior of the ruler. But Hyunsu replied that most likely it was due to the appearance of dangerous parasites on the lower floors. In addition, rumors spread among people that a terrifying beast had also appeared on the 14th floor, which was not only dangerous, but also brought misfortune. It was obvious that this was just an excuse, because during the entire trip the guy did not see a single dangerous monster. He still had questions for his only friend, so he furiously asked why he had joined the ranks of those who were persecuting him. The guy replied that he simply had no other choice. In his defense, he put his hand on his heart and stated that when Beck left the camp, he was caught and tortured, after which he heard that his friend disfigured the face of one of the elder's fighters before escaping. He continued the list of those who suffered at the hands of his comrade. Beck did not want to listen to him to the end. 
and he himself added that Kang gen Hu was the last victim who died in the battle with him. Hearing about the death, Hyun Su was simply shocked, because all he had heard was that this incredible fighter simply disappeared. He couldn't understand what terrifying skill his friend had acquired. The guy did not answer this question that worried him. Instead, he continued his speech and said that after everything he had to go through, he realized that the only way out was to break the chain that connected him with the Elder. With horror in his eyes, Hong Su assumed that his friend had gone crazy and decided to kill the Elder. Baek Ho Min replied that this is the only option that will solve all their problems once and for all. But Hong Su did not agree with his words at all. He excitedly replied that in this case the spider group would not sit still, because the Elder was one of his so-called spider legs. He warned his mad friend that by killing the Elder, he would have to face the rest of the founders of his organization. If he manages to attract a lot of attention with his actions, then he will have to face the godless paladins. After destroying them, he will have to face the Platinum Monarch, whose power is undeniable in the Soul Tower. After his comrade's words that he had no other choice, Hyun Su nervously grabbed his head. He understood that Beck was serious about such a war, in which he hardly had a chance of emerging victorious. To avoid such a tragedy, because of which he himself would suffer, the guy proposed an idea that he considered a lesser evil compared to killing an elder. He informed him that he knew about the location of the elder's safe. The safe was located in the old man's office, in a secret room behind his closet. Hyun Su heard that he keeps a ledger with his loans there, as well as a gold bar. He was sure that the rumors did not lie, since he once entered that room and was convinced of this himself. Baek Ho Min couldn't believe that his frightened comrade suddenly decided to do something so risky. Looking at his hand, the guy replied that this was the only option for him to receive the long-awaited seal. The traveler still could not believe that his comrade had not told about this earlier. But in his defense, Hyun Su said that if he had shared such information, then both of them would already be dead. Only after learning that Beck was able to defeat Kang Gen Hu did he have hope that his plan would work. He was sure that the Elder had many enemies, so if he was left without a single penny, then someone would take revenge on him for his insults. Beck was still not sure that this plan could be implemented. But Hyun Su replied that it would probably be easier than dealing with the consequences after killing an Elder. Discussing this option for resolving all problems, Baek Ho Min understood that, being a hunter, he would need to go down to the city every week to replenish resources, so he would not be able to avoid the attention of the spider group if he did kill the Elder. He didn't want to be on the run forever, so he decided it would be best if he could just cut ties with the Elder. Nevertheless, he decided to listen to his friend's proposal and asked him to tell him in more detail about the plan. Hyun Su began his story by mentioning the fact that there are too many hunters concentrated on the streets. This was due to the Platinum Monarch's decision to block all the elevators. Because of this, people were on edge, and a huge number of complaints began to come from hunters. But the guy believed that something was wrong here, because a more reasonable option was to send hunters to kill the parasites that threatened their settlement. Beck didn't understand what his comrade was getting at, so he asked him to come closer to the point. Hyun Su replied that the real reason is that the Platinum Monarch does not want to lose sight of one person. The traveler excitedly asked who he was talking about. Hyun Su stated that the source of the problem was the engraver they were pursuing, because he was associated with the introduction of a new currency that was discussed in the government. As it turns out, he was the one who stole the new currency design, causing concerns about coin counterfeiting. The Elder tried to ransom them while the Platinum Monarch tried to find the engraver at any cost, even closing the entire tower. Coin design was the main issue in this issue. What Buck was most excited about was that his seal looked the same as the coin, which was sure to get him noticed. Hyun Su suggested using this knowledge to frame the Elder. He knew that the angry Platinum Monarch would be searching the entire city, so it was a good idea to take advantage of this situation. Baek Ho Min still didn't understand how exactly his friend was going to force the leader of the Godless Paladins to act. In response to this question, the guy reached into the inner pocket of his jacket. He took out a coin with a new design, and Beck reacted violently to its appearance, saying that he should not have taken it. But in his defense, Hyun Su said that thanks to this they had a chance of salvation. As it turned out, he had long been planning to carry out such a cunning revenge, but was afraid to try without support. His comrade's determination seemed suspicious, but his plan was better than what Beck could come up with. Hyun Su wanted to know if his only friend was willing to take the risk to gain freedom. At that moment, the guy was worried that it might get out of control, but he simply had no other choice but to try. Still, he was confident that if the Platinum Monarch began to act, then the Spider Faction and the Elder would forget about him as something less important. Gathering all his determination, Baek Ho Min firmly replied that he was in business. The guys were going to use the power of the Platinum Monarch to achieve their goals. Hyun Su was confident that when rumors spread around the city that the design of the new currency had appeared in the city, the Platinum Monarch would appear here on the same day. As he left, 
he said that he would bring his friend up to date a little later. They made an appointment at the building at 7 o'clock, after which Beck asked his friend to be careful so that he would not attract the attention of the elder's spies. Hyun Su promised that he would be careful, after which he asked his friend to at least tell him what level of skill he had acquired. Beck admitted that it was a level 4 skill and then called it useless. Hearing this, Hyun thought that his friend simply did not want to tell his secret, because with such skill there was no way he could kill Kang gen -hoo. After that, they said goodbye and the traveler's only friend went to the elder's camp. The idea of getting the old man's property in exchange for his peace of mind was extremely risky, so the guy asked the opinions of the constellations. In response, only the one supported the guy, but he was happy with that too, because at least someone paid attention to his crazy idea. Then the guy went to the exit from the tower. He had been inside for several months and had already forgotten what the outside world looked like. To prepare and implement the plan, he needed to return to his hometown. First of all, he went to an area known for being a drug den. He had to wear a mask so as not to attract attention from the hunters who work for the Elder. He believed that in this place it was much easier to purchase everything necessary than at the bases of public guilds. The store clerk was surprised that the guy came to him to sell, instead of contacting the guilds. The man was worried that Beck had brought something illegal, but the guy assured that everything was clean and it was worth looking at the goods first. When he got acquainted with the goods that the traveler brought, he admitted that among them there were really good items. After this, Ho Ming stated that he was no longer interested in money, but in exchanging things of equal value. The items were in good condition so the seller offered him 8,000 won. This amount was more than Beck expected, so he decided that prices had increased due to the fact that the Platinum Monarch closed the elevators that the hunters used to move around. He answered the seller that he agreed with this price, after which he asked to show him the store's assortment, which was available for exchange. He was most interested in knives and was willing to see everything that was available. When the first good-looking object fell into his hands, he did not know exactly how to evaluate it, but the warlike king helped him with his positive reaction. In front of the seller, Beck began to sort the items and say something under his breath. The man was surprised at how experienced this young guy turned out to be. Back Ho Min divided all the blades into two categories and the seller thought that he was able to distinguish the best blades from the worst. He was most interested in the blatant knife. It was stated that this rare item emits a sharp scream with every swing. Although the knife was of a rare clan, the seller did not value it much because no one buys this item. In response, he noted that the young man had good taste, after which he stated that he was ready to exchange it for the items that the guy brought with him. The blatant knife was just a funny object for the guy after which he inquired about the cost of the other blades that were to his left. The seller could not believe that they were talking about the blades to the left of the young man, and not about the ones he had thought about before. As it turned out, I was glad that the guy wanted to buy all the junk that he was ashamed to even put a price on. He decided to take advantage of the moment, and said that he was ready to sell them all for 3,001. The guy was pleased. He replied that in this case he would take everything and take the rest of the money in cash. His words put the seller in an awkward position. The man thought that he should save money, because it was not known when the elevators would start working again, and his sales would resume. From such stress he cheered up and shouted that he was ready to sell the outrageous knife and the rest of the blades for a total of 8,001. The guy with a sly smile thought that the seller had fallen for his cunning plan, and the deal would go as he had planned. Back home in received what he wanted in exchange for junk he didn't need. Moreover, he was even able to bargain for a jacket as a gift. While he was finishing his business in the city, the time approached 7 in the evening. The constellations were ready to help him at any moment. He went to the meeting place at a multi-story building that was located nearby. He never managed to see his comrades, so the guy went on his own. Carefully moving along the floors of the elder's office, he was unable to see a single hunter, so he reached the old man's office without any problems. When he went inside, he saw that a dozen mercenaries were already waiting for him. Moreover, the elder was also there. In the center sat tied and beaten Hyun Su. He asked in despair why Ho Min came here alone. Sighing, Beck Ho Min replied that he felt that everything would happen exactly like this, after which he admitted that he hoped to the last that his only friend would not betray him. There was surprise on his friend's face and he asked what he was talking about. Bayek replied that if Hyun Su is truly a traitor, then he will also not escape death from his blade. Explaining his words, he said that if he could rob the elders now and escape before Hyun Su framed him, then he would have no reason to kill. But since they were in cahoots from the very beginning, his fate was sealed. The guy was infuriated by his friend's mistrust. He did not expect that Beck could be so insightful. An elder joined their dialogue. The gray-haired man said that he thought that Hyun Su would be useful at least as a hostage. But despite this, his only friend did not believe in such a stupid trick, although he came to the office. Hearing this, Beck realized that he had managed to bring them to light, 
so it was obvious that Hyun Soo deliberately allowed himself to be beaten so as not to arouse any suspicion. On the other hand, he treated this with understanding, because for his friend it was the only way to survive, which is why it was not worth holding a grudge against him. The city was filled with murderers. Beck could not survive in such conditions without getting his own hands dirty. The elder then said that he is a kind person, and therefore gives a chance to survive to those who find themselves in such a hopeless situation. He stated that he was giving the guy the opportunity to become a real hunter with full security, if he agreed to work for him for 20 years. In response, Huo Ming reached into his pocket and said that the old man had misunderstood the situation. He explained that stealing valuables from the elder's safe was just an alternative due to the fact that he did not want to kill his only friend. Pointing the blade at his enemy, he declared that if he had to kill Hyun Su with his own hands, then the elder would be next, and his comrades from the spider group would also not be able to avoid such a pitiful fate. There was a cold confidence in his eyes. He was ready to destroy everyone in his path, even the godless paladins and the platinum monarch, if they interfered with him. The young man's confident words amused the experienced hunters. They began to laugh, saying that the newcomer simply did not know the limits of his capabilities and was arrogant because he was able to defeat several of the elder's fighters. Having seen the elder's enemy with their own eyes, the hunters could not believe that the most experienced of their comrades could fall at the hands of such a pathetic hunter. Although their speech was very impudent, the old man noticed the excitement among his subordinates. He was worried that their enemy had become a dangerous killer within half a month. In response to the self-confident words of the hunters, Beck said that he would kill anyone who pointed a knife at him, based on his experience. The old man thought that having such a numerical superiority, they could not give in to some inexperienced kid. Relying on the strength of his own subordinates, he ordered the guys to kill the enemy and bring his hand with a strange seal. A crowd of furious fighters rushed to the attack. Bak Ho Min remained calm and in response he activated his skill. The Master of Ten Thousand Swords strengthened and realized the full power of the blade. Within a moment the blade began to collapse. A loud sound began to spread throughout the Elder's office, causing the fighters to scream in pain and cover their ears. As expected, the blatant blade became unusable after its first use. Despite this, he has already made quite a few amendments to the outcome of this unfair battle. After a sudden greeting attack, the guy unzipped his jacket to gain quick access to the rest of the blades. From that moment, the real battle began. In addition to the fact that most of the fighters have lost their acute hearing, they now need to shout to hear each other. The power of the blade was able to destroy all the lamps that were inside the office with a sound wave. The elder was alarmed. He shouted to his deaf charges to find a lantern and somehow return the light. At that moment, they thought that Beck Ho Min decided to run away, but the guy used his printing skill and chose the experience of living as a warrior king. With such an incredible constellation nearby, he began to destroy enemies that outnumbered him. The first guy who fell under his blade was not ready for the attack. The first blood was shed. The bald hunter standing next to him tried to strike back with his heavy axe, but Beck turned out to be much faster and dodged his attack, leaving the enemy without an arm in one movement. He ended the attack with a blow of the blade, after which two more fighters who were nearby furiously rushed to the attack. The guy did not have time to return the blades with which he destroyed previous enemies, so he took out new knives. In an instant, under the cover of darkness, he dealt with the first of the attackers. After that, he found himself behind the second hunter and plunged a knife into his neck. Huo Ming felt a noticeable result from his training. His body began to respond to the feelings of the martial king. Now he could detect the fear of his enemies without even seeing them. The panicked hunters continued to rush at the lone warrior. The next attack was blocked by the guy's armor. After this, he instantly got rid of his previously self-confident enemy. While everyone was panicking and trying to group up and repel the enemy, one of the hunters finally found a source of light and informed his comrades about it. But he began to rejoice too early, and as soon as he lit the lamp, a moment later, Beck Ho Min appeared in front of him. The guy instantly destroyed the poor fellow with the light source, after which he switched to the rest of the hunters who ran towards him. One of the last fighters shouted to the team that they should use their skills on the enemy. After his words, Beck rushed to the attack. Being in complete darkness, he was able to easily avoid the enemy attack. This hunter turned out to be the last of those whom the elder brought with him. The wounded man who fell to the floor said that Beck was the devil who came down from the tower. The guy with a cold look replied that the real devils are those who, after receiving mediocre skills, begin to steal and kill the defenseless. After these words, the guy heard the door to this office slam shut on the other side. Someone was in a hurry to leave the battlefield right during the battle, and most likely it was an old man who did not allow the young hunter to live in peace. Slowly getting closer to the enemies, the guy turned to the elder and Hyun Su, saying that they no longer had a chance to escape. Watching this spectacle, the one said with an intense gaze that this was a record. The martial king assumed that one of the constellations was referring to the record of killing people in such a short period of time. But as it turned out, 
The one wanted to say that this is a record for the number of moments where Beck Ho Min could die because he would end up in two risky situations. It was indeed difficult to observe his actions. Dynamite noted that it was foolhardy to come to this place expecting a trap. The more experienced person believed that the hopeless guy could have come up with something better. The only one answered that in any case. The problem with the elder is not so important, because soon the guy will face a woman who cannot be avoided. Dynamite confirmed his words, saying that this happened to all individuals immediately after they killed an elder. The constellations believed that from that moment on the guy's fate depended entirely on luck. Meanwhile, Baik Ho Min had already managed to catch up with the elder, who at that time was seriously wounded and crawling on the ground. Looking around, the old man felt that his death was inevitable. He shouted that ungrateful idiots were to blame for all his problems, who betrayed him after he raised and fed them. Looking at the elder in such a serious state, Ho Min assumed that Hyun Su, taking advantage of the moment, stabbed the enemy in order to vent his rage and blame it all on his only friend. Sitting down next to the old man, Beck asked how he became so pitiful. The enraged elder called the guy a bastard and then asked if he was ready for the consequences. Baek Ho Min replied that he knew how the spider group would act, after which he invited the elder to bribe him in order to survive. The old man replied that he had two gold bars, which he would give to the guy if he left him alive. He could not offer more, because he believed that he needed the rest of his savings to run the city. In response to such an unexpectedly caring attitude towards the city, Baek Ho Min asked whether the old man really believed that if he disappeared, the city would turn into ruins. The dying man continued to be cunning, and stated that the group was planning something grandiose, so much so that not only his area, but the entire city would be involved in this plan. He stated that he would personally propose his candidacy as one of the leaders of the raid. Baek Ho Min saw that the elder was in extreme despair, so he decided that perhaps he was even telling the truth. The old man's body was already shaking from weakness. He replied that he said that all his words were true, because he saw no point in lying before his death. Still, Beck believed that saving his life after demonstrating his own strength would not be the worst option, so he turned to the knowledge of dynamite. Using this knowledge, the guy noticed that the old man had lost too much blood and could no longer be saved. Addressing the elder with regret, he said that he could no longer be saved. Taking one last look at the one who ruined his whole life, the guy decided to move on. Having destroyed the connection with the elder, he began to feel free, but he didn't manage to get far. He heard a woman's voice asking him to stop. Within a moment, the guy felt incredible pressure, because of which his body became terribly heavy. He couldn't believe that his worst expectations had become reality. In front of him, he noticed two girls in white uniforms. After that, the guy fell to the ground, unable to resist the enemy's skill. One of the paladins turned to the Platinum Monarch and said that she managed to detain a suspicious person near the scene of events. Beck Ho Min began to realize that his situation was now hopeless. The appearance of godless paladins was something Beck was not prepared for. The Platinum Monarch sat down next to the hunter lying motionless on the ground and said that she thought the cute little guy was magnificent because he managed to cope with such an incredible numerical advantage of the enemy. The situation turned out to be even worse. After hearing her words, Beck realized that they had already checked the situation inside the Elder's office. The Monarch's ward stated that the guy's seal showed no signs of strengthening, so his feat was most likely due to the fact that he became a parasite or possessed by a shadow beast. That girl used a high-level suppression skill that made Beck unable to move no matter how hard he tried. Turning to the lying guy, the girl with dark hair introduced herself as the Platinum Monk of the Tower. Her name is Yoon Seo Hyun. The guy had never met her before, so he was shocked that he would see her in such circumstances. She told him that all this time she had been investigating the case of counterfeit coins, which were actively being distributed throughout the tower. The creation of counterfeits right before the release of the new currency was a serious problem due to which it resorted to drastic measures of restriction. She admitted that she was going crazy thinking about how to solve this problem, but the young man was able to cope with the situation with ease. The guy understood that her words did not make sense, because the Platinum Monarch could cope with the Elder without his help. Raising the guy's hand, she said that this was not a problem where one could act rashly, because if the Elder escaped, it would lead the spider group to action. Inspecting the guy's strange seal, she stated that thanks to his actions, the spider decided to stay away and the paladins confiscated the money earned by criminal means. With an interested smile, the Platinum Monarch said that the guy's actions were worthy of praise. But the problem was that people, with the exception of paladins, were prohibited from committing lynching. Because of this, Back Ho Min could not escape the death penalty for killing eight people. In such a hopeless situation, she offered him two options for getting out of the situation, where in the first case the guy would appear in court and be executed by her own hands. The second option was to pretend that he was hired as her personal hunter, 
that he took these measures after going through the necessary administrative procedures. When Baek Ho Min heard her proposal, he thought that he still had a chance of survival if he chose the second option. But he understood that even if he survived after accepting her terms, it would still mean complete control of his life by the Platinum Monarch. He didn't know what to do best, so he turned to the constellations for help. The girl was surprised by his strange words and thought that he was asking her to choose for him. Among all the constellations, only the warlike king supported the second option, which meant that Dynamite and the Only One were against it. He found himself in such a difficult situation where there was no option to show weakness. The guy resolutely replied that he could not accept her offer. In response to his words, the girl said that she forgot to mention the conditions, which included a monthly payment of 50 silver coins, as well as 10 additional coins for each day spent in the tower. Baek Ho Min could not believe such generosity. In addition to payment, he was also offered housing in the ruler's castle, as well as a discount on improving the seal. Having learned about such incredible working conditions, the guy shouted that he was in business. The girl was surprised that it didn't take long to persuade him. Baek Ho Min was a simple guy. He trusted the opinion of the warlike king, believing that such a generous offer could not be refused. Hearing his answer, he was the only one who couldn't believe that Baek Ho Min was just another idiot who fell for the Platinum Monarch's trick. Dynamite also believed that it could not be refused. Hearing his opinion, the only one shouted that he should remember what this girl is like. They all went through a similar journey in which Miss Yoon Seo Hyun was involved. But this Baek Ho Min was the only one among them whose life she saved and even gave the opportunity to become a hunter. So the choice was obvious. Justifying his dissatisfaction, the only one recalled the words that the Platinum Monarch never makes decisions to harm himself and for sure. After which he stated that the cunning So Hyun is probably planning something. Dynamite believed that now the fate of the guy on whom they had high hopes was hopelessly sealed. At that moment, the warlike king joined their dialogue. He did not understand what was happening, because he had previously believed that the other personalities of Baek Ho Min also accepted the offer of the Platinum Monarch. He admitted that in the future he would regret making a deal with her, but he had no other choice. The only one answered furiously that he was furious when he watched the warrior. After being expressed by the most nervous of the previous personalities, Dynamite replied that he had a skill specializing in alchemy. At that time he was already a member of the guild, so he was able to avoid such a fate. As it turned out, after trying to clear the seal from a piece of iron, his body was slightly deformed. Because of this, he is forced to wear bandages over his wounded skin. The only one turned out to be luckier. He managed to acquire a good skill and, as a result, he quickly took revenge on the Elder, so he did not have to rely on the Platinum Monarch. Hearing their words, the warlike king decided that they were just lucky, because he himself had no other option but to rely on the Platinum Monarch. But according to the only one, he was also very lucky. As it turned out, the other back homins who failed to prove their worth were either ignored or killed by the Platinum Monarch. He asked not to forget that Yoon Seo Hyun always puts a price tag on people and uses them as she pleases. The warlike king agreed with her words. He considered his idea of U200 by U200 with the Platinum Monarch to be false, because despite the fact that he could trust her, it was impossible to consider her a comrade. He quarreled with her because she showed too much cynicism towards the other hunters, including him. Despite this, the mystery remained that Yoon Seo Hyun sacrificed herself to save him. He could not understand why the Platinum Monarch considered his life more valuable than her own. Because of that incident, he could not forget the image of the lonely back that protected his death. It was from the memories of the end of his life and the role of the Platinum Monarch that he responded positively to the ruler's proposal. At that moment, only Dynamite could see any positive. He stated that if Baek Ho Min became the Platinum Monarch Hunter, it meant that he managed to overcome the death curse in the first month. The guy did it, and it really lifted the spirits of all his previous personalities. They decided that in such a situation, it was worth paying attention to the good moments. After the events at the elder's office, the guy woke up on a comfortable bed. He had never been in such a beautiful room before. It was obvious that this was Lady Yoon's castle. He hardly remembered that yesterday he was dragged to this place. And when he drank some dubious tea, he immediately fell asleep. Sighing with relief, he could not believe such an unexpected development of events, because just yesterday he was an illegal inhabitant of the tower, and now he is one of the personal hunters of the Platinum Monarch. Looking at his arm, he noticed that he had a fresh bandage, so he assumed that the paladins had taken care of his wounds. It seemed to him that perhaps the rumors about the ruler of the tower as a cruel monarch were untrue. A moment later he was frightened by the girl's voice, who asked him to move, otherwise the recovery of his body would be delayed. He hadn't noticed her before, so it was unexpected. The girl who previously accompanied the Platinum Monarch introduced herself as the commander of the Godless Paladins, known as the Executioner Doll. Her name was known throughout the tower, so the guy could not hide his surprise. This name was given to her because she, like a soulless doll, cuts off the heads of her enemies. 
Having been the executioner of the cult members, she became the head of the order when the Platinum Monarch became the new ruler of the tower. Her reputation as an executioner was earned through her ruthless treatment of criminals. Beck Ho Min continued to admire her, saying that this was the first time he had seen her so close. The girl did not understand what they were talking about, so she continued to listen to the strange hunter. The guy admitted that he once saw her saving people at a crime scene, when she had to break into a building and get out three exhausted children. The girl began to feel embarrassed, and replied that there was nothing special in that case, because anyone in her place would have done this. The admiring guy then continued to demonstrate extraordinary knowledge about her career, saying that she is the hunter closest to the current constellations, as she has four orders of the star, and is considered a true hero of the tower. The current active constellations never leave the tower. The only person who is close to both the constellations and the ordinary people is the executioner doll. Beck mentioned that she was the person who fought for three days with the beast on the 28th floor, which carried bad omens. The girl didn't know how to react to his excessive attention, so she asked him not to exaggerate. The pressure from the fan continued, and he asked if it was true that she single-handedly killed Beck Jo Wook and his organization. He continued to embarrass the girl by saying that one of her most famous feats was stopping one of the cult members from poisoning the city's water supply. The mention of the girl's heroics had no end. The guy also shared rumors that people call her the only paladin who really cares about ordinary people. In fact, the doll believed that it did not deserve the title of hero, because it was simply doing its duty. She decided to give the impudent guy change, and reminded him of his recent feat, when he single-handedly took care of the elder and his killers. In response, the guy also began to downplay his feat, saying that he had simply encountered mediocre bandits, after which he wanted to continue admiring the doll, but she interrupted him with a cold and harsh phrase. The girl asked if Huo Min really doesn't have any accomplices. Seeing her look, the guy realized that she had been trying to reveal him all this time. Now she looked more serious. She said that she noticed the guy's cunning trick with which he tried to distract her attention through beautiful speeches. The current Bayek Ho Min has never encountered such a charming girl with highly developed facial expressions. Her shyness and excitement were artificial in order to lower his vigilance. Still, he was not afraid of such a question, so he defiantly sighed with relief and admitted that he acted alone. Looking into the paladin's eyes, he admitted that he was not trying to appease her, because he really was a fan of her valor. It was very unusual to hear this, so the doll didn't know how to react. The guy was worried about one question. Earlier, he had been told that the ruler's hunters were exempt from the law, but he himself was still under surveillance. The girl replied that this procedure is carried out regardless of the will of the ruler, and that in order for the ruler to exempt him from the law, basic legal training is necessary. Based on her words, it became clear that the godless paladins firmly stated that they were a vigilante force, independent of the rules of the tower and its ruler. The paladin began to ask her questions, and first of all asked whether Beck had visited the security zone on the outskirts of the Soul Tower, or entered its ground floor. The guy calmly replied that he didn't do it. The second question concerned the testimony that he had been subjected to a level 4 seal. She wondered how he gained the power to kill so many people using a defective seal with no trace of improvement. At that moment the guy began to worry. So as not to delay, he hesitantly replied that the constellations helped him. In response, the girl asked what constellations we were talking about and what their rank was. Bayek Ho Min thought that she must already have some guesses if she was listening to his answers so carefully. He wasn't sure that he should tell her the titles of those guys who supported him during the journey. At that moment, he received a positive reaction from one of the constellations. Seeing the message, the guy confidently replied that dynamite helped him. Placing his hand on his chest, the guy said that he believed that this all happened thanks to the blessing of the constellations. He wonders if it could be that he simply has hidden potential, because there are cases where some constellations have reached unimaginable heights by pure chance. The girl replied that this is only possible if Beck is one of the prophets. The prophets are the youngest constellations in existence, and have risen to active constellations at incredible speed. The doll said that there was still a high chance that he was either possessed by the shadow, or had become a parasite in the tower, in which case he would be executed regardless of whether he was the ruler's hunter or not. After her words, Beck realized that he needed to prove his humanity so as not to become a target of the paladins as a hunter with suspicious power. Looking at his hand, she said that the seal disappears from those people who have become parasites. However, this fact only applies to seals made of gold. Not a single case with an iron seal has been previously recorded, because most likely, parasites are only interested in valuable metals. Still, she had a way to find out the truth for sure, so she invited the guy to follow her. She said that the next interrogation would be conducted in the presence of the ruler. Accompanied by the doll, he went to the palace of the ruler's castle, where the platinum monk was executing criminals. The first guy with a blindfold begged her for mercy, but she didn't want to hear him at all. 
the cruel girl took the guy by the neck and began to read the list of his crimes. His name was An Wu Hyun, and he was accused of attempted murder and several cases of rape. She said that, in accordance with the law, she would atone for all his sins. The life energy began to leave the criminal's body. His hair began to fall out and he fell to the floor without signs of life. The girl hoped that he would think carefully about his sins and live his next life with honor. After this, the subordinate brought silver dishes to the ruler. The girl threw three gold coins at her, which she was able to get from the criminal's body. There were still two defendants left. They were in a panic that they would soon be executed. Next was Kim Lee Bin. He was accused of arson and murder. The girl said that his sins were incorrigible, after which she also removed all the energy from his body. Since he had more experience, a little more of the valuable resource was removed from his body. Bayek Ho Min was extremely tense from such cruelty. He began to understand where the ruler got such a bad reputation. All three defendants were executed, and the girl turned her attention to her new hunter. With a sweet smile on her face, she shyly said that she was very glad that she showed her new subordinate something obscene. Bayek Ho Min understood that he deliberately executed them in front of him. He wanted to show his determination, so he confidently introduced himself before the ruler. After his words, the paladin asked the lady if she could use the courtyard. The monarch assumed that the doll wanted to conduct an interrogation and personally test the skill of the suspicious guy. The paladin believed that if Bayek Ho Min really killed ten people with his own hands, then he would not be able to hide his strength against her in a fight. Such a proposal did not seem entirely suitable for the monarch. Yun So. Hyun replied that her plan was a little harsh, so she invited the guy to demonstrate his skills himself, after which she snapped her fingers to her subordinates. After this gesture, the girl brought the hunter's only friend to them. The platinum monarch said that he was one of the elder's subordinates and then asked if he was in the building with the others, to which Beck replied that it was indeed true. When Hyun Su saw who he had betrayed, he began to shake with fear. Within a moment, the platinum monarch approached the guy, excited from the tense situation, and he began to receive messages from the system. Yun So Hyun asked him to be calm and then began to remove the bandages from his hand where the seal was located. At that moment, the guy realized that the reaction of the constellations was an alarm signal. In response, he quickly removed his hand from the ruler of this tower. She didn't like it and said in a serious tone that Beck should tell those restless poor fellows to calm down if they didn't want to die. These words were too unexpected. Beck assumed that she was really addressing his constellations or was simply guessing about their close connection. After that, the platinum monarch suddenly came closer to him. She whispered in his ear that this was for his own good because he hardly wanted to die. The situation was extremely tense, but Beck could not resist it, because he was really afraid for his life. The girl again took his hand with the seal and asked him to behave calmly. Baek Ho Min didn't understand what was happening, but he felt like he could sense a battle between the constellations and the Platinum Monarch. When she finished, she asked the guy not to worry about the consequences. The guy looked at the seal again and couldn't believe his eyes. His terrible iron seal turned into platinum in an instant, and the pain immediately disappeared. After this, the Platinum Monarch returned to the defendant Han Hyun Su, and a sword was already brought to her for execution for theft, murder, and obstruction of justice. Looking at her new hunter's absurd friend, she noticed that attacking the ruler's hunters while they were on a secret mission was a serious crime. Hearing this, Hyun Su began to shake with fear, because now he began to think that his friend was the ruler's hunter all this time. Baek Ho Min understood that the claim that he was the ruler's hunter on a secret mission was a lie to save him. Then the ruler turned to Baek Ho Min saying that usually the ruler carries out the execution. This time she would like to see the skills of her new hunter. The guy did not understand what exactly was required of him. The cunning girl decided not to hesitate and threw the sword into the middle of the distance between her friends. She said that there would be only one sword, after which she invited them to start the battle. Tension began to rise. Baek Ho Min did not expect that he would be forced to execute his only, albeit unreliable, friend. While he was lost in thought, the vile Hyun Su decided not to hesitate and rushed towards the sword, at the same time apologizing to his comrade, whom he was going to kill to save his own life. Hyun Su grabbed the sword first and immediately began swinging it. Baek Ho Min did not expect such meanness. He barely jumped away from his first attack and shouted that he had no conscience. Despite these words, he continued to attack fiercely, fighting for his own life. The vile Hyun Su was not at all worried about his friend and hypocritically said that he would come to his friend's grave every day if he gave his life for him. In response, the nervous guy said that the Platinum Monarch never said a word about letting him go if he won. Looking at the ruler, Beck understood that this was a performance so that she could satisfy some interest. If she wanted to make sure of his fighting abilities, with the help of which he managed to get rid of the Elder's thugs, then in that case, she would put an Executioner doll against him. Paying attention to her gaze, the guy realized what was going on. She looked straight at his hand with the seal. That's when Beck realized that the Platinum Monarch was waiting for him to use his memory skill. Despite this, the guy was still not ready to demonstrate his abilities. 
He could cope with the help of his own experience and current reflexes, so he was able to easily block another attack from his friend. Holding his sword, he delivered an instructive blow to his face. After that, Bak Ho Min easily caught his stupid friend's hand. After disarming the enemy, he grabbed him by the neck. Turning to the hopeless Hyun Su, he whispered that he had never heard of the Platinum Monarch ever releasing criminals, so the likelihood of such an event was extremely low. Bak Ho Min tried to help him until the very end, so he said that he would pretend that he accidentally missed him, while Hyun Su would run towards the exit that was behind him. Hyun Su was simply shocked that his friend had been deliberately moving towards the exit all this time, dodging his attacks. The guy with dark hair planned that his friend would kick him and immediately run away towards the exit. Of course, such an escape would hardly have saved Hyun Su's life, but at least he would not have died at the hands of his only friend. Scared to death, Khan thanked him for this opportunity. After that, he heard the command and carried out the planned attack. Then he had to run. The falling Beck was still watching his friend's behavior. But as it turned out, even during their last meeting, he betrayed him again. Hyun Su charged again, pointing his sword at his only friend. Bak Ho Min realized that in this case the traitor could no longer be saved. Having parried his friend's blow, he told him that his action had once again demonstrated his true colors. Within a moment, the hunter was behind the fool. Bayek grabbed his only friend by the neck, slow and frightened of the situation. Hyun Su could not do anything but continue to count on the fact that his naive friend would once again give him a chance to win. But it was too late. This time Ho Min simply thanked his only friend in his life for their journey together after which he admitted that since he turned out to be a pathetic traitor, he could be killed without any regrets. At the last moment of his life, he tried once again to justify himself, but Beck was already fed up with his lies and asked him to keep quiet. After these words, he finished his task. The guy couldn't believe that the Platinum Monarch could actually achieve his goal, but at least he managed to survive and make a reputation for himself by carrying out the cruel order of the ruler. After his battle, the Platinum Monarch addressed him, calling him a young man and praised him for his amazing execution of the order. In response, the guy coldly asked to address him by name. It turned out that Yoon So Hyun had previously heard that Hyun Soo had betrayed him several times, so she was surprised that Beck tried to save such a pathetic coward until the last moment. In response, her ward admitted that previously this man was his only friend, so it was not easy to unquestioningly carry out such an order. The shrill girl said that despite this, Huo Ming got rid of the opponent without any hesitation. Beck explained this by saying that he no longer feels pity for such people. He made this decision after thinking a little about their relationship. The monarch liked his simple logic. After this, the girl collected the gold that was in the defendant's body, Yun. So Hyun turned to the guy and said that most hunters die when they cannot make a decision and think for a long time about what to do. Therefore, she believed that the most important quality for a hunter was quick and unwavering determination, which Ho Ming demonstrated. The executioner doll intervened in their conversation. She stated that the reason why the paladins obey the monarch is that she follows the laws, but such actions that purposefully avoid legal procedures were not to her liking. The monarch calmly replied that she used such a burdensome method only to save the life of the hero who had joined her band of hunters. After that, she returned to the guy whom she had recently made her ward. The ruler congratulated him on his successful first mission, after which she gave him a coin, saying that he should accept it in memory of this day that changed his life. Such a reward made the guy think about life, because before he had to endure pain and humiliation for the sake of one gold coin. But on this day he received a platinum coin from the monarch of the tower in exchange for the death of his only friend. After that, the ruler gently placed her hand on her ward's head and said that she still did not understand his motive, why he was still hiding his skill. But despite this, she replied with a smile that it doesn't matter now, because she can only be happy that Beck Ho Min has become her personal hunter. Such a caring attitude from the Platinum Monarch of the Tower seemed something unusual to the guy, and a blush instantly appeared on his cheeks. He had never felt such a gentle hand before, so he could not move due to the amazing pleasant feeling. Watching this spectacle, the constellations were shocked. The warlike king, who spent the most time next to the ruler of the Tower, was perplexed that this was the first time this girl behaved like this. Dynamite thought it was obvious in his opinion, Yoon Seo Hyun fell in love with the current Bak Ho Min. The only one could not believe his words and furiously replied that Dynamite was talking some kind of nonsense due to the fact that he probably forgot what kind of torment the other reincarnations of their body went through, because half of their deaths were precisely the fault of the ruler. The warlike king confirmed her words because he himself died because of the Platinum Monarch. As it turned out, the magician was unhappy because Dynamite had no right to talk about something like that. Because previously this cruel ruler forced the alchemist to work without rest and hardly ever stroked his head or held his hand. Dynamite agreed with these words, but noted that sometimes Mrs. Yun gently encouraged him in difficult moments. 
The warlike king intervened in their discussion. He asked the senior figures to move on to a more important topic. He was worried about the coverage of the seal. In response, the only one stated that he expected such a fate for their new reincarnation after he became the ruler's hunter. As it turned out, those individuals who avoided recoding usually died from metal poisoning and burns because the seal was not completed correctly. Hearing her words, the warlike king assumed that the monarch's actions were justified. But he was still interested in the question of why the only one tried to stop the guy at the moment when the lady touched his hand. The eldest of the constellations replied that if Yoon So Hyun's plans were only for the covering, then he would have left everything as it is. But it seemed to him that the platinum monarch was trying to somehow interact with the seal. After these words, the king asked what the ruler's plan could be at that time. The only one was not sure what So Hyun's goals were. He replied that they would find out after a while. After which he emphasized that most likely the platinum monarch knew about their existence. In his opinion, the ruler was trying to look at this world, so he had to reduce this risk to a minimum. The words of the only one did not inspire much confidence in the others, so the king began to worry that their existence had already been revealed to some extent. In order not to reveal all his secrets, the only one showed only the presence of dynamite. He allowed their new reincarnation to show it to the doll. Hearing his words, dynamite became enraged, because he was the only one who said that he was the weakest. After this, the alchemist asked why he... The only one answered that it was Dynamite who was the true loser among those who reached this place, since he believed that if Dynamite represented them before the Platinum Monarch, then there would be much less fear about the power of reincarnation. Yet they were right. After the execution of the defendants, Mrs. Yoon invited the guy to a conversation and asked if the Constellation Dynamite was really looking after him. The guy replied that this was so, after which a sly smile appeared on the girl's face, and interest lit up in her eyes. After that, he said that she would like to know more about this constellation. Before discussing dynamite, she asked if the guy knew the situation related to his hand. Previously, Beck didn't know that he would one day become a hunter, so he couldn't believe that the seal had some risks. The Platinum Monarch explained to him that a seal not made of gold is fatal to the human body. So until his hand is cut off, the poisonous metal and burns will cause him permanent harm. She explained that although he was good at using it, it would be too dangerous to use such a seal in every battle. Beck sadly replied that he fully understood the state of his seal. The ruler of the tower decided to explain the situation in more detail, and mentioned that she had previously applied a coating to his seal, so the poison would no longer spread as actively throughout his body, and he would be able to maintain the activation of the seal longer than usual. The guy was surprised. He assumed that thanks to the platinum coating, it would heat up less due to use. But the girl replied that she could not completely stop the heating since it was a kind of payment for the use of power by one of the participants in the tower. Despite this, he will now be able to use it for two minutes, which will significantly improve his results. Looking at his hand, the guy realized that the Platinum Monarch not only helped him escape punishment and appointed him as a hunter, but also strengthened his seal. Considering the cruel ruler his savior, he thanked her for such help. Seeing her sly smile, the guy was still afraid of her terrifying power. He believed that there must be some reason for her actions. Yoon Seo Hyun admitted that she personally wanted to see the skill of the talented recruit, and although she did not succeed, she did not intend to force it. After this, the girl added that if he showed success, then she would once again strengthen the player's seal. Back Ho Min couldn't believe her generosity and asked if it was really true. The Platinum Monarch replied that she would not mind if the constellations that were looking after him would allow it. After these words, she again returned to the previous conversation and asked the guy to tell everything he knows about the constellation called Dynamite. The guy decided that lying would only make the situation worse, so he told everything he could. Despite this, he understood that the ruler was dissatisfied with such an answer, because there were many inconsistencies due to the fact that he was not allowed to mention the warlike king and the only one. After analyzing the situation, the ruler looked imperiously at the guy and asked if Dynamite was really helping him absolutely free of charge. Back Ho Min replied that it was so. His words continued to make the Platinum Monarch suspicious, and judging by her behavior, she was dissatisfied. Her piercing gaze indicated that she knew Beck was hiding something. The guy couldn't show all his trump cards, so he decided to just endure this tense moment. They then moved on to discuss the closure of the tower. The Platinum Monarch explained that this was a security measure, as some kind of huge anomaly had recently occurred in the tower. Beck Ho Min didn't see anything strange, so he asked what they were talking about. The ruler replied that several constellations unknown to them had been spotted. Hearing this, the guy could not hide his surprise, because he had never heard of such cases before. It is known among the test participants that you can become a constellation after receiving five stars from the tower, during which each participant becomes a real hero. At the moment, all known constellations appeared in this way. Therefore, it is difficult to believe that constellations unknown to anyone appeared out of nowhere. As it turned out, 
Although the hunters constantly watched the constellations, they never learned anything about their names and origins. But the Platinum Monarch suspected that one of them was really named Dynamite. When she asked what he thought about such suspicions, the guy replied that he was not sure that this was so. It was a bluff and she was just interested in watching his reaction. At the same time, Beck began to doubt whether he had acted correctly when he revealed the identity of one of the constellations that was supporting him. The ruler further reported that after the appearance of these constellations, the tower underwent structural changes, which greatly influenced the process of rising through the floors. Beck asked what exactly was going on. It turned out that zones and parasites that should exist only on the upper floors began to appear on the lower floors, which means that zones that were in a stable state were out of control. With these changes, the elevators became dangerous to use, so the Platinum Monarch and the Paladins were forced to take measures to ensure the safety of the trial participants. After these words, the guy realized that the matter was really not connected with the design of the currency, but with the appearance of stronger monsters. He believed that the Platinum Monarch was not lying to him. Rising from her chair, she said that she hoped that this sudden appearance of constellations would not cause harm to their city. Miss Yun also said that one of her hunters had already finished investigating and returned from a business trip, so he would teach the newcomer everything that was important for him to know. At that moment, the guy was surprised that he was not the only hunter of the ruler. It turned out that there were not many of them, but under her command, there were several outstanding masters of their craft. One of them was Kong Ha Jin. He was the same age as our hero and would soon become his mentor. The Platinum Monarch introduced the guys and asked her ward to teach the newcomer everything necessary for him to become a worthy hunter for the ruler. Turning to Beck Ho Min, she said that Ha Jin has been working for her for two years now, so he will be able to learn a lot from such an experienced hunter. Beck was a little excited, because he did not expect that among the ruler's wards there would be someone younger than himself. Yun So Hyun asked them to become friends, and the new recruit was not against it. With a sincere smile, he extended his hand to his new comrade and said that he would now be under his supervision. But in response, Kung Ha Jin simply ignored this friendly gesture. Beck assumed that his mentor did not like him, but the ruler justified her hunter's actions, explaining that he was simply shy. It was hard to believe her words. Because after looking at this fighter, Beck realized that he simply had no intention of making contact. This was problematic, and Ho Min realized that it would not be easy for him further. The ruler decided not to pay attention to this, and said that Kang Ha Jin would then tell the new hunter all the details of the work, and help him with training. Turning to Huo Min, she said that he was still weak. The girl with a piercing gaze wanted him to prove his worth by becoming stronger. She wanted Beck to demonstrate that he was capable enough to carry out her personal orders. After this boring, intense introduction, Beck went along with his new mentor, but Kang Ha Jin still did not answer his question about where they were going. The recruit didn't like this behavior, so he asked if the other hunters of the ruler were just as rude, because Ha Jin didn't even bother to greet his charge normally. In response, the experienced fighter turned sharply and stared at the newcomer with a murderous gaze. He simply showed his dissatisfaction, but continued to remain silent. The situation again became very tense and Beck realized that he had most likely touched a nerve with his mentor. A minute later, they arrived at the place where the newcomer would now live. Seeing his room, the guy immediately ran towards the bed and started shouting that this was simply incredible. Ha Jin realized that this simpleton liked the new living conditions. Back Ho Min was sincerely happy about the warm and clean room with a fluffy blanket on the bed. During the ward's boundless joy, the ruler's hunter mentioned that he heard that Back received platinum plating from the tower ruler. The joyful guy agreed with this and asked what was wrong. After this answer, Ha Jin raised his eye patch and said that Beck should not fool himself into thinking that he received some great gift. He added that he's not the first person to think he's special. Seeing the seal in his mentor's eye, the guy could not believe that it could be carved even on such a part of the body. Next, Hajin decided to teach a financial literacy lesson and said that a platinum coin is worth 10 gold. Bayek Ho Min still didn't understand what he was getting at. The ruler's hunter continued and said that this still does not mean that platinum is really worth that much, because if it is used like gold, then both metals have approximately the same purity and weight. The strange speech of this guy began to annoy the newcomer, and he again asked what it was all about. Hajin continued to talk. He stated that the test participants can mine gold in the tower, but platinum is different because it can only be created by a platinum monarch. Therefore, it is not distributed and is used only for symbolic purposes and can also be used as a catalyst in rare alchemy, due to which its value increases compared to gold. Bayek Ho Min thought that it was worth 10 times more than gold just because of people's desire for something extravagant. He believed that platinum items were used by those who wanted their items to live up to their authority. After that, Kang Ha Jin shared that it took as many as three platinum coins to cover the guy's seal. In addition, another coin was used to purchase medicine from the Alchemist Guild for his treatment, which was quite an expensive purchase. After these words, Beck Ho Min thought that he had fallen into debt for several centuries overnight. 
He started to feel awkward, so he asked if he should pay for it if he didn't ask for such a huge help. Kang Ha Jin replied that the ruler would not demand money from him as long as he was her hunter. His speech raised even more questions, and the excited guy asked what would happen if he left the master. Ha Jin replied that then he would have to pay back the most valuable thing in his life. Arrogantly pointing his finger at the poor fellow, he declared that the Platinum Monarch would exchange every gram of his body for platinum. Remembering the fate of the executed criminals, Ho Min felt a trembling in his body, as he understood that one accident could lead him to the same ending. The terrifying speech ended with the hunter's phrase that there was no point in hiding one's abilities before the master. Khan advised the guy to give his all to prove his worth and loyalty to the Platinum Monarch. In addition, according to the ruler's order, Kong Ha Jin will be with the recruit around the clock for observation. His report will decide the guy's fate, so he asked to be treated with respect. After these words, Bak Ho Min expressed his dissatisfaction and understood why there were two beds in his personal room. The situation worsened again. He could not imagine that he would have to constantly be near that rude hunter. A discussion of recent events has already begun in heaven. And as it turned out, this was not the first time that Bai Ho Min met Kong Ha Jin. The warlike king stated that although this guy was a real paranoid during his lifetime, he also demonstrated himself as a reliable comrade. After that, he asked his predecessors what their experience of meeting this guy was. The only one shouted with displeasure that Kang Ha Jin was a stalker and a pervert. And Dynamite even stated that this guy is a loan shark and he himself was exploited many times by his hands. But what worried them most was not the new mentor of their new reincarnation but the structural changes that did not exist before. This was a very unusual phenomenon that they had not encountered. Only the only one had any idea as to what caused such an anomaly. He stated that their existence is the main reason for the tower's changes. Using his power, he showed what the stars usually look like. But after they got stuck in heaven, everything changed. Due to rebirth, they disappeared from the world, but their stars remained in the sky. Therefore, it was not surprising why people are shocked that they see constellations that do not exist in reality. The eight stars in the sky belonged to Dynamite. The Martial King was shocked because he had only just learned that Sir Dynamite was an eight-star class constellation. The Warlike King himself was slightly inferior to his predecessor. Looking up into the sky, Dynamite said that these seven stars belonged to their warlike incarnation. The youngest of the three understood that the guys knew this well because they watched him after his death. The last cluster of stars resembled some kind of sign. The Warlike King assumed that they belonged to the Great Wizard. The only one answered briefly that this was indeed the case. The youngest of the reincarnated souls could not believe that this was possible. He could not even count all the stars that belonged to the first Bak Ho Min. Since their stars in the heavens were causing the changes, Dynamite said it was unlikely that any of them would be able to predict what would happen next. They couldn't look into the future as before, because now the situation in the towers had changed noticeably. But it was clear that since the Platinum Monarch assigned Kang Ha Jin to look at their reincarnation, it meant that the new Ho Min would soon get his first job. Dynamite believes that the guy will have a hard time, because when Yoon So Hyun finds a person with potential, he carefully tests the poor fellow's strength. In addition, Kang Ha Jin in this life is determined to get rid of his rival, and the Executioner Doll will look for opportunities to execute the suspicious guy who has become the ruler's hunter. Huo Ming would most likely be subjected to the Platinum Monarch's brutal trials until he showed his skill. The current situation was the most difficult that Bak Ho Min's reincarnations had faced. Meanwhile, Ho Min himself and his mentor went to the tower, partially solved the security problem and opened the first four floors. The newcomer was indignant at the inconvenience of the new clothes. His more experienced comrade nervously asked him to wear the uniform properly, because in it he represents the monarch himself. He went on to share the results of his investigation. He examined how structural changes had affected the lower floors over the past fortnight, and found an area that had a slight anomaly. Predicting that the problem would be much worse starting from the fifth floor, he returned to the castle. While Ha Jin returned, his mentor moved on, planning to continue his exploration to the twentieth floor. As it turned out, Hunter Can was supposed to report that the elevator to the fourth floor could be unblocked. When Beck found out that they were going to the fifth floor, he was furious, because in this case they would not have the opportunity to return before going up to the tenth floor which means that they would have to overcome this path together. Still, the guy reassured himself that if he could make friends with this strange mentor, then everything would be much easier. Then they went to the nearest cave, where there was a trolley, which was considered a kind of elevator, which was not available for general use. This way they could get to the seventh floor, but Beck was worried that the tunnel and their transport were too small for such a long journey. At the same time, Kang Ha Jin began to launch the magical mechanism. For this, he sprinkled the key with gold. Within a moment, the trolley began to move forward and rapidly accelerate. The excited Beck asked if his mentor was sure that it was safe, 
and that their path was at least correct. In response, the guy said that he could not know for sure. He explained that the reason why this elevator is not available for general use is because its direction is unknown. As it turned out, the Platinum Monarch's wards had used it countless times, and if something went wrong, then the reason for it would be the recent structural changes to the tower. Within a moment, their trolley suddenly stopped and got stuck in one place. Something really went wrong. The rails were destroyed and they could not go further using the trolley. They had to continue on foot. The mentor explained that of all the places in the tower, structural changes took place here. So this is where they will begin their research. After these words, the inexperienced guy asked what kind of noise he heard. Hunter Can replied that they were having a little trouble. Huge insects were already moving towards them. Seeing the monsters, Beck Ho Min asked what was going on. The mentor reassured him, saying that it was not dangerous to fight here, since they were on the lower floors. A battle began that Ho Ming could easily handle using his own strength. There were a lot of enemies, so he could thoroughly hone his skills in using a dagger. In parallel with the battle, the ruler's hunter carefully watched the movements of his new subordinate. Despite the numerical advantage of the monsters, the guy managed without any problems. When they finished, the observant Kung Ha Jin asked why his ward had not used his skill all this time. Baek Ho Min believed that there was no need because he could cope without it. But in response, the dissatisfied hunter stated that if a person receives the favor of the constellations, he should use it and not hide the skill until his death. Huo Ming nervously explained that these words did not make sense because his seal heats up every time he uses a skill, which puts his life in even greater danger. After these words, Ha Jin made an unexpected and lightning leap forward. He grabbed his charge and pressed his head against the wall. Ha Jin said that he watched his ward fight against the parasites. In his opinion, he was careless, as if he had several lives. And although the ruler liked such stupid courage, he did not recognize such actions. The nervous guy furiously asked his more experienced comrade to remove his hand, but Ha Jin wanted to tell him something. He asked if Beck Ho Min knew why the average service life of the ruler's hunters did not even reach one year. As it turned out, all the fighters except the mentor who raised the hunter Kong Ho Jin were killed or driven out within a year, and within two years he personally buried more than five of those who came after him. His first student was killed by a parasite, and another was eaten before his eyes, all because he could not bring himself to get rid of a comrade who was possessed. The mentor's words resembled a cry from the soul. He stated that he had already seen enough of those who died hiding their skills. After these words, he stated that even experienced hunters may not be able to cope with the battle against the parasites that they will have to face in the future. Still, Beck Ho Min understood his anger and agreed with every word he said. He knew that the prey in the tower kills the hunter. Blacksmiths die because of excessive confidence in their work, and alchemists because of their greed. These things seemed quite obvious to him. But after spending his life on the street, he came to slightly different conclusions. He believed that most people die because of the greed of other people. Despite this guy's honest words, he still couldn't just trust others, including his mentor and the Platinum Monarch. Because of this, the guy was not going to blithely show off his skill or talk about constellations. Observing his reincarnation's behavior, the Martial King admitted that Kang Ha Jin was indeed untrustworthy. But he wasn't sure if Ho Min was doing the right thing by hiding so many of his abilities. The only one answered that it would be much better if he did not tell anyone about them. Dynamite completely agreed with his words, because he was wary of his mentor. The alchemists believed that for them, the memory skill is an amazing opportunity. But for other people, it is something crazy and unacceptable. So if Huo Ming talks about memories that he did not have the opportunity to experience, they will definitely suspect something. The king was interested to hear what suspicions were being discussed. Dynamite was afraid that the others would find out that Beck Ho Min could be reborn. For the youngest of the constellations, it seemed that this was not much of a problem, because there was a possibility that if the new Ho Ming became famous, then he would be able to find strong allies to overcome all obstacles. But the alchemist believed that there was a possibility that if the Platinum Monarch found out about this, and if the situation did not meet her expectations, then she would simply start all over again. When Dynamite said that the ruler would start all over again, he meant the murder of Beck Ho Min. In addition, the only one, through anger and obstinacy, admitted that Mrs. Yun is a real genius, because she learned many times that their personality can be reborn. That's why he didn't want the newly reincarnated Baek Ho Min to get involved with this girl. Because if she found out about his skill, she would try to steal it or use the guy for her own gain, which would be detrimental to their plan. The Great Wizard assumed that the current Huo Ming instinctively hides his skill in order to stay alive no matter what. This was closely related to difficult life experiences, from which he learned an important lesson about trust. The conversation between student and mentor was coming to an end, and Ha Jin wanted to make sure that his mentee understood everything. He asked him to stop acting naive 
and start using his skill if he wanted to live longer than one year, because underestimating the danger would lead to his inevitable death. The guy nervously replied that he never underestimated the work of a hunter, and always gave his all for the sake of his own survival. He confidently declared that he would survive and climb to the top of the tower, using his skill whenever he wanted. The insolence of the imperturbable guy infuriated his mentor even more. He angrily said that Huomin was weak, so he hoped that the guy would leave of his own free will, because he was not destined to be the ruler's hunter. The guy didn't expect to hear something like that at all. Ha Jin asked his ward to leave the castle and tower, after which he promised that he would inform the ruler, and, if anything happened, he would repay the debt of the naive and infuriating newcomer. After these daring words, Ho Ming could no longer endure it and broke free from his mentor's arms, furiously shouting that he was fighting for his precious life, unlike him. The disrespect from the younger hunter made Ha Jin angry, and he tried to hit his new comrade, but he managed to deftly dodge his fist. After that, he grabbed the guy with white hair and shouted that no one except the ruler had the right to tell him. Because the newcomer had rebelled against his mentor, the elder hunter said that he now had proper reason to kick out the ignorant recruit. Back Ho Min was already ready to make a powerful throw of the enemy to the ground. But notice that there was a cliff behind the mentor, which was most likely due to the structural change of the tower. When he told this to an experienced hunter, he did not believe his words. He shouted that he would not fall for such pitiful tricks and flew back with his comrade. Their lack of trust in their opponent led them into a long free fall. Thanks to the rocks, they were able to land with less force and not turn into cakes. Kang Ha Jin was beside himself with anger. He accused the student of being to blame for everything, because every time some unforeseen unpleasant situation happens, it is associated with inexperienced guys who are entrusted to him as wards. Having looked around, the experienced guy said with surprise that he had no idea that he would meet his death in such a place. This was the foundation of the tower that they had fallen into from the surface fracture on the fourth floor. This location was previously referred to as the ground floor of the building. The foundation of the tower consists of areas where light does not reach at all. This place is also known as a basement or dungeon. After this explanation, Beck mentioned that the Executioner doll had previously asked him if he had entered the tower's foundation and become a parasite. It was his first time in this place, and previously, he had only guessed what it was about. In addition, he was surprised by strange feelings. It seemed to him that moss was growing on his body. The mentor replied that in a sense he was right, and if they lingered in this place, then they would not be able to avoid becoming parasites. Once again, the situation has worsened, and now Ho Min will not be able to survive without the knowledge of the constellations that were his predecessors. Seeing what happened, the great magician explained to his comrades in trouble that the foundation was far from the best place to stay. It resembled some kind of test for hunters and is also known for the fact that here humanity exterminated the guardian of the 10th floor 36 years ago. Although the tower's structure had changed, he still didn't expect it to be so much. As it turned out, the great wizard visited this place during his lifetime in search of traces of past constellations. He believes that the foundation is similar to the rings of trees, which indicates their age. There are indeed traces of past trials and disasters here, and the stronger the incident, the clearer its trace. The warlike king heard something similar and agreed with the opinion of his predecessor. He believed that if the guys did not get out of this place quickly, they would face the first test that humanity had ever faced. The only one was sure that at their current level, Kang Ha Jin and Baek Ho Min would not be able to avoid death. They walked for a long time, but still could not find a way out. So the student suggested simply going up the road they had come down. But things were not that simple, and Khan explained that they had previously been in the elevator area, which works like a wormhole in the tower, so they cannot be sure that they will exit in a safe place. The already clumsy and strange Ho Ming asked an inappropriate question about what a wormhole was. His lack of awareness of basic things instantly infuriated the mentor. Despite this reaction, Ha Jin was able to accept it, and explained the phenomenon in a nutshell, saying that they might get lost if they tried to take a shortcut. He suggested speeding up, because the words that they could turn into parasites were serious and true. The road was boring, and Ho Min decided to return to asking awkward questions. He asked why not so long ago, a guy he knew said that he would repay his debt to the Platinum Monarch. He put his mentor in an awkward position. In addition, he did not retreat and actually continued to interrogate his comrade about the reason for his ward's thirst for leaving, so strong that he was even ready to repay such a huge debt. After a second of silence, he suggested that it was a matter of love, after which he apologized and admitted that it was not mutual. 
His words were what infuriated the mentor to the highest degree, and he called him a stupid cretin. The joke worked with a bang, although he managed to relax the situation only for himself, while his comrade was ready to finish him off on the spot. The furious Kang Ha Jin still admitted that he was simply not interested in money, so he did not worry about the amount of his ward's debt. He explained this by saying that as long as his powers meet the standards of a ruler, that is enough for him. He knew that if she wanted him to become stronger, she would definitely take care of it. Hearing his words, the guy finished off his friend with the assumption that if the mentor thinks only about the Platinum Monarch, then he likes her. The already embittered Kang Ha Jin considered these words the impudence of the highest degree, and once again scolded his ignorant student. Despite the tension of the situation, Ho Min was unwilling to back down and asked the teacher not to get angry and admit that he really liked Miss Yoon. The evil guy continued to make excuses and this time said that the ruler saved his life and he was just trying to repay her in full. Ho Min didn't really believe in his words. He believed that it didn't matter at all how Khan would justify himself, because it was literally written on his face that he was head over heels in love with the Platinum Monarch. Having looked at his comrade, he found out for himself the reason why he was so wary of him, the hunter, that he received the blessing of the constellations. His gaze displeased his mentor, but since it was only the two of them here, there was no way he could avoid the attention of the student he should have been keeping an eye on. The cheeky guy suddenly said that he could share a secret on how to seduce the Platinum Monarch, after which he asked if his friend was interested in hearing it. At this moment, Kang Ha Jin froze in place, and it was obvious that he was still head over heels in love with the Overlord. Putting his hand on his heart, Huo Ming stated that the ruler was interested in his personality, so he could take advantage of this situation to praise his mentor to her. And in return, he would tell her that his student was a very talented and skillful newcomer. He explained that this way he would prove his worth to her as a hunter, and Ha Jin would succeed in her love affairs. Ho Ming was really sure that the experienced hunter had fallen for his trick, and would soon agree to the terms of the deal. But in response, Ha Jin pushed the guy aside and with a shocked look asked him to pay attention to what was happening behind his back. Ho Ming thought that they had found a way out. But he began to rejoice early, because the mentor believed that it was more like starlight. Approaching a fault in the foundation, the mentor suggested that this could be related to the constellations, or simply a consequence of structural changes in the tower. Therefore, Huo Ming stated that in this case, this light could help them to succeed in their exploration. But he still doubted that they should just enter a place unknown to them. In the middle of the room was an incredible sword with a golden hilt that was stabbed into a mirror lying on the ground. Thanks to this light, the recruit noticed that the feeling of moss growing on his body had disappeared. In response to this, the teacher suggested that this place could be connected with the guardian of the tenth floor. It was about a problem that most experienced hunters face. Guardians are one of the obstacles that does not allow you to easily climb to the top of the tower. But once you overcome this obstacle, a barrier appears, and it does not allow creatures from the upper floors to go down. After looking at the unusual relic, Ho Min assumed that by capturing the keeper, his territory would be transferred to the possession of the people. The mentor explained that breaking or killing them is an incredibly difficult task, but it is possible. But to turn the guardian territory into true human territory, you need to pass a test. Looking at the sword, he said that it looked like the item of the hunter who subdued the guardian of the tenth floor. The student replied that in this case, it's probably not worth touching this mysterious sword. Despite these words, he had an internal conflict, because he felt a strange feeling as if he was being drawn to this subject. As it turned out, it was not just like that. After seeing his actions, the constellation was the only one who reacted positively, so the guy asked the great wizard if he could touch the amazing relic. Having received a second positive answer, he said that he now understood why the subject attracted him so much. Hearing strange words from the student, the mentor asked in bewilderment why he was talking to himself. Within a moment, Ho Ming pushed his comrade away with his hand and shouted that this thing would belong to him, after which he grabbed the mysterious sword. At the last moment, the mentor tried to warn the student about something important, but it was too late. A moment later the object was destroyed and they were thrown back. The mentor could not even believe that his inexperienced and stupid student could do something so rash and dangerous. Huo Ming faced the consequences of his action. The light that protected them from the moss disappeared. He could not believe that he was the only one who actually advised him something dangerous. But this problem seemed like a mere trifle compared to what he saw when he got to his feet. They were surrounded by their own copies and the frightened guy began to go hysterical. After suppressing his own emotions, he decided to attack one of his copies. One blow was enough and as it turned out these were not physical bodies but only puppets. The destroyed double immediately crumbled into small pieces of glass. A more experienced fighter explained that this is the ability of the guardian of the tenth floor, the mirror butterfly. 
This is a parasite that in their time could only be found in books on the history of the tower. Continuing to destroy his fakes, the guy mentioned that the past constellations had a hard time because of this strange monster ability. Huo Ming was concerned that his more experienced comrade was simply breaking counterfeits without thinking about the consequences. He feared that one day they might harm each other. But Hajin explained that it was stupid to assume this, because if they fight only with their reflections, then they will not be able to accidentally attack their comrade. Hearing this, the young hunter took this plan into account and began to act. His mentor said that destroying the fakes was only for self-defense, because in reality they needed to find the main body of the parasite. He was serious about this danger, so he resorted to using his skill. This skill showed him the path to something necessary, so he was able to easily determine that there was no main body among the fakes. The mirror butterfly was outside the battlefield and Hunter Kang headed towards it to finish the surprise test. Heading towards the enemy and simultaneously destroying the reflections, he remembered that more than 30 years had already passed since the moment the mirror butterfly was defeated by the forces of humanity. He believed that the skill of the average hunter had improved significantly since then, since this test had been passed in much worse times than now. Ha Jin was confident that even though they were not the strongest fighters, they would be able to handle such a threat. The guy quickly found the target and, using his skill, identified the weak point of the parasite, the heart. Without any slowdown, he rushed to attack, but his attack was not accurate enough and he missed. The butterfly decided to avoid a collision with a person, while the more experienced hunter realized that he could not accurately pierce the parasite's heart in such darkness. Looking at the monster that was very close, he realized that he was not afraid of his strength. Within a moment, he began to feel unusual pressure from the parasite, which greatly worried him. Hajin fell to his knees and the mirror butterfly went towards Homin's battle and the reflections. As it turned out, at that moment the mirror of the parasite caused the hunter to lose his sense of balance. Moreover, it was not interested in the battle and went to a less experienced person. He began to shake with anger at the thought that the mirror butterfly might perceive his ridiculous student as a greater threat than himself. Arrogance consumed his mind and he rushed after the enemy thinking that he would make the parasite regret such a naive decision. Huo Ming was still holding on. He never started using his skill and could destroy the reflections with his own powers. His mentor was already nearby and he asked if everything was okay with him. At the same time, destroying his own reflections, Ha Jin replied that they should worry about the safety of the weaker member of the squad. Ha Min's strength was running out and he said that there was no end to the reflections and they should move on to a more effective strategy against this parasite. The mentor involved in the battle explained that the reflections are formed due to the dust of the mirror moth, and they will not disappear until the parasite dies. He also mentioned that he should have asked permission before touching the relic. In response, Ho Ming admitted his mistake and apologized for such a problematic carelessness. In fact, he couldn't admit that he took it because the constellation sent him a positive reaction. This action did not lead to anything good, and he began to think that this could be a misunderstanding. Fighting side by side, Ha Jin found the courage to admit that his charge was holding up even better than he expected. In response, Ho Min asked how things were going with the main body. He believed that only a mentor could destroy it, because he himself could not even see the parasite. An experienced hunter explained that the mirror butterfly distorts its own reflection, and if a person looks at it, his vision will be distorted, and he will lose his sense of balance. The guy couldn't believe that the guardian of the tenth floor of the tower had such a problematic ability, so he asked how the previous generation was able to defeat it. As it turned out, then there was a constellation of a crushing dawn with the name Ripple. At the time of the battle it was not yet a constellation, but it found a way to pass the test after the loss of two comrades. Hearing this, Huo Ming was surprised that his mentor had not mentioned this incident earlier, since this way they could use her fighting method to achieve a quick victory. The mentor explained that they were unable to repeat her feat in the same way, because she filled the entire space with blinding light and broke the entire reflection at once. Additionally, the Ripple Constellation skill can only be used by hunters who have received its blessing. As a last resort, they could use an item that was blessed by her. After these words, the guy remembered the sword that his ward had touched. Ha Jin asked the student to find the sword. In response, the hunter began to whine about the difficulty of the assignment, but he had no other choice. He asked the ruler's hunter to cover him, after which he began to get out of the prison of reflections. Watching this spectacular battle, the constellation was the only one who sighed heavily, as he was glad that the hunters had finally begun to work together. The youngest of the constellations admitted that he did not think that the great wizard would force their new reincarnation to take the sword, because this test had already been passed, and they would not be able to receive rewards for defeating the parasite. But this did not bother the strongest of them at all. He believed that these two hunters needed to gain experience working as a team against strong opponents, because many more monsters would be waiting for them while they climbed to the top of the tower. It was hard to argue with that, 
but the warlike king didn't think it was worth the risk of losing the guy that gave them hope. In response, the wizard gave an example that the constellation Ripple is generous towards its predecessors, and if they are lucky, they can receive its blessing in the form of a good skill. Ho Min, who was more accustomed to dark rooms, quickly found the sword, but did not understand how a broken object could help them. While fighting, the mentor replied that the mirror butterfly was circling next to him, so he should wait for the signal before using the power. Huo Ming continued to doubt the effectiveness of their plan. He understood that only a small part of the sword remained, and even if he used the master of 10,000 swords, it would still not be easy to fill this place with light. While fighting the reflections, he did not notice how the parasite appeared right behind him. Thanks to his skill, Ha Jin was able to detect the unexpected appearance of the enemy and shouted to his comrade that he should immediately turn around and strike in the direction of 10 o'clock. At that moment, Ho Ming did not expect such a sudden appearance of the enemy and completely forgot about the main rule of fighting the mirror butterfly. When he turned around, he immediately directed his gaze to the parasite's body and felt weak. The guy fell to the ground. Ha Jin did not have time to support him and therefore simply reminded that his friend should be careful because his vision would be distorted after he looked at the monster. Nevertheless, Ho Min quickly came to his senses. He stood up and despite the trembling, was ready to continue the battle. But when he wanted to deal the long-awaited blow to the parasite, it suddenly disappeared from his sight. It was obvious that Kang Ha Jin could not use the Ripple Sword, so his student took on this burden, although he was afraid that it might not work, because he could not know exactly where his opponent was at the time of using the power. Approaching the mentor, he suddenly grabbed him and asked for help. He embarrassed the more experienced hunter when he stated that he wanted to use his gaze to find the monster. At that moment, Beck thought that finding the enemy only with the help of the gaze of a more experienced hunter would not be easy. But he figured that if he could not win himself, then he would resort to using the skill of the Martial King. In order not to hesitate, he used the skill of memory, but unexpectedly for him. This time the power of the Great Wizard was used without permission. The guy was distraught as his hopes began to crumble. One of his patrons still could not understand what was happening and watched in action. Baek Ho Min, who was in a panic, was perplexed by the situation, because he wanted to use the attacking abilities of the warlike king and the skill of the master of 10,000 swords available to him. But the most experienced among his constellations had a completely different opinion about what happened. He happily declared that his time had finally come, after which he called on his reincarnation to fight according to his plan. A voice unfamiliar to the guy said that he could not believe that the elders passed this test with sweat and blood, which he considered pathetic. Beck Ho Min could not understand who these words belonged to, and assumed that it was the constellation the one who said it. After that, he heard another voice. This time it belonged to some girl. She said that taking the first step is difficult, but following the trodden tracks is an easy path to perfecting your skills. The hunter was shocked by the sudden appearance of unfamiliar voices. Moreover, the girl's voice very much reminded him of the voice of the Lord of the Tower. His mentor did not understand what was happening. He asked what his student had done, because because of his actions he could not move. In addition, he was also concerned that his seal could not be used, and it seemed to him that power over it had passed to his ward. Next to him was a mirror butterfly, and surprisingly, it also could not move. It seemed as if time had stopped. Ha Jin could not do anything, but was furious that the anomaly was most likely related to the seal skill of the hunter Ho Min. Somehow the only one succeeded in influencing his reincarnation. He managed to make the guy's body repeat his words, turning to Ha Jin. He said that the mirror butterfly was caught in his eye, and when it distorts his vision, he cannot move, because the hunter's gaze is focused on her. He explained that the parasite only moves in the dark where it is not visible. Therefore, the constellation Ripple at one time filled the entire space with light for us to win the mirror butterfly. But the Great Wizard was not the type to do something like that. The words that the girl with the voice of the Platinum Monarch said were not at all from the memory of the Great Wizard. These were the memories of a daring and young warlike king who did not fully agree with the ruler's strategy. He wanted to destroy this parasite in his own style, fighting the insect in a way that no one had done before. Bak Homin could not control his body. Power over him was transferred to the constellations. Unconsciously, he snapped his fingers and something unexpected happened. Before the hunter's eyes, the parasite's belly was cut open and the insects began to scream in pain. Ha Jin did not understand what was happening, because he did not see any movements from his comrade. After this unexpected attack, the memory was replaced by knowledge of the life of the warlike king, and control of the body was again returned to the user of the seal. Having regained control of his body, Ho Ming asked his comrade not to take his eyes off the mirror butterfly. Ha Jin didn't understand what was happening and why his ward was giving orders, but he had no choice but to trust the amazing guy in such a difficult situation. Filled with rage, the guy rushed towards the parasite to finish her off before he escaped. 
Using the unlocked Martial King skill, he resumed his Ripple Constellation sword form. A powerful blow was aimed at his opponent. Although the Mirror Butterfly managed to heal its previous wound, but because of Hajin's gaze, it had no chance to dodge the attack of the inexperienced hunter. One powerful blow from an object saturated with the power of light completely destroyed the parasite's body, and it began to crumble into small fragments. The light began to rapidly spread throughout the room and Ho Ming began to lose consciousness. The battle ended and the guys returned to the place where they found the mysterious object. Huo Ming, with his backpack on his back, woke up on the floor of the basement. Looking around, he saw that the place had returned to its previous state, but he was sure that the battle with the mirror butterfly was real. Even the sword, which was destroyed due to his touch, returned to its previous state after they dealt with the sudden challenge against the guardian of the tenth floor of the tower. The hunter was shocked because the silhouette of a constellation suddenly appeared in front of him. It was a girl who looked like a hero. She stood behind the sword and smiled sweetly. The guy had already seen her face and shape earlier. The shocked Ho Min couldn't say anything. It was the constellation Ripple, and she was pleased that a new generation of hunters had been able to overcome the test, which brought glory to her power of light. After that, he felt the seal suddenly heat up. He received a message from the tower that the Ripple constellation had bestowed its blessing on him. The guy was grateful to her for such generosity, although he considered this ability too simple compared to the blessing of other hunters. Still, he couldn't complain about the gift, and thought that thanks to the light of the constellation, he would no longer need to use a lamp, which only took up space in his backpack. The shy guy raised his head and turned to the constellation to thank her for the gift. But at that moment, he saw that the silhouette of one of the strongest warriors of humanity suddenly disappeared. He was a little confused because he didn't have time to say goodbye to her. The only one witnessed what happened, so he sent a positive reaction to the new Beck Ho Min. The guy took his gesture as an approval of the power that he managed to receive as a reward for passing the test. Even though everything ended well, he couldn't stop thinking about what kind of voices he heard after using his seal. He assumed that in this place, there were already constellations with which he had the honor of interacting. In addition, it seemed to him that the female voice belonged specifically to the Platinum Monarch, which seemed extremely strange. He suggested that if the ruler really had to deal with this test, then she might know something about the Great Wizard because it was strange that no one knew such a powerful constellation. At the beginning of the battle, he felt how the only one instantly took control of his mentor's seal and easily caught the mirror butterfly. Having gained incredible experience in the recent battle, being on the ground floor gave him an idea of what the base of the tower was. He decided that the surface of the building was where new stories were written, while the foundation of the tower was where the past was repeated. While in this place, it became clear to him why a weak person can become a parasite. Within a moment, he received a message about updating the skill's synchronization indicators with the memory of its predecessors. As expected, the synchronization rate with the only one skyrocketed, and the next time they used the power of a great wizard, their level of interaction would increase. He was so carried away by what was happening after the victory that he completely forgot that his mentor was not next to him. Until the last moment he tried not to show his skill to a more experienced hunter, but in the end, he never managed to avoid using it. In addition, he unknowingly touched his seal, and it seemed to him that after such a nervous comrade would bring him reprisals, but instead, Hajin simply ran away. The feeling of growing moss on his body returned and he thought that it was time to leave this place. To illuminate the room, he decided to use the light skill of the Ripple Constellation, and since this power reduces the strength of the weapon, he used the cheapest knife for this purpose. The blessing of one of the most famous constellations turned out to be very useful when being on the ground floor of the tower. In addition to spreading rays of light across the dark floor, the starlight also protected his body and he no longer felt the sensation of moss growing on his skin. In simple words, with this blessing, he no longer risked becoming a parasite and could peacefully roam the foundation without fear of its terrible effects on ordinary people. He began to rejoice at such a good ability and understood why he was the only one who approved such a strange award. At the moment when the guy was filled with positive emotions, the silhouette of a man with a bright right eye appeared behind him. It was the mentor, and he coldly addressed Beck Ho Min. His ward was very scared from surprise. As it turned out, he also received some kind of blessing from the constellation Ripple, and at that time experienced new power. He said that his blessing was the ability to night vision. Although this skill was very convenient, but in its power it was inferior to that received by the fighter who completed the test by killing the mirror butterfly. Huo Ming breathed a sigh of relief when he realized that his comrade was simply testing out a new power, and was not planning anything treacherous as punishment. Ha Jin said that the constellation Ripple is generous towards its predecessors, and if she were alive, she would be a real role model. The guy was surprised by his mentor's words and stated that she must still be alive, because he was able to see her immediately after completing the test. 
The nervous Kang Ha Jin replied that the constellation Ripple had already ascended to the heavens, and this happened sixteen years ago. He noticed that the ascended constellations can only whisper to them through the starlight, and they are not able to appear before the hunter in their form. Huo Ming was sure that he saw her in some dim light even though it seemed impossible. The more experienced hunter still trusted his words, but could not believe that this could happen. He could no longer continue this conversation, and did not at all want to admit such respect for the pathetic hunter from the constellation. So he turned sharply and coldly said that his student had imagined it, because he had been looking at the reflection of the parasite for too long. Then he offered to follow him, since while testing his skill, he managed to find the rails that would bring them back. Huoming trusted him but could not understand why this impudent guy was acting so calmly. The silence was interrupted by a sudden address from the mentor to the student about what happened on the ground floor. The mention of a recent event infuriated the young hunter, and he decided that it was time to take responsibility for his actions. But his worst expectations were not realized, because the mentor said that they managed to win thanks to the brave actions of the newcomer, so he thanked Ho Min for what he did. Hearing this, Bag Ho Min was surprised and froze in place. He was not ready to hear such pleasant words, so he thought that friendship between them was still possible. He continued to infuriate his more experienced comrade and asked him to repeat these words, looking him in the face. Ridiculous childish jokes on the part of the ward infuriated the mentor, so he displeasedly ordered him to stop and not waste his energy on anything other than returning to the safe zone. After leaving the dungeon, they found themselves on the ninth floor, and upon reaching the tenth floor, they immediately returned back to the ruler's castle where the guys met with the Platinum Monarch, and Ha Jin began his report regarding their recent investigation into the tower's anomalies. First of all, he wanted to describe working in a team with his subordinate. Back believed that although it was not easy, Ha Jin turned out to be a good guy. But his hopes for a positive report were dashed at the same moment when the mentor seriously stated that Ho Min was a useless puppy who was of no use, because he acted erratically and impulsively, which involved the squad in emergency situations. Back Ho Min was very angry at the Elder Hunter's hypocrisy, because he said at the end that his recommendation would be immediate execution and extraction of platinum as the most rational solution to the situation. The girl calmly listened to her subordinate, after which she asked the recruit what his first entrance to the tower was like as a hunter. Because of his comrade's words, he decided to retaliate and stated that Kang Han Jin was a boring piece of crap who was less helpful than a stone, even though he is a senior hunter. With a smile on her face, the overlord accepted their report and said that she was glad that they got along, but her humor was taken very harshly. After this short conversation, Baek Ho Min was able to deviate and return to the restroom to get a good night's sleep and finally take a hot shower. The ruler and her hunter were left alone. The guy realized that his report was not necessary because Mrs. Yun had already made her decision about the recruit. The girl explained to her ward that her order to observe the newcomer was not to assess his character and cooperative capabilities. Despite this, the hunter Khan replied that his student had no place here, because he could discredit the good name of the ruler. Mrs. Yun replied that even if that was true, she still couldn't let this guy be just a stray dog. Ha Jin was not sure if this was a good idea. He believed that if the ruler kept the newcomer by force on a leash, then he would soon escape. And if not, then there was a chance that he would fall from the executioner doll, which the personality believes a secretive hunter dangerous to society. His arguments were indeed logical but the ruler with a sly smile asked her ward not to worry about the danger from the godless paladins. Ha Jin was wary of her plans because he knew that this cunning emotion on her face meant that thoughts and calculations were flowing through her mind. Then the guy moved on to new information regarding structural changes to the tower. He said that seeing the clues left by his teacher, it can be assumed that the cause of these deteriorations is the descent of the constellations. The hunters continued to investigate the reasons for the appearance of the constellations who until now were only concerned with improving and maintaining the tower. After these words, the ruler considered it necessary to warn the master of the capital's guild about the danger. The hunter took this into account. He believed that most likely the hunters who were under the tutelage of the descending constellations would manifest themselves in the near future. In addition, he expected the appearance of more powerful parasites. He also reported an anomaly due to which they were able to find traces of the constellation Ripple, which meant that it could also descend to Earth. The ruler had not heard this name for a long time because the great warrior Ripple died when the Platinum Monarch was only ten years old. At that time, many people mourned her death, as she was a real hero among people. In any case, the Platinum Monarch was ready for any situation. She believed that the constellations take rash actions and thereby do not benefit their predecessors. So the upper echelon must remain on top, and in fact it would be much better if the constellations returned back upward instead of pointlessly complicating the situation. Returning to the previous topic, 
She wanted to hear what the ruler's hunter really thought about his new ward. It was the first time Miss Yun had seen such an emotional report from him, and didn't understand why he was so offended. A little embarrassed, he justified himself that he was not offended, but simply surprised by the guy's skills. He admitted that if Baek Ho Min had received a worthy mentor, he would have become noticeably stronger in no time. The ruler was glad to hear his words, but believed that since the guy was supported by constellations unknown to them, there was no need to think about a stronger mentor. It turned out that during the battle, Ha Jin was able to notice traces of the influence of two constellations, but even so, he could not understand who they were, because these traces were insignificant. For the ruler, the descent of the constellations and the deterioration of survival conditions in the towers did not seem like an ordinary coincidence. She believed that these related phenomena should also include the appearance of a unique creature like Baek Ho Min, who was helped by mysterious constellations unknown to them. The discussion was over and the ruler, accompanied by a maid, went back to the castle. But Ha Jin could not stop thinking about what worried him most. He didn't have the heart to tell the ruler that Baek Ho Min could control his seal as he wished. He was sure that the way he could control the seal was definitely different from the ruler's. The experienced fighter was puzzling over the question of who the talented recruit really was which suddenly interested the Platinum Monarch. While Hunter Can was complicating his life with difficult questions, his simpleton ward was happy with simple things. He took a hot shower, which he could only dream of in the past. In addition, he was pleased with the fact that all his wounds healed quickly. His body began to become stronger and he attributed this to constant training and supplementation. Enjoying the conditions of the new life was suddenly interrupted by a loud knock on the door. Ho Ming was still angry with his comrade and did not want to see him at such a moment. The knocking on the door became unbearably loud and Baek Ho Min angrily opened the door and shouted that breaking the ruler's property was punishable. Rather, he really regretted that he reacted so impudently because the Platinum Monarch herself came to him. Seeing the ruler at the entrance to the bathroom, the guy was confused and began to cover his body, after which he awkwardly asked what Mrs. Yun was doing here. She explained her persistent attempt to enter by saying that the worry that the clumsy ward could drown in the bathtub took over. Still... Taking a shower for two hours seemed strange. The unsure guy replied that this is due to the fact that he does not often have the opportunity to take a hot bath. His excuse was useless, and the lady said that if he had finished, then he needed to follow her, as she wanted to reward him for the completed task. Ho Min was surprised at her words because he did not understand what kind of reward there could be any talk of while he was her debtor. The lord and her hunter went to the office, where the lady noticed that the guy was rather rude with his hands. She explained that most hunters don't worry too much about maintaining their seal, but to maximize the effectiveness of their skills, it's worth taking care of it. A little embarrassed by the gentle hands of the Platinum Monk, the guy agreed with her words and promised that he would be more careful in the future. The Platinum Monarch believed that the tower system was not perfect, and although a seal made of gold could be repaired, a seal made of steel was different, so it was important to maintain its condition manually. Based on her words, the guy came to the conclusion that in this case the ruler would personally take care of his condition every week. His reward was another coin. The overlord was going to improve his seal with platinum. Frightened by his debt to the state, Baek Ho Min felt how quickly he was losing his freedom and asked not to bother using expensive materials. But despite his reaction, the platinum monarch replied that there was nothing wrong with it because it was a simple bodily enhancement that would help a guy avoid consequences for being so rude to his body. She was not going to stop with just this gain and the guy thanked her for the much-needed help. When the ruler finished the procedure, Ho Ming began to feel changes. It was unusual for him that his skin felt toned and elastic to the touch. Because of this he had the feeling that he was now more resilient than before. The Platinum Monarch said with pity that if she could delve into her subordinate seal, stronger enhancements would be available to him. Looking into the eyes of the shy guy, she added that this was impossible because of his constellations. Although it would be good if they were understanding of the goodwill of the Lord of the Tower. The guy thought about her words. He understood that he would become even stronger as a hunter. There were no downsides to this. But on the other hand, he was afraid that there might be unexpected consequences due to the fact that he would reveal to her all the knowledge about the constellations that support him. At that moment, Dynamite reacted positively to the situation, and the thoughtful guy nervously asked the constellations to be patient and sit still at such an exciting moment. The girl was surprised by his words, because they were only the two of them in the room, and she was sure that the guy would not allow himself such rudeness towards Her Majesty. Realizing the awkwardness of the situation, the confused guy began to make excuses that he was not addressing this to the lady at all. But the Platinum Monk understood everything. She said that if he was not addressing her, then it was addressed to his constellations. And if this is so, then they can hear and understand him perfectly. Thoughtless talkativeness put the guy in an awkward position. But despite this, 
At the same time, all the constellations reacted positively. He needed to do something without making the situation worse. So he began his response with words of gratitude. He went on to say that he would not want anyone to take his seal apart piece by piece. Turning to her ward, the girl reminded him that he was her hunter, and she was his boss. Mrs. Yuen took the guy by the hand and said that they have a common goal, to rise to the top of the tower for the sake of humanity, and that is why they are risking their lives. Based on this logic, it was difficult for her to guess what the reason was that Ho Min did not want to tell anything without permission. The guy was confused and thought about how to justify himself, but the ruler continued her speech. She shared her opinion that Ho Min is indeed a very talented guy who wants to help develop. She believed that he had a responsibility to receive care commensurate with his skills, at least from this point on. And to do that, she needed to know his abilities and limitations. Hearing her words, Beck Ho Min thought that she was not lying. So he began to doubt that he should suffer for hiding his abilities from others. He began to think that if he could lure the Platinum Monarch to his side, then he would be under the tutelage of the most authoritative person in this city. The conversation became more and more frank, and Mrs. Yoon admitted that she really lacked reliable people with both strength and loyalty, so she would be glad if he joined her of his own free will. In response, Bak Ho Min explained his behavior by saying that he has never worked with anyone he can completely trust, and because of this, he cannot become a good mentee for anyone. The Platinum Monarch explained his feelings by saying that he has no experience working with those he trusts, so he wants to be completely confident in the person. Her words let the guy know that she fully understood what was going on, so he agreed with the assumption. To solve the problem, the ruler proposed to strengthen trust between them by starting something on a larger scale, after which she asked if the guy had experience with women. The guy was surprised by her question and hesitantly answered that, unfortunately, no. The answer satisfied the Platinum Monarch and she admitted that in that case they were similar. After that, she suddenly wondered what would happen if they started treating each other as romantic partners, at least until they could build trust. The Overlord's mention of the option of a romantic relationship with his pathetic ward simply shocked the guy. Hearing this, the constellations were shocked. The Great Wizard thought that the Platinum Monarch had gone crazy, while Dynamite, on the contrary, was happy and began to root for the guy, encouraging him that he could do it. Dynamite believed that the Platinum Monarch's reaction was definitely different from her past lives, as she had never shown such kindness to Beck Homin. His words did not please the great wizard at all, who with all his soul hated the woman, because of whom none of them could complete the full passage of the tower. So he declared that there could be no talk of any kindness of the Platinum Monarch, since her heart was blacker than black. Dynamite explained that their presence in this place is proof that they failed. This was why he believed that there was a possibility that befriending the Platinum Monarch could be the key to solving their curse, and the current Huo Ming was their truest hope. He introduced him as Miss Yun's husband and asked if the others thought it was great that their new reincarnation was paving a new path through this kind of intimate relationship. But his words did not in any way influence the opinion of the only one, and he stated that regardless of whether they date or even if they become husband and wife, it is all nonsense when they talk about the cruel Platinum Monarch. Meanwhile, Huo Ming, who was the hope of the constellations, still could not fully understand the situation. He had to ask the Platinum Monarch on a date, even though he had never courted a girl in his life. He had girlfriends, but he never considered them romantically, because his head was always filled with thoughts of survival. For help, he turned to the only person to whom he could confess about his first date. He came to the executioner doll, but the girl did not fully understand why he chose her. He replied that of everyone he knows, Mrs. Doll is the best suited because he can only ask her for this. This was really true because he could not ask Kang Ha Jin for advice, because that hunter lord is unrequitedly in love with his mistress, and if he finds out that there is something of a romantic nature between his ward and the platinum monarch, the consequences will be terrifying. The commander of the tough and intimidating squad of paladins sighed heavily, because being a knight means abstaining from unnecessary feelings, and in fact she has much more experience fighting women than dating. But when it comes to romantic stories, she admitted that hardly anyone could beat her in them, so she was confident in her ability to give love advice. In addition, she could not refuse the guy because for her, watching other people's relationships is pure pleasure. Still, a girl is a girl, and when it comes to romance, she could not resist and agreed which solved the problems of the stupid hunter overlord. First of all, they decided to find him good clothes for the first date. But what Ho Min himself liked did not suit her at all. His styles seemed too primitive and unattractive. So after another ridiculous fitting of clothes, she asked him to find something adequate before she finished him off. Still, she could not trust the guy with such an important task and chose the clothes herself, which this time the hunter himself did not like. This was the lesser evil. The executioner turned around and asked the guy to stop with this option. Otherwise, she would not be able to stand it and he would say goodbye to his life. The guy had no other choice and went to the checkout, 
where he was informed that it would cost him 270,000 won. When the seller said the amount, an awkward pause began. The girls were shocked that the young man went on a date, but did not take the money with him. He justified himself by saying that his beloved said not to take money with him, because she was very rich. The lack of manners on the part of this idiot forced the doll to pay for him, while simultaneously threatening him with violence, if the debt was not repaid. Ho Ming knew the dangers of not keeping his word to the commander of the paladin squad, so he swore that he would definitely repay the debt. The guy's ignorance ruined the girl's entire understanding of Mrs. Yun's date. She angrily declared that if someone like him was the main character of a romantic novel, she would find him and destroy him without any delay, at any cost. After leaving the store, the paladin coldly asked the hopeless guy where they would go for a walk. Ho Min replied that he planned to walk with the lady through the back streets, since most people there are poorly oriented, while he knows very good places. The guy misunderstood the girl's reaction and thought that he was doing well. But in fact, the doll was not surprised, but was shocked by the ignorance of the ruler's lover. She grabbed her sword with incredible fury, believing that she was right when she thought that killing this man would be salvation for all women in this world. But it was too late to save the beauties from the fool, because Mrs. Yoon appeared next to them. The guys did not expect her to appear. With a joyful face, Ho Min said that So Hyun came too early, because there was still one hour before their date. The pretty girl put on very unusual ordinary clothes for herself. It was a delicate pink dress. She asked what the commander of the paladin squad was doing next to her personal hunter. The girl began to think about how to explain this awkward situation, respecting the chain of command, but the ruler did not let her finish. The platinum monarch said that unfortunately for the paladin, she and Baek Ho Min had a preliminary agreement and if the doll still had something to do with him, it would be better to leave it for later. After that, without hiding her intentions, Mrs. Yun confidently grabbed the guy's hand. She led the guy along and a blush appeared on his face from the determination of the girl with whom they were going to move to a completely different level of trust. Saying goodbye to the Madam Executioner, the guy thanked her for her help. As it turned out, the squad leader only now found out that the girl the hunter was talking about was Miss Yun. While walking around the city, the guy, as usual, addressed the girl using the official chain of command. But she replied that since this was a personal meeting, he should call her Yoon So Hyun. She also asked him not to use polite address and anything like that that is used in communication between a ruler and a ward. The guy quickly grasped the essence of their behavior and asked how So Hyun was able to find out that he was in this particular place. The girl, with a sly but sincere smile, admitted that she had previously installed a tracking sensor in his seal, and now, wherever he goes, whatever he does, she receives all the information about it. The guy showed surprise and artificial calm, thinking that such things were not talked about with such a calm smile as the strange girl who forced him to go on a date. He still didn't understand the essence of the date and it seemed to him that it was a romantic walk, where the girl drags the guy along wherever she wants. In a sense he was right, so Hyun dragged him by the hand to walk through the back streets, as he had wanted earlier. His plan from start to finish was simply ingenious. Local onlookers were already in anticipation of stealing jewelry, because when they looked at the girl, they immediately realized that she was rich. They had been waiting for this moment for a long time and reached into their hidden pockets for bladed weapons, which would allow them to easily take possession of the money of a nice couple who had wandered into a place that was not the best for walking. Noticing the thieves' reaction to their appearance, several convolutions of our hunter's withered brain became active, and he slowly realized that choosing back streets as a place for a date was a mistake. He understood that conflict could not be avoided so he reached for the knife that he had taken with him for safety purposes. Suddenly, the guys who were going to earn extra money thanks to their incredible luck were shocked by something. The thieves, scared to death, rushed from their place. Previously, their appearance had not caused them any concern, so he wondered what they might have seen that could change their plans for the evening. As it turned out, Mrs. Executioner Doll quite openly monitored their movements. Their date turned out to be extremely productive. It was eight hours of power walking, from which the already travel-exhausted guy was damn tired. Looking around, he noticed that even his love advisor was very bored. The girl noticed his anxiety and admitted that they were doing something wrong, after which she asked if he felt his accelerated heartbeat. The confused guy replied that he could feel his heartbeat, but it was a normal heart rhythm and not the same excited sensation that we should be talking about. With a calm smile, the girl replied that in this case, this can only mean one thing, that their date was unsuccessful. Since this was a fact, she suggested doing something that would make their hearts flutter. After these words, the guy felt an accelerated heartbeat because he didn't know what was going to be discussed. As you may have guessed, she was referring to the most romantic of all possible entertainments, gambling in an establishment crowded with alcoholics and people with low social responsibility. 
The girl did not waste time on trifles and began to bet immediately from one hundred thousand one. Her impudence seemed something funny to the visitors of the establishment around them. Huo Ming felt awkward because he didn't even think that this was what she meant by trepidation. A kind man who was engaged in scamming naive visitors, taking advantage of their excitement, cheerfully announced that now they would find out whether Lady Luck would bless this girl this time. As expected, unfortunately for everyone, it was another failure. And so Hyun was unable to choose the appropriate option eight times in a row. It's hard to believe that someone as terrifying as So Hyun would deliberately allow some scammer to take her money. Huo Min said that since they had already lost a million won, they should stop in time and get out of here. The girl answered with a confident smile that she was not ready to give up, so she was going to at least return what she had lost. Huo Ming was simply shocked. He did not suspect that it was because of her cunning, so he assumed that the Platinum Monarch was addicted to gambling. The swindler was happier than ever. He thought that there was some kind of dumbass in front of him, and this catch would provide him with a luxurious life for the next month. As expected, the girl lost again, and the man asked if she wanted to continue. The crowd of onlookers that gathered around this spectacle was impatient to hear the answer of the naive beauty. With a smile on her face, she turned to the guy and said that, apparently, she was not having the best day, and that it was not even suitable for a date. In response, the guy showed courage and calmly offered to leave it and move on. He still did not understand that So Hyun was a demon in the flesh. The girl recalled her words that she would return what she had lost after which she reached into her handbag for more money. Unexpectedly for all visitors to the establishment, she took out a gold coin with a calm face. Huo Ming was shocked that her passion had led her to the point where she was willing to sacrifice such value. Seeing the girl's bet, the scammer was shocked. He thought that this naive beauty was crazy. He didn't understand what was happening, but at one point he even suggested that in fact he himself was the prey. Things got much more serious when the girl asked to start and assumed that the man knew what would happen if he backed out. Fearing the consequences, the man began to rearrange the glasses in order to confuse the player. He couldn't break the rules of the back streets and leave everything as it was. The trembling in his body led to his hands shaking so much that he couldn't even use the tricks that had worked before. The excited man finished the shuffle and invited the girl to choose her lucky option. He thought that he still had not lost because he still had an ace up his sleeve. Before choosing the winning option, the girl asked the guy how he felt at that moment. The excited guy replied that his heart was indeed fluttering not because of the date, but because So Hyun bet a whole gold coin. After his answer, the girl pointed to the glass, which seemed right to her, and said that this was the end of their performance. Hearing her words, the man was simply shocked. When he raised his glass, it turned out that the choice was wrong, and with a trembling voice, the fraudster announced another defeat. Yoon Seo Hyun made him think that she was indeed his catch from the beginning. Ho Min couldn't believe that she really lost, because he thought that So Hyun deliberately lost until she could bet a really large amount. The girl with a sad look calmly said that this time she was also confident in her choice. After that, she took out a whole bunch of gold coins and put them on the table. The audience was shocked. It was a great warm-up. The incredible growth of the bank fueled interest in the beauty's crazy passion without any luck. With a cold look, she suggested playing again. The fraudster could not believe his eyes. He had never seen such inadequate rich girls that they were ready to sacrifice an entire fortune because of their passion. But it was not fate to end their battle. A noisy woman, accompanied by armed men, suddenly appeared in the establishment and shouted that everyone present should disperse immediately. As it turned out, she was the boss of the scammer who was playing with Yoon So Hyun. The impudent and filled with anger woman drove away her ward and sat down in his place at the gaming table. Onlookers began to scatter after hearing the words of those whose absolute power in these nooks and crannies cannot be challenged. The woman nervously asked the girl who she was in response. So Hyun calmly asked whether the local authority was really going to take the entire bank, despite the fact that the player never returned what she lost. The woman, dissatisfied with the situation, said that she saw right through the young girl, and it was obvious to her that she had not come to this place to spend the change that was lying in her pocket. But at one moment, she completely forgot about the suspicious visitor, and switched to the young man who stood behind her. She shouted that he was the same scoundrel who killed the elder. This turn of events was something the guy couldn't even imagine. Since the woman recognized him, it was logical to assume that she was one of the spider legs. After the words of the local back alley boss, her thugs began to draw bladed weapons to exact revenge. The guy realized that role-playing games are over, and now he has no choice but to fight for his life. The shy guy's gaze suddenly turned into that of a real predator. He declared that whoever drew his sword would have his head split in two. At that moment, the girl decided to take the situation more seriously, and slyly said that if the local authority wanted to increase the bank, then it was time to add platinum to it. The old woman was shocked by the presence of such a rare metal in this place, 
and shouted that this was a platinum monarch, after which she boldly asked how the ruler got into their nook. The lady, known for her cruelty, answered with a cold gaze that she was on a date. To demonstrate to those present the seriousness of the situation, another girl joined their conflict, making people's blood run cold. Of course, it was an executioner doll. She turned to the elder's thugs and said that if they tried to do anything, their head would say goodbye to their neck. The woman was simply shocked and asked what the Platinum Monarch's plan was. She believed that they were initially following her. The girl mysteriously repeated the word plan, after which she said that she just wanted to return what she had lost. Hearing her words, one of the spider legs could not believe that their meeting was pure failure, which could cost her life. In order not to drag things out, Yoon So Hyun offered to choose between drawing the swords of both sides and continuing the game. The choice was obvious, and the dissatisfied woman took up the glasses. Gambling was her thing, but it seemed strange to her that even though the Platinum Monarch could forcefully obtain the necessary information, she still offered to play. The woman had spent decades in this field and could definitely say that the new scammer from their team was able to fool her with ease. But suddenly for everyone present, the smiling girl with the highest power in the tower announced that since luck was not on her side, Bak Ho Min would play for her. The worst enemy of the spider group entered the battle and the old woman realized that it would be more difficult because this guy was born in the back streets. After replacing the player, the woman boldly stated that in this case, they would also change the conditions. And this time it would be the visitors who would interfere with the cups. Her step was very logical. She believed that the guy might notice the cheating, but he would not have enough experience to fool her most experienced eyes. The girl asked if Beck would mind playing under such conditions. The guy calmly replied, that since the circumstances were this way, then he would do it. After which he sat down at the gaming table. Looking into his opponent's eyes, he remembered Dynamite's words about how he had enjoyed this from the moment they started playing. Most likely, this constellation has something up its sleeve. Using his skill, the guy chose the necessary life and behind him was the silhouette of a guy who is a professional in this type of activity. Ho Ming turned to the knowledge of his predecessor in order to outplay the self-confident old woman. His synchronization with the constellation and gambling experience was extremely high. So Hyun, watching his movements, tried to guess the right glass herself. She believed that her ward would be able to cope with such an unexpected task. The shuffle was completed, and one of the authorities of the spider group, with a trembling hand, raised the glass, under which it was empty. She was simply shocked. In a frightened voice, she suggested that such a trick most likely required the use of some kind of high-class cheating skill. In response, the guy simply sighed and continued to look his enemy straight in the eyes. In fact, he himself did not know what kind of trick Dynamite had pulled, but he was sure that this constellation simply adored excitement and magic. Using his memory skill, he simply rearranged the cups nonchalantly before making a sliding sound with his left hand. The next deceptive maneuver was a false cough and a light knock on the table. It's hard to connect the meaning of these actions, but it doesn't matter. The self-esteem of the woman who considered herself the queen of gambling was destroyed and she angrily began shouting insults at the enemy of her organization. The guy replied that she shouldn't forget the rule of the streets, which says that if you don't know how you were deceived, then it's better just not to open your impudent mouth. Calm. So Hyun announced the winner and invited the old woman to pay. The situation could not have been worse for a member of the spider group. She understood that her song would be sung if she was captured here by the Platinum Monarch. She had no choice but to order her charges to kill the overlord. After her words, hundreds of sharp needles appeared in the air and attacked everyone without going overboard. As it turned out, the strength of the guy's skin allowed him to get out of this situation without serious injuries. He was shocked by the crime lord's brutal decision to attack everyone present without going overboard, so he kicked a chair at her. After a diversionary maneuver, Ho Min rushed to attack the enemy leader. He easily grabbed the woman and pinned her head to the floor. The thugs were ready to engage in battle with the brazen murderer of the elder, but as it turned out, these guys had one brain cell between them. Ho Ming calmly warned that if they moved, then they would say goodbye to their lives along with the old hag he had already captured. Awareness of the hopelessness of the situation prevented the death of the stupid thugs. Having dealt with the enemy leader, the guy looked around and asked the ruler if everything was okay. The girl replied that she did not have any problems, which was not strange, because not a single needle reached her body. They were all spread out within the range of her mysterious power. Still, it would be foolish to expect anything less from the Platinum Monarch. The chaos during the date began to spoil the romantic atmosphere, so the girl suggested moving to a quieter place. This place turned out to be the roof of one of the abandoned high-rise buildings in Seoul. The girl put her hands on the neck of the no longer so impudent woman, and warned that she would ask her a couple of questions regarding the safety of this city. She said that in recent times there has been an increase in the production of counterfeit money, incidents of violence including murders in the tower and other crimes. It all looked like an attempt to turn the city upside down. 
So she asked the woman if this mess was a betrayal. The frightened woman replied that this was not true and that she was just trying to survive. In response to these words, So Hyun stated that no matter what excuse the defendant has, betrayal is betrayal. So it would be nice of her to tell the truth at such a responsible moment before the law. The second question concerned the fact that an accomplice of the spider group, known as a tattoo artist, was discovered in the SEAL guild. After mentioning this information, she asked if there were similar traitors in other guilds. The woman furiously replied that she knew nothing, since she only directed bankrupt people to the group. The cold hand of the cruel ruler made the fraudster tremble, she continued her answer, saying that she did not know who began to work for the organization among those whom she sent as candidates. After this answer, So Hyun thought about it and admitted that there was some benefit from this interrogation. After these words, the girl suddenly generated a third question and asked how the cheater at that table could constantly win. One of the spider legs replied that there was a small hole in the table that was used to remove the coin from the cup. Hearing this answer, the girl's head began to boil with the understanding that it was all a deception. Ho Min and the old woman were simply shocked by her words, because they had previously believed that the girl was pretending to fall for this scam. However, work distracted her from her sadness. She began the execution of a criminal, who was accused of horrific atrocities. The woman began to shout in displeasure that this was unfair, because she answered all the questions. But in response, so Hyun reminded her that there was no talk of saving her. The Platinum Monk was not even too lazy to explain in the last moments of the scammer that if they let her go, then she will die at the hands of the Executioner doll, since she is considered a strict observer of the Constitution and the law. Ho Ming only confirmed her words. He said that that crazy girl is a perfectionist and began to nod his head importantly. In the last moments of her life, she turned to the guy and said in panic that he had no idea who he was working for because their group was just trying to survive in a place where everything was ruled by an extremely cruel ruler. Ho Ming calmly replied that in that case, they shouldn't have started all these treacherous plots. The woman shouted that the crazy girl who had taken possession of his dexterity and strength would kill everyone in this city. As it turned out, she believed that they all needed a new ruler before it was too late, because if this did not happen, they would all die, and the spider group had irrefutable evidence regarding this information. Her last words were the phrase that they were not planning anything, but were only trying to stop the Platinum Monarch, who was going to destroy all people. As expected, what followed was not a sight for the faint of heart. But the guy was more impressed because of the woman's last words, which connected with the information that the Elder spoke about in the last moments of his life. The execution was completed, and even the doll, which was monitoring their safety from a considerable distance, felt it. Miss Yun did not expect that a work-related situation would occur at the end of their date. Ho Ming thought that if the words of the spider legs were true, then this city was fraught with some kind of great conspiracy. He was distracted from his thoughts about the current situation by a girl who said that it was midnight, time to rebuild the tower. Their date continued, so she decided not to be distracted from this process, and suggested moving closer to the edge of the building. So Hyun again returned to her previous relaxed conversation, and drew the guy's attention to the stars, which looked incredibly beautiful. Her manipulation was accompanied by tactile contact. She took the guy by the hand and asked if his heart had ever fluttered during their date. Looking at the girl, the guy was confused and didn't know what to answer, but his blush on his face spoke for him. With a sweet smile, she asked him to go on another date. He never thought that he would see the ruler so tender and caring. Looking at the stars, the guy called this proposal a good idea. After spending time with the Platinum Monarch, Huo Ming returned to his mentor's room. Looking at this poor fellow, he thought that Kang Hajin was absolutely unrequitedly in love with the Platinum Monarch. He was also sure that, in fact, the girl was in love with him. This love triangle was incredibly problematic because you had to think carefully about how to convey such sad news to a nervous guy. As expected, Hunter Kang noticed his student's gaze and nervously asked him to say what he wanted. In response to his words, Huo Ming began to behave awkwardly. He jumped out of his seat in a cold sweat and decided to inquire about their joint mission since he could not say what was actually on his mind. He explained that this could be a permanent change, so the mission is quite important, and it is time for them to go on a mission. The fact that they would have to work together again was very unpleasant news for the new hunter overlord. But this was not strange, since the order to monitor the newcomer was still relevant. Ho Min did not understand what exactly worried the Platinum Monarch. It seemed to him that after the date she would begin to trust him and her wards and representatives of the Paladins would no longer follow him. Due to such an unpleasant situation, he sighed heavily and quietly said that in this world one cannot trust anyone except the constellations that support him with the help of a skill. As expected, 
Hunter Kang didn't hear his words and asked him to hurry up instead of chatting to himself. The trip to the 10th floor turned out to be a difficult task for the guy's vestibular system and he quickly became seasick, which is why he became a victim of ridicule from his mentor. On the other hand, the guy had an argument that Hunter Khan had no right to talk about this at the moment when he himself was holding the basin in his hands. Naturally, his words were filled with logic, and Ha Jin could not answer. The awkward pause was interrupted by the appearance of a hunter from the Weapons Guild who decided to greet the ruler's hunters, whose arrival he had previously heard. Addressing the guys, he said that Sir Geomuk conveyed that he would like to meet with them personally. Ha Jin replied that if he said so, it is not such an important issue. Huo Ming asked if his mentor had ever seen the hunter Geomuk. He had previously heard that this man was a war hero, and he was also from the first generation of constellations. It is known that Sir Geomuk is the founder of the Hunters Association and a living legend. He currently owns the Weapons Guild. In the past, he was the one who paved the way through the tower on the front line, and now he is the hero who protects people from parasites. For the young hunter, it seemed strange that the owner of the Weapons Guild was not involved in it but instead worked as a protector. In response, the mentor said that this is due to the fact that Sir Geomuk is simply incredible. A long time ago, there was an organization called the Church of Eternity, and their leader was called the Ruler. At that time, the evil influence of the Eternity Church was simply enormous. However, one ruler had the right to speak with the tower, and the constellations had no time for that. While conquering the tower, they did not pay attention to the state of the city. The leader of the Church of Eternity put an end to the people's complaints with his cruelty and immorality. But one day a new ruler unexpectedly appeared, she was only 17 years old. But with the appearance of the titled ruler, a civil war immediately broke out in the city. People's discontent continued to grow rapidly. Those who came to the girl's defense and pushed for the uprising were the Alchemy Guild. Hearing the mention of this guild, Ho Ming was surprised, because he believed that these stingy hunters would hardly dare to take such a risky step. In response, his mentor explained that it was precisely the fear of loss of profit that pushed them to this. The fact is that the leader of the church revived his dead followers and he had the power to heal incurable diseases. As expected, from the perspective of the Alchemy Guild, he was a hindrance to their business. The Alchemy Guild, having its own reasons, supported the girl who unexpectedly became the new ruler. Under her command, the uprising came into motion. And so began the war between the blue and white forces. Even in the midst of all this, the Church of Eternity maintained its power and influence on society. Moreover, the Hunters Association and Paladins joined their forces. Because of this, it seemed that the Church of Eternity had won, and the participants in the rebellion were divided and lost hope. And then the constellation Geomuk came to the rescue. One of the people of the first generation, the founder of the Hunters Association, returned to the city. At that time, Geomuk threw everything away to put all his strength into conquering the tower. He even gave up his position as leader of the Hunters Association to achieve his goal. But one way or another, all the hunters continued to respect him. When he returned from the tower, he chose the girl as the new ruler, and even the prophet, who had just become a constellation, took her side. The war began to take a new turn, and as soon as they sided with the new ruler, the hunters' association also switched sides. The battles were bloody, and there were heavy losses on both sides, so it seemed that this battle would bring the city to its fall. At that difficult moment, the Executioner doll appeared on the front line along with the heads of the leader of the Paladins and the church employees. Thus the Paladins turned into godless Paladins. Hearing this, the guy felt a trembling and noted with a laugh that such actions were in her spirit. Thus, the Church of Eternity fell apart and a new ruler reigned victoriously. Then the Hunters Association split and the participants began to disperse into different guilds. Hearing this, the guy assumed that the Platinum Monarch had become the new ruler, and he was right. Ultimately. The Executioner doll put an end to this civil war, but it is worth noting that if Sir Geomuk had not appeared, then such a turn of events would not have happened. Therefore, even though the Platinum Monarch became the ruler, people still continue to say that Geomuk should have taken the throne instead of her. From this, Homin realized that Geomuk was simply forced to flee the city in order to avoid a new uprising. After talking about the Great Warrior, Hajin returned to the task in the tower and reminded that its concept is clearly divided into every ten floors where, as they already know, the base of the first floor is the foundation with buried ruins and the forest above them, and the base of the second is a battlefield steeped in battle. Listening to their conversation, the warlike king said with a smile that it brought back memories since he spent a lot of time on the second floor. Dynamite sighed heavily and said that just looking at the sandy desert disgusted him, because around the tenth floor, the consumption of potions reaches the ceiling and the alchemists work without rest. 
The great wizard reacted to their words with ridicule and declared that he himself skipped the second staircase and immediately went to the third. Despite this, he knows Jeomuk's opinion about what is happening there. For the hero of humanity, this place is literally cursed. When meeting the guys, he bluntly said that the second floor is a shitty place and the higher you go, the worse it gets. Seeing such an unremarkable man that he resembled a thief from the back streets of his hometown, Homan was surprised, because in his mind this skinny man cannot be a hero of humanity. Leaning against his sword, Sir Geomuk asked the hunter ruler what was going on under this tower. He said he didn't ask about it if it was just some structural changes. But he was worried about the elevators closing and the unknown constellations starting to leave their places. In response, the ruler's hunter assured that the city was in perfect order under the rule of the Platinum Monarch, after which he shared rumors that the venerable hero had found a high-level parasite. The man replied that such monsters usually appear on the 17th floor and above, but this time he met him on the 11th. In fact, they themselves could take care of its extermination, but it seemed to him that he should first inform the anomaly investigation team. He noticed that Hajin did not come alone and thoughtfully said that he was seeing the boy for the first time. Bayek Homin immediately responded to his interest and began introducing himself, but as it turned out, there was no point. The arrogant hero sighed heavily and told him not to bother himself because there was no point in memorizing the name of the hunter of the ruler, who, like his colleagues, was unlikely to live more than a year. The hot-tempered Ho Ming wanted to attack him with dissatisfied words that Sir Jiomuk himself looked no better than a dead man, but the mentor stopped his stupid ward in time. After this, the hunter Khan asked the skinny hero if he would mind if their research team went to the place where the high-level parasite appeared. He clarified that it is not a matter of trust in the hunters from the weapons guild, but that the problem of structural changes is a problem of the entire tower, and one of such anomalies was discovered on the lower floors associated with the foundation. The guy said that the anomaly was connected with how the constellation Ripple passed its test with the mirror butterfly. Having verified this with the help of a celestial observatory, they learned that she was one of the constellations that began to move. The guy suggested that most likely the structures associated with it also began to move. Lately, the star Ripple had been shining as brightly as the North Star so it was logical to assume that this was a serious matter. Therefore, he needed to know if Sir Geomuk had recently noticed any problems in the mirror room on the 10th floor. The guy's question turned out to be very insightful and accurate, so the man first thought about it, after which he coldly replied that he had not noticed anything. Hearing the answer, Hajin explained his interest by saying that there are concerns that if something happens in the mirror room, then new anomalies may arise on the 10th floor. The guy's tone evoked some dissatisfaction and a hero recognized by humanity and he said that it seemed strange that the ruler was worried at a time when troops of the Weapons Guild were here. After his words, the ruler's hunter realized that Sir Geomuk could be hiding something, hiding behind his own pride as a warrior. To avoid arousing suspicion, he respectfully apologized for saying it without thinking. Sir Geomuk did not answer and simply continued to stare piercingly. Huo Ming watched this situation tensely and silently. He was immersed in thoughts about what the battles would be like on the floor where the Mirror Butterfly test room was previously located. Before the guys left the hero's camp, he told them that Hunter Lee Il-Ho would give more detailed information regarding the events on the floors, so that the research would go smoothly. As the man began to walk away, Huo Ming wondered out loud that such a skinny hero could become a constellation. Dissatisfied, Ha Jin asked him not to act like an idiot, because such things can only be said where they cannot hear you. The guys went to the desert of the 10th floor and on the way to the next stop, Hunter Il-Ho said that the 11th floor is where, in their opinion, the changes took place. There was a hill with a broken flagpole. Upon hearing the news of the missing hunters, the Weapons Guild Fortress sent several people to help. Fighting every day, the parasites continued to try to raise the flag from the other side. Looking around, Homing noticed one of the parasites. There were more than enough of these guys here. If there were no serious problems with the monster, they simply called them dead, since they were harmless and simply wandered around the desert. Such monsters are located on the second staircase and can move calmly even with mortal wounds. But their brain is one with the brain of parasites, that is, after death they do not die, but become parasites. Ho Ming said that it would be more logical to call them zombies, but it wasn't that simple. The guy explained that unlike zombies, to kill a parasite you need to cut its heart and take the gold, or bury its body where there is a lack of starlight. In addition, the vast majority of these parasites of the second ladder are people who died in battle. After this clarification, Il Huo revealed that they had previously sent three main hunters and twenty soldiers to the hill with a broken flagpole and if a high-level species appeared, it should be taken care of without any problems. He saw no point in the ruler wasting time on this, but since the Platinum Monk's hunters had arrived on the scene, he was forced to invite them to look around. 
The speech of one of the great hero's wards made it clear that the weapons guild was not very happy to see them on the territory that was their conditional camp. Within a moment, Ha Jin felt hostility. He took out his twin blades and asked his comrade to prepare for a fight. Looking around, Huo Ming was shocked that the aggressive parasites were right in front of them. There was a whole crowd of dead people who surrounded the exhausted guy from the weapons guild who had fallen to the ground. The guys decided to hurry up in order to save him in time. Noticing their appearance, the parasites rushed to attack. The mentor turned to his mentee and asked him to be careful and remember the words that these guys are different from the parasites that he saw. But the method of killing is the same. After that, he was the first to rush into the attack and demonstrated a method for destroying such zombies. With one blow, the guy destroyed the monster's heart. After that, he reached his hand inside his wound, saying that these monsters will not die even if their heads are cut off. Therefore, the only option for victory was to wound them in the heart area in order to get gold from their body, which feeds them with vital energy. While fighting such parasites, Homing noticed the difference in difficulty and noticed that these guys were not close in strength to those who were on the first floor. He had the feeling that he was fighting with another hunter, and this was very logical, because the parasites took over the body of those who died here earlier. The reward was quite good, but holding the mind gold in his hands, the guy began to whine because this method of earning money was difficult. When the guy heard the roar and the monsters approaching his back, he realized that he had no time to be distracted. One of the parasites swung high and Ho Ming managed to strike him with a quick jerk. But after a moment he regretted his decision, because he was unable to immobilize the enemy's body in such a way that he did not feel any pain. Ho Min found himself defenseless, so his mentor saved him. Using a knife tied to a cable, he could make long-range attacks without worrying about losing a valuable item. Returning the knife back to his hands, he turned to his ward and noticed that he was fighting too aggressively, after which he advised him to work more efficiently and not waste energy. The stubborn guy didn't want to hear the advice of his mentor, with whom they didn't get along very well. So he boldly asked how many monsters such an effective fighter managed to kill during this time. Continuing to fight, Hajin killed two more parasites, and then said that while his student was playing with one enemy, he managed to get rid of seven of the same monsters. Watching the more experienced hunter, Huo Ming noticed that the mentor's blade was not that big, but nevertheless, it made fist-sized holes in their hearts. At that moment he realized what was happening. Hunter Can uses a special position when he strikes, and it causes his blade to rotate. Noting this feature of the fighting style, he decided to turn to the memory of the warlike king in order to gain experience in a battle where there was no danger of losing due to the irrational use of his seal. Huo Ming set himself the task of quickly piercing the enemy and turning the blade. Having selected a suitable victim, he activated his predecessor's abilities and rushed to the attack. His attack was simply instantaneous and caused significant harm to the monster. Besides the fact that he managed to make a perfectly round hole in the parasite's chest without sacrificing the accuracy of the attack. With one quality attack, he managed to reduce the time taken and effectively get rid of the enemy. The mind-blowing success of his ward simply shocked his mentor. He could not believe that the guy was able to repeat his skill, honed over years in practice in just one attempt. Moreover, Huo Ming began to laugh loudly and continued to kill parasites with this move without any difficulty. It was hard to call it an ordinary talent, and Ha Jin was furious as he felt the power of the constellation being involved in this situation. As it turned out, at one time the warlike king learned this technique from Kang Ha Jin. But even before he helped his reincarnation, Huo Ming himself was thinking about using rotational force. The constellations felt that the guy who instilled hope in their souls had become noticeably stronger. Less positive words belong to the eldest among the constellations. The magician said that even if Ho Ming has become stronger, it still takes him a lot of time to fight the dead. And if they brought a magician with them, it would be over much faster. In addition, Dynamite noted that it would be very nice if they had an alchemist with them but the warlike king believed that they would hardly need such a fighter in their squad. The reaction of the constellations to the words of the youngest among them was sharp and aggressive. The warlike king immediately began to feel guilty, so he began to apologize and made excuses that he meant that they did not need an alchemist in the squad, since Beck Ho Min could prepare medicine himself. The great wizard explained Dynamite's dissatisfaction by the fact that when he was one of the reincarnated, there was a guy in his circle who also doubted the need for the alchemist's power. After Dynamite heard that the alchemist was not needed on the expedition, he became very angry and decided that he would show them how important a creature he was to the tower. After six months since it began, after six months since it began to operate, all the parasites from the 11th to 13th floors were killed. After that, if a hunter died there, he did not become a parasite. For this, he received his first star as a reward for an incredible act. Having heard the story of the life of the previous Ho Ming, the warlike king showed admiration for his comrade's deed believing that clearing the floors completely and making sure that no one else became a parasite was not just a skill, 
but something similar to the power of distorting the very structure of the tower. Dynamite thanked him for the compliment with a smile. Nevertheless, the Warlike King's assumption was true, and the Great Wizard decided to mention the specialization of this constellation, saying that he was ridiculing the skill of creating medicine. Hearing this, Dynamite was infuriated by the insolence of his senior comrade and asked if he could imagine how many medicines were created by his hands for the Platinum Monk and how many people they saved. The Great Wizard remembered the situation very well and said that the Platinum Monarch did this because she was wary of his abilities. She most likely thought that if Dynamite's alchemy abilities were not used for the right reasons, then the tower and the city could be destroyed. Therefore, she forced him to work at the most ordinary jobs until he became completely stupid. Full awareness of that situation plunged the alchemist into shock. Despite the enormous potential of this guy, the eldest of the constellations asked him to sit quietly and not interfere during this expedition, since their goal is not to destroy the parasites. He stated that their goal is for the current Beck Ho Min to dominate this tower, receiving a lot of applause along the way. Meanwhile, the ruler's hunters were finally able to breathe a sigh of relief as all the parasites were defeated. Il Huo recognized the Weapon Guild member who was lying on the ground in extremely serious condition. It was Master Seo Hai Sang, and the guy asked if he knew where the rest of the fighters were. The weakened man calmly asked to convey something to their leader. Within a moment he began to behave strangely. He was restless and began to move despite his severe wounds. The man shouted furiously that the damned woman had killed them all. Observing his behavior, Ha Jin immediately became wary. Master He Sang began to hum something and seemed to be unconscious. At the same moment, Huo Ming pushed aside his colleague from the weapons guild and struck the prone hunter. The mentor was simply shocked by the student's action and shouted and asked what he was doing. The guy calmly replied that when wounded hunters die in this place, they become parasites, which is what was happening at that moment. Ha Jin nervously replied that this was not the point at all, because the ruler's hunter should not have done this at that moment while the doomed man's comrade was right here. Il Ho did not take the death of one of the masters of their squad easily but he convinced the guys that everything was in order and it could not be avoided. Despite the tension of the situation, the ridiculous Homin continued to incite his mentor and almost got into a fight. They were distracted by the ward of the tower hero. Ilho asked the guys to hurry up, since his surviving comrades were in serious trouble. A few hours later, they climbed to the 11th floor of the tower. Even though they were in a hurry, it was already late. Ilho was worried about the death of his comrades and could not even imagine who could have done it. Within a moment, they began to hear a woman scream. A plea for salvation sounded from the nearby rocks. A lonely girl with a kitchen knife in her hands continued to resist, but there was no end to the parasites. The numerical advantage of the monsters put her in a hopeless situation, and she began to say goodbye to life. But within a moment, both monsters missed blows that destroyed their hearts. The ruler's research team arrived on the scene moments before the girl could fall at the hands of the parasites. The girl sat down on the ground and thanked her saviors in a trembling voice. Hunter Ilho recognized her. It was student Yu Ha Yul. Hearing this, Huo Ming was surprised that the disciples were also coming to the second staircase. The mentor explained that the students of the Weapons Guild had actually been conducting their training on this floor for a long time. But after the appearance of structural anomalies, this place turned out to be too dangerous. First of all, Ilho asked the surviving girl what happened to the others. The frightened girl was traumatized by recent events. Many experienced hunters were injured, while some of them died or simply disappeared. Her slurred speech at such a crucial moment infuriated the experienced hunter and shouted that she should pull herself together. But the already traumatized Ha Yul became even more scared because of his words. Hearing his colleague's rudeness, Ho Min stood up for the girl and grabbed the guy by the shoulder, after which he asked him not to put even more pressure on such a frightened student. At that moment she felt a little calmer. She began to feel safe when she saw how he protected her in front of the older hunter. Worried for the lives of his comrades, Il Ho boldly fought off the hunter's hand but took his advice into account and took into account the student's condition, asking for information. The girl replied that the vice captains were further away. Of the 23 hunters who participated in the expedition, seven are dead, nine are wounded, and five are missing. Ha Yul was the only fighter in perfect order, while their field medical center was overcrowded with guys with serious wounds. According to Brigadier Kong Min, they received and treated all the wounded here, and also prevented the dead from reaching this place. The worried girl hesitantly admitted that she was the only one who could still continue to fight, after which she apologized for her arrogance. Considering the girl's condition, Ilho asked her to calm down and praised her for her good work in saving many lives. After that, he turned to Brigadier Kang Min to clarify the details of what happened at the hill. The wounded man who was sitting in the camp covered in bandages and a blindfold replied that when they were heading towards the flagpole hill, 
they came across an undead centipede that should not have been there. Hunter Khan confirmed his words, because usually this centipede appears only on the 18th floor, noting that these are strong parasites, and you need to know in advance how to deal with them. The behavior of such an experienced hunter indicated that the situation here was extremely difficult. Ho Min carefully analyzed all his words. Remembering that recent horror, the foreman broke out in a cold sweat and began to tremble. He said that compared to the dead, the centipede was on a completely different level. And besides, the battlefield was overrun with countless numbers of parasites. The fighter's condition was terrible and he needed a good rest, so the following questions were asked to his student. Like the foreman, she didn't really want to continue and began to dodge the question. Which seemed strange for the ruler's hunter. The girl noticed his piercing gaze and excitedly admitted that in fact, they could have fallen into the trap of parasites. But that high-level undead made them an offer. Ho Ming was shocked by the information that such powerful parasites were able to communicate, while his colder mentor asked to share the terms of the deal. The girl was worried that if she told, then it might work as part of the parasites' plan. Hunter Khan reminded that they were the ruler's hunters, so they could be trusted. He was going to analyze the parasites' plan and then take some measures. Hearing that the ruler's hunters had come to them, the girl was very surprised and began to get nervous. The guys did not understand the reason for her reaction and asked what was wrong. With incredible trembling and fear in her eyes, she admitted that the parasites had offered them a peace deal in exchange for one of the ruler's hunters. The parasites' interest was strange, and Hunter Khan began to worry that they might be the wards of their enemies. After this confession, Ho Ming said that he now understood why the 10th floor foreman was so scared when he saw them for a visit. Just a moment later, the girl suddenly screamed and pointed her hand towards the entrance to their camp. A huge number of dead people were heading towards them. In addition, this was the only passage that led to this place, so the guys were surrounded. For the first time, the ruler's hunters saw such a huge number of dead that they deliberately attacked their camp. Ho Ming understood that they had completely blocked the passage and now they would have to take the fight. It was necessary to react immediately. Il Ho gave the order to the student to take care of the vice captains of the squad. The parasites that were approaching their camp began to shout that if the hunters brought back Ho Min to them, then they could survive. The guy was shocked that it was really about him. Ilho replied that he would not believe their trick, but the ruler's hunters understood that he would agree to their condition if he was convinced. The monsters explained that the dark ghost constellation blessed them with this promise. The promise of a mysterious constellation did not mean anything to Ho Ming, and he asked his mentor what it was about. Hunter Kang began to get nervous. He explained that the Dark Ghost is a five-star constellation. Breaking a promise would cause the constellation to lose its star and status, so he would not risk his divinity if he could not fulfill the conditions. Ho Ming did not understand what was happening, because the constellations were supposed to help the younger generation climb the tower. Moreover, the excessive attention to his personality was alarming news. As soon as the hunters of the Weapons Guild heard about the promise, they immediately stated that they should agree for the sake of the common good. But Ha Jin sharply replied that they shouldn't even think about that. Hunter Kan decided to defend the interests of the ruler and the life of his insane ward. But his colleague from the guild was against this, because he believed that they did not have the slightest chance of winning. In response to his whining, the ruler's hunter stated that whoever their opponent was, the camp was a good place for a battle, and they would not compromise with these parasites, since it was against the laws of humanity. His words did not give hope to Ilho because he could not even imagine how they could get out of the encirclement, while the student of their guild decided to pick up a blade and hesitantly shouted that they must sacrifice the ruler's hunter. In a trembling voice, she admitted that after Brigadier Kong Min learned that they were surrounded by a centipede, he cut his own throat. Threatening the hunters, she said in a trembling voice that if they sacrifice one person, the rest will survive. Ha Jin tried to explain something to her, but it was useless. The girl shouted that they were in a hopeless situation, and if they accepted the fight, they would allow new deaths of Mr. Jeomuk's charges. Ha Jin had no choice but to rush in and knock the weapon out of the trembling girl's hands. To prevent her from doing anything wrong, he decided to put her to sleep with a blow to the neck. He understood that she was cornered, but he could not accept that she was ready to point her blade at a fellow hunter, because such actions were a crime. At the same moment, the second combat-ready hunter from the Weapons Guild rushed at him. His hands trembled, and he was even able to slightly pierce his comrade's hunter, but Ha Jin managed to block his trembling hand. The man said that his students were right. He didn't want to admit it, but he said that if they sacrificed one fighter, then the rest would survive. The ruler's hunter could not believe that his colleagues from the guild would be so pathetic, so without any doubt he hit the man in the face. After that, he immobilized him by pressing his head into the ground. Several more wounded guild fighters arrived at the scene. They could barely hold their weapons in their hands, but they also believed that handing over the hunter to the ruler was the only correct decision. 
In a panic, they asked him to hurry up, because they believed that they should not die for him in a fight in which there was no chance of victory. Addressing these pathetic guys, Ha Jin stated that Beck Ho Min is the ruler's hunter, and if they do not stop behaving like this, then everyone will be guilty of treason. But his words did not at all change the mood of the tremblingly frightened fighters. They believed that it was better to die by execution than in this place. For all their troubles, they blamed the ruler's hunter, for whom the undead sent by the constellation came. Sighing heavily, Huo Ming coldly declared that he would go to the enemies. The guy also said that he doesn't like such situations and is ready to be abandoned again. Kang Hajin couldn't believe that he would hear such words from his ward. However, this decision was not so strange for him, because he remembered that Ho Ming was forced to kill his childhood friend because the Platinum Monarch was watching him. Heading towards the enemies, the guy said that he hates to think at such moments because he just needs to get rid of everyone who points their blade at him. Ha Jin shouted after him that he had not even thought about what his mentor would have to say to the ruler regarding the fact that he allowed his ward to go to his own death. Ho Ming mysteriously replied that now he could remove some heavy burden from his soul. He admitted with a sly smile that he recently went on a date with the Platinum Monarch. Hearing this, Ha Jin completely forgot about the situation that was happening at that moment. He thought it was a joke, but having lifted the burden from his soul, Ho Ming furiously rushed into battle. Approaching the huge crowd of the dead, he used the seal skill under the name Master of Ten Thousand Swords, and struck a powerful blow. He was eager to fight with a cry, and fought despite the huge numerical advantage on the part of the monsters. His courage seemed foolish to the parasites. They said it was pointless to think that he could fight forever. But the guy was not going to listen to them and shouted that he would chop up everyone who approached. He was surrounded by enemies, and at one point his backpack with equipment was stolen, saying that the guy should not be so confident in his abilities since he would not be able to use this skill without a weapon. He was surrounded by parasites and had no way to resist. The monsters began to bite his limbs and hold him down, preventing him from moving. The situation was difficult, and the guy was running out of ideas on how to avoid death. The only way out of the situation was the help of friendly constellations. The guy activated the skill in the hope that the warlike king would be able to do something. But instead of him, someone appeared who he considered useless in a fight with the parasites. Seeing the appearance of dynamite, Ho Ming thought that he was doomed because alchemy was of no use in such a situation. Dynamite, who came to his aid, had already been in similar situations. The constellation extended its hand forward and declared that the time had come to destroy the pathetic dead. Not long ago, Ho Ming raised the level of synchronization with the second constellation and gained a new skill. This was a laboratory skill, and, as you know, the laboratory of the first alchemists was their own body. Humanity has used their bodies as research equipment to discover the various properties of poisons and medicines. Dynamite's mini-lab made this skill more intuitive. Being in a difficult situation, the guy inserted his hand into the monster's eye. He managed to get a strange mushroom from there, which is the true form of the parasites of the second staircase. After that, the guy ate a sample of the monster's body, and his laboratory began to analyze the composition. The hunter's body laboratory instantly analyzed the orange mushroom, and at the same moment synthesized the corresponding vaccine ingredient. The monsters believed that these were just desperate attempts to escape, but the guy's plan had already begun to take effect. By biting the parasites back, Ho Ming spread the vaccine, which he was able to produce by researching the genetic material. The monsters began to scream as their bodies began to lose their parasite abilities. Within a moment, the parasite appeared on the battlefield with a flag in his hands. Ho Ming noticed his presence and realized that this was the main body that controlled the other monsters. Although he weakened the dead, he could not get close to their main body, since he could not escape from the encirclement without any weapon in his hands. At that moment, his mentor read the situation and threw his twin blades in his direction. The guy was surprised that his friend was worried about him even despite such a difficult situation where they had no support. Ha Jin asked him not to waste time talking, as he would not be able to contain so many monsters for long, even with the vaccine being distributed. After these words, he activated his seal skill. Observing the time sequence, all enemies fell under the influence of this technique. Huo Ming immediately noticed a strange feeling. It seemed to him that all the enemies began to move more slowly. The blades were in his hands and he had the opportunity to fight with all his might again. Using the Ten Thousand Sword Master skill, he unleashed a powerful cleaving attack to clear his way to the main body of the enemy troops. Despite his strong attack, it was not enough to reach the Lord of the Dead. He thought that he could destroy many more enemies at once, but he had to break through and repeat the attacks. His comrade's seal was at its limit. He said that he could only slow down time for a moment, so Huo Ming had to hurry up. They needed to deal with all the undead in a short time, and Ha Jin bet everything on this risky plan. The ruler's hunter understood the gravity of the situation. Moreover, he only had one dagger left. The guy wasn't going to give up. Even though if he used the skill, he still wouldn't hit the main body. He needed to act quickly, 
because if the dead were able to move again without restrictions, then everything would come to an end. At that moment, a student of the Weapons Guild appeared nearby. She ran alongside and shouted that they would open the way to the main body. The girl noticed that the ruler's hunters had a plan to get rid of their enemies, so she decided to join the battle. At that moment, Homin realized that newcomer Yuha-il was just pretending to pass out. Moving forward, the guys from the Weapons Guild apologized for their betrayal and asked the guy to hurry up. Blood had already begun to flow from the mentor's left eye. He could no longer maintain the effect of his skill. Turning to his charge, he shouted that the dead were regaining their speed. There was no time to think. Homin rushed forward. The fighters of the Weapons Guild were surrounded, but until the very end they tried to protect the guy from enemies. When Huo Ming accelerated to great speed, he used the body of one of the enemies as a springboard. The guy jumped high and swung to deliver the decisive blow. The main body noticed the approach of the enemy, but did not feel any danger, being confident in the superiority of its strength. At that moment, Huo Ming used the ability of the Master of Ten Thousand Swords, and closing the distance, delivered a powerful blow towards the main enemy. After the defeat of the main body, all the parasites began to lose their strength. The monsters were defeated thanks to the desperate efforts of the hunter ruler. Ha Jin was incredibly exhausted. He fell to his knees and began to breathe heavily. The ruler's hunter could not believe that his crazy ward was again able to emerge victorious from such a difficult situation. Having destroyed all the enemies with one attack on the main body of the parasite, Huo Ming could hardly stand on his feet. He began to smile because he was still able to survive even in a situation where he became prey to enemy constellations. In this battle he spent all his strength, so he fell sharply to the ground. His gratitude for the support of friendly constellations knew no bounds, because without them he would already be dead. As usual, the excited and frightened student Ha'il shouted that their savior was dying, but Baek Ho Min managed to hear it and nervously shouted that it was too early to bury him. Another hopeless situation has been overcome. Looking at his ward, Ha Jin remembered the words of the ruler that a good hunter is one who is a simple-minded person. Lady Yoon once said that even the constellations spend a lot of time understanding what is right and what is wrong. She thought it would be nice if her orders were obeyed without much thought. In response, Ha Jin said that he only thinks about the ruler's orders and he has no reason to doubt them. Despite his words, Miss Yoon said that he was not that simple-minded, but was most likely just deceiving himself. She believed that one who climbs a tower should not waste time thinking about meaningless things. But even so, he should not make mistakes in order to take all his steps correctly. Ha Jin believed that such a person must be just lucky. The lady agreed with his words, after which she corrected herself and said that a good hunter is a simple-minded and lucky person. After this conclusion, she said that Kang Ha Jin does not have such qualities and he will not be able to become the good hunter in question. But despite this, she was confident that Ha Jin would be among those who lived long. Madame Yoon told him to worry about this because there was no special reason to be a good hunter, which she told him about. Looking at the incredibly lucky guy, Ha Jin thought that he was someone who could become a good hunter. Still, he was angry that his master liked this guy. After a difficult battle, the guys went to the fortress chamber on the 10th floor to get medical help. As it turns out, Yu Ha-il's student was so useful in battle because she was trained by Sir Jeomuk himself. He even gave her the blessing of the constellation. Based on this information, it was clear why she was unharmed compared to the other, more experienced hunters of the Weapons Guild. It turned out that her skills varied depending on her emotional state. So although she had a chance, she decided to join later. After defeating the main body, Huo Ming fell unconscious, so he was wondering if they were able to find any clue. Ha Jin confirmed that they were able to detect something strange. They found traces of the dark ghost constellation on the bodies of the undead. But there was another problem. The guy suspected that the dark ghost did not bring the undead alone. This meant that among their enemies there was someone else who should be feared in the near future. Ha Jin guessed that someone from the Weapons Guild was working with the dark ghost. Now it becomes clear why people from the streets and among the constellations want to get rid of the Platinum Monarch and the Weapons Guild as well. Ha Jin explained that being a ruler means being in constant danger and therefore the ruler's hunters are in the same boat. After these words, Huo Ming asked who the constellation they were dealing with was. The Dark Ghost was one of the constellations that rose during the Blue-White War. He was at the top among the mages of the Church of Eternity side. It became clear that he had fallen victim to the war and was now sharpening his grudge against the Platinum Monarch. But it seemed strange that he began to act only now. Ha Jin explained this by saying that unlike living constellations, rising constellations cease to be themselves and lose their memories. They respectfully call them constellations, but in reality they are nothing more than ghosts. They simply imitate their beliefs and philosophy that they had during life, and bless those they like, even though they do not have any clear will. Now it becomes clear why hunters call this behavior a whisper of starlight. The dark ghost is an ascendant constellation, so it makes decisions instinctively. But the fact that it did not choose the Platinum Monarch as its target was still suspicious. 
While Ming didn't understand what was happening, he suddenly became the target of a creature with terrifying power. Kang Ha Jin proposed to follow the new plan. At that time, the most important task was to find the traitor in the guild, and for this, he was going to talk to their head. The guy was worried that Sir Jeomuk was hiding something and might actually be one of those working with the Dark Ghost. Ha Jin was unhappy with his ward's guesses, so he asked him not to say anything like that without solid evidence. Noticing his mentor's reaction, the guy started laughing at him. After that, Ilho came to them and said that their leader would like to see the Hunters of the Lord. But as it turned out, Sir Jeomuk wanted to meet the recruit first. Ho Ming had no choice but to go alone. He even managed to anger his mentor by saying that he would still be scared before talking to the active constellation. Leaving his comrade, he said that if you need to meet with the constellation, then it is better not to risk the fighters loyal to the ruler. In response, Ha Jin asked him to act respectfully in front of the one who once saved the Platinum Monarch. Ho Ming promised that if Sir Jiamuk was kind to him, then he would reciprocate. Il Ho also could not avoid ridicule from the new hunter overlord. Ho Min slyly asked how the Weapon Guild fighter felt after trying to sell a comrade to his enemy. Without turning around, the man thanked the daring hunter for saving him and apologized for that awkward incident. Beck replied in a calm voice that it was unnecessary to thank him. After that, he said that as long as he was alive, he would not forget the fact that he was betrayed by the guys from the Weapons Guild. Il Ho didn't know what to answer. He was lost in thought and they walked on in silence. Soon they arrived at the head of the guild and Il Ho left them for a private conversation. When Sir Jiamuk mentioned the situation where the hunter Bayek saved his subordinates, the guy admitted that the weapons guild fighters wanted to sell him, but he killed the enemy leader before this happened. Hearing this, the man apologized for the behavior of his charges and stated that regardless of the situation, the fighters of his guild acted unprofessionally. Afterwards, still angry about the recent situation, Ho Ming wondered if the Weapon Guild hunters should be punished somehow for trying to sell a comrade to the enemy constellation. In response, Sir Jioma coldly said that Beck would not be able to be a hunter if he continued to obsess over such trifles. Sitting on the floor, he said that even a constellation could die in the tower without any unpredictable reasons. He asked the hunter ruler to go through this situation with understanding and gratitude, while maintaining a cool head. Then he added that, as an option, the guy could later repeat the betrayal towards his offenders. But for the hunter, it seemed that this proposal was too much. Considering the situation, Sir Jiomuk asked if the guy wanted him to fulfill any special wish. Without any hesitation, Ho Min clearly answered that he did not need anything, and it was better to leave this conversation for the future. Sir Jiomuk asked if the guy was sure of his decision, because then they would consider the matter without the desire he mentioned. After that, the man said that recently, uprising Zakis had been seen in the vicinity of the Platinum Monarch. In addition, he heard that the traitors were in the ruler's palace itself. Ho Ming had no idea that the enemies could get so close to Lady Yun. The leader of the Weapons Guild also said that there is a person who knows about every step of the Platinum Monarch. Most likely he is close to her and plans to start a rebellion, given her plans for the future. Hearing this assumption, the guy asked why Sir Jiomuk was so sure of this. Looking at the guy with a piercing gaze, the man said that he also received an offer to overthrow the current ruler and install a new one in her place. The matter was important, so Huo Min hurriedly asked how he answered. The man said that he neither accepted nor refused the offer. He would simply stick to his place in the tower as he had done before. He wasn't going to take the Platinum Monarch's side, but he wasn't going to go against her either. Despite his neutrality, he considered it his duty to find out who was in charge of all this. And since the dead constellation was also trying to take part, he could not sit on the sidelines. The man rose to his feet. The conversation became much more serious, and the ruler's hunter asked if he had any idea who was behind all this conspiracy. With a murderous look, he stated that he considered Beck Ho Min a traitor. Hearing this, the ruler's hunter was shocked. Sir Jiomuk explained that his candidacy is the first thing that comes to mind, because the strange recruit has received attention from many constellations, among which are the enemies of the Platinum Monarch. He already knew that the hunter Beck received a blessing from the constellation Ripple, and even the Dark Ghost was showing interest in his person. In addition, he heard that the suspicious guy can directly communicate with unknown constellations. Ho Min replied that he understood how suspicious this was, but despite this, he stated that he was not a traitor. Hearing his words, Sir Jiomuk asked him to confess which constellations he was in contact with. After his question, the situation changed dramatically, and Huo Ming began to feel a lot of pressure. The man opposite him began to release his power, which began to overwhelm the area. A frightening aura appeared behind the constellation. He wanted to find out the name of the stars of those who support the hunter ruler. Strong pressure from the constellation made the guy understand what the power of those who are the heroes of the tower is. It was extremely difficult to resist. This pressure did not allow his body to move. He understood that if this continued, then he would die of suffocation. At the same moment, he felt the support of the constellations that were watching him. 
The guy remembered that he was not here alone. He was protected by as many as three constellations, so he was sure that there was no need to fear the enemy's strength. Sir Geomuk noticed the change in the hunter's expression, so he repeated his question. A self-confident smile appeared on the ruler's hunter's face and he sighed with relief. After this, the guy confidently stated that one day he will become a star, and this is worth remembering. The guy's words were something unexpected in a situation where it seemed like he had no way out. Hearing this, the man replied that in this case he had no other choice, and he would not be able to convince the insolent person with a simple conversation. With just one terrifying aura, the constellation threw the guy back and he hit his back against the fence. Ho Ming felt that Sir Geomuk did not carry out the attack, and was thrown back by the mere spirit of this terrifying constellation. The superior strength of the enemy made him realize the vast difference in their abilities. Before him was one of the best hunters, one who could confidently climb to the top of the tower. Huo Ming had never felt such a strong desire to kill from a person. He felt like he would die if Jeo Muk simply pointed a finger at him. He understood that there was no chance of victory, but he was not going to meekly accept death and desperately rush to the attack. His strike was easily caught by the constellation's hand. Sir Jeo Muk said that the very fact that the hunter did not even try to escape was admirable. He asked who the constellation in which the desperate young man believed so much was. Ho Ming was not going to give away his secrets and pretended that he did not understand what was going on. Then the man began to remember the past. Like a fighter of the first generation, he recalled that the world had fallen apart, and instead of religion, people created the Church of Eternity, after which he asked if the young man knew what they believed in. Trying to break free from the death grip, Huo Ming nervously replied that he was too young to think about such things. Sir Jiumuk replied that the followers of the Church of Eternity believed that the tower was salvation, and the constellations were angels who sought salvation. They still did not understand the main thing. The followers believed in this lie and began to worship the tower despite the fact that no one was able to reach its top. This happened due to complete ignorance of the territory, which was considered holy. The guild leader was confident that if the constellation ever managed to reach the top of the tower, they would no longer worship it. Ho Ming thought that this was some kind of nonsense, because he heard that whoever reaches the top of the tower will be able to return the world to its previous form. In response, Geomuk encouraged him to consider whether this could be true. He asked if the guy had thought about what would happen if, upon reaching the top of the tower, the constellation saw that there was nothing there. Huo Ming knew that humanity would not be able to accept this. The Church of Eternity has chosen a comfortable world with the belief that it may not exist. They stopped climbing so as not to destroy the faith they had created. As soon as the ruler gave up climbing, the tower chose a new ruler, one of whom was Mrs. Yun. After this story, the man again repeated his question. He wanted to know whose voices the guy heard, those constellations that stopped climbing, or those that really tried to get to the top until the very end. He wondered what kind of paradise they were talking about to the hunter they began to support. The constellation's grip was so strong that Huo Ming couldn't even move. He decided to resort to using the skill and chose the memory of the Martial King. The combat skills of this body's previous personality suggested that he could continue to fight. Baek Ho Min launched a series of blows with the limbs that were free. In response, Jiomuk asked whether the young man was hitting at full strength. The guy had no choice but to get the hidden blade. Using the skill of the Ten Thousand Sword Master, he struck a blow that forced the Weapon Guild leader to dodge. As it turned out, during a series of blows, he stole this sword from his opponent. After one use, the blade shattered. Huo Ming attacked again, saying that it was expected to find a weapon from the Guild Master. He continued to deliver a series of blows, but this was not enough to in any way harm such an experienced fighter. The guild leader suggested that the guy not waste time and ask for help from friendly constellations. At that moment, the guy decided that his opponent had relaxed and opened himself to attack. Thanks to this, he managed to get the twin blades that he had been hiding behind his back all this time. Using his skill, he delivered a powerful blow at point-blank range. Sir Geomuk was not prepared for such a turn of events, so he only managed to cover himself with his hands. The enemy was caught, and the guy thought that he had at least managed to wound him. But as it turned out, the enemy was saved by the armor. His arm was covered in armored scales. He was surprised that the guy stole his gun so he wouldn't think he had his own. Despite this, for such an experienced fighter, such superficial tactics were not dangerous. The hunter ruler's last ace up his sleeve was used. Huo Ming was shocked. He did not expect Sir Jomuk to be able to withstand such a strong blow at point-blank range. Based on the young man's last technique, the man realized that his weapon was destroyed after he used his skill. He said that he had never seen such a thing because it did not look like an enhancing skill or the use of any known skill. Within a moment, he himself rushed to attack. With one powerful blow, he sent the ruler's hunter to the ground. While finishing off the guy, Sir Jiamuk mysteriously asked why. Having such an unusual skill, the guy continued to rely only on weapons. Huo Ming could not resist in any way. His strength was running out, 
and each blow was incomparable to what he had faced before. Sending the guy into the field with a powerful kick, Sir Geomuk suggested that the hunter was one of those who injured his body due to the lack of a brain. The ruler's exhausted hunter crashed into a stone that was located at the other end of the training ground. Approaching Huo Ming, the leader of the weapons guild asked him to use the entire arsenal available to him. Rising to his feet, the guy realized that this ancient constellation was too strong for him to escape. The man once again suggested that the hopeless fighter pray to his constellations before the logical end comes. At that moment, the guy understood that if everything continued like this, he would die. Despite the hopelessness of the situation, he could not accept such an outcome. His hands were shaking, but he agreed with the enemy's words that he still had a way to fight. The unshakable leader of the weapons guild continued to stand watching his opponent's actions with interest. At that moment, Huo Ming remembered that his skill was a large, strong, and heavy sword that was well balanced. He realized that no matter what kind of weapon he was holding, they were all the same the moment he used the 10,000 sword master skill. After that, the guy concentrated his ability in his right hand and desperately rushed to attack. The man was surprised by the young man's determination. While delivering a powerful blow, the guy realized that the user of the technique himself was also a weapon. The powerful attack created a huge hole in the building. As expected, Sir Geomuk was able to endure it. But despite this, he still had to resort to full armor coverage. The enemy survived, but Homin himself received severe fractures to his right arm. He was exhausted and could no longer continue the battle. The man watched the guy thoughtfully until he realized what had happened. Huo Ming lost consciousness in the middle of the fight while standing. After that, Sir Jemuk clenched his fist and said that this is the end. A few days later, the guy woke up in the first aid station. He immediately began to scream, remembering the last moments of his battle. As it turned out, he woke up because the leader of the weapons guild stabbed him in the stomach so that the guy would finally regain consciousness. Ho Min tried to find out what the one who recently tried to kill him was doing here. But the nurse did not let him talk and immediately began feeding the guy some kind of medicine. In fact, he believed that he was already dead. He asked what happened before he ended up in the infirmary. He was sure that the Geomuk constellation was trying to kill him. His comrade also appeared in front of him, and the leader of the weapons guild himself admitted with surprise that Ho Ming had quite high endurance. Arrogantly pointing his finger at the guy, the man nervously said that he didn't even think that such a useless idiot could become a ruler's hunter. After that, he added that if this guy continues to climb to the top of the tower, he will soon die. Huo Ming was incredibly angry about what happened recently, but couldn't find the words to respond. Looking at the pitiful fighter, Sir Geomuk said that while the ruler's hunter was not dead, he should come to the weapons guild, where he would train him. Such an unexpected proposal seemed somewhat strange for the fighter, because not long ago they fought to the death. Hunter Kan could not believe that he would hear such an offer for his ward. Sir Geomuk promised that in six months he would make the poor fellow one who could even defeat a constellation. After this, Kang Hajin butted into the conversation and stated that Ho Min in the current situation is in the possession of the ruler, and this means that his choice is not a priority. In response, the man said that this would also serve as a good thing for the Platinum Monarch, because there was no point in keeping a guy around who couldn't even compare to a real hunter. What was happening around him seemed unreal, and Huo Min furiously asked how Jeomuk dared to suggest something like that after calling him a traitor. Previously, Ha Jin had not heard that the leader of the Weapons Guild called his ward a traitor, so he asked for this to be explained in more detail. The man replied that he was just trying to make sure that he was truly loyal to his ruler. He admitted that he was indeed suspicious of him at first. But when he tried to kill the hopeless fighter, he realized that he was the one who was ready to climb the tower at any cost. Therefore, Geomuk decided that instead of killing, it would be better to keep an eye on the suspicious hunter. Despite such sincerity, Huo Ming still did not feel safe and treated his words with caution. Ha Jin was extremely wary that even Geomuk recognized the potential of the guy that the ruler was so interested in. Sir Geomuk shared his opinion that the Platinum Monarch has a strong desire to climb the tower. But now the city has experienced regression. He was suspicious of the Platinum Monarch, because it might turn out that she too had fallen, agreeing to peace instead. But when he met back Ho Min, he decided that in that case, she wouldn't take a crazy idiot. Still, he is sure that now the tower needs just such crazy people, and the Platinum Monarch probably thinks the same. In response, the nervous guy asked how it happened that the constellation was ready to beat anyone to death to prove that he was wrong. Kong Ha Jin was dissatisfied with his ward's behavior, so he asked him to stop using such rude language and show politeness to the hero, while Jae Omuk himself began to laugh at the situation. He admitted that he already knew halfway through that Ho Min was not a traitor, but the situation seemed so funny to him that he wanted to tease the fighter. He said that the guy should not worry about that incident, because he would already receive tests, but not from him, but from the tower. The mysterious words of the constellation made the guy understand that he had to face danger, which was much worse than Sir Geomuk. The man explained that the tower would continue to give him test after test, in some way a test, 
the passing of which would give him the opportunity to climb further. Therefore, the guy will meet not only parasites, but also constellations and other people who strive for the top. Huo Ming had no other option but to agree with these words. Yet in such a short time, he was haunted not only by a handful of people, but also by the dark ghost and parasites that were under his control. Next, he will face trials much worse than a battle with a warrior of the first generation of human resistance. The guy replied that he didn't care about the difficulties, since this was not the first time he had come face to face with death. Since he grew up on the street, he believed that in order to end this miserable life he needed to climb to the top of the tower. These words aroused hope in the old warrior, and he said with a laugh that in this case he definitely could not let go of the funny young man. Ha Jin began to think even more about what his ward was hiding, since he was so attracted to the ruler's most influential allies. A week later, the guy finally recovered. His bones fused together, and he was back in action. Even Sir Jiamuk was surprised by this and said that Ho Min reminded him of a lizard. After that, he asked the guy to follow him. He said that the ruler's hunter should see this with his own eyes. When they arrived at the place, the guy noticed that the other side of this room looked like a mirror, and based on this, it was logical to assume that this was a mirror room. Sir Jiamuk confirmed his assumption and said that this is a mirror room where everyone can meet another themselves. He said that the place inside the mirror room is a parallel world in which you have chosen an alternative path in life, and those who pass through the mirror room can meet themselves from other worlds or bring objects from there. The personalities that the guy meets are not an illusion or doubles. This room is actually access to an alternative reality. Ho Ming treated these words with skepticism. He still did not believe in the existence of parallel worlds. Sir Jomuk replied that the last time he used the mirror room was during the Civil War, where he saw a world in which the Platinum Monarch never appeared. Because she never appeared, he saw a future in which the Church of Eternity had won. After this, he sided with the Platinum Monarch in order to avoid such a future. From that time on, he never used the mirror room because he was not sure which future was better. He also admitted that Ho Min was the first to hear these words. Placing his hand on the hunter's shoulder, he shared his opinion about the conspiracy against the Platinum Monarch. The first generation fighter believed that the conspiracy was so large and spreading so quickly that it even involved the constellations especially after the appearance of a guy with a mysterious seal that had a connection with deities unknown to them. Ho Ming understood that he was considered one of those who was the cause of the changes taking place. Sir Jiamuk shared his opinion that the best solution would be to use a mirror room instead of useless training. After that, he wished the guy good luck and threw him forward. It was too unexpected and the guy didn't have time to notice how he ended up on the floor. When he got up, he wanted to ask what the old man allowed himself, but looking around, he realized that he was now here alone. There were many marks on the wall around him, the guy began to feel that he really was in a parallel world. He never thought that Geomuk would throw him away without even telling him how to return to reality. The constellations suggested that the first of the personalities would be a warlike king. The great wizard admitted that every time Beck Ho Min walks through the mirror room, it gets on his nerves. The warlike king was surprised that the eldest among them was so worried about this, because when he was in the mirror room, he did not encounter anything dangerous. Dynamite replied that the fact is that the warlike king did not see what was being discussed. The eldest among the constellations added that the chances are that the warlike king will soon wish to fall into the ground in shame. He didn't understand what was going on, so he just continued to watch. While in this room, the guy noticed that after some time, the curtain was closing. He believed that if he walked through the room again, he would most likely end up in another parallel world. He wanted to figure out how to return to the world in which he lives. Just when he saw no point in being in this room, the doors opened behind him. Huo Ming heard the door creak and looked around. A guy came out from there most likely a warlike king from the past. Baek Ho Min met his alternate world self for the first time. His counterpart from the parallel world believed that the guy entered the mirror room for the first time and turned out to be right. Looking at the warlike king, the guy thought that he was the Baek Ho Min who joined the weapons guild, so he decided to call him a gunsmith. He noticed that they both possessed the same steel seal, which turned out to be true. The martial king stated that he had a rank 3 fortification power skill. He explained that this was a suitable skill for close combat and that was why he was able to join the weapons guild. At that moment, the guy saw a message that his synchronization with the memory of the warlike king had increased. He was still not sure that this was the identity of the constellation with which he was communicating, so he assumed that the increase in synchronization was due to the similarity of the seals. After this, he asked if he was also the ruler's hunter. The gunsmith replied that he was also caught by the executioner doll as he was considered suspicious and in order to save his life, was forced to work as the ruler's hunter. But at this point in his life, he was training in the weapons guild because he believed that he was still weak. He stated emphatically that he began to follow the Geomuk constellation. In addition, he was a supporter of this man and believed that he was more suitable for the throne of the ruler because the platinum monarch was too cruel. 
The warlike king was extremely worried about the fact that a girl like her occupied such an important place in the tower. Addressing Baik Ho Min, he stated that a person needs one sword in order for him to climb the tower. To him, this test seemed like an inappropriate place for someone who could somehow use seals, no matter how rare they were. After listening to his personality speak in his youth, the warlike king felt such shame that he wanted to simply disappear. He realized that the other constellations had this exact moment when they warned him that he wanted to die. Dynamite said that he shouldn't suffer so much because of what he saw, because it's just a parallel world, and he can't just call it his past. After these words, Dynamite continued to laugh, which caused even greater dissatisfaction on the part of his younger comrade. In order to somehow reassure the youngest among the constellations, the Great Wizard said that everyone has unpleasant memories from childhood. And besides, Beck Homan especially suffers from teenage eccentricity, which is why he cannot distinguish left from right. The situation oppressed the warlike king too much, so he walked away from the others and said in a trembling voice that he would like to be alone. Meanwhile, the young warrior king continued to give his opinion on the role of the various factions, saying that the Weapons Guild are those who climb the tower, and the Seal and Alchemy Guilds exist only to support them. The current Beck Ho Min was tired of listening to all this and asked his comrade from the parallel world to remain silent, since his ears were withering from all this nonsense. The guy's rudeness infuriated the warlike Ho Ming a little, so he asked if the guy was also associated with the Weapons Guild. Ho Ming boldly replied that he felt ashamed when he listened to such chatter from a person with his face. Hearing this, long-haired Huo Ming said that he simply did not understand what a Platinum Monarch was. He thought that the current Bak Ho Min was an idiot if he couldn't understand how wild and superficial Mrs. Yoon was. The conversation turned out to be so annoying that the ruler's hunter rushed into battle against his person from the Weapons Guild. At the same time, he used a quick punch to distract the enemy. Huo Ming from the Weapons Guild took out his blade and resorted to using the technique. In response, the guy decided to use the memory of the warlike king. Both hunters rushed to attack. The hunter from the Weapons Guild was surprised that his opponent was good at martial arts. He believed that his skills were standard, but somehow different from what Sir Jeomuk teaches. Huo Ming replied that it was obvious, because he never learned anything in the Weapons Guild. The guy from the parallel world believed that this was an outright lie, but Ho Min did not want to listen to his assumptions and asked him to silently continue the battle. Looking at the young martial king, he could confidently say that the body of a man from the Weapons Guild had muscles and nerves designed specifically for fencing. As the name suggests, the Weapons Guild has methods of improving one's body as a weapon. And besides, the guy from the parallel world is very careful. He does not break his weapon, but rather takes care of it, holding it in his hands with respect. What Ho Min observed in the behavior of the young warlike king was for him the best training in the skill of using weapons. After another attack, another blade in Huo Ming's hands was destroyed. The guy from the Weapons Guild did not expect such an outcome, but was confident that now he could easily finish the battle. At the same time, Huo Ming did not pay much attention to him. His seal continued to burn, but even without a weapon in his hands, he was confident that he had already won. At that moment, he simply turned around and said that although he didn't particularly like this option of life, he was grateful for the help. The young warlike king thought that his enemy was trying to escape. Hearing these words, Huo Ming changed his mind about leaving the room and rushed into battle again using his 10,000 Swordmaster skill on his fist. After that, he instantly found himself in front of the enemy and sent a blow straight to his face. The gunsmith did not have time to react, but Huo Ming spared him and stopped his fist a moment before the blow. The losing guy fell to his knees. He had never lost like this. Before leaving to the next room, Huo Ming explained to him that when he saw the fighting style of the guy from the Weapons Guild, he understood how to control his strength. The experience of a brief battle with his double from a parallel world turned out to be so enormous that the hunter no longer thought about finding a way out, but decided to explore other options for events. Behind the next curtain, he encountered the personality of Dynamite. He was still young, and when he saw this guy in front of him, he immediately tried to drive him away if he had not come to him with the goal of helping him make medicine. He understood that this version of his life had joined the Alchemy Guild. Still, he could not refuse to study the art of creating medicines, so he joined the process. Then, he went to the next rooms, but among them there were many empty ones, and most of his personalities that he saw were ordinary losers. He managed to gain experience only from individuals from the guilds of weapons and alchemy. In addition, during this time he was able to significantly increase the level of synchronization with the constellations. True, after meeting dozens of boring individuals, he was already thinking about how to leave the mirror room, but he still could not find a way out. Within a moment, Another person with long white hair pounced on him and began his greeting with a chokehold from the back. To escape, he struck the opponent's face with the back of his head. As it turned out, it was a girl and she was not very happy with such a greeting. 
She managed to inflict a cut and Homin realized that the cause of the stinging pain was the poison that the stranger used. Looking at the girl, he asked who she was, because he was sure that they were not the same person. In response, the impudent girl shouted that he should shut up, since he was a pathetic dog of the ruler. Ho Ming thought about it. At first he assumed that she was a traitor who hid in the room to kill him on the order of a dark ghost. Still, it seemed strange to him, so he decided to overpower her and interrogate her. But the moment he tried to activate the skill, his seal began to suddenly heat up and behave malfunctioning. He didn't understand what was happening, because it seemed to him that he had enough time to rest before using it again. But no matter how many times he tried to activate the memory skill, nothing worked. Since the skill was not working, he thought that his opponent had a seal that would cancel the enemy's power. Looking at the girl again, he noticed a seal on her neck. Her seal was also made of steel, which made him realize that she was also his parallel world identity. While the shocked guy could not understand why Homan was female in front of him, the girl asked how he could relax in a battle in which he would soon die. At that moment, he realized that she was not bluffing, and her blows indicated that she was seriously trying to kill him. After parrying several close blows, the guy jumped back and the girl threw a kunai at him. Huo Ming only received a slight scratch. Watching her movements, he realized that they resembled the techniques of people from the back streets. At that moment, it became clear to him that this was a version of the future in which he rose through the ranks in the back alleys and became a servant of the spider's organization. This person seemed to be quite a good fighter. Despite this, Ho Ming believed that turning into a girl for the sake of resisting the ruler was too much. Those watching the events in the mirror room had also not seen anything like this before. They thought it was some kind of anomaly. It was logical to assume that since someone like this had never appeared in the mirror room, then it was because the seal of the current Beck Ho Min had influenced various variations of the future as well. Dynamite seriously asked the eldest of the constellations if he knew anything about this. The Great Wizard replied that he could only guess what happened, but he was sure that this was one of all timelines that Beck Ho Min should not encounter. The guys did not understand who they were dealing with, so the eldest of the constellations replied that this was the second person of Beck Ho Min, who became the constellation after him. Dynamite shockingly suggested that this girl was one of the only ones who hibernated. The eldest among them only nervously confirmed his assumption. This girl's name is Miori, and she is known as the Ghost Against the Heavens. Meanwhile, the battle continued, and Homin continued to gain new battle experience. He believed that her way of fighting was very similar to the people of the Snake's Den, a place where killers could earn money for their work. When he asked the girl if this was really so, she boldly replied that this did not concern the ruler's dog. He continued to try to make conversation, and asked if she had killed the elder, but the killer was not going to answer him, and only said that he did not have time to chat. Huo Ming was forced to take out one of his blades to defend against the enemy's fast attacks. He didn't want to continue fighting, but to win he needed to use a skill that he simply didn't have access to activate. The confident girl asked how stupid the hunter was if he still didn't realize he was under the influence of her seal. But the guy did not pay attention to her impudent speech and continued to try to activate the skill. His hand was already burning and he was experiencing a strong burning sensation, but despite this he did not stop his attempts. The girl was furious and shouted that he should stop, because if he continued in the same spirit, then his wrist would simply be torn off. But this was all part of his plan. He replied that if they are the same person, then the girl also pays for using the skills, so she is unlikely to fight until her neck is ripped off. Her seal was indeed already at its limit. She nervously replied that she was not prepared for the fact that he was resistant to poison. The guy replied that this was due to the fact that his owner, using her power, made his body a little healthier. Miori sighed heavily as she realized that there was no point in continuing the battle. She accepted her defeat, after which she sat down on the floor and invited the person who followed the ruler to do the same. Huo Ming was still cautious. He knew that since she was from the snake's den, he shouldn't relax. The girl herself started the conversation and first clarified whether the guy was a representative of the world in which she became their ruler's hunter. After a positive answer, the guy asked why she tried to kill him if she initially knew that their worlds were different. It turned out that Miori decided to kill the ruler's hounds that would appear in the mirror room. Besides, this served as a good practice for her skills. She was a representative of a world in which Ho Min became a traitor. Based on this information, the guy asked why she was trying to commit high treason. In response, the girl said that since the guy took the side of the Platinum Monarch, then he seriously knows nothing about her. The guy answered sharply that he knew enough, and even started dating her. The girl was simply shocked by the man's stupidity, so she began to rudely curse him. Sighing heavily, she admitted that she thought about whether to tell the details or not, but after hearing what she heard, she decided that there was no other choice. She said that if the Platinum Monarch respected him so much, then it would be much easier to stab her in the back. Ho Ming did not understand why to do this. In response, Miori stated that the Platinum Monarch is a parasite. Hearing this, the guy was simply shocked. After that, 
he justified himself that he was actually excited about important information, which turned out to be some kind of stupidity. The girl was furious and shouted that it was true. As an argument, Huo Ming asked her how the person who can manipulate the seal could be a parasite, because when you become a monster, your gold disappears from the seal. When the topic of the seal came up, the girl asked if he had seen her seal. The guy calmly replied that no. Miori called this fact real proof, because the Platinum Monarch, as a parasite, does not have a seal. The girl's logic simply shocked him, so he said that in fact, most people hide their seals under their clothes. At that moment, Miori felt emotionally tired, and said that if he didn't want to believe her, then let him do what he wanted. After that, the guy asked where she learned to deceive people and suggested that it was in the snake's den, but the girl replied that she was not lying and was in another organization. As it turned out, Miori is a member of the spider group. The leader personally trained her, and she became one of the spider legs. Huo Ming was surprised how this person could become a spider leg while he had never even seen the head's face. Miori said that after the murder of the elder, she found herself in a hopeless situation. The Platinum Monarch and the Executioner doll found her and tried to kill her, and while she was at death's door, Spider came to the rescue and saved her. As it turns out, her past was different. She was among those whom the Platinum Monarch wanted to kill. At that moment, the guy treated her with understanding and thought that if the lady tried to kill him too, be it parasites or something else, he would try to find a reason to rebel against her. He admitted that since they tried to kill her, then this is a normal reason for rebellion, based on the logic of their personality. Miori was surprised that this was the first time they had found a common language. Ho Ming decided to share his story. He said that since the Platinum Monarch is very kind to him, he has no complaints about this scenario. At that moment, Miori thought that he was as naive as she was in his past. She admitted that even if he was another ruler's dog, she still liked him. After this, she said that while he had time, he must learn about the rebellion against divinity. Huo Ming did not understand what they were talking about. So the girl explained that his position regarding the Platinum Monarch would be determined when she killed him, or he killed her. After that, the girl stood up and said that she was leaving the place, while Ho Min tried to find out how to leave the mirror room. The girl was infuriated by the fact that he came to this place without knowing how to get out of here. She explained that he was a moron, and to get out he just needed to open and close the curtain with his own hands. After that, she said that they would not see each other again. So instead of saying goodbye, she simply swore at him. Seeing this meeting in the mirror room, the great wizard was simply shocked. He began to hastily and nervously look for something in his pocket. His behavior worried his comrades. Next, he took out his glasses, after which he said that it looked like Miori had burst out. Within a moment, the girl Ho Min had recently seen appeared in front of them. The Martial King and Dynamite had never heard of her before, so they asked who she was if the eldest among them was so worried. The guy nervously replied that this girl was a constellation, that she was the only one of her kind who successfully carried out the uprising. She is Baek Ho Min, who killed the Platinum Monarch and became the ruler of the city. Because of her origin, she was nicknamed the White Spider. It was hard for the guys to believe that one of the individuals was able to succeed in the uprising and seize control of the city. The warlike king could not at all come to terms with the fact that the female version of Baek Ho Min could lead their enemies. He believed that this was due to the betrayal of one of those whom he had previously considered his comrade. Still, the uprising always took place. But without the participation of Baek Ho Min, it was always unsuccessful. The fact that a constellation appeared among them and made a successful uprising forced them to change their expectations of the future. Until now, they didn't have to worry about the uprising, because compared to what awaited them, the uprising was not a serious problem. But now the constellation that killed the Platinum Monarch has awakened. The future began to change even more rapidly and the constellations could not even imagine what awaited them in the end. What plans the White Spider had regarding Beck Homan's actions was unknown. Meanwhile, the guy didn't even suspect that he had a new constellation, the memory of which he would soon gain access to. When he left the mirror room, he was shocked to see his comrade and Sir Geomuk calmly sitting on the floor and playing backgammon. He was furious and called the tower hero a crazy old man for not telling him how to get out of that ordeal. In response, Geomuk began to laugh, and as usual, the nervous hunter Khan shouted that his ward had no right to address the leader of the weapons guild so rudely. The man asked the recruit how he liked that training. In response, the guy nervously shouted that he was not ready for it, and could have died in the mirror room a bunch of times. After these words, he sighed heavily and still admitted that its benefits were hard to overestimate. A positive result was what Sir Geomuk desired, so he asked the student to allow him to continue the conversation with his mentor. During the game, he shared his guess that traitors were currently taking up positions in the city, as well as in the weapons guild. Hearing the mention of a weapons guild in a place with traitors from the very leader of this organization was unusual, and Ho Min became wary. Sir Geomuk said that while in the mirror room, the guy should have noticed important details of various futures. 
It turns out that the constellation also met another self, and that persona sided with the Church of Eternity during the Civil War. Remembering his meetings with the brightest personalities from parallel worlds, the guy thought that Beck Ho Min from the Weapons Guild and Miori were both opponents of the Platinum Monarch. Sir Geomuk was sure that there was someone among the rulers who was trying to corner the Platinum Monarch. While Beck Ho Min was thinking about who might be causing him suspicion, the constellation turned to him with a serious confession. With a carefree look, he sincerely said that the guy was as weak and useless as possible. But despite this, he remembered that he saved his hunters. So on behalf of the Weapons Guild, he expressed his gratitude to him. He also mentioned that Kang Ha Jin thinks highly of his abilities. Hearing this, Bak Ho Min looked at his mentor slyly and began to feel awkward. The guy nervously replied that he simply said that his student was more useful than a mongrel suffering from diarrhea. The compliment was not bad. The leader of the Weapons Guild added that although Huo Ming is weak, the fact that he stands on the side of the Platinum Monarch is a blessing for her. The guy still didn't understand what the old man was getting at and continued to listen carefully. Jeomuk explained that thanks to this hunter, he decided to believe in the Platinum Monarch, so as long as he was alive, the Weapons Guild would side with the current ruler. Ho Ming was glad to hear this, because his activities had a positive effect on the situation surrounding the threat to his ruler. At the same time, Hunter Khan was very wary of the Constellation's strong respect for his strange and suspicious student. Placing his hand on the shoulder of the new Hunter ruler, Sir Jeomuk asked him to show his true will and promised that his stars would shine with him. As a result, the Hunter Khan understood that his student had strong constellations and the active hero Geomuk on his side. He believed that with this situation, the chances of a successful uprising had sharply decreased. After this meeting, the investigation was over, and with new data, the guys returned to the ruler's castle. During her meeting with the student, Miss Yun thanked him for receiving the full support of the Geomuk constellation, after which she acknowledged that this was truly a miraculous result. As a reward, she invited the guy to go on a date and he was surprised because it was a little unexpected. As it turned out, she had already chosen the day for their date and was sure that it would be more interesting, since one person whom she considered reliable shared information with her on how to do it correctly. Ho Min couldn't believe that this time everything would be for real, so he asked who could tell her such important details. Miss Yun replied that her advisor was the executioner doll. Hearing this, the guy was a little shocked because last time it was not the best idea. He couldn't believe that the ruler didn't actually have someone qualified to give her normal love advice. At that moment, the Platinum Monarch looked extremely serious. She was sure that this time she would succeed. Looking at her, the guy thought that she was most likely a very lonely person. In addition, there are traitors around her who are planning an uprising, so it is unlikely that a serious relationship would ever be in her interests. He was sure that in order to find out about the rebellion against divinity, he would have to deceive his ruler. The time came for their second date, and Mrs. Yun still dragged the guy along with her. This time they were going to go to the cinema and have dinner. In response, the guy was silent, which greatly puzzled the girl, so he had to awkwardly call this plan cool. In addition to the second date, he also received another seal improvement, so he said that now he should also think about some kind of return gift. The girl was surprised why he wanted to give her something. In response, Huo Ming became a little shy and explained that this is a common thing between people who are dating. Madame Yun thought about what he could give her, while the guy said in confusion that since the madam has a huge amount of money, he hardly has the option of surprising her. Despite his words, the girl replied with a smile that she had thought of something she might like. Ho Min considered that the solution to the situation had been resolved, so he waited with incredible interest for her answer. The girl mysteriously said that she would like to receive the head of a crab. Her words seemed strange. The guy thought that she was talking about a crab head dish, so he said that it was already a thing of the past. As expected, he misunderstood her. So the girl explained that she was not talking about a dish, but about a real crab head. It turned out that she was talking about one of the spider legs, Mr. Kim Ho Tae, which is known on the streets as a crab. On the streets it is called crab due to the fact that it supplies certain rare ingredients. Without wasting time, Ho Ming quickly found a man who explained to him that Mr. Crab was selling human organs to the Alchemist Guild. Alchemists used them to make some rare medicines. As it turned out, there was great demand for such a terrible product because even some foreigners dealt with that crazy entrepreneur. The prisoner of the ruler's hunter turned out to be the one who supplied the goods directly to a member of the spider group. The man begged not to kill him and made excuses that he had no idea how this happened within the organization. In response, Ho Min showed his seriousness and asked to tell him everything that was known. Before sharing his knowledge, the guy, scared to death, asked why a single hunter decided to do something like that. Huo Ming briefly said that someone above him wants to get the crab's head. After this, he offered the prisoner to keep his own head in exchange for valuable information. Just as they were about to begin a productive conversation, the rope that held the prisoner over the abyss suddenly broke. The man flew down screaming, and Ho Min realized that he had been ambushed. 
There were many hired killers around him who hatedly called the guy the ruler's dog. Looking at the weapons of his ill-wishers, the guy noticed the similarity of their blade with the one used by the female version of his personality. Based on this, he assumed that these guys belonged to the same organization. First of all, Huo Ming looked at his enemies and assumed that the alchemist was just a decoy. One of the assassins responded that they knew in advance that the Platinum Monarch was targeting the spider's legs. Thanks to this, they realized that if they let one of their guys in as bait, they would definitely catch someone valuable. The guy was surprised that the Platinum Monarch fell for their plan, because instead of him, someone with less chances of survival could have been here. One of the assassins pointed his blade threateningly at the ruler's hunter, and ordered him to inform the Platinum Monarch that he had found the crab. He promised that if the hunter brought the Platinum Monarch to this place, then they would spare his life. Taking the blade out of his secret pocket, the guy replied that he had a better idea. Ho Min rushed to the attack and said that he would leave only one of the hired killers alive, from whom he would find out where Mr. Crab was hiding. After that, he offered to fight and find out who would leave here alive. At the same time, Miss Yun was near the building where the battle was about to begin. She probably knew what kind of test awaited her ward. She was very interested in whether Baek Ho Min could survive this time. The battle began quite unexpectedly for the spider killers. The guys were simply shocked that in addition to incredible speed and good martial arts skills, the hunter was also immune to the poison with which he was poisoned. The guy satisfied their interest by saying that he had been poisoned with something similar before. He actually dismantled this poison using a mini-lab, after fighting a female version of himself in a room of mirrors. Of the huge number of hired killers, only one fighter remained. He began to flee the battlefield, but promised that revenge would be cruel. Huo Ming was about to pursue him because he wanted to get information regarding his target. But he suddenly fell to his knees. Yet he was exhausted due to them using too much poison. Until the very end, he tried to find the strength to pursue, but began to lose consciousness. Sometime later he woke up in that very place. The girl's voice woke him up and he realized that the ruler was already nearby. The guy didn't want her to interfere in preparing the gift, so he said that the lady could just wait. She replied that she had been waiting, but decided to investigate the situation after she saw that the alchemist had fallen. After this, Ho Min remembered the last moments of the battle and excitedly reported that he had missed one of the killers, but the girl replied that she had met him along the way. As expected, the Platinum Monarch beat him up and was able to extract some information regarding their goal. After such news, the guy began to awkwardly apologize, since he believed that this was his task. The girl replied that he shouldn't put pressure on himself, because he did an excellent job without it. Still, he was upset because he wanted to make a gift with his own hands. At that moment, Miss Yun admitted that she was actually interested in a few more things as gifts. A rare manipulator, the Platinum Monarch touched the Shy Guy's face and said that if he gets these things for her, then she will fulfill his every desire. This sentence made the guy forget about everything he was worried about earlier. A blush appeared on his face and he confidently declared that he would keep this promise. The girl with a cunning and purposeful look replied that she had high hopes for her faithful hunter. The Platinum Monarch gave him a list of five people, including Crab, an older sister, Raccoon, an anglerfish, and an assassin whose true identity is unknown. Each of them controls parts of the back streets on behalf of the spider, and if he gets rid of them, then the leader of the organization will become nothing more than a helpless bandit. After four days, Bayek Ho Min had already caught the so-called crab. He told him a true story about recent events, so that the man would understand why he needed his head. After that, the guy launched a chainsaw that was aiming for the villain's neck. The man begged the guy to stop and shouted that they were only trying to get rid of the Platinum Monarch for the sake of the citizens of the city. Sighing heavily, the guy said that apparently his enemies had conspired to say the same thing before they died. The crab tried to convince him that his words were true, so he said that Miss Yun was trying to gain the same power that the Church of Eternity had. His words were not something interesting, so the guy replied that he did not want to listen to stupid chatter, because having become minced meat, the villain would be much more useful than in life. At the last moment before meeting with the saw, the man shouted that he would tell everything the young man wanted to know. This outcome was obvious. When the man was afraid enough to become sincere, Hunter Beck asked what he knew about the rebellion against divinity. Earlier, Ho Ming tried to find out something in the lady's library, but realized that it was worth asking traitors and opponents of the Platinum Monarch. Facing death, Mr. Crab admitted that he had heard something similar from his older sister in the Red Light District. She said that this concept meant capturing the heavens. At the same time, the woman believes that the Platinum Monarch is trying to start this process. At that moment, the crab thought that the guys were chatting about something unimportant, so he did not pay enough attention to it. They also said that when the time comes, the ruler will rebel against divinity and become a lord who commits treason. When the guy said that all this sounded like crazy, 
the man added that he heard that this is the reason the Platinum Monarch collects gold. This story still turned out to be useful. Ho Min had to meet with his older sister in any case, but he didn't think that she could know more than the others. Then the man told everything he knew about spider legs, after which the hunter asked if it was true. The crab said with panic that he would not lie in such a hopeless situation. Within a moment, Ho Min saw a message from a previously unknown constellation. Miori sent a positive reaction to the words that the prisoner said. The crab watched the hunter's behavior with horror and did not know what to expect from him. Within a moment, the guy saw three more reactions from the constellations with whom he had communicated earlier. To test his hypothesis, he asked the poor fellow to say his name out loud. The man shouted that he was Kim Ho Tae, after which the hunter asked the constellations if this was true. The reaction was positive. In addition, the guy suggested that Miori only responds to things that relate to the nooks and crannies. Meanwhile, her behavior significantly played on the nerves of the rest of the constellations, and the eldest of them turned to the crazy girl, saying that if she was watching Baek Ho Min, then she should stop hiding and join the others. Dynamite and the warlike king had not met her before, but the alchemist had heard that there were other constellations besides his. He could definitely say that if Miori looked like the female version of Baek Ho Min that was in the mirror room, then it was obvious that she was the exact opposite of the great wizard. Moreover, he believed that if she really had a skill that could block other people's skills, then the wizards from the Seal Guild, who put all their effort into abilities, would not be able to resist her. Hearing this, the Martial King realized that her seal was the reason why she was able to defeat the Platinum Monarch. Dynamite believed that she was still not ready to interfere much in their plans, but he was already stressed by the fact that she had learned to like their reincarnation. At that moment, the only one was diligently trying to lure out the girl who, during her lifetime, had chosen the path of betraying the ruler. Before finishing what he started, Ho Ming thought that thanks to the new constellation, he was able to find out a lot about the spider. He was not yet sure whether this was true, but he understood that later, he would find out everything himself. Before saying goodbye, he asked the crab if he knew what a spider looked like. The man replied that when they met, the head of their group was wearing a mask and a very strong stench emanated from him. During their meeting, the spider said that if they did not get rid of the Platinum Monarch, then all the citizens of the tower would die. He was confident in his boss's words, because he had never made a mistake before. In addition, the man, furious at the mention of the lady, said that she was annoying absolutely everyone and was probably up to something strange and terrifying. Huo Ming obtained more than enough information, despite the fact that his task was only to obtain the head of a crab. After that, he thanked the villain for his assistance and even called him well done. Scared to death, the villain believed that in this case he would now be released, after which he sincerely thanked him for the opportunity to prolong his worthless life. But at the same moment, Ho Ming turned on the saw again. In parting, he told the crab that from the very beginning he had no intention of letting him go. The guy did not plan to spare the one who sells organs. As expected, Yun Zheng, nicknamed Big Sister, became his second target. The Miori constellation actively assisted him in her interrogation, and as a result, he was able to obtain information about the rebellion against divinity. The captive girl had very superficial knowledge, but what was valuable was that, as it turned out, this mysterious phenomenon was considered a way to clear the tower. The explanation seemed very vague, so the guy asked for more details. In fact, she was only trying to delay the time of her death. She herself did not really know what rebellion against divinity was. Based on this, he realized that in order to find out everything about this, he needed to ask either the spider or the platinum monarch. As expected, the next villain could not escape fair punishment for his crimes. To carry out his plan, the guy decided to prepare well and made an appointment in advance with the merchant with whom he had worked previously. The man in the red shirt, with a not entirely sincere smile, said that all the items belonged to the rare class. In fact, he was shocked that this unknown hunter became so strong and rich in a short time. Ho Ming examined the items. He had no questions and was completely satisfied with their quality, but said that he was worried about the belt because it emits some kind of unclear energy. The system reported that this thing overflowing with magic is a rare half belt, thanks to the characteristics of which all objects inside will weigh half as much. In fact, this strange energy belongs to ghosts in some way. When the world fell apart, people learned that ghosts really exist. They turned out to be not the friendliest creatures. Even the hunters were not eager to fight. As it turned out, ghosts cannot get close to the light of the tower, but some of them had an object and a person with whom it was possible. Being an excellent merchant, the guy who grew up in the back streets of the city stated that the merchant tried to kill him unnoticed with the help of such a dangerous object. The man was very confused and began to make excuses that he had heard that his client was now blessed by the constellation Ripple, so he would be able to exercise the ghost. The plan worked a little differently, but it was still good. Now Ho Ming remembered that he could use Starlight for similar purposes. 
When he stabbed his dagger using the power of light, he learned that the ghost was not particularly susceptible to influence. Things were going hard, although the spirit was quite weak. All this time the belt made strange sounds, but the attempts were useless. Despite this, Huoming was troubled by the strange feeling that he was torturing a weak animal. The hunter decided to ask the seller what happened to the previous owner. So he learned that, being possessed, some wanderer was just wandering around, and the holy knight found him and killed him. It was not easy to expel the ghost, so the guy turned to the constellation for advice. Only Miori gave a positive response, which was expected from a girl who was always ready to take risks. Ho Ming understood that the main risk was that if the executioner doll saw such an item in his possession, it would immediately try to remove his head from his shoulders. Still, a strange feeling did not leave him, and he decided to take the risks on himself in order to take the belt with him. The hunter agreed to all the goods, after which he gave the seller the monster core as payment, saying that it was less valuable due to the presence of a ghost in one of the items. As it turned out, ordinary speech for a hunter was a real luxury for a seller, so the guy corrected himself and said that he could keep the change. It was restless in heaven. The girl's actions were getting on the great wizard's nerves, because because of her, Ho Min bought the possessed object and now they had to find her. The warlike king was afraid that the eldest of the constellations would try to kill the girl. But the wizard replied that no matter how much he wanted this, he would not be able to fulfill such a desire in this world. In addition, it is completely incompatible with it. At that moment, the younger remembered that Miori had a skill that negated all the power of the most experienced among them. Because of this, the great wizard was just going to talk to her. He had to understand why the white spider was forcing Huo Ming to make such decisions at least before their reincarnation met the raccoon. Meanwhile, the guy was returning home. He still had three goals left, and he was thinking that he should quickly finish the task in order to finally get his wish from the Platinum Monarch. At one moment, he was distracted from his thoughts by the appearance of a strange stranger. A man with green hair who was wearing a purple cloak was glad to meet the guy. Looking around, Beck realized that he had been too careless all this time and had been cornered in a dark alley, which is not a very pleasant situation. The mysterious man with a cigar in his mouth said that Hunter Beck has been very busy lately. The guy already knew who he was dealing with. He asked the raccoon why he took the trouble to look for the ruler's hunter. The man calmly replied that he had no reason to fight. After that, he unexpectedly invited the guy to cooperate. His leader asked him to tell him that if the guy agreed to work together, then he would instantly be promoted to the level of a spider's leg. Ho Ming calmly replied that most likely the spider wants to get rid of him, so he does not see the point in this strange and naive proposal. In response to his words, the raccoon stated that if the uprising was accomplished, then the ruler's hunter would be in a much better position than ever. The surprised guy asked what we could be talking about. The raccoon replied that they could give him the title of leader of the weapons guild. The proposal seemed very wild, but Ho Ming was forced to show extreme admiration and asked if they could really overthrow Sir Jomuk and give him his position. The representative of the spider group believed that the constellation had long wanted to resign from the position of leader of the weapons guild because because of the agreement with the overlord, he could not climb the tower. Now he is tied to this position, but if that woman dies, he will immediately go to climb the tower. In a difficult situation, the guy asked if there was any evidence for their words. He all believed that it was not worth agreeing to this proposal. The raccoon replied that if the guy was interested, then he should join their team, after which they would give him a satisfactory reward. Ho Ming thanked them for the excellent offer and the opportunity to receive a decent reward, but did not agree to such conditions because of one detail. He suddenly turned to the fighters behind him and said that when an offer is made, no one prepares their blades to attack. He took the fighters by surprise and at the same moment they had to prepare for battle. Without any second thoughts, Huo Ming rushed into battle. Observing the behavior of the ruler's hunter, one of the members of the spider's team was not very pleased that the young man did not want to listen to his words. Having no other choice, he ordered his soldiers to get rid of the insolent man, after which his entire squad entered the battle. During the battle, Ho Min noticed a strange detail that haunted him. When he realized what moves his enemies were using, he shouted that Sir Geomuk was a good-for-nothing old man who had never been able to get rid of the traitors within the weapons guild. At the same moment, Raccoon began to exhale a huge amount of smoke from his cigar, after which he asked the team not to hesitate since their opponent could no longer receive any blessings from the constellation and was weak. Huo Ming heard the details of his enemy's ability and realized the danger he was in. The words about the impossibility of using the power of the constellations turned out to be true, and Huo Ming could no longer cast the ripple blessing on his blade due to the fact that some special cigarette smoke surrounded him. Addressing the guy, the raccoon said that although he is the favorite of the constellations, in this smoke, it does not matter. At the same moment, the guy thought that his skill also did not work after which he decided to check it and tried to use the power of the seal. But as it turned out, the memory of the warlike king responded without any problems. Huo Ming was surprised that everything was fine. 
the skill did not work for his seal, or for the help of his personal constellations, so he could continue the battle at full strength while his enemies underestimated his capabilities. Having the opportunity to fight in a free style, the guy used the ability of the Master of Ten Thousand Swords and began to fight back. No one could compare with his strength, so he dealt with the fighters very quickly, even despite the fact that among them there were representatives of the Weapons Guild. At one point, among the fighters lying on the ground, he noticed Li Il Ho, one of the closest allies of the Geomuk constellation, who turned out to be a traitor. Taking it off his face, the man was surprised. Why didn't his smoke work? As it turned out, his left eye had a seal similar to the one that mentor Kang Ha Jin had. The man decisively stated that in this case, he must definitely finish everything himself. Seeing the platinum seal of the enemy, the guy was surprised by the realization of what was happening. It turned out that the raccoon had previously been one of the ruler's hunters. The man admitted that this was indeed the case. Based on the new details, the guy understood that his enemy was completely different from the other spider legs, so he couldn't let his guard down in such an intense battle. But after a moment he felt a sudden pain of injury. He was attacked by one of the fighters he had recently destroyed. At that moment it became clear that those guys from the weapons guild had become undead. The raccoon showed his strength and was ready for battle, so he opened his assortment of killer weapons, which included a larger number of throwing blades. Throwing a kunai towards the guy, he invited him to start a battle between the so-called ruler's dogs. Huo Ming did not have time to dodge and had to protect his body by sacrificing his hand. He noticed that the dagger had a seal on it. After that, the guy felt its effect. Due to the wound from the seal dagger, he could not see or breathe normally, which made it clear that the enemy's skill weakened his senses. Continuing the battle, the guy tried to cope with attacks from both sides and realized that now it was much more difficult for him to dodge the attacks of the undead, which previously did not pose any threat. During the battle, Raccoon said that he is a wizard who specializes in curses, which is why the effect of his skill on the enemy is equal to death. The situation was desperate, the guy only had one blade left, so he could not use the skill of a master of 10,000 swords. Throwing another kunai at the guy, the villain shouted that all that the naive young man would get as a result of this fight was an inevitable defeat full of torment. After these words, the guy with weakened senses was unable to dodge another blade that pierced his defenseless back. Facing the undead, the exhausted guy fell to his knees. Another curse left him without vision, and the guy began to fear that his whole story would end so absurdly. But within a moment, he heard the sound of a notification from the constellation, after which he realized that he still had battle options in reserve. At that moment, he activated his skill again, and this time his memory turned to Miori's abilities. He had never encountered her strength before and was surprised that she decided to help. It was quite unexpected, but he had no choice but to trust her. Within a moment, he rushed towards the wizard without even seeing him in front of him. The man could not believe that the guy repulsed his attack without much difficulty and was able to get within fist-fighting distance. The raccoon did not understand how the guy was still standing because his daggers had a curse that dulled the senses because of which the wounded enemy should have been on the verge of death. It seemed to him that the guy was simply able to somehow preserve his feelings. But this was not enough to fight. Fearing a close-range battle, the man thought he would have to use a skill he rarely used, but it was too late. A moment later, Huo Ming destroyed the enemy's seal with a precise blow from his dagger. He was able to do this even though he was almost completely deprived of his feelings. The wounded man grabbed his eye and shouted that this couldn't happen, because his boyfriend must be blind. Due to the destruction of the seal, control over the undead was lost. Moreover, after canceling the skill, Huo Ming regained his feelings again. This was his first experience using Miori's memory, and only thanks to this he was able to survive. It was a completely different set of instinctive movements compared to the Martial King. The assassin's movements were more aggressive and unpredictable than those of the Weapons Guild fighters. The wizard lying on the ground turned out to be unarmed, because fighters of his class lose all their combat effectiveness if they lose control of their seal. Ho Ming put his dagger to the enemy's neck and asked why one of the ruler's hunters became a spider's leg. The enraged raccoon declared that the Platinum Monarch was trying to rebel against divinity. Huo Ming didn't understand what the problem was if it was just a way to climb the tower. According to the villain, the Platinum Monarch is going to put the entire human race on the line in the battle against the tower. Besides, he said, as soon as I tried to find out more about it, the Platinum Monarch sent me into a death trap. But the spider came to his aid. Now it became clear why he's no longer the ruler's hunter. Most likely Mrs. Yun tried to get rid of him because he knew too much. This assumption explained why the ruler's hunters did not live long. Trying to escape, the raccoon began to talk about how similar their fate was. He stated that because of the similarities between them, he decided to give him a chance to escape from the Platinum Monarch. He thought that he could reach the youth if he tried to find out about the rebellion against divinity. After such loud statements, the guy asked the constellation whether this information was true. Miori answered his question positively. So the guy thought that given the information about the rebellion against divinity, 
The betrayal of the Platinum Monarch and the fact that he was given a chance to avoid such a fate sounded very plausible. But until this moment, Madame Yun had never betrayed him, so he had a strong feeling that there was something more to this game. Sighing heavily, he replied that in this case, he needed to ask the Platinum Monarch directly about everything. The man was simply in shock and shouted that the hunter was blown away, because if he did this, that crazy girl would turn him into Platinum. Pointing his sword at the enemy, Ho Ming coldly said that he should remain silent, because in any case, this would be his end. At the same moment, an executioner doll appeared in front of them and asked the hunter ruler to stop. The guy did not expect her sudden appearance. The girl said that Ho Min was again rushing things and acting too rudely and thoughtlessly. In response, Ho Ming only briefly said that he was just doing what the ruler ordered him to do. The doll explained her appearance before him by saying that she had abandoned the title of Constellation and returned to the city in order to prevent any crazy actions of the ruler. She cryptically said that she wouldn't make the same mistake twice. Ho Ming asked what exactly she considers crazy. The girl believed that the Platinum Monarch was trying to step over the line, which is why her promising hunter would be involved in an extremely dangerous game that threatens all of humanity. Still, her words seemed strange because the guy believed that the leader of the godless paladins was on the side of the monarch. As it turned out, this whole performance was in order to observe the new ruler. In response, the guy said that Miss Yoon is truly worthy of respect. The executioner doll asked what we were talking about. Immediately after her question, Ho Min finished the job he started without further ado. He put an end to the spider's faithful servant, a villain from the mysterious traitors group. The girl was furious with his actions, believing that he never understood anything. But the guy had nothing to worry about. He said that all the people in this world have doubts about the Platinum Monarch, hate her and try to get in her way. He believed that it was precisely because of such a difficult situation that she acted so recklessly. After that, he turned to the girl who was shocked by his action and asked her to continue doing what she was doing earlier. He promised that he would continue to respect her for who she was. His behavior and words have changed from how he used to be. The cold and determined guy said that if someone needs to cross the line of safety in order to move humanity forward, then he will do it his way. With a confident look, he stated that if the constellation wanted to try to stop him, then the choice would be hers. The girl could not interfere in this conflict, so she simply asked the hunter with a kunai in his back not to make mistakes. And yet she warned back home in that as soon as he killed someone, he shouldn't have touched. His head would fly off his shoulders. The guy took her words into account and moved on. Meanwhile, the great wizard had already returned to his friends. He said that as soon as he met Miori, she immediately directed her blow at him. The warlike king was surprised that the strongest among them could yield to a girl. But the great wizard explained that knowing how much she hated him, he was forced to allow her to behave so rudely. She hit him once and stopped when she realized that fighting in this dimension was pointless. Unexpectedly for the youngest among the constellations, the one displeasedly admitted that Miori was very smart. But despite the fact that she is smart, he continued to consider her a psychopath, which is a copy of the Platinum Monarch. The warlike king did not understand what the wizard was driving at, because if Miori had been the same as the Platinum Monarch, then she would not have started the uprising. As it turns out, the female version of Baek Ho Min simply hates her own kind. Although she was not exactly a friendly person, the wizard was able to come to a common agreement with her. Miori, like the rest of the constellations, promised to cooperate in order to help Baek Ho Min climb the tower. Surprisingly, the girl no longer wants to try to kill the Platinum Monarch as she did during her life. The White Spider understood that without the Platinum Monarch, it was impossible to climb the tower along the usual path. The only one believed that most likely Miori admitted her mistake, which she made at the very end of her life. Ho Min did not have time to collect all the heads when he received a sudden call to the ruler's castle. As it turned out, there were a lot of guests here. The ruler even called masters of various guilds. Those guys believed that most likely their call was due to the fact that recently, the situation had been unstable and a sudden change of power had begun in the city. It was a mystery to them why the ruler had gathered so many influential people in one place. So the masters assumed that the ruler was going to make some kind of special proposal. Huo Ming knew a little more than the others so he was worried about whether this speech was related to his challenge and recent activities or not. Next, the guy headed to the courtyard where he met with Mrs. Yun. There was an unusually sly smile on the girl's face. Looking at the guy, she told him that she found out that he was trying to find out about the rebellion against divinity. Bayek Ho Min's worst fears became reality, but he knew that in this case, lying would be pointless and would only make the situation worse. The guy resolutely admitted his guilt, and in response, Mrs. Yun thanked him for his honesty and frankness. Within a moment, the body lying at the mistress's feet screamed that it would kill them all. The excessive noise forced the girl to use her ability to close the raccoon's mouth. Now it became clear where the ruler learned about his curiosity. 
Ho Ming believed that he had killed this bastard during the battle, but when he heard his unpleasant voice, he wondered who brought the villain back to life. The girl replied that she did not have resurrection abilities, so this was the work of one of the constellations. She speculated that this might be the constellation that blessed the spider people. She went on to talk about how this loser joined her team in the past. In the past, Raccoon committed a serious crime, but it was a waste of talent, so she gave him the same choice as Huo Min. Despite her kindness, the raccoon began to abuse the ruler's power and returned to his old habits. Eventually, he crossed the line and she was forced to take action. Ho Ming wondered if the reason for his dismissal was the same curiosity that he himself was now experiencing. The girl explained that the raccoon tried his best to figure out her weaknesses and as a result, he learned about the rebellion against divinity and began to investigate it. After these words, she emphasized that he obtained this information in the same way as Ho Min does now. When asked what he was able to find out, the guy replied that he only found out that this was a way to climb the tower, so in fact he was going to ask the ruler about it directly. The cold and calm Mrs. Yun stated that if she told him everything, then the hunter would have to be with her forever. Hearing her words, the guy resolutely said that even under this condition, he was still interested in learning more. After this, the girl agreed to tell him about the rebellion against divinity and handed a sealed envelope towards the guy. Looking at the sheet, the guy asked what it was. The girl mysteriously replied that it was a love letter, because she would like to go on a third date with him. She was going to tell him about the rebellion against divinity after today's speech to the representatives of the various organizations of the tower. The ruler's executive car, accompanied by hunters, arrived at its destination. Student Yu Ha Yul also came to them. She thanked them for the opportunity to see the ruler's hunters again. After which she asked with surprise why the ruler chose such a slow mode of transport and how people even managed to ride something like that before the collapse of the world. Hunter Khan explained that they actually do not have enough fuel, so they use the power of the seal to travel. In response, the excited girl asked why the ruler was trying his best to drive such a car, instead of more convenient transportation options. Ha Jin explained that this is due to the presence of old-fashioned authority. The ruler's decision to use the machine is due to the fact that she wants to put pressure on the old people from the guilds who look down on her. Everything became clear. So Hunter Yu asked where Bak Ho Min was. She was worried that he had been badly injured while on a mission with the Weapons Guild, which is why he still hadn't finished his treatment. The guy replied that if she was asking out of guilt, then she shouldn't worry because Ho Min didn't sacrifice himself to save them. After these words, the girl said that it was good. The situation before the ruler's speech was very tense and Hunter Kan continued to think about what she wanted to say in front of all these big shots. He believed that although Sir Geomuk had provided them with quite good protection, Miss Yun could still become an easy target during her statement. As it turned out, his excitement was very justified, and within a moment the killers of the uprising movement appeared with firearms in their hands. Seeing the ruler's motorcade, they began to shoot in his direction. The use of such an old and long-forgotten weapon took the hunters by surprise and many of them fell under enemy bullets. This was so unexpected that even Hunter Can was shocked, while student Yu did not understand what was the source of such terrifying power. Ha Jin noticed enemies that were located at the windows of the upper floors of buildings that were located next to the road. He understood that most of the hunters who came to them to accompany the ruler were in a state of complete shock from such a strange weapon, and therefore could not cope with the situation. The guy turned to all the wards of the weapons guild and asked them not to panic, and also to avoid open areas where they could get hit by enemy bullets. After these words, the guy began to use throwing knives to eliminate the shooters. His speed was difficult to match, so he eliminated several enemies without much difficulty. Then he asked the guys to simply hold on until the ruler fled to a safer place. But a moment later, a strange magical sphere, overflowing with energy, appeared in front of them. After its activation, a powerful explosion scattered all the hunters from the machine. The guys flew back and hit the fence. When they gathered their courage, they saw that the front part of the ruler's car was badly damaged by the explosion, and a strong fire had started there. Looking around, the guy saw something strange and unexpected. Starlight emanated from the explosion site. Looking closely, he saw that in front of him was a creature that was a constellation. Without any delay, Kung Ha Jin decided to enter the battle. Using his throwing blades, he launched the first attack. Despite his efforts, the constellation easily repulsed everything that flew in its direction. Approaching the enemy, the ruler's hunter remembered that from the living constellations there are only four heroes. And this is definitely not Geomuk, because the enemy has a completely different physique. The second constellation was the Prophet. He is a staunch supporter of the Platinum Monarch, so only Tori and Sizigi remain. None of the Weapons Guild fighters wanted to fight such a terrifying opponent surprisingly, but Kang Ho Jin would not mind supporting his ward, with whom he did not get along very well. Despite his expectations, one of the Weapons Guild fighters still decided to fight back. 
It was Yu Hayul she ran decisively towards the enemy and asked the ruler hunter to use his strength to support her. Although she was not as good as Yuek Ho Ming, the hunter was glad for her help, knowing that she already had some experience. He had to trust her, so he activated his seal's ability called Time Series Observation. The mysterious enemy slowed down and the girl quickly headed towards him to attack. But a moment later, another powerful explosion occurred. The blast wave again threw the guys back and caused even greater destruction of the territory. Due to such a powerful enemy attack, even the experienced fighter Kong Ho Min lost consciousness. And when he woke up, he was seriously injured as he fell on an iron reinforcement. Student Yu was also injured. She could not get up and was most likely also injured. The guy tried to find the strength to get up and continue the battle in order to at least protect the follower of the Geomuk constellation. But a moment later he passed out again because he had lost too much blood due to the wound. The threat to the enemy constellation had passed, so he decided to return to reprisal against the current ruler. Hitmen in purple clothes opened the back door to take the Platinum Monarch out of the car, who should be dead or seriously injured. But just a moment later, several assassins came under attack from Platinum Spears at the same time. The frightened killers realized that Miss Yun was still alive, so they decided to finish the job using fire weapons. But at the same moment, Student Yu joined the battle, and with one instant attack she got rid of all the armed enemies. Her speed and skills turned out to be simply incredible, and the enemy constellation regretted that they had underestimated the girl, that she looked exhausted and useless. In addition, the enemy felt that the blessing energy of the leader of the weapons guild, Sir Geomuk, was emanating from her. Godless paladins came to her aid. The executioner doll turned to her comrades and declared that protecting her master was their primary task. At that moment, the enemy, with terrifying force, decided that he should retreat. The squad of godless paladins was late and the executioner doll began to think that it was their fault that the ruler died due to an enemy raid. The sentimental student of the constellation began to cry, feeling guilty. She turned to her teacher, and with a trembling voice said that she did not deserve to be who she was. But a moment later, Mrs. Yun got out of the wrecked car and consoled the poor fellow, saying that she had done a good job. Student Yu ha -yul could not hide her shock, while the paladins began to make excuses that they could not even think that problems would arise in this place, and at this time. The ruler was in perfect order and asked not to worry about her condition. Addressing her charges, she asked them to take care of her faithful hunter, who was seriously wounded. At the same moment, a doctor rushed to him. The man shouted that even though he was still breathing, it was very difficult to guarantee successful treatment. In response, Lady Yun coldly said that Hunter Kang's heart belongs to her, so it will not be able to stop until she orders it. The doctor began to save the wounded man and called the alchemists for help. Next, the ruler turned to the follower of the leader of the weapons guild and asked if she had received personal instructions from her mentor. The excited girl replied that Sir Geomuk asked her to protect her mistress. Hearing this, the lady asked the girl to accompany her to the tower. Meanwhile, somewhere in the back streets, Ho Min was caught. Before the Platinum Monarch was about to talk about the rebellion against divinity, the guy planned to crush another enemy. But this time he fell into a well-prepared trap where, to his surprise, the fighters used real pistols which he had previously only seen in films. The girl sitting opposite him explained that her grandfather loved to collect all sorts of antique things, vintage clothes, furniture, and so on. Ho Ming admitted that it was like any grandfather. Taking out a knife from under her clothes, the killer said that her grandfather was an incredible man. She said that he was in charge of an orphanage and helped poor children from the gateway with work. In response, Huo Min asked if he was the person he was thinking about. The girl continued her speech and said that although he sometimes gave instructions to kill someone, they were still alive and well-fed only thanks to his content. In her eyes, that was until he was finished off by one of the ungrateful children. The ruler's hunter was actually surprised that the old man had a granddaughter. With a sly smile, the girl replied that this was just a lie in order to beautifully compliment her role within the group. After that, she thanked the guy for the compliment and said that, as the granddaughter of an old man, she even wanted to get rid of his killer. At that moment, Huo Min assumed that she was one of the leaders of the spider group, which was an unknown killer. Rising from the chair, the girl said that when she answered all his questions, she would no longer be unknown as before. Then she invited him to follow her. The guy did not understand her motives and said that this place was already a good place to commit murder. But one of the girl's charges said that he should silently listen to her words. The girl looked towards the center of the main event of this day and was surprised that even at a great distance she could feel the vibrations of a powerful explosion. The ruler's hunter could not allow their interference, because in that direction, the Platinum Monarch was going to give her speech. Therefore, he immediately rushed to the attack and, thanks to his speed, was able to avoid pistol shots. Before the girl's eyes, her team began to rapidly disappear, 
At that moment, she realized that without her intervention, it would be impossible to calm this guy down. Within a moment, the guy felt several wounds on his back. He didn't understand how the girl managed to carry out so many attacks in one instant. She was significantly superior to him in terms of speed. But after taking a good look, he saw that his enemy's appearance had changed very much. The girl had grown significantly and already looked like a real woman. She said that Baek Ho Min may not try to defeat her since she is much stronger than everyone he fought before. The fact that she suddenly changed was accompanied by a significant increase in her strength. The girl with a sly smile explained that one star was shining for her, after which she suggested that this was the first time he had encountered an enemy of such a level in battle. The situation became clearer and Ho Min felt a real danger because he had not previously fought to the death with a hunter with stars. The unknown killer again rushed to the attack, warning the guy that even though she has one star, the difference between those who have one star and those who do not have them at all is simply incredible. Huo Ming did not have time to repel her quick attacks and continued to be injured. He did not think that among the spider's subordinates there would be someone with one star. Continuing to inflict wounds on the guy, she explained that her transformation was the power of a star, so an ordinary hunter would not be able to cope with it. When the guy found the right moment to strike back, the girl suddenly decreased in size. The villainess with a sly smile could very freely control the size of her body, which brought additional complexity to the guy. The unknown killer continued to put pressure on the guy and stated that his speed did not even come close to meeting her expectations. Huo Ming was forced to jump to a safe distance. He could not cope with the enemy's pace, so he was forced to analyze the situation. The wounded guy looked very nervous. In order to stall for time, he asked why she kept talking about her abilities, because it would be easier for her if she just shut up and defeat him much faster. The girl boldly replied that she was actually bored of fighting him seriously at the moment when her comrades were attacking the Platinum Monarch. The ruler's hunter was shocked, because as it turned out, her task was simply to detain the guy so that he would not prevent them from putting their plan into action. Looking around, she said that the explosion they heard earlier meant that the Platinum Monarch was attacked. She also reported that the constellation had joined the attack, so she thought it was logical to assume that the Platinum Monarch was already dead. Hearing that even the constellation was against Miss Yun, the guy began to worry about whether everything would be okay. At the same moment, the girl said that their goal was not to kill the ruler's hunters, but to stop the Platinum Monarch himself. Moreover, she said that the spider wanted to see him. The killer wanted the guy to sincerely rejoice. The wounded hunter thanked her hesitantly. At that moment, a satisfied smile appeared on the girl's face. She said that the guy quickly grasps information and based on this, he probably knows the value of his life, which is wonderful news for them. But then the guy said that he actually thanked her for chatting and giving him time after which he threw his cloak in her face, thereby limiting the girl's field of vision. The girl believed that his tricks did not make any sense, so she threw back her cloak and decided that now she would definitely put an end to the impudent man. But after this movement, she saw that the guy began to scream brutally and ghost energy appeared around him. The girl was simply shocked. She assumed that he was using shadow hands and then called him a crazy bastard. Within a moment, the possessed guy rushed to attack. For the first time in their battle, the girl went on defense and was instantly wounded. She did not notice when he managed to become possessed by shadow hands. The ruler's hunter continued to boldly walk forward, which greatly frightened his enemy. The girls from the spider group tried with all their might to get rid of him, but her quick attacks did not produce any results, and she only continued to defend herself in panic. Although previously Huo Ming was significantly inferior in terms of speed, now it was not difficult for him to dodge the enemy's sharp attack. Moreover, he even managed to wound the girl in response. Analyzing the situation, the girl could not understand what was happening, because logically the shadow hands would try to tear her into pieces regardless of whether they were hit or not. But just now they simply dodged her attack and even carried out a retaliatory strike. With horror in her eyes, she assumed that the guy was not completely possessed by the ghost and was able to maintain his sanity. With a smile on his face, the guy admitted that he had been figured out quite early. The girl was simply shocked. She asked how this was possible since she had never heard of anything like this before. In fact, he wasn't possessed to begin with. He used the skill on Miori as soon as the enemy started chattering about the Platinum Monarch, and from then on, the knowledge of the constellation filled him, so he immediately knew what he should do. The half-belt is possessed by Shadow Arms, and among Miori's knowledge was information on how to use it. In order to tame the Shadow Hands, the tamers in the Circle Guild used Golden Collars. Luckily, he had an item that he could use as a replacement for that artifact, and it was the blessing of the Ripple Constellation. The Martial King used the Ten Thousand Swordmaster to transform his body into a weapon while Miori enveloped him with shadow arms. The starlight emanating from his body suppressed the shadow hands just the right amount, and as a result, he became a being with superhuman strength while maintaining the same rationality 
just like the tamers from the Circle Guild. Naturally, he will not be able to maintain this state for too long, because with every power comes risks. Huoming used the abilities of two constellations at the same time, so he felt as if his seal could burn out and dissolve at any moment. He understood that if he continued to use the seal like this, there was a risk of losing his hand or becoming possessed by shadow hands. Therefore, the guy decided to hurry up and eliminate the unknown killer before his time was up. With a furious cry, he rushed into another attack. Fearing that the shadow hands would reach her body, the girl decided to take extreme measures and unleashed a new power of transformation of her body, thanks to which she lengthened her body and suddenly reached his face. With great hatred, she aimed at the guy's neck and bit off part of it, catching a large vein. After this, the girl quickly returned to her previous appearance. With a satisfied laugh, she shouted that this was the end. But at the same moment, she saw that the shadow hand of the hunter ruler grabbed her body, and the guy tightened his grip. With the power of the ghost, he managed to tear off the girl's left hand and she shouted with great hatred that he would pay for this. Fearing for her life, she decided to escape from the battlefield, which actually turned out to be a gift of fate for the hunter ruler. The guy tried to rush after her, but it was too late. His reserves of strength were at their limit and the strength of his ghostly hands began to weaken. Huo Ming stopped using his skills and fell to his knees from exhaustion. Having a dangerous wound that continued to bleed, the guy understood that if the unknown woman had held out a little longer, he would have lost. After that, the guy fell to the ground, exhausted. It seemed to him that all these trials were filled with bad luck, because he was constantly on the verge of death. In the last moments, he saw a man in uniform approaching in front of him. Before he passed out, he kept thinking about whether the Platinum Monarch was okay. Watching another intense battle, the Great Wizard continued to be nervous because Huo Ming was not afraid of death at all. In fact, the constellation itself was exactly the same during life. Dynamite said that this is due to the fact that he is moving too quickly, and due to this pace he has recently met many serious opponents. The youngest among them noticed that as a result of constant battles, synchronization increases and Beck Ho Min's abilities grow by leaps and bounds. To tell the truth, he was the only one who was against such a fast pace, because in the end such a brat wouldn't be able to cope, and everything would be in vain. Dynamite agreed, after which he asked what kind of skill it was that the unknown woman used at the very end. The wizard explained that this is a beginner skill called Poisonous Snake, which is a modified ability from the blessing of the Constellation Terror. Due to the reconstruction of the tower, too many unknowns began to appear, so it was difficult to even guess why the Constellation of Horror and the Dark Ghost descended. Dynamite suggested that their actions might be related to their existence, while Miori suddenly appeared behind him and said that the good thing is that the Constellations know a lot. Hearing her voice, the guys turned around sharply because they didn't expect her to appear so suddenly. The great wizard, turning to the woman, said that she was finally ready. In response, Miori stated that he was the only one who did something very crazy and turned this tower upside down, after which she coldly called him a psycho. In his defense, the only one stated that if he had not done this, then there might not have been another chance. In his opinion, the same goes for the memory skill. He believed that this was an opportunity that had not appeared even after a thousand rebirths. But the girl replied that such a possibility was useless and then asked if he thought that she was angry with him because he did not help her when she was Beck Ho Min. The eldest among the constellations was really sure that Miori harbored a grudge, but the girl replied that there was something in her life that she never asked for. According to her, she did not have a chance to conquer the tower, but even so, she still did everything she could without envying those who were at the peak. The daring one replied that all her words were simple excuses, and she was simply making excuses for the unsuccessful conquest of the tower. In response, the girl said that hardly anyone cares that she never rose up, because going to the end, putting in all your efforts, is in itself an achievement of the goal. Miori stated that the only warlike king and dynamite are to some extent the winners for her. Such kind words did not bring joy to the elder among the constellations. He asked her not to draw conclusions that were convenient only for her. Pointing her finger at the mad wizard, the girl stated that until this time, the tower never knew about the existence of Beck Ho Min. But since he interfered with the memory skill, now everything has changed. She believed that it was very obvious that they were the reason for the reconstruction of the tower, so it was quite possible that the constellations received some kind of task from the system. Surprised by Miori's shrewdness, the guy stated that she really is a ghost of rebellion against divinity, since you can literally see right through the plans of the tower. But, to him, her words were nothing more than an assumption without evidence. Enraged by the impudence of the crazy wizard, Miori nervously said that he should stop his stupid machinations which only lead to problems. The warlike king joined the conversation, which turned into a violent conflict, and asked the parties to tone down the heat a little. Returning to the previous topic, he wanted to make sure whether Miss Miori had actually committed rebellion against divinity, 
The girl agreed, and in response to this, the guy remembered that usually the leader of the rebellion is the Platinum Monarch. He wondered why she led a rebellion against divinity even after killing the Platinum Monarch. For her, the reason was simple. She said that this was the same bet against the tower as treason. There was no point in stopping for them once their treacherous will became known. According to her, the tower remembers the bet, not the people. And by the time she killed the Platinum Monarch, it was too late to change the terms of the game. She clarified that it would be more correct to say that the Platinum Monarch allowed herself to die only when she created a situation in which it was impossible to reverse it. The warlike king began to draw conclusions, but Miori did not want to give more details. She said with a sly look that rebelling against divinity was not their main interest right now. According to her, the guy's memory skill would give a much better effect than using rebellion against divinity. The girl believed that this was real luck. Thanks to Beg Ho Min, the Platinum Monarch bet has a 10x chance of success. The only one continued to listen about how the girl came to terms with his crazy idea, but could not add anything and only watched. At the same time, Dynamite and the Martial King, having less knowledge regarding the experiences of the Elder Constellations, began to worry about whether their ridiculous reincarnation could handle such tests. After recent battles with the Spider Group, Bak Ho Min and his mentor woke up in the same room of the ruler's hospital. Ho Min, as usual, began to mock his comrade and asked how his enemies managed to beat him so much that he ended up in the hospital, on a bed nearby in such a dubious condition. The surprisingly calm Ha Jin did not fall for his comrade's first provocation and replied that he had a ruptured spleen and severe fractures with heavy bleeding. In response, Huo Ming began to mock him even more. With a loud laugh, he declared that he had torn muscles and ligaments, poisoning and rupture of some internal organs. He boasted that he received more than three mortal wounds during the battle. The mentor admitted that judging by their condition, they had encountered quite strong enemies for which they were still not prepared. Baik Ho Min continued to enthusiastically share the results of his fight and proudly declared that he was able to drive away the one-star hunter on his own. In response, the mentor praised him and with a sly smile said that he fought with the constellation. Of course, the confident guy couldn't even think that his mentor was able to outperform him so much. The mention of the constellation shocked him. Ha Jin reported that at the end of their unequal battle, an executioner doll arrived and, together with Yu Ha Yul, drove them away. He also mentioned that that always worried and worried girl was making a fuss, crying and whining about how she wanted to stop being a hunter. Still, she has a weak spirit, as before. Then the guy asked if their ruler was okay, because she had been repeatedly assassinated. Ha Jin replied briefly that Miss Yoon was unharmed. In addition, at the moment it resonates with the tower, so any contact is prohibited. Sir Jemuk has descended and is temporarily acting as the ruler's confidant. This was a risky move, so Ho Ming said that he was sure that if this constellation were a traitor, then such power in his hands would lead to the destruction of the city. The student's doubts aroused anger in the mentor. He did not understand how a daring, uneducated guy dared to say such things, after which he advised him to remain silent in the presence of other people. Returning to the previous topic, Ho Min asked which constellation attacked the ruler, Tori, Prophet, or Sigizia. Ha Jin replied that they were unable to find out anything. His words caused misunderstanding among his ward, and the guy said that he was incompetent since he fought with the enemy and could not find out his identity. In his defense, the hunter said that he should not be told by the pathetic weakling that he almost fell back while fighting the one-star hunter. Ho Ming became enraged and shouted that he emerged victorious from that battle. Without any emotions, the mentor, hesitantly and without any interest, simply called the guy well done, after which Ho Min fell for his provocation and asked him to praise him normally, with applause and a look in the eyes. As expected, after a week there was progress in treatment. Of course, Ho Min was able to return to his previous state and began to tease his partner, who was less fortunate in terms of damage resistance and recovery. Despite the good condition of his body, the pain from the seal did not go away, so the guy was thinking about when he could get a new improvement from the Platinum Monarch. Lady Yun had already been resonating with the tower for a week, so he could only wait for her to return. For now, he understood that without her help, he would not be able to use the seal for as long as before. Still, he had free time to sort out his progress, and the guy decided to check the level of synchronization with his constellations. The synchronization level with the Martial King increased the most, so Huo Ming was able to choose a new ability. Before that, he chose the skill and weapon, so the choices were the constellation abilities and memories. His abilities were not enough during the battle with the unknown, so he decided to choose this option. It seemed to him that this was the most rational choice, because he did not know exactly what advantage his memories would give him. After choosing a new reward, he did not feel any changes, so he decided to test it in practice. He called his mentor to help. Unlike his patient, Ha Jin still had not recovered and continued to move around the area with an IV. Ho Min asked him to just sit still and throw the knife, 
which displeased the proud warrior. Hunter Kang said that it was stupid to doubt his throws, because even if he just sat, his ridiculous student was unlikely to be able to dodge. Taking out a wooden training knife, an enraged Ha Jin declared that if Ho Min could dodge his throw, then he would begin to consider his student as his equal in strength. Continuing to infuriate his teacher, Ho Ming boldly asked whether he should really rejoice at such an honor that some weakling would consider him his equal. After these words, he boldly asked the teacher to throw away this dull knife. The enraged guy instantly did as he was asked. The throw turned out to be so fast that within a moment it was in the face of the self-confident hunter. It seemed that Huo Ming could not avoid such a quick and sudden attack. But judging by the reaction of his mentor, something too unpredictable happened. Within a moment, the knife was in the hand of his student. Ho Min was able to escape and then nervously shouted that Ha Jin should warn him before doing things that could kill him in an instant. The mentor's surprise knew no bounds, because he threw this knife with the intention of completely splitting the arrogant guy's skull. But Ho Min was able to not only dodge, but even catch the knife that was flying towards him at full speed. He was so shocked that he swallowed his pride and asked the student how he managed to do it. Ho Min replied that he himself did not know how it happened. He thought that his hand at the right moment moved much faster than he himself expected. He felt that it was not like he would be able to use his abilities to perfection just because they had increased. Based on this, he realized that he needed to get back to training. Meanwhile, a man in a long blue cloak approached them and said that he was glad to see how the guys were having fun despite the fact that they had not yet fully recovered. Seeing this man, Hajin is simply shocked. A man with long blue hair and a cradle in his teeth came to them. This was the mentor of the hunter of the ruler who was watching the irresponsible newcomer. First of all, the man asked how his ward was doing. Hajin immediately jumped up and confirmed that he was fine. After this, the mentor said that he was surprised that when he returned to the castle after exploring the tower, he saw that complete chaos was happening in the city. Ho Ming stood still and watched their dialogue. He realized that in front of him was a teacher about whom legends were circulating. It was the first time he had seen Ha Jin so excited. The ruler's hunter asked if his teacher had finished researching the changes in the tower. The upset man replied that he could only get to the 42nd floor. After this, the prophet called him and said that something was wrong in the city, after which he asked him to return to the ruler's castle. Ha Jin wondered how the prophet knew about what was happening in the city. The teacher replied that the Platinum Monarch had sent an urgent message to all reliable constellations, but despite this, the prophet was not eager to descend. It turned out that other constellations supported him in this, and despite the fact that they had not been in the city for several years, they were not going to interfere with what was happening around the ruler. Watching the conversation, Huo Ming wondered with interest what the Platinum Monarch was doing while she was locked in the tower. He suggested that after the attack of the constellation, all she could do was ask for help from other constellations, although only Sir Geomuk came to her call. After a pleasant conversation with the ward, the teacher asked what kind of unfamiliar young man was next to them. Huo Ming repeated his comrade's excited behavior and introduced himself as a newcomer. Looking at the teacher more closely, the newcomer thought that his friend's mentor looked like some kind of homeless person, but he was sure that this man with a serious look was not so simple. The teacher came to the conclusion that the newcomer came to this place after he left for the tower, after which he said that since he was able to survive all this turmoil, then he must be of some use to him. After that, he shook the surprised guy's hand and said that there was no need to know his name, so you could address him as a teacher. Just a moment after the handshake, the calm teacher lifted the hunter high into the air. After that, he threw him hard on the ground without letting go of the hand of the poor guy who had only recently been in a hospital bed. Ho Ming was infuriated by the hunter's sudden behavior and then angrily asked what he was doing. The calm teacher replied that it was time for the first lesson. As a result, Ho Min learned that he could not defeat him even with all his strength. He was beaten without any chance of winning. The teacher was unperturbed but still admitted that the fool his student had contacted was quite good. He noticed that the guy's simplicity is good, because a good hunter is a simple-minded person. The man said that he was not going to stay in the castle for long, but convinced that during this time he would make the young man a useful fighter. After that he asked the beaten ward to get to his feet and try again. Ho Min slightly changed his attitude towards the man, and mentally calling him a well-groomed homeless person, he realized that if he went against him seriously, he would die without any chance. Two days later, the guy's appearance had changed a lot. He felt an inner emptiness, because recently he had been severely beaten, and he began to think that he would never be able to defeat such a terrifying opponent. Calling him a homeless man once again, the guy admitted that the man he couldn't even hit once was simply incredible. The teacher did not care at all that there was a serious hunter against him. He calmly enjoyed the local drink and took a break from the eternal battles in the tower. At that moment, the exhausted guy once again began to lose consciousness. 
The teacher noticed that his student was losing consciousness for the eleventh time, so he said that it was time for him to leave. Hunter Can asked when the teacher was leaving. The man replied that he had already finished his business. He believed that he had completed his mission and now, having met with the passing constellations, this hopeless guy would not die in vain. During his story, the hunter was simply shocked because he noticed a scratch on the teacher's face, which meant Beck Ho Min was able to hit it. Wiping the blood from his cheek, the teacher said that the newcomer's clothes did not fit him, so he adjusted them slightly. He asked me to tell Ho Min that if he grows up again, he should come to the meeting again. Once again, Ha Jin witnessed how those he respected so much paid attention to the untalented simpleton who loved to piss him off. Leaving the palace, the man said that he was going upstairs, as he planned to teach the newcomer until the leader of the godless paladins arrived. After his words, silence began and it was clear that the ruler's hunter did not hear everything he wanted. Addressing the student, the teacher asked the guy not to think that the platinum monarch is a stupid girl. Ha Jin was surprised at what he was talking about, because his loyalty never allowed him to doubt that Lady Yoon was always right. The man believed that most likely their ruler knew about the ambush, but nevertheless did not show it. As a result of this, her most devoted subordinate almost died. In fact, he didn't care who got hurt, the ruler or her hunters. He didn't even care about the mysterious marks on the hand of the student he'd been working with lately. He believed that each of them would soon die anyway, and completely different people would take their place. These words did not alarm his ward at all, because the guy had long known that they were all walking on thin ice and had to be prepared for death at any moment. Before leaving, the teacher clenched his fist and said that his attitude towards Kung Ha Jin is different because he spent too much time with him, after which he admitted that when he sees him, he remembers the past and drinks constantly. Saying goodbye with a glance, he asked his ward not to get involved in senseless nonsense that could kill him. He asked him to take care of himself and said that if it was too dangerous with the Platinum Monarch, then he could leave her and return to his teacher. Dodging low, the guy said that he hoped the teacher would climb the tower safely. The man accepted his decisive words. After that, he wished the hunters good luck and said goodbye. With a smile on his face, he thought that Kang Ha Jin had not dared to answer one important question this time. After the man left, Miss Executioner Dahl came to them and asked what kind of stench she smelled. The guy replied that his teacher had just been here. Looking at the beaten Huo Ming, she realized that the smell of alcohol was part of the strange man's training. She was not very happy that the teacher beat the ruler's hunter at the moment when she needed him. The poor guy's mentor asked what the leader of the godless paladins needed from his ward. The girl replied that this was an extremely important matter and she needed both of them. After this statement, they went inside the castle and Beck Ho Min regained consciousness. Ho Min thanked the girl for her concern and said that he heard that it was she who saved him from the underground where he was ambushed. The girl replied that it was just her job, after which she said that the platinum monarch showed her the body of a raccoon, which also could not die. After these words, Ho Ming said that their world is full of mysteries and because of this, the paladins are probably in chaos from a huge number of tasks. The executioner doll replied that despite her busy schedule, she had a personal matter with him. She said that over the past ten days, due to the absence of the Platinum Monarch, half of the city has plunged into anarchy, and because of this, various rumors are beginning to spread. Some idiots began to spread the opinion that the true ruler had died and that only a figurehead was being shown before them. The problem was not only this, because as it turned out, the latest terrorist attacks were the work of the rebels. They have a lot of people and weapons, and among them there were even constellations. Despite this, they were still not strong enough to kill the Platinum Monarch. She led this to the fact that there is some fault in this of the ruler's hunter. After all, since he had recently killed most of the spider's legs, the spider had lost control of the underground world. Ha Jin had not heard this news before, and was simply shocked when he learned that Ho Min was able to do something so incredible. At that moment, his ward realized that his mentor still had not heard these stories and was unlikely to know about the agreement that he had concluded with the Platinum Monarch. The Executioner doll continued and stated that the city is on the verge of collapse, and what is happening inside directly affects the hunters and constellations in the tower. She believed that if they did not know that the people they left in the city were safe, then the hunters would begin to descend, and this would not only make the pace of capturing the tower slower, but could even lead to unexpected consequences. However, among those who came down there was an Executioner doll. She knew that the Platinum Monarch had been looking for an opportunity for a long time to destroy the spider, causing as little damage to the city as possible. But now chaos has begun, and in order to restore balance in the city, one of them must die. After these words, the guys began to guess what was going on. The girl seriously turned to the guys with a task that they should do. She asked them to personally kill the spider in order to restore the ruler's former influence on society and the city as a whole. When asked why she didn't do this herself, the girl admitted that she couldn't catch the spider's legs on her own. For all this time, she managed to find only the elder, 
while on back home in they seemed to be deliberately jumping and giving away their location. They wanted to use the guys not as the main fighting force, but rather as bait. The godless paladins assumed that one of the spider legs was the spider itself, but it was difficult for them to say which one they were talking about. If they had blatantly hunted them, then the group members could have escaped, so they had to act more carefully, and, as a result, the circle of suspects narrowed down to the flickering anglerfish. Hajin asked why him. The girl reached into her pocket and explained that their decision was related to the ammunition used in the terrorist attack. Showing the guys the bullet, she said that they had not been produced for a long time. In addition, she checked with the weapons guild if they had something similar, but Sir Geomuk said that he had never created such a thing. This meant that the weapons of those attackers were obtained outside the city, and there is only one group of madmen exploring the permafrost for equipment. These are the smugglers. Naturally, the doll did not release the version that the anglerfish bought the weapon on the orders of the spider. But even so, they should have gotten rid of him as the last support of the organization of criminals. She believed that they needed to capture the anglerfish in order to be able to contact their leader. Hajin didn't mind joining their plan. His student also did not object, but was planning something cunning. In return, he asked her to forgive him once if he did anything bad along the way. Hearing this, the mentor became furious and asked how he dared to plan something bad. The doll replied that it could not guarantee protection. Sighing heavily, the guy continued the manipulation and said that he was going to risk his life, while the head of the godless paladins could not help him just once. After these words, he said that in this case, it would be better to join the people's militia. The executioner doll was filled with anger as the cunning Ho Min realized how important his role was in their operation. He was carefree, because he knew that in this case the girl would have to make concessions. And so it happened. The doll replied that if the guy does not kill innocents, then she can turn a blind eye to something illegal for once. Despite this promise, she warned that this did not apply to the rest of the paladins in her squad. Ho Min got his way and suggested getting down to business. The guys went beyond the tower's property. This road is called the escape route. There are endless slums in which even Ho Ming did not want to stay for long. This is such a wild and dangerous place that even criminals avoid it. But this is where a hunter can be helped to find a flickering anglerfish. In front of him, the guy saw a strange, lonely girl muttering something under her breath about destroying and expelling an evil spirit. Huo Ming was cautious and quietly asked who was approaching him. After his words, this girl began to scream and tore the rag that tied her hands to her body. After that, she rushed towards the guy with a wild cry. She didn't pose much of a threat to the guy, so he carefully stepped back and tripped her. The girl did a forward somersault and hit the ground with a scream. She lay dissatisfied on the ground, while the guy said with understanding that among people like her, it is unlikely to find someone adequate. The girl was already shaking with anger. She asked how he managed to evade her attack. The guy replied that no one in the world could have suffered from such pitiful movements. Then he asked what she knew about the flickering anglerfish. He understood that the tamers were friends with the smugglers, and this girl might answer something. Dissatisfied with recent events, the strange fool asked why he needed to know this. Huo Ming said that he had his reasons, after which he remembered that the tamers are the longtime enemies of the executioner doll. Recalling this, he threatened that if she did not help him, then the constellation would take over. The girl was scared to death. Hearing this, she said that if the guy works for the doll, then he is not the spider's informant. Huo Ming was surprised by her words, while the girl with a serious look stated that there were no smugglers left in this place since the angler took them all a week ago. Then they went to the girl's place of residence. Her name is Haru, and she briefly explained that the smugglers know how to avoid shadow hands even outside the city, which is the reason why they cooperate with the tamers. Smugglers need the skills of tamers while they need money. Huo Ming agreed, saying that the collars really cost a lot of money. As it turned out, lately the anglerfish had been forcing smugglers to leave the city more and more often, so much so that she could even see the fatigue in their eyes. Suddenly, she began to observe that some adults stopped returning from trips. Ho Min asked what else strange the girl observed. She watched as the commotion began. Those adults who knew something mistakenly decided to complain to the anglerfish, and since then they have not returned. That's why she decided to defend this place. Huo Ming laughed at her stupid self-confidence but she shouted displeasedly that it was her duty, because this place is the source of eternal life. It was because of such intentions that she decided to attack him in the middle of the street in order to try to scare the stranger who was among the slums for the first time. The guy was worried and asked how he would find the flickering anglerfish if there was no one left here. Haru cryptically replied that if he was looking for that leader, then she could help him. In response, the guy asked in disbelief if she knew where he was. With a sly smile, she said that the anglerfish was hiding now but she had a way to get it out of hiding. She believed that their goals converged, so they would help each other so that Beck Ho Min would get the anglerfish, and she would bring the adult tamers home. 
The place where Haru says the anglerfish is hiding is a sparkling street called Itaivan. This is the city's largest entertainment district. Who would have thought that an anglerfish would be hiding in such a popular place? Besides, Itaiwan is located right behind the lady's castle. As a cover, the hunter and the constellation dressed in fancy clothes to appear as a beautiful young couple. Ha Jin wore a purple suit. He believed that one of the spider's subordinates thought that they would not look for him in the most obvious place. The guys, as usual, did not get along, and Ho Min tried to offend his mentor. The more serious executioner doll asked them to be silent. In response, Huo Min asked if she was really sure that her red dress would distract people's attention and they would not recognize the famous hero. The girl replied that most of the population recognize her thanks to her uniform. Moreover, she had never appeared in such an outfit before. More importantly, she believed that the anglerfish would not be able to stop them and escape. She was sure that the enemy would never guess that they would come for him here. The attentive glances of the men in suits indicated that they suspected them of something. Ho Ming noticed this and said that there was no turning back now. After that, with a smile on his face, he invited the guys to start. The guys approached the guard and presented an invitation. The man was surprised and said that today many came with the same invitations. Despite this, there were no problems and the guard invited the guys to follow him. Addressing the doll, the guy said that the invitation from the angler fish acquaintances that Haru gave him was a reliable thing. In response, the doll asked not to relax, because they still do not know why the shadow hand tamers have an invitation to this club. Ha Jin was already in position, but Haru still didn't show any signs. Ho Min believed that she had her own job, after which he invited the girl to go inside. They entered a club where very wealthy people were having a good time, having fun and dancing. While inspecting this club, Ho Min surprised the girl with his knowledge, saying that although not much time had passed since the end of the world, these guys were able to restore this place, and apparently they liked the entertainment of the past era. He didn't know how to explain his knowledge of the past, so he said he had heard about it from older people before. Meanwhile, the host began his speech and thanked everyone present for coming to their sophisticated club. With a laugh, he noted that all visitors probably know that the city has been full of turmoil lately. He also stated that the tower is completely unstable, while the overlord and paladins are completely useless. After such an announcement, he stated that, especially for such a case, their suppliers had prepared a means of self-defense for everyone, something that every person needs who is worried about their life in a city overflowing with chaos. He happily declared that it was something dangerous, found outside the city. He called it a monster that emerged from the cold that destroyed their world in the past. After that, he shouted that these were shadow hands, after which a shackled Haru appeared in front of them, shouting something about the chaos of destruction and other things that tamers mutter under their breath. Huo Min was shocked when he realized that this was her plan. A nearby executioner doll said that their plan was simple. She said that when their target appeared, the hunters and paladins should attack at the same time. Still, the guy was a little tense because Haru said that she knew a way to lure out the flickering anglerfish and even said in which club the smugglers sell the things they found. But he could not even imagine that for the sake of this plan, she was ready to fall into the hands of these villains. She had to sell herself, with the hope that the hunters would help her free the adult tamers. Still, it was not clear what would interest the angler, so he assumed that she was a very valuable commodity among visitors. The presenter stated that the shadow hands are the same ghosts that hang around the borders of the city and all they know is the desire to shred and kill. Pointing his hand at the girl, he clarified that only tamers are able to control those creatures, and so far there has not been a case where a tamer wanted to sell a grown phantom. After these words, he stated that this tamer herself came to put herself up for sale because she is an excellent commodity, capable of summoning shadow hands and using them as her servants. Hearing this, the audience was simply delighted and began to prepare their wallets. The presenter introduced the girl, and said that she had sworn in the contract to fulfill the will of the Dark Constellation, and if she ever violated the terms, the Vision of Darkness would take a bloody payment from her. Huo Ming was surprised that she actually decided to sell herself despite the fact that she has such crazy abilities. He understood that the girl had made a big bet that the anglerfish would appear in this place, without even fearing that she would be sold to someone else. After the announcement, an auction began, in which participants began to rapidly raise bids and reached 2 billion won, the executioner doll was not happy that the sellers thought that shadow hands could be released into society. She was sure that it was only a matter of time before chaos and mass casualties began among the population. After her words, the guy was surprised at what he saw. It turned out that the flickering anglerfish did show up at the event. A man, accompanied by security, came down from the second floor. The leader of the godless paladins immediately warned her charges about this and asked them to monitor the location of the target. At one point, the man joined the auction and raised the bid to 8 billion. The presenter was simply shocked by such a sudden increase in the rate. 
after which he asked if there was anyone who would dare to offer more. The man was confident that he had already won, and was not even afraid that there might be enemies nearby. Meanwhile, the executioner doll said that everyone should focus and be ready. After silence among the participants, the presenter announced a successful sale and asked the buyer to go backstage. Hearing this, the executioner doll turned to her charges and said that they should wait for the signal while she and Beck Homin went after the target. The guys held hands. The girl asked the hunter to relax and act as if they were a couple. Homin replied that this was a little strange and suggested that he was unlikely to be able to go on a normal date for the rest of his life, because each of them ended in a bloody fight. When they went backstage, security was not amused. The man turned to the strange couple and said that they should not be here. Huo Ming began to act confused and asked if there was really nothing to see here. After this acting game, they quickly rushed to the attack. The guards were too easy targets for such fighters. Ho Ming and the constellation quickly got rid of their enemies. After this, the executioner doll informed the wards that the underground passage had been cleared and ordered the paladins to occupy the entrance. Everything went according to plan and they moved on. But suddenly they felt a strange vibration in the wall next to them. A powerful explosion occurred, which miraculously did not hit them, but destroyed the walls nearby. Constellation and Huo Ming did not understand what was happening. The tamers appeared in front of them. They used shadow hands and looked like they had lost control of their power. Haru stood in front of them and it seemed that she did not recognize her comrade. The guy was confused. He asked the girl if she was conscious. Meanwhile, the rest of the paladins arrived at the scene. The doll's wards were shocked. The girl asked the godless paladins not to let their guard down in order to prevent the enemies from capturing them. The guy recalled the girl's words before they decided to act together. She was extremely worried that the adults stopped returning, after which she decided to defend their place. After the adults disappeared, Haru had to defend their home alone. The guy had no idea whether she knew about what happened to the tamers or not. He supposed that maybe that was why she had put herself in danger by luring out the anglerfish. Even at the risk of her own life, such a young girl wanted to avenge her faction. At that moment, the enraged guy shouted that Haru was a fool because she did not save her life, but was in danger. The tamers, having lost their composure, rushed into battle. The paladins began to defend themselves, trying to avoid being hurt by the shadow hands. At the same time, the door opened, where the angler appeared and said that he had waited for the moment when the captain of the godless paladins came for him. He planned everything carefully and the girl had no choice but to ask the hunter to catch the enemy, because they could not allow him to escape. With a smile on his face, the man said that such a weakling could not cope with him, after which he wished the paladins good luck in the battle with the tamers. The girl could no longer be saved, and although he had not known Haru for long, he remembered her as a kind and sympathetic child, so he was sure that she did not deserve such an end. As he pulled out his blade, he turned to the doll and said that simply grabbing that bastard would not be enough. Filled with rage, the guy shouted that he would kill him with his own hands. After these words, the guy rushed in pursuit, but when he passed the door, he fell into a trap and began to fall down. He landed on his feet and looking around realized that they were going deeper. To begin with, he decided to act as expected for the enemy, so as not to arouse suspicion. The shimmering anglerfish said that it was glad to see the lady's dog, and then said that they had set these traps in advance to deter people. He sincerely hoped that the ruler's hunter would waste his life here in vain. With a confident smile on his face, Ho Min said that he was not afraid of the one who had been quietly hiding from danger all this time. He invited him to talk as much as he wanted, after which he activated Miori's memory so that he could feel any lies of his enemy. The flickering anglerfish shared the spider's words that he found the young man very interesting. After these words, Homin realized that this guy was not the leader of the group after all. In addition, Miori approved of his words, and this meant that his assumption was correct. The man admitted that he doesn't care about the ruler's hunter and he doesn't understand what others find so interesting in his personality. He said that they had lost a lot of influence after their attack failed, and all their allies had either died or fled in terror. Ho Ming was surprised that even after such events, the spider's ward was throwing away money and leading a very carefree life. In response, the man said that when lives are at stake, money is not important. Hearing this, Ho Min asked why he needed so many tamers, angrily saying that although they were mad, they remained innocent people. Remembering Haru, he said that those guys were just working with the smugglers to survive. Angrily, he asked if it was the tamer's fault that they had to spend their last money on collars for shadow hands, while all they could do was live on the outskirts in the slums. In his defense, the villain said that they also had no choice, and if they could convince the tamers to help in the coup, then maybe they would even win. But as it turned out, they were not interested in the affairs of the city, 
and they remained simply madmen obsessed with shadow hands. Huo Ming didn't understand his motive and asked if it was because of this that he allowed the shadow hands to capture them and simply release such dangerous people into the city. The arrogant man replied with a satisfied smile that it was so. After that, he began to use his power and thanked his opponent for giving him time to prepare. With his hand movements, he activated the chains. Ho Ming was shackled because he forgot that magicians could control metal. After that, the enemy sent another chain towards the guy's face, at the end of which there was a blade. At the same moment, the blade was knocked off by some kind of blade. Ha Jin joined the battle and asked his ward not to let his guard down. After that, he rushed into battle and shouted that he could deal with the enemy himself. The man had to dodge the blade that flew towards him. The mentor freed his comrade and said that he should be careful because they cannot know where the next chain will fly out from. Ho Ming furiously rushed into battle and declared that he could deal with the enemy himself. His hatred had its place, but he was in too much of a hurry, and Ha Jin shouted that he had to stop before he made the terrible mistake of underestimating his enemy. At that moment, Ha Jin was distracted by the reckless behavior of his ward and did not notice how he fell into the trap that the magician had prepared in advance. He entered the magic circle and instantly began to be bound by the magician's chains. Despite the immobilization of the ruler's hunter, the flickering anglerfish was still worried that at this rate, it would not be possible to cope with two opponents at the same time. Filled with anger, the man furiously pointed a huge number of chains towards the hunters. Seeing this, Huo Ming did not understand how a magician could use such power and thought that he was some kind of monster. Ha Jin understood what was happening and shouted that that madman sacrificed both hands to the constellation for the sake of this power. Huo Ming didn't understand what exactly this meant. His comrade explained that the enemy is giving a sacrifice in order to temporarily receive part of the power of the constellation, because human flesh is a valuable material, and the more valuable the gift, the greater the reward. While fighting off countless chains, Huo Ming could not understand why their opponent decided to put his life on the line in battle. What seemed strange was that he had previously created shadow arms and used everything he had to buy himself time, but now he was risking his life for just one battle. The madman continued to press on his enemies and shout that he wanted them to say goodbye to life in this place. Ho Min did not have time to dodge and began to get injured, which is why he turned to his mentor and asked if he could use the time dilation skill that he had used earlier. While fighting off the enemy attacks, Ha Jin replied that it was dangerous to do so while he didn't even know what constellation their enemy worshipped. He wanted more information to make sure everything worked out. While Huo Ming was fighting, their synchronization with the One Constellation began to rapidly grow upward and reach the maximum of the first level. Watching the battle, the Great Wizard hoped that Huo Ming would not do anything stupid and start using their memories. Thanks to the Constellation's constant reactions, the guy remembered that he rarely uses the Wizard's memory. He thought for a long time about the relationship he was the only one with the Platinum Monarch because at some point he heard her voice in his presence. He managed to get a connection with him during the first test on the ground floor then he was the only one who was able to easily defeat the monster. At that moment, it seemed to the guy that it didn't matter how strong the constellation was, what weapons or skills he had, because with it he could do everything. Thanks to the advancement of synchronization with the magician, he was presented with a choice of reward, and this time he still chose memories. It was right in the middle of the battle and his feelings suddenly changed. His consciousness found itself in some unknown place and around him he observed the stars of the constellations. In addition, he heard a voice that sounded during the battle with the mirror butterfly. A mysterious man was nearby. He said that the stars are above all things and they probably think they are significant. The only one was interested in whether the stars know that the brighter they shine, the faster they burn out. While in this dimension, Huo Ming felt a strong burning sensation on his hands, his seal was at its limit. The only one began to act and Beck Ho Min acquired his memories. The guy suddenly returned to the battle and thought that he had been in his consciousness for an eternity. He had the feeling that he had returned to the distant past, even though the actions were taking place in the present time. Breaking off the chains, he turned to his mentor and said that he understood what was going on. Hunter Kang was shocked when he heard that his ward had borrowed the second holy constellation weapon called Sin Overflow. Hearing this, the flickering anglerfish couldn't believe his ears and began to tremble. Continuing the battle, Homan explained that this was a weapon capable of repelling the most brutal methods of punishment. He said that when the enemy sacrificed his body, he had no choice but to borrow the constellation weapon. Ha Jin believed the words of his ward and replied that he did not even think that this was possible. Thanks to the memories that were transferred to the guy, he was sure that this time he would not make a mistake. Next, he asked his comrade if he was sure that if they recognized the enemy's constellation, they would be able to attack him. Ha Jin confirmed his earlier words and said that he originally had the idea of using force. For the hunter ruler, it seemed that the attack with the prediction of time was not a bad idea 
after which he asked his comrade to leave him the problems and promised that he would finish everything in an instant. The guy's behavior suddenly changed and he stopped missing attacks. Now he was able to predict the appearance of chains that tried to break through his defenses. Observing such a sudden change in the enemy's agility, the confused flickering anglerfish asked how he managed to predict such unexpected and quick attacks. Huo Ming actually noticed all the movements of the enemy chains. With the help of the strategy against the constellations from the only one, he saw his memories and already knew what to do. He understood that the angler fisherman was a simple person, and there was no way he could control all these chains at the same time, because all people have a limit to their strength. His enemy was furious and did not understand how the ruler's hunter dared to resist. While fighting off the attacks, the guy said that his enemy was ready to put his life on the line for such a dirty trick, while he should have put his star on the line in battle. The furious man continued to sacrifice himself to achieve his goal. At that moment, Huo Ming noticed a gap in his defense, right in the center of the enemy's body. Using the skill of the 10,000 Swordmaster, he instantly closed the distance and launched a powerful attack. Not expecting this, the arrogant flickering anglerfish was defeated at the hands of the hunter ruler. Watching this, the young constellations did not understand what was happening, because this was the first time they had heard about the anti-constellation strategy. The warlike king asked his comrade why he was the only one studying such a topic, but Dynamite himself did not know the answer to this question. He said that there had already been cases where they fought against constellations, but no one had ever tried to study the strategy against them so carefully. The always dissatisfied Miori reminded the guys that the only one had simply gone crazy and was also angry with her for rebelling against divinity. The enemy was defeated and his chains lost their strength. Hajin was able to free himself. The guy, worried for his stupid charge, ran towards him asking if everything was okay. Turning around with a smile, Ho Min thanked the guy for his excitement and said that he was fine. But as it turned out, Ha Jin was interested in the health of the flickering anglerfish. The guy was unconscious. The younger hunter asked if mages like him could be so strong in battle. The mentor replied that in fact the flickering anglerfish used to be a warrior of the Order of Paladins. Ho Ming was angry that he found out about this only after the end of the battle. But as it turned out, this was due to the fact that he was a rookie and did not live back in those days. In the forehead of the defeated enemy there was a dart which hunters do not use. An enraged Ha Jin asked who could have attacked their target before the final blow. Ho Ming began to look around in panic. He assumed that it was a dart from one of the fighters of the snake's lair, but he did not feel the presence of the stranger. It was someone they didn't know about yet. Perhaps this mysterious stranger wanted the ruler's hunters to switch to another target. When the guys began to examine the body of the defeated member of the spider group, they found a notebook on him. It contained a list of debtors, everyone who borrowed money from the elders. There were even written their weaknesses and a way to return the money. Ha Jin decided that it was worth studying this book better, because many of the names from it belonged to participants in the uprising. Judging by all the evidence, it could be assumed that the flickering anglerfish was a spider, but still the guys decided not to make hasty conclusions. It was clear that he was the one who supported the uprising, but it remained a mystery whether he was the founder of the criminal group. Huo Ming was angry that some stranger had left them without the opportunity to get more information. He believed that this was far from the end, and their big problem would not be solved so quickly and easily. At the same time, he felt the fury of the battle that was taking place nearby. The paladins were still able to overpower the tamers who lost control of the shadow hands. They reported to their leader that they had cleared out most of the enemies. There was only one girl left. It was Haru, and the executioner doll asked the others not to interfere. Addressing the girl who had lost her identity, she apologized for the end of her life and promised that she would be buried in a good place under the sun. But at the same moment, Ho Min came running to them and shouted that he had found a collar and that he would save the girl. The girl did not expect such a sudden appearance of the ruler's hunter and asked where the flickering anglerfish was. In response, she learned that the body of one of the elders lay below under the guard of Kang Ha Jin. The executioner doll believed that the guy's idea would not be successful since the Shadow Hands had already captured Haru, and even if they put a collar on her, it would not return her personality. But the hunter did not agree. In response, he said that the Shadow Hands are spirits who were simply thrown out of the Star Sanctuary, after which they began to live in space, breaking the boundary of time, after which they became monsters that forever wander the lands. The leader of the godless paladins was surprised at how this simpleton knew so many details about the ghosts that everyone fears. If you study the publicly available information about shadow hands, it becomes clear that most people only know that they are evil spirits that turn people into the same spirits. The girl was one of those who never tried to find out more. She assured the hunter that all this was already useless. In response, Huo Ming shouted that Haru was not acting like an evil spirit and could still resist the power of the shadow hands. In addition, he admitted that he knows a lot more than they think, 
At that moment, the executioner doll assumed that the stars were talking to him regarding this. He had no other option but to admit that it was so. Still, he guessed that the executioner doll knew about his abilities. The leader of the godless paladin said that she knows that Huo Ming is not the kind of fool who saves others because they once helped him. The guy took this as a compliment, but decided not to change his plan. Still, this was the very moment when the executioner doll had to turn a blind eye to the guy's idea, which seemed insane. Haru sat in the corner, her behavior suggesting that she had become obsessed and could hardly control her instincts. Ho Ming turned to the memory of the constellation. In his opinion, before this time, Miori perfectly understood what would happen next, so her help would be just in time. Using the blade, the guy began to subdue the shadow hands that captured the girl. Minor wounds from the sword with the blessing of the Ripple Constellation allowed her body to be partially freed. Continuing his ritual, he asked Haru to stand still, after which he inflicted several more light cuts on her arm. Next, the guy attached a collar that he found nearby to her neck. A few more blows completed the preparation for the ritual and the guy began to cast a spell. He tried to hold her, after which he began to free the ghosts, calling them to return to their world. It was very difficult for Haru herself. The weak girl could barely stand under the pressure of the ghosts. Addressing her, the guy begged her to return, because she still had not had time to take revenge on the villains who had done such horror to her clan. It is unlikely that she could clearly hear his words, but still continued to resist. Within a moment, Haru returned to consciousness. Tears appeared in her eyes. Turning to her savior, she shouted that she could not just die and continue fighting for revenge. Ho Ming was incredibly happy that they were able to bring Haru back to consciousness. The godless paladins were simply in shock. Their leader could not believe that the one possessed by shadow hands had become human again, because this happened for the first time in the entire history of the tower. The rest of the guys also froze in place, watching how the crazy plan of the strange hunter ruler worked. The girl started screaming about revenge and the destruction of all humanity, while the guy tried to calm her down so that she would not become a target for the paladins. The executioner doll joined their conversation. She said that if everything is understood correctly, then Haru did not completely return to human form, since Ho Min simply suppressed and closed the shadow hands inside her. The guy replied that she was half human and half possessed. After these words, the girl clutched her sword in her hands and admitted that she would not really like to leave such a potential threat alive. Moreover, she feared that if they released her into the city, a disaster might begin. The executioner doll seriously wanted to finish what she started. She said that if they didn't kill her now, then for the rest of her life, they would have to restrain such a dangerous monster that she was unlikely to choose life in a cage. Ho Ming began to defend Haru, saying whether the leader of the paladins would change his mind if someone kept her shadow hands. The girl sternly replied that this was illegal. As expected, the guy resisted to the end and said that he was ready to take it upon himself, because he still had immunity for one crime. Remembering their agreement, the girl was angry and said that the hunter was doing real stupidity by protecting the possessed woman which in fact had not done anything so important for him. Ho Ming responded decisively that this girl had risked her life to protect this city, and it would be fair if this favor was returned to her. After these words, the executioner doll sighed heavily, and her entire team was surprised that she made concessions. She considered it dangerous for her to agree to this, but still she saw no reason to refuse him. The situation was resolved. Thanks to a cunning agreement, Ho Min managed to save the girl's life. Peering at the leader of the godless paladins who still has a drop of kindness, the guy thought that she always lived only by strict standards, both for others and for herself. Thanks to this, he was sure that the girl would definitely fulfill her promise. Placing her hand on her chest, the executioner doll swore that she would guarantee Haru's freedom and safety while she was under Baek Homin's supervision. In addition, she stated that if Baek Homin fails to control Haru and thereby harms people, then she will take responsibility for this and return her star. In the conditions, she also mentioned that she would fully punish the culprits for the damage they caused. Simply put, if Homin fails to deal with Haru, he himself will be in danger. The girl asked if the hunter could take on such responsibility for a child from the slums. With a smile on his face, the guy replied that he could handle it. There was also turmoil in heaven. Dynamite was confused by this situation and wanted to make sure whether Miori really agreed to this, because in their time, people had never lived as a symbiont with shadow hands. The wise girl replied that most likely they do not know why the first tamers appeared. The martial king assumed that they found the power of these monsters useful, so they decided to use them. The alchemist's option was that the tamers tried to study the spirit and understand why the world had come to such a state. The girl replied that their assumptions were very logical, but the real reason was much simpler than they thought. As it turned out, they were all simple people, and these simple people are trying to find their way in this cruel world. Those who collected ancient artifacts, unable to let go of memories and wanting to meet their loved ones again. That's who become tamers. Hearing this, Dynamite sadly accepted the reality. The tamers just wanted to see friends, 
family and loved ones again, all those who had become ghosts. They believed that they could subdue the shadow hands and turn them into people again, but all their attempts ended in failure. And yet, endless experiments and people who gave their lives for it allowed humanity to understand a little about life outside the city walls. They also understood the living environment of the spirits that descended after the appearance of the tower. At the same time, Haru was a very rare case among tamers. She is an exceptional trainer with a wealth of experience and knowledge in her field. Plus, this isn't the first time she's become obsessed. The guys were surprised, because it turned out that there was at least one more case when Shadow Hands captured her. But she freed herself. Miori taught reincarnation Beck Ho Min, the skills of taming the Shadow Hands, in order to give another chance to the amazing child. She felt that Haru would be of great help to them in defeating the Platinum Monarch. After her words, the constellations froze in place when they realized that the girl had another ulterior motive. In response, the only one asked her to speak frankly and asked if Haru was really the most important part of the plan, to rebel against divinity. The girl replied that this was so, and then asked why he needed this information. She believed that be that as it may, before starting to work with the Platinum Monarch, Beck Ho Min should find a way to protect himself, and Haru could become his backup. Whether he would start working with the Monarch or not, she didn't worry about that, because it was no longer so important who exactly would implement the plan. In her opinion, the rebellion against divinity has already begun. Their enemy is no longer simple parasites, but the tower itself. Therefore, to win, they needed a monster capable of absorbing stars. After a successful operation, the guys returned to the castle. Ha Jin said that he met with the knights of the castle and sent them home. It seemed that everything was fine, but he was simply shocked by why the crazy, obsessive tamer was in his room without permission. The girl was seriously opposed to the hunter, while Ho Min apologized for not being able to warn in advance, after which he clarified that he simply had no choice. As expected, Ha Jin was furious, and then asked how she would get used to the toilet, their meals, and whether she would even take a shower or not. Hearing this, Haru got angry and called the guy the slag of the earth. Huo Min asked his mentor to treat her with respect, because no matter what happens to her, she is still human and can take care of herself. Still, they had equal rights to this room, and the situation was such that the mentor was forced to accept it. During a conversation with the doll, the girl said that just in case, they should temporarily keep the tamer next to them because the shadow hands still rest in it, which are the creature responsible for the end of the world. Observing the behavior of not entirely adequate roommates, the guy thought that he had previously wanted to get a dog or another pet, but he could not even imagine that such an animal would be some small girl from the slums. During all this commotion, an agent burst into their room without knocking and informed the hunters that the Geomuk constellation was looking for them. Everyone stopped to find out the reason for the sudden visit. Looking at the man, it became clear that the matter was important and he was excited for a reason. The agent suddenly announced that the tower had begun to move. As expected, this was due to the actions of the Platinum Monarch. She finally ended her connection with the tower and was able to move on to the next stage. The Platinum Monarch couldn't wait to see what she was really capable of. The guys were shocked when they looked out the window and saw the reconstruction of the tower with their own eyes. The girl immediately began to incite panic, shouting that a devastating catastrophe would crush humanity. At the same moment, the agent stopped the hunters and asked them not to go far, since they had personal business with them. The lady's secretary was addressing them, so it was a serious matter. Next, they went to the conference room. All the existing masters of the city who remained loyal to the ruler had already gathered here. The girl informed the visitors that her hunters were already there. She said that she would also need them during this conference. The ruler's hunters were on guard, as they understood that this meeting was of great importance. Everyone was assembled, and the ruler announced the beginning of the meeting. The first to speak was the Master of the Order of Alchemists, Hani. She said that the Master of the Order of the Circle had not yet arrived. The ruler replied that there was no need to worry about him now. In his place already sat the Master of the Order of Wealth, a shy girl known as Ten Fingers. She hesitantly said that she would give it her all while performing government tasks. Sir Geomuk joined the discussion. He immediately asked what was happening with the tower, because the ruler should have foreseen such an incident. It seemed strange to him that Miss Yun would consider such a difficult time to be the right time to show off her strength to everyone. Addressing everyone present, the Platinum Monarch asked the Masters not to worry. The fact is that she gathered them all here precisely because the tower began its movement. Next, Mrs. Yun, with a smile on her face, asked the director of the Astronomical Observatory to tell us about what they were able to discover. A girl with purple long hair and red glasses began to read the report. According to her, the constellations suddenly began to move and, for unknown reasons, a massive restructuring occurred in almost the entire tower. Based on her observations, all the information they collected about the floors they traversed becomes irrelevant and will be destroyed. 
Hani was simply shocked by what she heard, because they had invested a large amount of resources and time in order to obtain information about the tower. The Platinum Monarch did not pay attention to her dissatisfaction and asked to report on the established points. The 10th floor stronghold was still operational at this point, but they had lost contact with the 20th floor strongpoint. Most likely, they were destroyed during the reconstruction of the tower. The masters were horrified. The man with purple hair, like a follower of the old times, angrily said that this had never happened since the foundation of the tower. Hearing their words, the Platinum Monarch asked the director of the Tombstone Library whether this incident could have been predicted. The director replied that they could not have expected such a course of events. They had never seen anything like this, so they did not have a plan of action for such a case. Sir Geomuk joined the conversation. He asked if everything was really that bad, because earlier he had personally climbed the tower without a clear plan. He believed that now there was hardly anything different from the old days. Miss Yun respectfully noted that one thing is definitely different, namely that at this moment they have much less money and resources, and there is no longer a single goal that would unite them together. Addressing everyone present, the Platinum Monarch spoke about the rumors of rebellion that were spreading throughout the city. Because of this, she had the right to assume that they were all pursuing different goals now. She believed that in this case they would be united only by an important goal, which they all needed most. Sir Geomic agreed with her words and showed full support. The Platinum Monarch imperiously crossed her legs and with a confident smile declared that with all of the above, she was introducing martial law and henceforth forbidding anyone to act or assist in actions against her will. On top of that, she was going to convince the city residents to help them clear the tower, and all resources would be spent on this. When Miss Yun snapped her fingers, the director of the observatory picked up a briefcase from the ground. Then she put it on the table and opened it. Everyone present was horrified because inside there was evidence of the extermination of all the traitors. Moreover, the master of the district turned out to be traitors, and not everyone present could believe it. Mrs. Yun clarified that the man is now a former master. Instead, the frightened Ten Fingers was appointed master of the order of the district who immediately saw what would happen to her if she betrayed the ruler. The mistress's cruel methods were what could restore at least some order within the city. With a piercing gaze and an ominous smile, the ruler declared that they had gotten rid of those who went against her will. After this, she asked the master of the Order of Alchemists whether she agreed with the introduction of martial law in the state. The woman with red hair sat down and resolutely stated that the Order of Alchemists is always on the side of the ruler, and as long as she keeps her promise, they will not betray her. In response to her words, the lady said that in the current circumstances, she could not promise that the order would not suffer losses. The woman replied that to expand the territory, they most need money, and they will earn it. Therefore, as long as the Platinum Monarch does not interfere in their affairs, they will be happy. The alchemist's motives were pure, so the woman asked the opinion of the Master of Defense. Sir Geomuk asked whether the ruler really wanted to sacrifice the entire city in order to clear the tower. The girl confidently answered without hesitation that she was ready to sacrifice her whole soul for this goal. But the shrill man did not really believe in her words. He believed that she could not sacrifice her soul because women like her initially could not have one at all. The man had no choice but to agree, because he understood that the circumstances required it. In response, Miss Yun thanked the constellation for its support. When Ho Min looked at the rest of those present, he realized that there was no point in asking the Tombstone Observatory because they were originally created to help the city and the mistress. Ha Jin thought that the consent of the masters is the consent of all the people subordinate to them, and if this is so, then no one will go against the Platinum Monarch again. In the end, the Platinum Monarch turned to the hunters and unexpectedly asked them to deal with the remaining traitors. The guys knew what they were talking about and immediately began to perform their duties. At the moment when the agents detained them, this was exactly what they were talking about. The Sovereign's secretary provided them with an order from the Platinum Monarch that when she gave them a signal, they were to deal with the people on the list. The ruler's hunters, in front of everyone present, instantly eliminated the traitors who were hypocritically standing before the ruler. Naturally, this was not a sight for the faint of heart. The execution of the master's order served as a good lesson for all those present about what happens to traitors. When the guys finished, Miss Yun praised them for their work and stated that these were all the remnants of the traitors they had to get rid of. After that, she addressed everyone present with a new proposal. She said that with such a team it was time to try to clear the tower. As expected, chaos began inside the city. The criminals believed that they could do whatever they wanted, because the inevitable end was coming. But at the same moment, a detachment of godless paladins appeared in front of them. The doll gave the order to its fighters to protect civilians from marauders and minimize the number of victims. The criminals were more afraid of the executioner doll than the end of the world, so they abandoned their crazy idea and began to run away. 
Meanwhile, her ward returned to the leader of the paladins and reported that the Platinum Monarch had returned to her castle. In addition, he said that the Platinum Monarch ordered the silence of all traitors and had already received support from the heads of the guilds. The executioner doll did not understand what Miss Yun was thinking, because in such a difficult situation, she should focus on solving the chaos among the population. The ward also said that from this moment martial law begins to apply and all resources intended for the development and support of the city will be redirected to clearing the tower. The mention of such harsh measures made it clear to the leader of the paladins that their ruler was going to seriously take on the conquest of the tower. In addition, she was shocked that several guild heads were eliminated right during the meeting with the ruler, and Ten Fingers was promoted to Master of the Order. The doll could not believe that the Platinum Monarch decided to take such radical steps. Meanwhile, the guild fighters arrived, they asked the Executioner doll to take care of more important problems and declared that they would finish the work in this area themselves. It was the first time she'd seen these guys so cheerful. They were rushing forward to neutralize the marauders and help the wounded. The guys from the Weapons Guild clearly explained to the looters that they were not doing what they should have been doing during martial law. The leader of the godless paladins witnessed something like this for the first time in recent times. Before her eyes, all the guilds stood up to protect the city, which meant that it could regain its former status. Just a few days ago, their city was full of discord, to the point where even the Platinum Monarch was concerned about its situation. But after the ruler's meeting, everything changed. Most of the traitors were dead, and the rest were taken care of properly. The doll was sure that now there was no one who would stand in the way of the Platinum Monarch. In this situation, with the tower in chaos, Miss Yun united people under the slogan of clearing the tower. The doll realized that now a squad like the Paladins no longer has a reason to exist. But on the other hand, she understood that all this time she was simply being used as another puppet in the plan of big people. She had long accepted that her justice was a force for balance, manipulated by everyone. The tower ceased to be in chaos two days after the event began during which time the Platinum Monarch mobilized the forces of the Masters and seized complete power over the city. According to rumors, even Spider as her only competitor was killed. And as if waiting for this moment, Mrs. Yun announced a new set of rules. By her decree, all resources were given priority to clearing the tower, and everyone who had reached the age of 19 must receive a seal. While in his room, Ho Ming read out loud the new set of rules and paid special attention to the points that any adult with combat skills will be elevated to the rank of Hunter and also that all orders from the monarch for hunters will be a priority. The guy from the back streets was not particularly happy with this news, and asked his friend if he thought that the majority would oppose such demands. The calm Kong Ha Jin replied that his student simply did not understand the situation in the city. They lost contact with the 20th floor stronghold, and this was the cause of unrest among the population. At that moment, everyone was afraid of the unknown, and the platinum monarch simply redirected this fear to the tower. After these words, Huo Ming realized that this position was ideal for the ruler's goal. The change in the tower and the betrayal. The guy thought about whether it could be a coincidence that they happened at the same time. The tense dialogue was interrupted by Haru. She began shouting that they urgently needed food, and Ho Min agreed that he was also hungry and it was time to eat. Watching this, Ha Jin was dissatisfied as usual, because with such an appetite they could eat all the city's reserves to capture the tower. The situation was getting worse, and the elders among the Beck Homin constellations decided to talk about more frank things in private. When asked what the girl thought about her past, she replied that she would never regret the past, because at that time she only had the desire to kill the ruler. The only one believed that Miori meant that Mrs. Yoon literally forced her to take such a step. The girl understood that now the Platinum Monarch would use everyone and everything to clear the tower, so she could no longer treat it with common sense. She felt that in the past, the Platinum Monarch had used her to achieve her demise. But according to the Great Wizard, the Platinum Monarch he knew would never do such a thing, because in every situation between life and death, she fought to the end. Miori agreed, but still replied that there are people who do things without any logic. Before continuing, the girl reminded the wizard that he was in no position to criticize her past actions. She still held a grudge against him because of Beck Homin's memories of the Elder's life among the constellations, which mentioned the anti-constellation technique. The only one answered that he did not even think that the transfer of memories would lead to such consequences. He did not know that some moments of his life would be especially clearly manifested in the current situation. Angrily pointing her finger at the magician, the girl stated that the main problem was that they helped him create this technique, and he was seriously planning to rebel against divinity alone, while hypocritically condemning her actions during life. There was some truth in her words and the guy simply remained silent. But Miori wanted to hear answers. She knew that the wizard was able to obtain the Platinum Monarch's plans in advance, so she wondered why he had such a strong desire to protect everyone and prevent them from being sacrificed. 
She noticed from his behavior that he realized that doing something with the constellations alone was an impossible task for others, so he decided to start implementing the plan alone. The only one did not expect such shrillness from the girl. He could simply remain silent in response. Still, he found the strength to express an opinion and decided to take this dialogue to a less serious level, so he said with a smile that Miori overestimated his abilities. He said that although he is called a great magician, it is unlikely that he could go against the constellations alone. The guy continued his lies and the girl was not going to listen to it. He shouted that the only one was a vile liar. In his defense, the guy said that she didn't even ask him about it, but immediately began accusing him of the crime. Only a fool could fail to notice that each magician's star is larger than those of the other constellations. Miori was sure that the only one had risen to a higher level than all of them combined. According to her, climbing to the top should not have been a problem since the Platinum Monarch was alive during his lifetime. She just wanted to know why the only one did not dare to conquer the tower and remained with the rest of the individuals at the very bottom of existence. It seems she touched on a too personal topic, so the guy seriously said that she should mind her own business. At that moment, Miori asked if it could be considered in this sense that he had finally reached the top. But the great wizard was not going to answer provocative questions and only repeated his words. The piercing gaze did not give him peace. Therefore, the magician simply turned around and invited the girl to think as she herself wished. Still, it was impossible to get the truth out of a liar, so the charismatic Miori simply called him vile. In any case, she was more worried about the current problems. She was worried that Beck Ho Min didn't even know how to properly use the assessment skill. The girl stated that the guy was dumber than she thought. But in defense of reincarnation, the disgruntled one said that everything was going smoothly for him, so they should leave him alone. He believed that in any case, if he decided to go beyond the limits of the assessment skill, the tower would notice it and destroy the guy itself. Miori replied that if this happened, she would have to help him. Although she did not have the talent to influence the seals, she believed that she could distinguish truth from lies, and this could be used to make their reincarnation a little smarter. After the Platinum Monarch took over the entire city, the first thing she did was rescue all the hunters trapped on the 20th floor. In order to save everyone stuck in the tower, the attention of others was directed to these events. Absorbed in the thought of saving others, humanity did not even notice how they were made slaves to the ruler's ambitions. Suppressing anyone who posed a threat, the Platinum Monarch dispatched the Weapons Guild to do her bidding. Huo Ming was sent with the vanguard of the Weapons Guild forces. As a reward, Lady Yun promised to write him a love letter. He inquired about the reaction of the constellations and they responded positively. But at one point, he felt as if he had been pushed on the shoulder when the notification of Miori's evaluation arrived. The guy did not understand whether this was a coincidence or the direct influence of the mysterious girl. Meanwhile, Mrs. Yun herself came to meet him. She asked him for a private meeting in order to return to the topic of rebellion against divinity. Ho Ming completely forgot that they were planning such a dialogue. The girl said that she would keep her promise and tell him the details. Huo Ming remembered the words of the girl from the mirror room. She said that when the guy hears about the uprising, he will decide whether to kill the Platinum Monarch or not. It's time to decide what to do next. To begin with, the lady asked to address her as Nuna or Sohyun. She asked the guy not to worry, because he promised to call her by name when they were on a date. She admitted that although she looks like a cruel ruler, she is only 25 years old. During the strife compared to the Church of Eternity, she was just a little girl. That's why Hani used the image of the monarch to capture people's minds. Since she was just an ordinary girl, Hani thought that having a mysterious and calm image would help their candidate. And in order to survive, Yun So Hyun had no choice but to behave like a monarch. But during the conversation, she thought that she did not want such a personality for herself, and that it was much more pleasant for her to be an ordinary person, which she considers herself to be. Ho Min was surprised by her frank conversation and admitted that at that moment she really looked like herself. The girl's facial expressions and manner of speech seemed completely different to him, different from those demonstrated by the Platinum Monarch. The girl said that she does not consider herself worthy of such a title, since she knows the opinion of people that they call her a demonic, crazy, or useless monarch. The guy was excited by her words, and said that she should not worry about these rumors, because she is doing everything possible for the good of humanity. But for the Platinum Monarch, what people thought wasn't the main issue. She was worried that the city could not be united under the control of such a ruler. Her words prompted the idea that the recent uprising was her way out of the situation. The girl confirmed his guesses and said that the plan was to unite people not under the banner of the monarch, but with the idea of conquering the tower, which in fact is a rebellion against divinity. It had been seven years since she became the Platinum Monarch, and she had been planning all these events since the head of the Church of Eternity was killed. Rebellion against divinity. It was a plan to unite the city. 
an ordinary spark that was supposed to ignite a fire in the hearts of people. A decisive battle against the tower that will unite people. The guesses that seemed just guesses turned out to be true. All recent events were part of a plan to implement a rebellion against divinity. The assassination attempt on the Platinum Monarch, the discovery of the identity of the traitors and their subsequent murder were the work of Lady Yun. She admitted to the guy that these were necessary measures for humanity to move forward. Huoming realized that in this case, the Platinum Monarch is also a spider. The girl confirmed his guesses and said that she was just about to tell him about it. After these words, she took a mask out of her pocket and asked the guy if he knew what it was. Seeing a spider mask, which probably represents the leader of a criminal gang, the guy replied that the mask looked creepy. The spider was considered the person who wore this mask. Although Yun Xiu Hyun used her to create a criminal group to balance the government's forces, the spider itself was never one person. During their conversation, Miori confirmed the lady's words, which meant that she was telling the truth. In addition to searching for traitors and inciting treason, she used it to control the city. Ho Ming asked why the Platinum Monarch was so obsessed with controlling the city. The girl replied that the fact is that the city is slowly dying before her eyes. According to her, when the tower was first discovered, the population of the planet was about 10 million. As time passed, habitable territories replaced wastelands where death reigned. More and more people reached for the saving straw, which was the tower in Seoul. These were the golden years of the city. Heroes reached the top of the tower with the support of people. Everyone dreamed that they could return to peaceful days, but now things are simply terrible, because the population is unlikely to reach 150,000. Due to a long series of defeats, everyone has lost the will to fight. Even the constellations that were a ray of hope for ordinary people turned away from the original plan. The conversation was over. Although Ho Min was angry with the ruler for manipulating the city all this time, he said that he would not take revenge on her, because he promised that he would forgive her once. The girl with a piercing gaze asked why he should forgive her. Ho Min confidently replied that it was because she loved him. The ruler was surprised by his answer. She did not understand why he said that. The girl wondered what he meant. The guy explained that he heard that from love to hate there is one step. The ruler assumed that the guy heard this from the executioner doll. She didn't think she would ever hear something like that, so she asked the hunter to continue. Ho Min said with a pleasant smile that he coped with his role on the date as a partner, since he interested the girl. The ruler who was considered a cruel woman, heard such treatment addressed to her for the first time in her life. She noticed that Bak Ho Min was truly a kind and good person, and also that this was exactly what she expected from one of her hunters. At that moment, the guy noticed that the Platinum Monarch had returned to her image as a ruler. The girl admitted that she never had a desire to harm her subordinate. She just wanted to find out if she could keep him near her longer. Huo Ming still didn't understand where she was going with this. Placing her hand on her chest, the girl said that now her feelings were revealed. Looking into the guy's eyes, she said that she must follow the path of the monarchs of the past and protect the people close to her, not allowing them to make wrong decisions. After these words, she announced that she was removing Bekhomin from the position of hunter overlord. Maintaining the image of a ruler, she thanked the guy for his faithful service and said goodbye. After this conversation, the guy returned to his room to pack his things. He thought that he was no longer the master's hunter and no longer had to follow other people's orders. He finally achieved the freedom he had previously dreamed of. Looking around, he saw his mentor and the leader of the godless paladins talking about something. Seeing Kang Ha Jin, Ho Min remembered his words that if he was deprived of the title of Hunter Overlord, then his body would be turned into platinum as repayment of the debt. This will no longer happen. The guy has freed himself from any shackles. The guys probably didn't know what happened yet. Ho Min's dismissal occurred during their personal meeting, and Kang Ha Jin did not even suspect that now his life would become a little calmer. Ho Min himself did not think that he had a need to distract the guys from the conversation in order to say goodbye. In any case, they still meet in the tower because their goals to reach its top are similar. Now Ho Min could feel truly free, because he was not influenced by either the ruler or the spider group. He walked forward, not knowing what awaited him ahead. True, life as a hunter ruler was not as bad as he expected. He couldn't fully understand his feelings. Although the guy became free, it seemed to him that he had lost something important. During his long thoughts, he did not notice at all how he found himself surrounded by strangers in formal suits, whose appearance did not seem friendly. Within a moment, the guy noticed the culprit of this unexpected meeting. It was the girl who was previously one of the spider legs. The girl said that the guy had nowhere else to go, so if he didn't resist, then the end of his life would be painless. Huo Ming began to yawn and said that they had never seen each other before. In response, the girl became furious and shouted that she would tear him apart. After her words, the guy asked if she could do this after she found out who he really was. With a malicious smile, he said that he didn't think she could do it, after which he took out a spider mask. Everyone around was simply in shock. 
The furious girl asked what this meant. Huo Ming said that she was the only one who saw a spider in a person. This meant that only she could confirm this. In response, the unknown killer shouted that this could not be true, after which she ordered her killers to get rid of the insolent man. Before the fight began, Huo Ming activated a skill and surrounded himself with shadow arms. Seeing this, the girl was very scared because using that terrifying power of ghosts, the guy left her without an arm during their last meeting. Ho Ming wondered if their battle would end if he tore off her other arm as well, but this time as her leader spider. The girl shouted that she was the only surviving spider leg, and it couldn't be that her leader had decided to expose himself now. Their conversation dragged on, so as not to waste time even longer, the guy called the Tamer Haru for help. Within a moment, the tamer, filled with rage, landed next to her savior. The frightened assassin didn't know what was happening. She thought that Huo Ming had summoned a shadow beast. To add weight to the fact that he was a spider, the guy asked how a lord's hunter could control a shadow beast if it was illegal. After his words, the girl began to put together the puzzle. The guy asked her to think about who took care of the legs of the elder and other spiders in order to get closer to the platinum monarch. But for the girl, it still seemed that this could not be true, because she clearly remembered that although the spider wore a mask and changed its voice, she was able to determine from the smallest details that it was a woman. She believed that the fact that she was unable to hear the sounds of footsteps and the eerie movement of the spider was something that simply could not be faked. Within a moment, Ho Min appeared right in front of her and asked who exactly tore off her hand. At that moment, the girl did not understand what was happening. She could not believe that the enemy's movement would be so familiar. Huo Ming used the memory skill with the help of Miori's abilities. It was not difficult for him to get close as if he were a member of the underworld assassin class. The overwhelming presence and terrifying movements make the girl experience a feeling of real shock. She fell to her knees and declared that this was the real leader of Spider. The subtle manipulator has once again achieved his goal. Then they went to a modest small place among the destroyed area of ZU 200 BIHU 200 the city, which according to Ho Min, had been his lair all this time. Her real name is Yanhua, and she denied being involved in the murder of the sparkling anglerfish. Her words were true and Miyori confirmed it, so the guy confidently replied that he was aware of it. Then he asked if she had any guesses who could have done this. The girl said that it could be the work of a group that joined in the murder of the Platinum Monarch. She was worried about their leader, who ran away from the battlefield without doing anything. She was sure that only people, along with the constellations, could imitate her techniques. Someone used an awl to make sure that suspicion fell on her. Remembering the previously mentioned group, the guy thought that there was not a single hunter in it who could actually kill the Platinum Monarch. It was also obvious that due to the unsuccessful plans to assassinate the ruler, Lady Yun was able to advance the rebellion against the deity. Putting all this information together, he knew that most likely the group was actually helping the Platinum Monarch, and if this was true, then he no longer had anything to worry about. After discussing the strange details of the elimination of the flickering anglerfish, Yang Hua suggested talking about the spider's plans for the future. She admitted that she wouldn't care if the Platinum Monarch went crazy and stuffed the entire city's population into a tower. She was only thinking about which rope to grab onto in order to survive in such a cruel world. In response, Ho Min asked what decision she came to. The girl replied that even if the guy is a spider, she has already seen all the madness that he did under the leadership of the Platinum Monarch. Before her eyes, Huo Ming destroyed all of the spider's legs, took control of the Shadow Beast, and even appropriated the Platinum Circuits and Spider's Mask for himself. After hearing his recent achievements, the guy thought it sounded more impressive than he even thought. Having mentioned all this, she stated that although she did not know who he really was, she would like to join him as she felt that it was the safest option for her. The girl turned out to be more calculating than he expected. It seemed to him that she would be consumed by anger and go crazy. But seeing a possible chance, the girl immediately changed sides. Demonstrating her sincerity, the girl said that since the guy revealed himself, then most likely he has some kind of plan. The guy replied that he had something on his mind. Hearing this, the girl felt relieved and inquired with great interest what was being said. Huo Ming coldly replied that this is what street rats do best. He was talking about theft. The girl was surprised and then asked to clarify what exactly he wanted to steal. The guy unexpectedly replied that they would steal the tower. He was going to take away the rebellion against divinity from the Platinum Monarch in order to take possession of the top of the tower. In his opinion, this is their only chance while the tower is still in the process of dialogue with humanity. While Ho Ming was hatching a very insidious plan, the ruler, along with humanity, went to the tower. General anxiety only worsened, and this was noticeable in the behavior of student Yu Yul. The girl asked why they needed huge carts of things on the hike. The hunter replied that they would go to the tower by order of the Platinum Monarch, because she said that she would fix the elevator and strengthen several hunting objects. 
The lady is also planning to build a camp so they can live inside the tower. Yu Ha Yul was very worried because she didn't know what danger to expect. Most of her comrades from the Weapons Guild turned out to be traitors, so she had no choice but to follow the ruler's hunter. Ha Jin interrupted the temporary silence, saying that he had not seen his comrade for a long time, and for some reason some eccentric woman had replaced him. He admitted that he wanted her to tag along. Moreover, he did not see Haru, and therefore guessed that they left together. It seemed to him that it was not bad that the two annoying individuals were gone, but on the other hand, he admitted that it had become a bit boring without them. The girl was surprised by the hunter's words. She assumed that he had not heard the news, so she told him personally that Beck Ho-min had been suspended. Ho-min was in shock, so he had to turn to the overlord with this question. After delivering food inside the tower, they returned to the castle, where the girl was surprised by the guy's interest, after which she mentioned that he reported him as if he should be driven away immediately. Ha-jin found himself in an awkward situation and had to make excuses. He said in confusion that even though Huo-ming is rude and acts stupid, he is still an outstanding hunter that he could become a great dog if someone put him on a leash. The Platinum Monarch calmly replied that she wanted a dog that she could use as many times as she wanted. But in her opinion, Beck Ho Min was not that kind of person. The girl mentioned that the hunter had secrets, created incidents here and there, and even climbed to the same level as her. He was too problematic for her. She admitted that the biggest problem is that she cannot get rid of him the way she wants. Based on this, the only solution was to remove the hunter. Ha Jin suggested that the ruler got rid of the hunter because of the dynamite constellation. Hearing this, Mrs. Yun was surprised and decided to listen to the continuation. The ruler's hunter seriously inquired whether Huo Ming and his constellation were strong enough to make her hesitate. The platinum monarch was surprised by the sudden speech of her subordinate and asked him to make such an interesting speech. At that moment, he did share the story of how Beck Ho Min touched the diagram of his eye. He admitted that he did not disclose this information because some of it seemed dubious to him. According to him, the moment his scheme was revealed, he felt the presence of many constellations, not just one. For a moment, he also felt as if their circuits had connected. He believed that there was only one constellation guarding back home in, although he felt as if there were several. As a result, he was sure that everyone present had the same aura. The hunter's conclusions were interesting for the ruler. The guy added that he was impressed that the dynamite constellation only knew alchemy. After all, at the same time, Huo Ming demonstrated a high level of martial arts was able to repair his own platinum circuit, and even managed to tame a shadow beast. According to Ha Jin, this mysterious constellation can do everything the tower has to offer, including martial arts, magic and alchemy, schemes, submission, and absolutely anything else. According to him, this is simply an amazing constellation. He said that his words may seem like an unreasonable assumption, but on the other hand, he was sure that although the hunter had a constellation, there was no way he could achieve all this on his own. At that moment, he declared that if such a constellation exists, then it is definitely not a simple, but a superior being. The girl thought about his expression about the power of that mysterious entity and called it very funny. Hearing about the constellation above all others, a very good idea came into her head. The girl asked to spread a rumor about the result of the huge constellations that had recently appeared. The words of those rumors should be that dynamite has appeared before them, a superior constellation that is trying to guide humanity to the top of the tower from the upper levels. Hearing this, the guy anxiously asked how he could say something like that on behalf of the ruler. The girl reassured him, explaining that this should not be an official announcement, because the hunter only needed to spread the rumor. Tell it like the Platinum Monarch tried to hide it, but somehow the information leaked out. In response, Huo Ming asked why such a rumor should be spread. The girl explained that people will find hope, and the constellations provoked by the term of the superior constellation will begin to act. In addition, she also thought that interaction with that mysterious person was still out of reach for them. She theorized that Dynamite might hear the rumor and run to the top of the tower. At the request of the Platinum Monarch, Ha Jin spread rumors about the superior constellation, and this information was on the mind of everyone who entered the tower. Restless hunters began to find some mysterious meaning in it, because Dynamite for them was a constellation that was above the rest. The rumors were spreading so much that Huo Ming couldn't miss it. He immediately saw through the ruler and realized that this was simply incitement carried out by the Platinum Monarch. Some fighters doubted that the information was true, because constellations cannot appear out of nowhere. But in defense of those rumors, some guys argued that since dynamite is better than others, its appearance may well be inexplicable. Based on the amazing strength of the unfamiliar creature, they thought that dynamite could be the one behind the reason for such sudden changes in the tower. Ho Ming understood that only a few people knew about his relationship with the constellation, which had recently been on everyone's lips. Moreover, all these rumors spread so quickly that they would soon reach the city itself. 
He was a little annoyed by all the fuss, so he thought he should hurry up and climb the tower. Hearing the rumors, the one was enraged by the Platinum Monarch's handiwork, while the current time hero himself simply laughed quietly on the sidelines. Miori didn't care about that situation at all, she wanted to hurry back home into the tower. But the only one continued to show his dissatisfaction and said that this title should have belonged to him. The situation only worsened after the alchemist asked why the great magician did not give his name. Thanks to Dynamite, the only one became an unremarkable ordinary constellation, whereas he was known as a superior being. The guys began to fight like children, while the more serious constellations only watched. The warlike king approached the girl and said that since there were rumors among humanity about a superior constellation, then Bakhomin would soon be the center of attention. He wondered if this would be good or bad. Miori, in turn, stated that the Platinum Monarch had prepared all the conditions for the emergence of a new star under the name Bekhomin. At that time, he was protected by as many as four constellations, so the guys believed that after all, the expression about superior dynamite was not so accurate. Meanwhile, Beck Homin finally returned to the tower where his journey began. A lot of things have happened since he's been gone. He wondered if he should start climbing the tower and how it would end. When the guy approached the crowd, he saw that a government representative was sorting out the hunters who had arrived at the scene. He believed that since Kung Ha Jin participated in the first expedition team, he should now be quite high in the tower. Afterwards, Ha Yong Hua approached him, and he asked if she was able to identify the informant among the members of the expedition group. The girl replied that the first group was organized exclusively from hunters from the atelier, so none of the informants were there. Despite this, she bribed several of the second group. According to her, the Platinum Monarch separated the experienced members of the expedition group from the ordinary hunters, but there were not many gaps separating them from the first step. Huo Ming believed that all this was to their advantage. They should follow the first group at the end to quietly climb the tower. But the girl believed that it was unlikely that everything would be so easy after which she handed over the list of participants in the first group. Among the people, he only recognized three names. They were Kang Ha Jin and Yu Ha Yul. The leader of the expedition group was Jeomuk. The girl added that the constellation Jeomuk climbed above the 50th floor. According to her, given their current state of affairs, they can only run after the first group. After her words, Huo Ming thought about how they should proceed next. Meanwhile, on the 15th floor of Twin Canyon, the first group discovered that the elevator leading to the 19th floor had disappeared from this place. One of the leaders stated that after a thorough investigation of this estate, it was confirmed that it was a ghost estate, which was moved due to structural changes to the tower. Hajin expected this. Moreover, he understood that the Geomuk constellation, which was already heading towards the 20th floor with elite participants, would bring clarity. Their main task was to investigate structural changes and search for survivors. Looking at the estate, one of the leaders stated that it was unlikely that anyone would be able to survive the structural changes while inside the tower. But this time the building was not completely torn apart, so there was still hope that there might be survivors there. Kang Ha Jin urged his comrades to proceed with the search for survivors with caution, since the parasites of the third flight could descend along with this building. At the same moment, the dead appeared on a hill nearby. Ha Jin had faced such enemies before and urged the fighters to immediately take defensive positions. Even though Student Yu had already encountered such enemies, she was still afraid of the centipede. The ruler's hunter was on guard, because he sensed that the enemy's aura was similar to the one they had encountered before. Addressing Vice Captain Ha Jin, the ward said that there were about 500 enemies, while their squad consisted of only 20 people. In addition, the dead were not eager to fight and it seemed that they were under someone's command. Dissatisfied with the situation, Ha Jin suggested that the forgotten commander was that leader. The student did not understand what they were talking about, so the hunter explained that this was the head of the second stairs. He said they usually appear between the 17th and 18th floors. But this time, structural degeneration was causing some changes. Over the past 12 years, more than 10 expedition teams have been formed to capture this monster. At that moment, the leader of the dead turned to the commander of the hunters and said that they wanted to come to an agreement. Ha Jin replied that if this time it comes to Beck Homin again, then in that case they will not give him up, because he is not with them. But the monster commander replied that we were talking about the wrong hunter of the ruler, after which he pointed his hand to the side and stated that there was something unpleasant there that they would like to get rid of. Ha Jin directly asked what was inside the estate. The monster replied that he could not say that, but admitted that it was something that the tower, the hunters, and the constellations found unpleasant. In response, the guy asked what they would get in return if they fulfilled their request. According to the monster, they will receive a star. The guys were very surprised, because because of the mention of this title, 
they began to suspect that there was something terrifying inside, worthy of the heroic title. Naturally, panic began to spread between the members of the squad, as everyone was afraid of something unknown, which frightened even the monsters that outnumbered them. After this, the monster declared that their powers would help the hunters, as the tower itself wanted this. Hajin then asked how they could trust him. The monster replied that the Black Ghost Constellation would witness this promise, after which he raised his weapon upward, pointing it towards the sky. The squad's vice-captain considered this offer quite tempting. He understood that in this case, they could get a star and allies. But at the same moment, he took out a dagger, thinking that hunters never negotiate with the dead. Throwing several daggers straight into the face of the dead leader, the guy asked him to convey a message to the constellation of the Black Ghost. He stated that since they were in the middle of a rebellion, he had better watch himself. Since the hunters refused to negotiate, the monsters had no choice but to attack. After such a decisive act, the guy received a message that the constellation of a black ghost had begun to watch him and would bestow a first-level curse on him. Huo Ming expected something like this. The furious guy showed the ambiguous constellation his determination and attitude towards his personality by showing his middle finger. The enemies were advancing, and the excited Yu Haiul asked what they should do. Without hesitation, the ruler's hunter invited the frightened guys to go into battle. At that moment, he thought that Baek Ho Min had greatly influenced him, and now his decisions were incomparable to what he had made before. Destroying the enemies of the first rank, he thought that he still liked to behave as recklessly as his stupid student. Meanwhile, Baek Ho Min came to the elevator on the eleventh floor and met some strange stranger who addressed him by name. Ho Min asked who he was dealing with. This strange dead man said that he had a personal offer for the talented hunter. Although the guy did not feel the aura of creatures like his mentor, when he heard the voice, he remembered that this monster reminded him of the one they dealt with during the search for the Weapons Guild squad. In response, the guy said displeasedly that the Black Ghost was very persistent. It seemed strange to him that the constellation had previously promised to tear out his heart, but now it was coming to him with some kind of proposal. As it turned out, this message was not from the Black Ghost himself. It was the squad of the dead who wanted to turn to the amazing hunter. Ho Ming decided to find out what it was all about. Stretching out his hand to the hunter, the monster said that the tower had become twisted, which was disgusting and unpleasant for them. He asked the man to follow him. After these words, a strange aura suddenly appeared around them. He had never seen anything like this before and assumed it was some kind of teleportation. The monster explained that he borrowed the Black Ghost's ability. After using the mysterious power, they ended up on the same floor as Hunter Ha Jin's group. And first of all, Ho Min asked what happened to that upside-down building in front of them, and what they were doing here. The monster said that they want to get rid of the unpleasant thing inside this building, and for this, they turned to a rather strong hunter. Ho Ming did not refuse to interact with monsters and asked what the reward for completing the task would be. The monster replied that if he helped them, then they would help him get the star. The words of the leader of the Squad of the Dead seemed too tempting, so the guy clarified that in order to receive a star, you need to do something exceptional. The monster said that he had enough skill to achieve this while the hunter simply did not have the opportunity to achieve such a title. Huo Ming was interested in the fact that the leader of the dead had acquired some mysterious skill, after which he mentioned that he had already destroyed the incarnation of the Black Ghost. In response, the dead man stated that it does not matter, and they themselves decide who will work with them, while the Black Ghost is simply helping their squad. Huo Ming wondered if he should trust the Black Ghost that had tried to kill him many times. Still, he was very attracted by the opportunity to get a star, because such cases had never happened in his life. Since the constellations unanimously supported the guy, he stated that he had one condition for their deal. Huo Ming stated that until he received the star, the dead could neither attack him nor betray him. In addition, he demanded that the teleportation skill be transferred to him. The monster was not happy and boredly said that his demands consisted of several conditions. At the same time, before giving his answer, he stated that he received a message that Kang Ha Jin on the other side of this floor rejected their proposal. Since it was not clear what they were talking about, the guy asked what they were offering him. The monster said that it was not important now, and asked him to consider his personal proposal. There was nothing to think about, because even the constellations did not refuse this offer. The guy also took into account the fact that it was not given exclusively to him, so the chance of falling into a trap is quite small. Ho Ming agreed to the terms of the deal, after which he asked to clarify what would be proof of their trust. The monster pointed his finger at the sky and declared that the Black Ghost constellation would bear witness to this promise. The constellation's promise was absolute, so the hunter had nothing to worry about. The free hunter stated that in this case they had entered into an agreement. After that, the monster suggested starting. The system reported that the Black Ghost provided the player with a challenge. He was required to destroy the heartbeat, which spun the tower on the second stairs. The guy had previously heard about such a task, and also that hunters received similar tests from time to time. 
The most famous were those given by the tower itself. It is known that when five stars are collected, the tower gives the hunters their first test as a constellation. And when they pass this test, they receive their own signature weapon that defines them as a constellation. Only the tower can designate someone as a constellation. Everything seemed clear, so Ho Min, who was serious about the task, suggested moving forward. But at the same moment, he noticed that the monster was not following him. He learned that the dead cannot go inside the building because there is no light. The dead man explained that most of the parasites in the tower's ecosystem depend on light, and although some can live underground, they themselves are bright to support their existence. His case was special, so Ho Min showed that he had a light with him, which simply stunned the monster. Despite this, the monster began to make excuses, saying that it would be better if he stayed, because his ridiculous body behaves unusually and his stomach hurts. At that same moment, Haru decided to teach him a lesson in politeness and took off the dead man's head with one blow. The creature was not pleased with this treatment, but the guy tried to calm him down and said that he would not die anyway unless they removed the heart from his body. Meanwhile, the constellations were discussing a rather unusual test on the part of a dark ghost. They had previously noticed that such tests were usually given by Yun Siul, known as Ripple. In addition, some were worried that the dark ghost still had a grudge against Huo Ming. The warlike king showed his positive reaction due to the magician's request, but wanted to find out personally if there was any reason for concern. With a strange smile on his face, the great wizard admitted that it was suspicious, but also mentioned that he only decided to agree because the personal request came from a dark ghost. He stated that if it were Yun Siul, she would try to get a couple more blessings and be done with it, but with the dark ghost, things were different. After his words, the warlike king asked what the hidden purpose of that ambiguous constellation could be, but according to the only one, there can be no catch. Moreover, he believed that if everything went perfectly, then along with this test, they could get rid of that old idiot. He thought it was amazing for a guy on Earth to take a star from the sky. Meanwhile, Ho Ming and his comrades went inside and saw that the building was not only turned upside down on the outside, but also on the inside. Inspecting the objects, he asked the dead man how he could find the right path. At the same moment, after touching the wall, the building began to change and he was almost crushed. The walls moved and the guys flew down. When everything stopped, Ho Min was still safe and came to the conclusion that things start to change when he does something wrong. He still hadn't figured out how it all worked, but he knew there had to be a pattern here that he needed to understand in order to get to the heartbeat room. In order not to stand still, he again took a risk and touched another object inside the room. But in response, the building began to change again, and the guys began to look for a place to hide from the movement of the walls. When everything stopped, Ho Min and Haru were quite annoyed by the situation. He couldn't sit still and analyze, so he continued to touch the objects around him. Once again, the guy quickly flew down. The attempts did not stop and led to the same result. Haru was already accustomed to the hunter's strange behavior and did not keep her emotions to herself. Once again landing on the ground, the guy decided that it was better to stop acting rashly, because if this continues, they will all die. Turning to the girl, he asked if she was able to find out something. In response, the tamer cryptically mentioned blood and the test. These words did not satisfy his interest, and he angrily thought that she was of no use. Remembering what he touched, the guy came to the conclusion that when he interacts with various objects, he ends up in another room. The only problem he believed was that there were millions of different combinations in this place. He wondered if there was a constellation of puzzles that could help him. Since he had no other options to find out the solution, he turned to his skill. The constellation dynamite came to the rescue. The guy thought that although the Alchemy Workshop is known as a medical organization, it is actually a research organization that deals with physics, chemistry, biology, and medicine at the same time. Therefore, for him, the constellation dynamite was considered more of an engineer than a doctor. Addressing the constellation with respect, the guy asked if he could help him a little with solving a strange problem. At the same moment, the guy noticed how his perception began to change dramatically. Through the dynamite's point of view, his surroundings began to change in appearance. Everything was placed just perfectly in its place, and things that looked complex became clear. Thus, he managed to find the item he was interested in, and he ordered Haru to destroy the red column. Without any hesitation, the girl trusted his words and complied with the request. The next target was the mirror, which was located to the left. The second item was destroyed and the building began to change. Falling down, the guy asked Haru to dodge everything until the commotion stopped. Even in her normal form, Haru had no problem moving objects on her way to the floor. The room finally stopped changing and the guys could observe new changes. Ho Ming noticed that it looked like the room had lost its central column. Dynamite was able to find the only problem in the layout and destroy everything. The one was surprised, turning to Dynamite. He said that he thought the constellation would only help a little, but he just went out and destroyed everything around him. The words about destruction seemed somewhat insulting to the superior constellation, 
and he declared that he was an engineer, not a scientist. For him, studying layout and understanding design was foreign. He considered it his job to find the nearest solution to a problem, without going into details. The only one was surprised that Dynamite was smart enough to understand the incredibly complex layout of the ghostly manor and find the way to the right room. But despite this, he decided to deal with the problems of the design and simply destroyed it. He figured they couldn't expect much, since that was how he imagined his way of solving problems. Hearing this, the warlike king asked to clarify what exactly was bothering the great wizard. As it turned out, he was the only one who thought about the uniqueness of the dynamite mentality. After all, no one before him had ever figured out the weakness of the ghostly estate. Thus, Huo Ming surprisingly quickly reached the object that was considered the heart. The monster was simply shocked and wanted to make sure that there was no mistake. The guy believed that what Dynamite did was actually quite simple, because all he had to do was destroy everything around him and find the only room that was not damaged. Of course, he considered it impossible to know how Dynamite was able to break everything here so quickly. In the end, the guy said that all he could do was destroy the heart, after which he swung his blade. Using the 10,000 sword skill, he carelessly struck at the mysterious object. The heart was broken, but Huo Ming was unhappy, believing that if that was all there was to it, then he wouldn't be able to tell the amazing story of his becoming a constellation. But the head asked him not to rush. The monster declared that there were still 11 hearts left. At that moment, the building began to behave extremely strangely, and a new reconstruction began. The monster said that the estate is trying to return the heart that the guy destroyed to its place. The heart acts as a pin that holds the tower in place. Since the guy got it, the building is trying to get it back. The monster stated that he would prefer not to interfere in this process, so he advised the hunter to start moving. At such a dangerous moment, Ho Min asked why the dead man did not use that strange teleport. As it turned out, the cunning head began to use the teleport only on himself. While he was returning to his body, he asked the hunter to be careful on the way back. Huo Ming was not going to stay in this chaos and tried to grab his head tightly so that he could go with her. But as it turned out, it was in vain, and the monster warned that if he used his shadow step, he would only lose his hand for nothing. It was clear that the black fog that the monster created was a passage only for him. At the same moment, the one showed his positive reaction, after which the guy began to use his memories. Using the skills of a great magician, he began to try to steal the blessing of the dark ghost, which simply shocked the monster. In the last moments, my head screamed that the guy was making a huge mistake, since he didn't even know about the side effects of the shadow step. In response, the guy shouted that he didn't care about side effects when the most important thing was survival. At his call, Haru jumped onto the guy's back. During the destruction of the building, they managed to use the dark ghost teleportation technique together. They disappeared a moment before a huge wall of the building fell on them. After using the force, the guy found himself in some unknown space, which is why he could not understand what was happening. He completely lost his senses. He could not see anything and did not even feel his own body. At the moment when he thought that he had already died, a message appeared in front of him about the positive reaction of the constellation The One. After that, he woke up in some kind of wasteland. The guy tried to get up. This terrifying feeling would not let him go. At that moment, the head said that it was actually trying to tell the hunter about the side effects. He said that if you activate the shadow step of a dark ghost, you will not feel anything for 10 seconds. Ho Ming was simply in shock. It seemed to him that these 10 seconds lasted an eternity. The monster explained that during the side effect, people lose control of their feelings and usually unknowingly harm their own body. When people who do not know the details of the shadow step try their best to return feelings, they are more likely to get hurt. Despite this, the guy noticed that the monster had no side effects. He explained that this is due to the fact that the dark ghost personally bestowed this blessing on him. Observing the hunter's behavior, the monster could not explain how he managed to use the shadow step. Ho Ming replied that he didn't need to know, after which he looked around, but still didn't understand where they were. He was already terribly irritated by this journey with a dead man's head at hand, but otherwise he would not have been able to find out where they ended up. But at one moment, the head of the leader of the dead man began to scream in panic, believing that Ho Min could not know about this place. They found themselves in some kind of wasteland and the guy wanted to find out more about where they were. But at the same moment, dark shadows began to surround his head, and the monster coughed loudly. Falling to the ground, he shouted that this couldn't be happening. He asked the dark ghost constellation why he decided to leave him. Watching all this, Huo Ming couldn't understand why the dark ghost was angry that he had come to this place. Apparently, the constellation took its blessing from the monster that accompanied their squad, yet they arrived at this place thanks to the efforts of the one. Huo Ming knew that there must be a reason why the constellation brought him here. Together with Haru, they went to explore the area. At first, Huo Ming thought it was just a desert, but after exploring the place, 
he noticed that the sand here was different from usual. He decided that it was bone dust of the dead and metal dust, in which he even found a certain amount of gold dust. Based on this, he assumed that he had ended up in a forgotten cemetery of the dead, about which there were only rumors. This is the place where the dead come after they lose control of their bodies. Previously it seemed to him that this was just a fiction, but everything around said that this place was real. While here, Ho Ming came to the conclusion that there had been a grave for parasites all this time. Nevertheless, he saw in being in this place an opportunity to extract gold from the bones, in order to appropriate it for himself. Looking up into the sky, he thought he understood why the constellations were trying to convince him to agree to this test. He believed that they wanted to use the Dark Ghost's blessing to bring him here. Together with Haru, they shouted that it was time to collect some gold. Watching all this, the constellations were glad that the guy survived. At the same time, Dynamite noticed that not only gold can be found in this desert. With a bestial gaze, despite the only one's displeasure, Dynamite declared that it was the turn of the superior constellation to interfere in Huoming's life. An hour later, the guy already had very good results from searching for fossils. They managed to collect two handfuls of gold, which was a huge payment for such a short time. With a smile on his face, he said that it is no wonder why all the hunters dream of getting to this place. They found not only gold, but also some rare equipment. In addition, he picked up a strange chain which became his first relic-level weapon. This chain of ghostly flames became longer the moment the guy tried to stretch it, and this, of course, seemed like something mysterious. At the same moment the system reported that the relic could explode, and after hitting the sand, an explosion occurred. The guy was simply shocked. This item worked similar to the Master of Ten Thousand Swords. The chain exploded part of itself, but at the same time it was still able to stretch. But after a moment he felt a side effect of the power. The price of using the relic was its energy. The guy suggested that this would be the most common price in the tower. After this, he turned to his dynamite laboratory and began restoring the body. Sighing, he was convinced that at least the loss of energy could be replenished with medication. But at that same moment, he realized that when he looked at the area through Dynamite's point of view, he noticed something special. Awareness of the situation forced him to act immediately. The preparation took quite a long time. He had to use the Dynamite memory many times in order to complete his task. The warlike king did not understand what was happening and asked his comrade what he was up to. The alchemist replied that he helped the guy make explosives. With a smile on his face, he explained that since the substances and equipment were limited, he had to maximize its power. He assumed that since the phantom flame chain was a weapon that required ammunition, then if it was loaded with explosives, all chains would have the same effect. He helped the guy create a multifunctional biochemical explosive, which is known for its extremely high mortality rate. Hearing such terrifying words, the warlike king thought that the alchemist frightened him very much when he told something like that with a smile on his face. Now he began to understand the reason why the one always names this constellation as a suspect in mass destruction. As a result, the guy managed to create five gray, three red, and one white explosives. He decided to start testing with gray pebbles because there were the most of them. When he brought the explosive closer, the chain immediately absorbed it. In addition, that part of the weapon even changed color to match the explosives inside. Huo Ming was ready for the test, but couldn't accept the fact that he would have to waste this substance after spending so many hours trying to make it. He hoped that through all these efforts he could earn the title of Constellation. The guy called Haru with him and walked on. After looking around, the girl asked where they should go, because there was only wasteland around. At that moment, the Constellations began to react positively to his actions, and the guy decided that they wanted him to move on. Still, he trusted them and it seemed to him that they were helping him, so he listened to the advice. Meanwhile, Vice Captain Kang Ha Jin's squad continued to fight against enemies with an incredible numerical advantage. The undead had already begun to pass through the hole from the left rear, and the situation was getting worse. At one moment a monster called the Forgotten One appeared in front of them. He stated that they were done with the rebellion, and human forgotten, and deferred punishments from the past, would one day arise again. The guy didn't understand what these words meant so he threw his knife towards the monster. His blade simply bounced off the dead man's body, and he had to go into close combat. While fighting, they thought that all the hunters who once searched the ghostly estate said that they saw the so-called Forgotten Ones. Based on this, he decided that all the dead people blessed by the Dark Ghost were connected to this. Stretching his hand forward, the monster shouted that the hearts supporting the twisting of the tower and the twisting part of the tower were back in pursuit. Kang Ha Jin continued to think about the riddles said, and decided that the dead were targeting the destruction of all the hearts, since they were the cores that were necessary to maintain the twist of the tower which the dead hated so much. He understood that he could not cope with this matter on his own, so he was going to grab one of the Forgotten Ones and take him to the Geomuk constellation so that he could get more information. 
But at one point, the monster suddenly grabbed the guy by the hand. He began to use the blessing of the dark ghost and declared that the hunter would become a part of the past. Kang Ha Jin made a terrible mistake and already realized that if he fell into the dark ghost's curse, he would immediately die. The monster gloated about his inevitable success. But at that moment, he was suddenly caught by some kind of chain. Just a moment later, a powerful explosion occurred that freed the hunter ruler from the hands of the Forgotten One. Ho Min did not understand what was happening. He was one step away from death and some miracle saved him. That miracle was Ho Min. He waved his relic and said that he thought Kong Ha Jin was disappointed that his old friend came to this place. With a sly grin, he decided to spur the white-haired guy on and asked what the feeling of losing was. Seeing his stupid ward, Kong Ha Jin could not find the right words to support the ridiculous dialogue. All he could do was admit that Baek Ho Min had saved him again. Ho Ming continued to pester the guy and asked, Was he bored without any of his comrades? Ha Jin immediately became confused, after which he called the free hunter a psycho and stated that he did not even notice his absence. In response, the guy started making faces and said that he hoped Ha Jin was looking forward to their meeting. Still, there was no time for such jokes, so the hunter in the service of the ruler asked to talk about this later. Seeing the guy killing the Forgotten Ones, he assumed that Huo Ming also did not accept the Dark Ghost's test. But at the same moment, the guy unexpectedly replied that he had actually accepted the test. Kang Ha Jin was simply furious. He shouted that if the guy accepted the test from the Dark Ghost, then it is obvious that he should not kill the subordinates of the constellation. Ho Ming did not attach much importance to this, and calmly replied that he had already beheaded one of his subordinates, and in return was not punished in any way. Based on this, he considered that the destruction of the Forgotten was not a big deal. The behavior of the ruler's former hunter seemed simply wild, and Ha Jin began to feel nostalgic for their work together. He asked why Ho Min likes to make dangerous decisions so much. Because if he breaks his promise with the constellation, then it may become angry and do everything to ensure that the hunter dies. The guy naively replied that there was no need to worry about this, since the constellations tend to love him. Kang Ha Jin understood that most likely Ho Min Wu had already received the blessing from the constellation dynamite. Their ridiculous dialogue was interrupted by the appearance of student Yu. She reported to the vice captain that their squad had destroyed all the undead. Hearing this, the hunter praised them for their efforts and asked them to help the wounded. To avoid seeming rude, Ho Ming decided to say hello. The girl would not mind continuing this pleasant conversation, but there was something very important that she had to report to her leader. Kang Ha Jin coldly replied that he had taken note of the information. After that, he suggested that his friend go to another place in order to talk calmly. As it turned out, they received a message from Mr. Gyomuk and had to rush to him. Ho Min suggested doing it together. The cunning guy thought that he could try to find out what was happening with the help of an advance group. Heading further, Ha Jin noticed that his student was doing quite well despite the fact that he had only recently been kicked out of the castle. The guy replied that in fact, a lot has happened since that day. After that, he suggested moving on to discuss the situation and mentioned that he accepted the Dark Ghost's offer. Huo Ming wanted to know if he should avoid killing Constellation subordinates. Kang Ha Jin confirmed his words about this and said that if the student does not stop, he will get into trouble. For the future, he advised against making deals with the dead and parasites. When asked what to do with the already concluded deal, the ruler's hunter replied that there was no choice and it was worth fulfilling. At the same time, he asked Hameen not to do stupid things like destroying hearts. He asked the guy to call a magician or priest to cancel the spell. The guy was surprised that he was not allowed to do this. Noticing his reaction, Ha Jin became enraged with the realization that the ridiculous student had already destroyed one of the hearts. Having learned this information, it became clear to him that as a consequence of these rash actions of the hunter, the number of dead people increased and their movements around the tower became more dangerous. Ho Ming decided to return to the conversation about the use of magician skills and asked why, in this case, the dark ghost creates such a big problem out of this situation that it calls even hunters to action. In response, the ruler's hunter stated that regardless of the circumstances, all the ascended constellations are irritated by the current situation, since the entangled tower is impeding the flow between the constellations. He believed that the Dark Ghost considered this matter important enough to take it into his own hands. Looking at his comrade, he said that there were only nine hearts left, and they must carefully get rid of them, so as not to suffer the consequences. Hearing such a number, Ho Ming was surprised, because the dead man mentioned as many as eleven hearts. He wondered who the two hunters were who managed to destroy one more heart of the ghostly estate. Ha Jin replied that it was also done by Sir Geomuk and himself. It turned out that the ruler's hunter had already entered the ghostly estate once before, so he was forced to act. After this, he began to doubt that Ho Ming could pass the test himself, so he assumed that the dynamite constellation helped the hunter. 
Huo Ming confirmed these words because he knew that there was no point in hiding it anymore. According to the ruler's hunter, he guessed about this and already seriously believed that dynamite was even more impressive than one could imagine. He was amazed that a superior constellation helped the hunter, regardless of what other constellations might think about him. It seems Ha Jin has become a real fan of this character, even though his name still wasn't as popular as the others. In Ha Jin's mind, Dynamite is focused on helping the people within the tower without worrying about his reputation. To him, he is one of the few silent hunters that has truly changed. Watching all this, the alchemist himself was simply delighted, which greatly infuriated the one, because he had to face the fact that all his glory was being brazenly stolen because of his own caution. Looking into the sky, Ha Jin stated that even though most people don't know about Dynamite, the constellation in the sky proves his merits, and since he is helping such a remarkable hunter, then it means that he sees hope in him. With a smile on his face, Ho Min wondered why his mentor was telling him all these things, even though Dynamite was unlikely to love him just because of such compliments. In fact, the hunter was more worried about whether the constellation was feeling negative towards his personality. Ho Ming was surprised because he never thought that his strange friend could care about this. He assumed that Ha Jin was simply trying to hide the fact that he was overly interested in an obscure constellation. In response, the mentor said that the student would not understand him because he could communicate with the constellations. In fact, many hunters dreamed of something that seemed ordinary to Ho Ming. Ha Jin was one of those who truly valued not just the blessings of the constellations, but also the opportunities for communication when the heroes of humanity actively helped the younger generations of hunters. Although the mentor's words sounded as if Ho Min did not value what he had, in fact the guy was very grateful for all their help, because otherwise, he would have lost his own life long ago. He couldn't even count the number of times the constellations approved of his choice, thereby saving him from certain death. At the same time, he thought that it would be nice if he could send them back his positive reaction, like the constellations do. Yet Ha Jin openly admitted that he was jealous of the student because of his connection with the dynamite constellation. The mentor's sincerity made the guy think about whether he could easily tell him about his connection with the constellations. Still, he admitted that Dynamite only sends him one message, so they don't chat about much and it can hardly be called full-fledged communication. Ha Jin was simply shocked by this information, and Ho Min instructively clarified that he receives only one message and must read it and try to decipher its meaning. But even this seemed full of possibilities to the mentor, so he asked if the guy knew about the Ouija board. It was clear from the guy's appearance that he had no idea what he was talking about. They had already reached the passage to the 19th floor, so the mentor suggested resting before the battle. Then Ha Jin talked about the Ouija board, which is an ancient object of shamans that was used to summon ghosts and communicate with them. Ho Ming noticed that it was similar to the tombstone library and the items used by tamers. When asked if he was trying to communicate with the constellations in this way, Ha Jin replied that not really. He clarified that this item may be called a shaman's tool, but in reality it is just a toy, because when it was invented, real ghosts did not yet exist. Everything was about things from the life of humanity before its destruction. Ho Ming was born during the existence of the tower, so he didn't even know that people could just die peacefully without turning into ghosts or some kind of evil spirits. The story was not as important as how the Ouija board worked. Looking at the mentor's face, the guy felt that Ha Jin was not feeling very well so he inquired about the condition of his sealed eye. Hunter Kang asked not to worry and admitted that he simply abused his abilities, while the curse from the Dark Ghost worsened his healing. Another conflict aroused the student's interest in why all the constellations hate the ruler's hunter. Ha Jin assumed that he was simply disgusting to them. When everything was ready, the guy asked the student to place his finger in the center of the drawn board to begin asking the constellations a question. He noticed that Huo Ming should move his finger slowly, and when the constellations sent him a message, they could mark which letter they stopped at. According to the mentor, they would need to repeat this process until the constellation sent a more detailed message. Ho Ming was surprised, because thanks to the help of his mentor, he was able to learn about a more accurate way to communicate with friendly constellations. Despite this, he wondered if he really should do this. Ha Jin replied that there really aren't many options for understanding constellations. After these words, he suspected that everything was not so simple. Looking at the student, he assumed that the guy had already tried to use something similar. In fact, this turned out to be true, and although it was not a Ouija board, the method was somewhat similar. However, he always deliberately ignored these options, believing that even if they were constellations, they still remained strangers whom the guy from the back streets simply could not trust. All this time, he relied on his own judgment and did not change his principles until the moment when the choice seemed too difficult. He believed that only he was responsible for his life. Yet he genuinely enjoyed signs of support and kindness without any meaning during those moments when he was not risking his life. 
When he was an orphan, he never received so much attention. He was afraid of losing hope in himself if their dialogues with the constellations became more frank, and he stopped feeling their support as before. Noticing the behavior of his former ward, Ha Jin said with understanding that he was aware of such hesitations because it was scary to face the judgment of the constellation. He asked the guy to come to terms with such a risk and clarified that he was not the only hunter who experienced this feeling. According to him, the constellations in the heavens draw master plans in which the hunters are just cogs that move according to their grand plans. He believed that when humanity truly understands what the constellations want, the pressure will be enormous. Ho Ming himself could not know for sure what the intentions of his constellations were, so he interacted with caution, knowing that in matters of saving his own life he was his best assistant. At the same time, Ha Jin added a new detail about how he had to be torn between his mistress and many constellations. Since there are constellations that hate the lady, he became a disgusting hunter for many of them, and just an eyesore. Looking into the student's eyes, he asked him to perceive the guidance of messages as something that would help him take a step forward. He stated that if Huo Ming was afraid that the constellations would control him, then by knowing this, he could try his best to fight back. For the first time, the mentor's words touched the guy so much, and he admitted that this was the solution to his problem. With a smile on his face, he remarked that he didn't know Ha Jin was so good at talking. Still, he admitted that it would be better for him to resolve this issue of mistrust once and for all. Gathering all his determination together, Ho Ming felt a surge of energy and proposed to do so, after which he warned the constellations that his first question would soon follow. Watching this, the constellations were sincerely glad that their stupid Ho Ming had nevertheless received advice from a smarter comrade, and thanks to the actions of the hunter ruler, events in the tower would significantly accelerate. It was just a historical moment and the guys were immediately confused, not knowing what they should say. Mayori joked that they should ask him to eat a balanced diet and drink a lot of water, but the one did not appreciate her humor, since he took this issue extremely seriously. Turning to the great wizard with panic, the alchemist asked him to hurry up because Ho Ming was about to put the Ouija board aside. Still, he didn't want to take on this burden and asked the rest of Beck Ho Min's personalities to share what they would like to say to the guy they look up to with great hope. In the end, they managed to gather their thoughts and convey a message. But Ho Min and Ha Jin could not understand what they were talking about. On a piece of paper, it was written that they were his past. Still, the guys didn't understand how deep the meaning was behind the constellations. So they took it as a joke and decided to ask something more specific that would not seem like an ambiguous question. But after a moment, they completely forgot about their idea because everything around them began to shake violently, as if an earthquake had begun. Huo Ming began to feel a strong burning sensation on his hand. His seal began to heat up even though he did not use his ability. Watching this, the constellations were excited, because the situation was extremely unexpected. The one remained calmer even in such a situation. He said that most likely the tower noticed their actions and it was only a matter of time. He knew it would happen sooner or later as soon as Bak Ho Min changed his seal. The suddenness of the event still haunted Dynamite and his panic did not stop. The only one replied that this was due to the fact that they began to use the Ouija board to communicate with each other. Previously, the Great Wizard was thinking about what they could do in such a case. He warned that they had no guarantee that any course of action would work, because in the world of images, he was not a constellation or a hunter, but just another person. Grabbing his head, the excited alchemist asked if the magician believed that if the tower assumed that Bak Ho Min tried to cheat, he would destroy everything around him. In response, the one said that at least the tower would try to get rid of them, since they had been a source of problems lately. The guys had already died once when they lived their human lives in the body of Bek Ho Min, so they did not want to be defeated at such an important moment for all of them. Raising his hands to the sky, the one stated that he would make sure this didn't happen anyway. Addressing the constellations, he confidently stated that the tower's anger was due to the fact that they had sent a message to a person, which meant that they had to pay for such direct contact. Still panicking, Dynamite suggested that the more they got into this, the more they would have to pay. The only one confirmed his words but stated that he could use this to negotiate with the tower, after which he began to cast something wildly. As expected, the cracks in the surface and the terrifying noise from all sides shocked the guys, and they assumed that the tower had gone crazy. The ruler's hunter squad was also at a loss. The frightened student Yu turned to the vice captain in horror to find out what was going on. Looking closely at his hand, which was already on the verge of destruction, the guy himself suggested that this was due to the fact that they communicated with constellations. He decided to use the seal to see if it was true. After that, the memory of the one appeared before him. At that moment, he saw a new message. In the print interaction interface, he noticed a new section called Experience. On top of that, there were also words that he couldn't read because they were still encrypted. 
the pain in his hand only became stronger and the guy could no longer stand it. To see the condition of the seal, the guy took off his glove, which protected his hand from prying eyes. At that moment he was shocked by what he saw because his seal was badly damaged. Based on this, the guy thought that this way he could lose not only all his strength, but also his connection with the mysterious constellations. Although Huo Ming didn't hear it, at that moment the one spoke to him with the words that they would once again repair his seal, even though this was a crime against the tower. The constellation took a big risk and the man immediately noticed the changes. Before his eyes, the broken seals began to connect. The only one fixed his seal in an instant and the pain subsided. In addition, it completely changed its form, just like the previous time when the great magician personally corrected his diagram. Looking around, Huo Ming noticed that after correcting the seal, the shaking of the earth suddenly stopped. The guys still didn't understand what had happened, but they seemed to feel much calmer. After all the horror was over, Huo Ming received some kind of alert that he had never encountered before. He received a personal task from the Miori constellation. Her test was to kill the fallen star Tabu, and the reward for completion will depend on the result. Huo Ming did not understand anything, neither what was happening to the tower, nor why the task came from Miori. After receiving the unexpected message, the guy also received inclined reactions from all the friendly constellations except Miori herself. He didn't understand what was happening and began to worry about what might happen to her. At the same time, the shaking in the Beck Homin constellation world also stopped. The warlike king was surprised and asked his most experienced comrade if they could really now give tasks to their reincarnation. With a confident smile, the one confirmed this information. Everyone knows that constellations can give hunters tests or tasks, and it is worth clarifying that Miori provided precisely a test. This way people can repay the debt they received for communicating with the deity. In any case, no one in particular gave the task to Baek Homin. Although they are called constellations, they were all just a figment of his imagination. The shocked warlike king was far from such interactions with the tower system, so he demanded some kind of explanation. The smartest among them explained that he managed to talk to the tower, and these tests are a solution to the problem according to the cost they must pay for interacting with a person. Dynamite was clearly not happy with the news that Beck Ho Min now had to pay off a certain debt. The only one confirmed his words, after which he noted that although they can now give him tests, the tower will still ask for more. At the same moment, Dynamite noticed Miori's disappearance and thought the worst. The Great Wizard explained that while they were giving him trials, a given constellation could not be chosen as the chosen life during the task. When asked why Miori agreed to this, the only one answered that it was not for her to decide. In addition, he cryptically said that for the player, the fallen star is an important sacrifice, whose death will mean the end of his world. Looking at the guy from his own dimension, the one stated that Baik Ho Min would oppose this, as he would constantly be in pain and suffer. The fallen stars used to shine amazingly brightly in the sky, but having lost their integrity, fell to the ground. They cannot be considered either people or parasites. They are just animals that have lost the starlight. They are known as beings who mutter curses and dire prophecies. These stars eke out a miserable existence, killing those who get in their way, be they people or parasites. In addition, no living creature prays with such fervor for the destruction of the tower and the whole world as these fallen stars, which is why they are often called the beasts of the apocalypse. Based on the test conditions, Dynamite wondered if the fallen star taboo had appeared too early. The only one answered that the tower never makes unnecessary movements, so it must be somehow connected with the test. The monsters were already raging with full force and breaking through the ground to the outside. There were too many of them, and the detachment understood that their position was extremely difficult. Kang Ha Jin called on his guys to prepare for battle and leave the 18th floor immediately. They were going to climb to the 19th floor without losing their positions. Ho Min was the first to rush forward and declared that, together with the ruler's hunter, he would pave the way for the entire detachment. Watching what was happening, the constellations were beside themselves with anger when they saw that the price for their intervention was too cruel. Turning to the tower, the one furiously asked if she thought this was too much, after which he suggested that she was taking advantage of the opportunity and trying to fool them all. He never heard anything in response, while Bak Ho Min himself continued to fiercely fight the enemies, who greatly outnumbered their squad. All this time he understood that together with his comrade, they could cope with this task, but with such pressure, most of their team would simply die. Taking out his relic with the ability of explosives, the guy decided to open the path to the exit to the next floor in a more radical way. Instead of using the chain as usual, he tied a blade to it and threw it towards his comrade. Kang Ha Jin caught the unexpected gift and asked what it was. He assumed that his comrade would be able to throw the blade all the way to the tower, but the words of the free hunter actually seemed crazy. When Kang Ha Jin called this nonsense, Ho Min launched a sudden provocation and declared that the ruler's hunter could not call himself an expert 
if he was not capable of something so ordinary. As expected, the hunter's pride did not give the guy peace, and he did something crazy that he would never have dared to do before. The guy threw a dagger connected to an explosive chain towards the tower and it began to quickly rush between the rows of monsters. A moment later, the dagger flew into the wall of the tower. Kang Ha Jin couldn't believe he was able to do this, while Ho Min, who was holding the other end of the chain in his hand, declared that the guy was not bad and carried out his part of the plan. After these words, with a sly grin, the guy shouted that everyone should duck down because he was starting the show with fire. As soon as he pulled the chain towards himself, interaction with the explosives began. Within a moment, there was a powerful explosion that destroyed all the monsters on the way to the tower. The path was open literally in an instant and the squad could not believe that they managed to do something so unexpectedly important. Until the monsters gathered their courage, the squad rushed towards the passage to the next floor, which should be safer than this one. But within a moment, Huoming felt weak due to the active use of the relic. As usual, the price for strength was his energy and the guy began to lose consciousness. As expected, Kang Ha Jin came to the rescue and, noticing his comrade's weakness, immediately realized that this was due to the use of an incredibly powerful skill. The dead were chasing them, and the ruler's hunter had to take his comrade on his shoulders. Exhausted, Homing continued to tease his comrade, noting that he had a strong back, which was literally designed for such work. As usual, Dynamite was already feeling more confident, and began to continue to put pressure on the most experienced among them. Boasting that he had prepared gunpowder in advance, and thanks to the superstar in him, Beck Ho Min was able to overcome such an unimaginable difficulty. The warlike king supported the alchemist, enthusiastically saying that this explosion was truly a brilliant idea, and even the only one had to admit that it was simply incomparable. To regain some glory for himself, the great wizard asked the guys not to forget that it was he who brought the guy to the Cemetery of the Dead. Continuing to show a smug smile, the impudent dynamite began to slyly reassure his comrade, after which he suggested that he cool down, which did not work at all as it should have. Meanwhile, the guys reached the temporary barracks on the 19th floor, and Ho Min was already lying on the bed, completely passed out. Looking at his comrade, Kang Ha Jin began to think about how many times this bastard had already saved his life. It was not entirely customary and pleasant for him to feel indebted to his younger comrade. While he was reflecting on existence, one of his subordinates came to him and, turning to the vice captain, said that all members of the first expeditionary team were already assembled. Moreover, he said that the master wants Kang Ha Jin to attend this meeting. Sir Jeomuk began his speech by saying that the advanced troops were the first to reach the third level, but upon discovering the distortion of the tower, they immediately returned as they did not know what became of the haunted mansion. Still, he believed that the situation on the third level was not as bad as they expected. He had reason to believe that one of the stars wanted to help them. These words brought some relief to the soldiers and they breathed a sigh of relief. At the same time, the anxious Hajin thought that if all the hunters died on the 20th floor, the city would be in a terrible situation. Further, the active constellation reported that four hours ago the pulsating hearts that suppressed the tower were destroyed. He stated that there were originally nine of them, but seven of them were destroyed. The information was unexpected, and one of the fighters asked whether it was currently known what caused this. Sir Geomuk replied that there was only one explanation, and that was that the tower decided to wake up from a long sleep. In other words, he explained that the tower could extract pulsating hearts whenever it wanted. In his opinion, be that as it may, the destruction of the pulsating hearts caused the resistance they witnessed. Hajin remembered that one of the forgotten monsters also mentioned this phenomenon. Pointing his finger at events outside their camp, the man said that because of this, the dead buried underground are crawling out. According to him, if you believe the words of one of their alchemists, the number of the army of the dead is about 150,000. As expected, such preliminary figures shocked the fighters. Sir Jomuk also said that the advanced troops and hunters who have passed the third level estimate that there are about 130,000 of them which means that each will only have to fight a thousand enemies. Although the constellation tried to present this information with some irony, the guys could not take it as easily as he presented it. As it turned out, for him the size of the army of the dead was not the biggest problem, since he had seen something more serious. After these words, he asked to pay attention to who was fighting the dead. He stated that this mysterious warrior is known as the Taboo Apocalypse Beast, which is actually coming after them. As expected, when the guys heard the mention of a fallen star, they began to frantically panic. Kang Ha Jin noticed how the hunters began to worry, but at the same time he could understand them, because the mention of taboo scares everyone. But most of all, they are excited by the mysterious nature of the fallen stars, horrified by the possibility that the person who previously guided people from heaven could suddenly turn against them. Turning to the constellation, Kang Ha Jin remembered that in his memory, taboo was defeated seven years ago. 
Sir Jeomuk confirmed these words and said that he was personally involved in this matter. Despite the fact that he was able to push the enemy to the limit, he was unable to get rid of this problem, because Taboo simply fled underground. Before continuing, he decided to tell the guys about what kind of man Taboo was before he fell from the sky. After the story, Ha Jin went back to his comrade, who by that time had already regained consciousness. He immediately informed the guy that all of humanity had become the target of the fallen star. Hearing about the Taboo star, Ho Ming also remembered that he was his target in the test from Miori. Ha Jin asked if the guy knew what the Beast of the Apocalypse was. Ho Ming replied that this was the name given to those who were stripped of their star ranks and fell to the ground. His words turned out to be true, and the mentor mentioned that during the Civil War many years ago, countless constellations arose, and Taboo was one of them. He was one of the few who was associated with the alchemy workshop. It was then that Taboo ascended by the arms of the Oracle Star due to his defeat. According to the mentor, it would be great if Taboo remained a star in the sky and led those who wanted to follow in his footsteps. But unfortunately for all humanity, he was never able to get rid of his attachment to the Earth. Less than a year after Taboo's death, he lost his title and became a fallen star. Even though he ascended, mortal values were important to him, and he had to pay for it. After this story, Homin asked what kind of person that alchemist was. Ha Jin replied that according to rumors, Taboo was quite eccentric and was interested in the essences of the tower, and not in conquering it. He tried to find blind spots in the rules established by the tower, and find out the boundaries of what was permitted in order to understand whether the authority of the tower was absolute. Based on this, Ho Ming understood why he bore the name of the ban. Moreover, according to the mentor, that alchemist was both intrigued and obsessed with everything forbidden and because of this, it was something unusual that the tower allowed him to become a star, and even nicknamed him in such an ironic way. Based on what he had heard, Huo Ming thought that even if Taboo had been stripped of his star title and had now fallen, it was unlikely that he would no longer pose a huge danger. He still wasn't sure if he had the strength to fight someone who was previously a star. While the guy was thinking hard, Ha Jin remembered that his comrade must complete a task from the Black Ghost. After that, he remembered that fallen stars are those who fell out of favor at the tower, and this means that, like an executioner doll, Ho Ming can get a star by getting rid of this enemy. At that moment, the hunter's eyes lit up with interest, because he realized that if he passed both tests, he could get two stars in a fairly short period of time. Then the vice captain went to meet with the leader of the first squad on one of the walls of their temporary fortification, from which they watched the enemies fighting among themselves. Sir Geomuk wanted to know if there was any news from the Platinum Monarch. The guy replied that Miss Yun would not send a second expedition team to help since all their elevators were broken. She ordered them to the 20th floor after they dealt with Taboo. To the constellation, this sounded like a ridiculous order from a man who had no idea what was happening on the battlefield. In response, Ha Jin said that if the Fallen Star also hated parasites so much, then he should just team up with humans, as he would become a pretty strong ally. Sir Geomuk explained that the Fallen Star does not necessarily hate the parasites, and is rather talking about the tower. According to him, all the Fallen Stars despise the tower, and they long for its destruction, so they have forgotten the values and principles of their lives. The ruler's hunter wanted to hear the reason for this behavior. The man replied with a smile that this was not surprising, because love often goes hand in hand with hatred. Hunters who climb the tower adore it, he said. But such ardor is easily replaced by resentment when the tower does not allow them to reach the top. Hajin fully understood the meaning that his senior comrade was interpreting, so he asked if he had any thoughts about how this would all turn out. According to the ruler's hunter, the ideal outcome would be in which parasites and taboos destroy each other. But at the same moment, Sir Geomuk turned around and said that such an outcome would not happen, and very soon they would come face to face with Taboo, so it was time to prepare for battle. After that, a panicking soldier suddenly ran towards them and shouted that something terrible had happened. The guys immediately became wary when they heard that it was connected with the hunter Beck Ho Min. As it turned out, this brave guy, without any conversations with the squad, went to meet the enemy, not even having a clue how to deal with the fallen star. He admitted this and even thought that strategy in such a situation would not bring any significant advantage. What he was counting on was unclear, but having set himself an ambitious goal, the guy moved towards a meeting with a terrifying enemy. Seeing the madman walking towards a huge amount of enemy force, Ha Jin shouted that he was doing some deadly stupid thing. In response, Ho Ming calmly stated that he was a master of figuring things out as he went along, and then suggested that they just see how things would turn out. After these words, he began to confidently run towards countless enemies. The number of monsters was simply terrifying, and it would be unlikely that there would be a madman who, without hesitation, would enter into battle with them. But this was not about our hunter, 
With a malicious smile on his face, he began to cut the monsters with his blades. Moreover, he tried to use the full range of his newfound abilities and even turned to the mini-laboratory of the Dynamite Constellation, with the help of which he had previously developed a vaccine against the Army of the Dead. The guy growled furiously like a beast, and at the same time thought that the battle was going to be hot, so he would not call on the Constellations for help until he faced Taboo. The reckless actions of this fool did not give rest to his more adequate comrade. So watching the madness, Jiomuk asked whether Ha Jin was going to help the hunter who had completely lost his mind. The guy replied that, although he felt an incredible debt to that fool, he was still not going to help him if it meant risking the lives of other hunters. Constellation accepted this answer with respect, and assumed that based on what the situation was, Bek Ho Min would meet his end on this battlefield. The battle was so active that the hunter began to feel an unbearable heat and threw off his cloak. He was surprised that in such battles, previously his seal would heat up to the point of burns on his hand. But now all the heat from the seal seemed to spread throughout his entire body. Plus, the hotter she got, the faster and stronger his movements were. At that moment, he remembered his teacher and thought that their training was showing real results. He remembered what the very smelly man had said about how these skills could be made your own if you let your body warm up properly for maximum effectiveness. Moreover, after transforming the seal, he began to notice that using the Lord of Ten Thousand Swords became much easier. He didn't know exactly what the one had done with his seal, but he was incredibly grateful that he had become even stronger. Observing the actions and behavior of the guy, the one admitted to his comrades that he really made the heat from the seal spread to the whole body, but noticed that it was thanks to Bek Ho Min that such changes were possible. The warlike king was pleased with Huo Min's rapid development, but feared that he might die if he continued to recklessly rush into battle. He assumed that an escape could be arranged in almost any situation, but he was worried that it would only become more difficult. In response, the one stated that if Ho Min runs away from this battle, he is unlikely to be able to take what is on the upper floors of the tower. Nevertheless, the constellation from the Weapons Guild agreed that such a risk could not be avoided, because in the future, it would fully pay off. Bayek Ho Min prevailed with all his might, so the only question for them was what Kung Ha Jin would do. The warlike king believed that, judging by the current circumstances, the ruler's hunter would abandon his old comrade. But at the same moment, the one unexpectedly and mysteriously stated that Bek Ho Min was just a pebble that was thrown into the water, while Kang Ha Jin himself was the one who could cause a real storm. He believed that if that guy did not help their reincarnation at this moment, then in the future he would simply sink, leaving behind only a barely noticeable trace. As expected, the ruler's hunter himself was experiencing severe internal conflict due to the fact that the comrade to whom he had become so attached took on an overwhelming burden that he was going to carry alone. Observing the scale of the battle and how excellently Taboo showed himself, he thought that if they had all rushed to the rescue of their comrade, they would still never have been able to cope with so many enemies. Looking at the guy, he mentally turned to him with regret, apologizing for not being able to help this time. Yet the situation was so tense that he was forced to turn to the constellation with a request. He asked the gentleman if he could discuss a crazy idea with him. He tentatively replied that if his deputy was going to ask him to order the hunters to rush to the attack, then they should not hope that he would do so. Ha Jin admitted that he expected a similar answer, after which he said that in this case he had no choice and reached into his pocket. After this, he took out the platinum sign and as a confidant was forced to order the constellation to gather troops and join Bek Ho Min in destroying the fallen star. The guy's oath sounded like a threat to the constellation, but still it was justified by an agreement with the ruler. Seeing Jeomuk's gaze, Ha Jin felt incredible pressure and realized that this man could kill him with just the movement of his little finger. Having taken the platinum for himself, the man said that although he did not like it, he had no choice, since the ruler's hunter was senior to him in rank in the hierarchy of the state. The guy sighed with relief, since Geomuk still agreed to his ridiculous order. After this, the man turned to his charges with the words that the constellation had fallen from heaven to earth. Manipulating the crowd, he declared that that stupid creature was making a huge mistake, and it was their duty to correct the mistakes of the higher ones and set them on the right path. He shouted that their task was to subdue the fallen star, after which he ordered the soldiers to rush to the attack. Everything worked as Hajin intended. He understood that Bek Ho Min deliberately risked his life to draw him into battle since he needed his help. The guy doubted that by rushing into battle, Ho Min decided to commit suicide, so he had to take a risk and go against the will of the master. Still, he continued to be furious that he had to risk everything for the moronic ideas of his comrade, who seemed to him like a younger brother. Meanwhile, Ho Min continued to fight with an unimaginable and endless number of dead people, due to which he was unable to get closer to his main enemy. 
He thought that it would be nice if the brat Kang Ha Jin came to his aid. Suddenly, he saw a new battle from the side of the hunter's camp and realized that his allies were approaching him. He heard the master's voice saying that now he was not alone here. He didn't really want to manipulate them, but the situation was getting better. At that moment, he ordered Haru to engage in a tactical retreat. Fierce fighters did not give a single chance to their enemies. Watching his ward's skillful movements, Homing could see that Haru's shadow beast was taking shape and becoming stronger. From this, he concluded that she gets stronger in proportion to how much she fights. At the same time, he felt the shadow beast in his belt begin to tremble violently. This was extremely unusual, and the only thing he could think of at that moment was that the ghost was succumbing to incredible pressure due to the presence of Haru's energy that raged during the fight. The girl with funny ears behaved like a real animal and suddenly attacked the ghost with a desire to have a hearty snack. But Homin ordered her to stop immediately. But at the same moment, the girl simply hid her spirit under her jacket and, apparently, became even stronger. The girl began to answer his questions, and it became clear that common sense began to return to her. But after a moment, she began to say something about a setup and the destruction of life, which is why the guy came to the conclusion that he wanted too much, and Haru continues to talk absolute nonsense. In any case, thanks to the wind from her movements, his seal quickly cooled down, which helped him maintain himself in excellent condition. In addition, he also noticed that his warmth was reducing the power of Haru's shadow beast. When asked regarding this, Haru replied that she felt less influence from the shadow beast. Based on this, it was logical to assume that Haru would face retribution for using the shadow beast in the same way as for using the seal. Despite this, by working together with her, he could spend less time cooling the seal giving himself time to rest during battle. At one point, the girl looked around and mentioned some urgent plan. Huo Ming replied that his immediate plan was to use the people who trusted him as bait to cut off the head of the taboo star. When the girl heard her savior's crazy plan, she called the evil genius a man doomed to hell, and in response Huo Min said that if this was a compliment, then they should hurry up. The battle was completely cold and the constellation detachment destroyed everyone in its path. The power of the constellation was incomparable to ordinary hunters and Kang Ha Jin recognized that the master was their strength and support with which they could reach Taboo. The man turned to his deputy, saying that he should remind him that hoping to protect all the hunters in this battle does not make any sense. He stated that when they faced their main enemy, they would have to focus only on him. What he wanted to say was that they were moments before facing such a powerful enemy that even he wasn't sure he could prevail against. Judging by the determination of the ruler's hunter, one could say that he was ready for all the difficulties in his path. Still, they could also hope that Bak Ho Min had some ingenious plan in store that would make their fate at least a little easier. In fact, Ha Jin really relied on his comrade. But after looking around, they noticed how that strange kid suddenly disappeared from sight. Ha Jin said that they should move on, because he is probably out there somewhere. But he was still bothered by the fact that he did not feel his presence. Realizing that his comrade had really disappeared, he began, as usual, to rage at the fact that that fool could do something truly unpredictable. Noticing the deputy's concern, the master expressed his opinion that Bak Ho Min had left because he was here on his own. After this, he asked what the confidant of the Platinum Monarch would do in such an unusual position. The situation worsened, and Ha Jin decided to think again about what a crazy and lucky comrade would do in his place. At that moment he realized that by looking at the world through Bak Ho Min's eyes, everything was much simpler. He asked the master to continue the attack, and he replied that he would allow the guys to make a fool of himself, as if he had no experience in clearing dozens of floors of the tower. Gathering an incredible amount of air into his lungs, he decided to shout something crazy. The man furiously turned to Tab and urged him to go out to fight. Of course, the cry of the constellation reached the fallen star. In response, this terrifying enemy said something incomprehensible to an ordinary person. After that, a huge cannon appeared near his cart, from which he fired in the direction of the enemy. To protect his fighters from the approaching cannonball with terrifying destructive power, the man took off his cloak and used it as a shield. As expected, he managed to avoid the worst outcome. Just the sight of the clash of weapons from two constellations filled ordinary hunters with horror. The man asked the fighters to draw their attention to the fact that that amazing warrior, who was an alchemist in the past, had thought out his battle strategy very well. The card he rode in was a kind of tank, armed with incredible armor and powerful cannons that could level the terrain with a single shot. Assessing the strength of the enemy, Ha Jin restlessly came to the conclusion that if that monster of the apocalypse attacked them at a time when the master was not around, they would be destroyed in a matter of seconds with a few shots. Meanwhile, Huo Min continued to move forward and told his subordinate his plan. He intended to flank the enemy forces on the right and attack Tabu from behind in order to save the expeditionary party from the horror of encountering such an enemy. 
At one point, the speed of the battle for some reason subsided. The guy noticed that the dead around them had somehow frozen. After this, one of the dead, who was forgotten, approached him. He asked the fighter with the strange seal to leave this place as far as possible since he had more important things to do than senseless death at the hands of a fallen star. Seeing the forgotten one, which was probably a puppet of a black ghost, the guy assumed that he could control the dead around him. Raising his hand, the forgotten one declared that he would clear the way for the hunter so that he could go and take the star. In response, the guy said that he still could not understand why the dark ghost was helping him, after which he added that he did not turn his back on those who seemed suspicious to him. Based on his words, the monster suggested that he fight, and in this case, his test would end by itself. He warned the guy that in this case he would miss the opportunity to get a star. These words made sense, because the task of the Black Ghost is not over yet, since there are two beating hearts that he must destroy to take possession of the star. The monster stated that one of the hearts belongs to Tab, and it is an important part of his furnace. Ho Ming could not even think that this was possible. Hearing this, he realized that in order to destroy one of the hearts, he definitely needed to get rid of the taboo star. It was difficult for him to understand what exactly the dark ghost was trying to achieve, because, as usual, he assumed that after the end of the test, he would try to kill him. Turning to the sky, he asked whether he should trust the Forgotten One, after which he received a positive reaction from the constellation, The One. As expected, the monster was surprised why the guy was muttering something under his breath instead of maintaining a constructive conversation. Because of the support of the Great Wizard, the guy decided to trust the subordinate of the Dark Ghost and asked him to cover his back. Raising his hands, the Forgotten One promised that he could clear the way for him. This time, Huoming trusted the constellations and rushed to attack Tabu. Stopping, he heard a deafening cry for Tab to show himself. The guy realized that this voice belonged to the constellation Geomuk. Just one scream of a man with terrifying force made him tremble, and it even seemed to him that he was about to lose consciousness. After that, he heard a powerful salvo from the enemy tank's cannon. The two strongest fighters on this battlefield began to fire at themselves like crazy, and Huo Ming felt the difference in their real strength. Despite this, he was excited to unleash his potential, as he hoped that all attention was focused only on the master. Seeing his chance in this situation, the guy safely approached the enemy cart. A moment later, taking advantage of the noise, he sneaked inside unnoticed. He was the first to see the back of such a terrifying enemy during this battle. Taking out his blade, the guy thought that the end was near and he was the one who would end this madness. But just a moment later, the constellation turned in his direction and pointed a hand cannon at him. Such an unexpected turn of events caused a powerful surge of adrenaline in the guy's pants, and he fearfully thought that he had failed. At such a critical moment, his dynamite constellation memories suddenly activated. He saw the past from his life, where that mad alchemist admired the abilities of the still active taboo constellation. In his opinion, this man is an expert in everything related to such a subtle science as engineering, so he considered it his duty to study his knowledge. A moment after the memory, the guy realized its importance. Although it seemed to him that quite a lot of time had passed, upon returning to his consciousness, Tabu only managed to pull the trigger. He was still able to dodge the shot. Huo Ming quickly jumped to the side. What happened inside the tank was reflected in events on the battlefield. The bombardment suddenly stopped, and Jomuk decided that this was their chance to go on the attack. Turning to his charges, he shouted that now it was time to run until their lungs burned like hell. The pressure from Tabu continued and Ho Min could not get closer. Just barely managing to dodge, he realized that from the memories of the dynamite constellation, he was able to highlight the features of the enemy's anatomy. At the same moment, he counterattacked and grabbed the enemy by the neck with his chain. After such a deft movement with a smile on his face, he invited Tabu to stop, since it was all over for him. But at the same moment, he heard a strange creak coming from the enemy's neck. A moment later, Ho Min was forgotten behind him, stabbing him in the side with a knife and saying that he could not allow the hunter to take possession of the star, because he had already fulfilled his role in their plan. Ho Ming began to curse the Dark Ghost, but the Forgotten One clarified that the constellation was now also useless, since for him he was just an intermediary in order to take advantage of the stupid and naive hunter. According to him, the Black Ghost broke his communication because of their betrayal, after which he lost one star, and there were only four of them left. Having learned the full plan of this vile enemy, Ho Min called him a crazy scumbag. After his words, the Dark Ghost took his blessing, but the Forgotten One replied that he did not care, since they no longer needed him. As it turned out, those scoundrels had already destroyed the last star, and their next step was to destroy the last heart that belonged to the Taboo Star. But with a sly smile on his face, Ho Min asked if the Forgotten One was sure that he would just die. Within a moment behind his back, he felt the presence of Haru's beast. The girl immediately rushed to the attack and with one blow of her sharp claws destroyed part of the monster's body. With a satisfied smile on his face, the guy thanked her for her help in a difficult moment. 
Filled with the desire to crush, the sweet killer declared that one blow of hers is equal to one death of monsters. At the same moment, Taboo, who was imprisoned in a relic-level chain, also joined their conversation. He said that the tower was collapsing and when three meteorites crashed into it, they would lead to the destruction of the building. According to his mysterious words, one day a huge wormwood will grow, which will cause rain, which will wash away all the dirt from the city of people. As expected, Ho Ming called it all nonsense and, making sure that he was finished, got ready to finish his job. Addressing the star for the last time, he invited him not to hold a grudge against him, after which he pulled the chain towards himself. A powerful explosion occurred around Taboo's neck, destroying even part of this indestructible tank. After using the power, the guy felt weak, which, as expected, was payback for using the relic. Still, he was satisfied with the result that he deserved thanks to his efforts. But raising his head up, he realized that he had begun to rejoice in victory too early. The guy couldn't believe his eyes. The half-destroyed body of the Taboo Star was still standing on its feet. What's more, this terrifying monster and engineering genius was still able to carry out attacks. The guys quickly frolicked to escape, and at that moment, Haru was suddenly able to lift the heavy armored plate of the tank that was attached to its base with one blow. Her decision turned out to be their only salvation at that moment, and the enemy attacks did not harm them. Looking behind the piece of armor with which they were covering themselves, the guy noticed that the enemy began to fight much more aggressively, and it would have been impossible to hide from these bullets if not for Haru's flexible thinking. A way out of the situation seemed somewhat unrealistic, but at the same moment, the system reported that his synchronization with the dynamite constellation had reached an increase in level. At that moment, the guy no longer thought about which reward to choose, and taking into account the message of the constellations, he chose the memory item. Within a moment, a huge amount of information changed the guy's perception. For a moment he completely forgot about the battle due to the fact that he could not believe that he could acquire such incredible knowledge. Addressing the hunter, Taboo stated that there was no use in trying to gain time, after which he continued a series of powerful shots from his weapon. Opening the inner compartment of the tank, the guy politely apologized for his refusal to accept death and stated that he was still too young to die. After that, the guy began to destroy the components of the chassis of this car in search of the right thing. After several blows, he managed to gain access to the control panel. Thanks to his knowledge of the constellation, he realized how to cope with the control of the tank's muzzle, because Dynamite had previously studied the engineering solutions of his idol. Within a moment, one of the tank's guns was redirected to Taboo. The terrifying enemy hardly expected that his weapon would be used against him. A moment later, a powerful explosion occurred. This time the tank could not survive and the guys flew away from the blast wave. Watching this, Geomuk and Hajin could not understand why the enemy tank, which was an impregnable fortress of the Taboo constellation, suddenly exploded like this. Ho Ming lost his last trump card, while the body of the monster that had transformed itself with the help of engineering knowledge looked destroyed to the very limit. The guy only hoped that during this attack the beating heart was also destroyed, which was the last in his test. The carriage and Taboo himself looked as if they had already lost all their strength. If you compare the two alchemists, it is worth noting that Dynamite is powerful due to his memories, unlike Taboo, who relied on his beating heart. The fallen stars have lost their light, and therefore cannot use as much power as before. However, Taboo was still strong enough to distort the tower. After receiving the heart, he finally gained his body and control of the tank. Gathering his remaining strength, Ho Ming decided to make sure that he completed his task. The wounded guy clutched his dagger tightly and approached Taboo's destroyed body. Addressing the legendary alchemist, he spoke of the hope that his sacrifice would become invaluable for future generations. The fallen constellation was dealt with while the fighters of the first group continued to fight the dead, whose leader had fallen during the battle inside the tank. Within a moment, Ha Jin noticed his comrade. He felt that the battlefield had changed greatly. Addressing his comrades, the vice captain asked the soldiers to protect the surrounding area without fear of a threat from the fallen star. Sir Geomuk went to scout the scene and met an exhausted comrade with a shadow beast hiding behind him. First of all, the master called the hunter a crazy idiot who made some kind of bait out of the main forces of humanity. Despite this, he thanked the guy for finishing a task that was beyond their power. The old man's unexpected sincerity and his frank words touched the guy. Stretching his hand forward, Sir Geomuk uttered the cherished words, saying that using his own power he was rewarding the hunter with a blessing. Huo Ming was able to obtain the blessings of a strong will, which ensured that his weapon would never slip from his hands as long as his will was strong. The guy admitted to himself that he did not expect a blessing from the master, even though he deserved it. Before the eyes of the ruler's hunter, Huo Min was again able to miraculously cope with a hopeless situation, although he was forced to use a very vile trick. Looking at the legendary alchemist for the last time, Sir Geomuk said that thanks to Beck Ho Min, Taboo finally received his long-awaited funeral. Meanwhile, a fierce battle continued on the battlefield, 
which is why the fighters really needed the support of the constellation. Since Taboo was dead, they all focused on the humanity squad. But at one moment, a ringing knock spread, after which the dead stopped. The guys who were immersed in the heat of battle suddenly experienced a feeling of fear, as they did not understand why the dead froze. A moment later, a girl with red hair and a long staff in her hands appeared in front of them. She greeted all the people, and then said that the elder sent her because he was disappointed in the parasites and their ability to cope with the assigned tasks. The girl appeared out of nowhere and greatly surprised the hunters, while Sir Giamut continued to maintain his usual calm. The seemingly friendly girl said with a smile that she was not here to fight a group of hunters because there was no need for that. As it turns out, this is the constellation Syzygy. Sir Geomuk asked directly what brought her to the battlefield. Hearing this name, the guys were shocked to find out who was in front of them. Syzygy is one of the four living constellations. No one knows anything about her other than her age and gender, because she never came down to the city after receiving her status. Why she appeared at that particular moment remained a mystery. Geomuk assumed it was because of the Black Ghost, then admitted that he thought she didn't care about what was going on in the city. The girl replied that she really came because of the Black Ghost, since the Elder was stupid enough, and asked the Parasites for help. She reported that in the end, his starlight was taken away from him, and she felt that he was being used and could not cope with the consequences. So she told him that Parasites couldn't be trusted. Next, Geomuk asked what exactly the goals of the Black Ghost were. The girl boldly replied that he wanted a better fate for humanity after which she explained that this meant returning life to the one they had in the past. The Black Ghost wanted to return to a time when the tower stood firm and impregnable, and when humanity existed in harmony. According to her, the Elder simply wants to return to the boring and outdated way of life, when constellations rose and fell like stars. A dissatisfied Geomuk asked if the madman really believed that this was the right path for humanity, while Hajin claimed that his dreams were just an invention of some cult from the past. The ruler's hunter added that those who opposed the tower would not be able to enjoy a peaceful, quiet life. Sigizia urged the guys not to rush things and allow those who want to climb the tower to do so. She believed that people who were able to climb the tower deserved to receive a star and become a constellation. At the same time, she did not understand why humanity was so vehemently opposed to the existence of the tower. Jeomuk asked the girl not to delay and get closer to the point. He believed that she was here to make sure that people could not climb the tower but the girl replied that she had only come to convey a message from the Black Ghost. She reminded that after the ascension, the constellations can only shine to communicate something to those who still remain on Earth. Her goodwill was also the fact that, unlike her elders, she valued human life and was not going to take it away just like that. It seemed incomprehensible to her that some people kill each other because of differences in worldview. But at the same moment, Ho Min intervened in the conversation and confidently stated that every word she said was a blatant lie. Hearing this, the girl continued to maintain her image and said that it was rude from a guy she personally did not know. After which she declared that she was not a liar. After this, Ho Min asked her to swear on the stars that she was only telling the truth. The guy had already completed Miori's task, so he was again able to use her fact-checking skills, and the constellation did not stop sending him likes, which indicated that Sigizia was lying. Taking a good look at the man, the girl said that she now realized that he was the same rising star about whom there was so much noise. But with a manic look, the guy replied that she shouldn't change the topic of conversation and it was time to swear if her words were true. At that moment, the girl said that she was happy to continue the conversation. But this was not the most appropriate time and place for conversation. Within a moment, using her magic, Sigizia brazenly and rudely taped the mouth of the impudent and talkative hunter. Addressing people, she concluded that they are always happy to welcome new constellations. After these words, she tapped her cane on the surface and congratulated the guy on receiving the first star after which she shared the hope that they would see each other next time in a more suitable place. Within a moment, the girl disappeared before their eyes. The sudden appearance of the constellation haunted the hunters, and Hajin worriedly thought about what all this could mean. Huoming regained the ability to speak, after which he shouted that disappearing after an awkward question was extremely cowardly of her. At the same moment, the dead returned to their former activity, and Kang Hajin ordered the guys to prepare for battle. There were still a lot of dead people left, and the vice captain was worried about whether the guys could withstand such a load. Analyzing the situation, he believed that Bak Ho Min was no longer able to fight while the hunters were at their limit. Moreover, it seemed to him that the master was clearly unable to protect them all. Addressing the constellation, the guy said that they needed to retreat, because otherwise they were unlikely to be able to get out alive. But in response, the man unexpectedly and thoughtfully said that this was hardly necessary. A moment later, an unexpected explosion occurred on the battlefield. Ha Jin had already begun to understand what was happening. Smiles appeared on the faces of his comrades, and they could breathe a sigh of relief. 
the legendary godless paladins came to their aid, a squad whose strength was incomparable to ordinary hunters. Kang Ha Jin clearly did not expect such a turn of events, since the ruler told him that they were unlikely to receive any reinforcements. In response, the master asked, since when the executioner Dahl listens to the orders of the ruler, he was one of the few who could say for sure that the hero of humanity never completely trusts or obeys anyone and does what he simply thinks is right. Seeing the breathtaking girl's cheerful appearance, Ho Min only confirmed his expectations that she was insanely dangerous. Continuing to fight, the girl began to ask the master questions about why he was not in the fortifications of this floor and why they launched an attack, knowing that the situation was not in their favor. The man looked slyly at his deputy and replied that he actually had no intention of leaving there so an explanation should be expected from the ruler's confidant. Ha Jin, as usual, was not taken aback and redirected all his rage to his comrade, saying that he simply had no choice due to the recklessness of one of the ruler's former subordinates. The girl was surprised that Beck Ho Min was again involved in the hype that was not planned. Addressing the unauthorized hunter, she warned him that he would have to account for this. After these words, the area suddenly began to change on its own, and the dead simply began to disappear. Looking around, Ho Min noticed that even the stars in the sky began to rearrange themselves. At that moment, Ha Jin assumed that he already had an idea what was going on. The area changed and the sun rose above them. Sir Geomuk said it was most likely the work of the Platinum Monarch. He believed that Miss Yun had destroyed the last remaining pulsating heart, and the second level had returned to its original state. At the same moment, the teleportation essence of a black ghost appeared in front of the guy, and he worriedly thought about what would happen this time. But after a moment, he was shocked by what he saw. Mrs. Yoon appeared in front of him, accompanied by her charges. She immediately asked the master why he left his fortress. The man did not want to repeat himself and asked to contact the ruler's hunter for an explanation. Looking at Madame Yoon, Huo Min couldn't believe that they had met again. Approaching his lady, Ha Jin showed his utter surprise by saying that he thought she would be able to join them much later. The Platinum Monarch replied that she was dealing with issues related to the Black Ghost and Hearts. She explained that if the beating hearts had not been destroyed, then sending a second expedition team would have been useless. Once she took apart the last of the hearts, they ended up in this place. After looking around, she said that they had arrived on time. Considering the fact that the lady destroyed the last heart, the guy assumed that now she would receive a star for this. Hearing the words of his comrade, the guy was very confused because he considered it unfair, since he was the one who got rid of the strongest among the hearts, while the Platinum Monarch only dealt the final blow. Kang Ha Jin clarified that he meant the reward from the Black Ghost. With a smile on her face, she sincerely said that you would have to be an idiot to agree to such a proposal, because the tower cannot give you a star just because you destroyed the beating hearts. On the other hand, it seemed to her that in such a case the dark ghost was offering his star, but at the same time doing everything possible to prevent its loss. Ho Ming was simply furious and now everything fell into place and he realized why the dark ghost tried to kill him when he was close to success. At that moment, the girl said with a smile that the dark ghost was unlikely to offer that task to those who could actually complete it. Her words simultaneously hurt the pride of both her beloved hunters, because they both received an offer from the vile constellation. As expected, Sir Geomuk did not receive such an offer, although he could cope with it without much difficulty, not taking into account the destruction of Taboo. Of course, the constellation did not address the Platinum Monarch either. After that, Miss Yun decided to frankly ask who was the idiot who fell for the Black Ghost's lie. Huo Ming was deeply depressed. It had been a long time since their last meeting with the Platinum Monarch, but this time he wanted to avoid her gaze. While the guy was silent, Sir Geomuk surprised the ruler with the words that their stupid comrade killed a fallen star and managed to earn one star. Hearing how much the constellation devalued his work, Ho Ming flew into a real rage and roared like Haru. Addressing the lady, Student Yu said that the guy was simply incredible, and at first seemed to them simply a madman touched by his mind as he thoughtlessly rushed into the crowd of the dead. Despite this dubious beginning, she also reported that he soon reached the Beast of the Apocalypse and decided to fight it. Before her eyes, Huo Ming not only single-handedly destroyed the Fallen Star's weapon, but also used it against Tabu himself. As expected, the guys, admiring the heroism of the hunter, confirmed that Bak Ho Min was incomparable, and only confirmed the fact that he was indeed protected by the superior constellation Dynamite. The situation suddenly changed, and Huo Ming couldn't gather his thoughts from how much attention he had to receive due to his recent action. He had never been so praised before. In a calm voice, the Platinum Monarch addressed him and told him that he had achieved something great. The confused guy began to feel awkward and asked not to exaggerate his merits. 
The heated discussion surrounding the defeat of the Beast of the Apocalypse continued, and only confirmed the fact that they were all saved thanks to the heroism of one of those whom the Platinum Monarch respected. At that moment, Huo Ming felt that people were going to spread even more rumors about the Dynamite Constellation, which no one except him had ever seen. Noticing the guy's concern, the Platinum Monarch came closer and said that the Hunter's prestige is associated with the reputation of the Constellation protecting him, which is why Dynamite's praise also applies to the man himself. Therefore, she believed that when a guy became a constellation, Dynamite's good reputation and achievements would reflect on his fame, meaning he would also become a true superior constellation. Until recently, an unwanted guy could not believe that his work began to bring such results. Previously, he could not even dream of something like this, but before he knew it, he received his first star. He believed that he had nothing to lose, so he set his sights on this highest title, which was actually only recently invented by the Platinum Monarch to manipulate naive people, just like Beck Ho Min himself.